Newcastle Motorsports Park for the United States Pro Kart Series, Indiana State Grand Prix. We cannot wait to get this deal started for all of you. My name is Andrew Clements here in the booth. Alongside me, Randy Kugler. Randy, uh, we've watched, obviously, qualifying yesterday. A couple of new faces near the top of the leaderboard. Uh, but for the most part, the racing has been absolutely stellar whenever we come to Newcastle, Indiana. And record entries here this weekend with some beautiful weather here today. It's been a Great uh, weekend so far. We're obviously in the early stages for Saturday of the heat races. Watching practice and uh, happy hour and then qualifying yesterday. Uh, the draft, is, is we know, is so important to this track. But we had, we had racers yesterday on the last lap hit a flyer and pass about three or four in line and, and get uh, the fast qualifying position. And they're so tight. I mean, the top three or four, in some cases, a tenth, two tenths of a second apart. Some great racing in store for us today. We're about to go green, but I'm excited. It's the Midwest. It's the summer. The sun's shining. We're at Newcastle, which is a great place for racing. And we've got the U.S. Pro Kart Series and Kart Chaser on board, giving you the live action all weekend. I'm just great to be glad to be a part of it. And uh, we've got our first class coming out of the track now. We do. We've got a, a different lineup here this weekend than what we've had for most of this season. Uh, for those of you that already saw our tune-in alerts here earlier on today, the X30 Seniors will run in the 4th uh, seed. The Pro Shifters will be this weekend's main event running in the 8th seed. But top of the order for the first time, I believe, this year is the Mini Swift class uh, getting set to head onto the racetrack presented by DNJ Intermodal Services. And it's one of those classes that has been right on the cusp of the total cap in terms of all drivers being able to fit onto the circuit. So uh, at least all of them will transfer into the main event and qualifying completed yesterday. Well, let's take it through the starting lineup. We begin off with Tristan Murphy and Jackson Tovo to make a Ryan Perry Motorsport Nitro Kart front row. And beyond them, it was still extremely close in qualifying at just a tenth of a second spread for the top five. Fianchi on that super tune uh, or USA uh, Giller Jassy starts on the inside of row number two. Alongside him, it's that Trinity Kart and Group Kart Republic of Travis Pettit. The TKG boys have a big contingent, but there's some big names further back as Michael McGoy and Royce Vega will make up row three. Marco Romero and William Kim, row four. Jacob Majeski, Jackson Gibson, your first ten. And they are down the front straightaway now, coming towards us here, looking for the green flag for the first time here today. Heat number one in DNJ Mini Swift. And we are underway as they head down to turn number one. And it's a good start for the inside lane as they slowly make their way to the first corner. Everyone playing nice as they head to turn number two. It's still two by two a little bit further back, but it's single file up front. Jackson Tovo leads. Fianchi into second. Michael McGoy has got himself to third as Murphy falls into the fourth spot. Actually, maybe further back. It's Jackson Tovo, P4, as Tristan Murphy leads them, sorry, through the way to the bus, through the horseshoe, over to the cell tower hairpin for the first time today. It's about a four to five car length gap here, Randy, and we are side by side for second. Michael McGoy in that blue helmet on that red and white Ryan Perry Motorsport machine has the RPM boys one, two, and four. They'll head to the kink for the first time. A, a good clean start. There's the 141. Let's see who 141 is. That He's was Tyrone Kemper Jr. there off the side yeah, of the racetrack already along. Up with one of the Orsalon racing machines. And there was big contact even further back. We've lost some more coming out of the cell tower hairpin. So the leaders headed down to the I-70 corner for the very first time as we'll put one lap in the books. Nine laps to go. It's Tristan Murphy who leads. Michael McGoy second. Fion Shee is in that red and black Gillard for Super Tune USA in third. And working his way up to fourth on that blue and orange uh, Benick with the yellow helmet is Marco Romero, who had, of course, a big weekend back in Houston where we missed you, Randy, at that one. But he crossed the line first, and a pushback bumper penalty took him off the podium. But the top three, a nice little gap here as they head to turn number four. I was just about to say what a clean start we had, and we did. 44 strong. They got through the first half a lap. No incidents. And then we get together towards the back of the pack. Next thing you know, we're missing about six or seven out of the lineup. Uh, looking for an update on the first lap here. But uh, still a good, uh, a good run. We've got him single file now and uh, tightening up in the front. Yeah, it is uh, still all good right now for Tristan Murphy, who continues to lead the way. Uh, again, we have right behind him Michael McGoy. We'll pick them up to the green corner. No, McGoy going through to the lead, and a big pack going back about seven deep to Travis Pettit, I believe, at the end of it in P7 or P8. They'll trade spots again here in the infield hairpin. That's Marco Romero going by up and into third. 
Here we are coming up the long straightaway to the I-70 hairpin. McGoy and Murphy, little gap. Romero is there. Pettit is there. In the mix of it, Jackson Gibson. New colors for Jackson this weekend with the Trinity Karting Group, Kart Republic, Green and White Machines. He's back in that sixth spot as they head down the front straightaway. And here's a look as the leaderboard updates there on the left-hand side of your screen with one full speed lap underway, one fully completed. So that one did not count the initial lap of the race. This will end up being right around 11 in total as they go through. But here we are through four. It's a Ryan Perry Motorsport Red and White Nitro Kart 1-2. Michael McGoy leading Tristan Murphy second. Fastest driver on the racetrack back in ninth was Benja Fernandez that time by. And we've got some movers. Marco Romero in the 117 up four spots in two laps. Jackson Gibson starting in 10th. He's up to sixth. And also Cameron Marshu who started back in 17th. Not a real good qualifying lap. He's already approaching the top 10 in 12th. Again, Benja Fernandez is your fastest. Uh, running ninth right now. Uh, turning the fast lap. And uh, Michael McGoy, McGoy and Tristan Murphy still leading the way. Uh, tough uh, start for uh, Jackson Tovo. He's back in 27, so not exactly sure what happened. But Jackson and uh, Tristan Murphy yesterday were one and two in qualifying within one one thousandth of a second of each other. So Tovo certainly a lot faster than what it shows, but he's having difficulty out there. So a tough break for Jackson Tovo running far back in the pack. Marco Romero's pulled out to look for second, pulled out a little bit early that time by to try and go by Tristan Murphy. He could not get the job done, but the top four have absolutely broken away here, Randy, as they come through turn number three. We'll pick them up. Again, it is still all Michael McGoy out front here with three laps at full speed completed, seven laps to go. Tristan Murphy, Marco Romero, and Travis Pettit, your top four. That pack is about a second up the road from Fion Shi and the rest of the midfield with a few movers and shakers, bigger, uh, big movers right now. Mason Berry is up nine as there is a pass right there. That was Travis Pettit going by on Marco Romero. Pettit aboard that green and white Trinity Karting Group machine leading the, the duo, and they've got a little gap to make up because the Ryan Perry Motorsport guys, I guarantee you right now, telling the teammates one and two here, Randy, work together, don't pass. Hopefully they'll paddle behind you guys, and you might be able to break away as another move is there. Royce Vega making some noise as he goes by on Jackson Gibson for sixth. And how many times have we seen that you got further back in the pack, in this case third and fourth, they start racing each other, they make a pass, and next thing you know they've got a gap where they were in tow in that lead group. Now they got to stay in line. It looks like they are. They're closing back in on McGoy and Murphy. But right now Michael McGoy leading the way, Tristan Murphy, Marco Romero, Travis Pettit, and Fianchi, your top five. Through the top ten, Royce Vega runs six, Jackson Gibson seventh, Jacob Majeski. William Kim and Cameron Marsha. That's your top 10. And Cameron Marsha on the move, Xander. Started in 17th, already cracking the top 10. So Cameron Marsha, not a very good qualifying run, but certainly has some speed in this first heat race. Yeah, that's a really good start out of Cameron Marsha. Now the unfortunate part is when you do have that bad qualifying effort, it, it puts you back for all of the heat races. As we see Travis Pettit making a move in that cell tower hairpin. Him and Marco Romero were able to keep the Ryan Berry Motor Boys together, together as they go side by side in a little bit of contact. Marco Romero not backing down from Tristan Murphy. He wanted that third spot. He has gotten it now, and it's broken away uh, them from the top two. It's also brought Royce Vega and Fianchi back into the mix of it. Vega now make it up some time. He started six, fell back on the opening start as, again, we mentioned Jackson Tovo, an update on where he runs. He had that issue off the start line. He's dropped, uh, pushed himself back up to 24th, but got a slow start on the outside lane first third and fifth I'll cycle through to the lead and look at the gap here Randy coming down the front straight away as they battle for P4 the top two locked and loaded that was a big big bobble out of Romero and Murphy fighting for third instead of giving way one or the other the gap at the line was 1.1 seconds and just two laps ago they were nose to tail so that just tells you when you stay in line like this these guys are going to check out and they haven't raced each other they will probably with a lap or two to go but they've stayed in line, using some, some uh, patience, using discipline, and McGoy and Pettit right now. It's really their race with five to go unless that second group can stay in line, but I don't think they're going to do that. They're going to race. They're too wide now coming down the straight. McGoy and Pettit leading the way now by about two seconds. 
And uh, at the end of the day here, you don't need to win every heat. You just need to get as many spots as you can. So it's not a surprise to see them fighting as much right now for third and fourth. Obviously, you want to keep that win within the window, but it's a short race. So you can't afford to let somebody go and follow behind them because if another guy comes on through, then you're just in more and more trouble. Look at this two by two. How about that in that black and chrome nitro card? Cameron Marsha, the Marsha Motorsports, Ryan Perry Motorsport machine. Freight trains around Jacob Majeski, and I believe as well the 155 of William Kim. He's now up even further. We mentioned up seven spots to 10th. I think he should cross the line around 7th or 8th at the line. 7th, Cameron Marsha is up 10 positions, still digging forward. He's got Royce Vega lined up behind him as they start to charge through turns 3 and 4. One of the fastest carts on the racetrack, starting in 17th position, now up to 7th. Cameron Marsha, what a charge. Last lap, a 112.950 faster than Michael McGoy, who's leading the way right now with Travis Pettit. So Cameron Marsha on the move, but as you said, Xander, he's got to work this hard all three heats because he has that 17th starting spot that's going to stick with him through the day. Yeah, so at this point here, a couple, uh, a top 10 average between all three is what he needs here. Those finals, of course, longer length, 16 laps for the minis and the micros, 18 for the full-size divisions. That's more time. That's almost double again what they're going to do right now in a total of a 10-lap heat race. We're coming to see three laps to go this time by. Here's a look at your leaders. Nothing happening yet. Travis Pettit, a loyal pusher, staying smart, driving a very smart race. He had such an impressive run at uh, the Stars Championship Series. Was impressive as well in uh, Orlando, getting his first career national podium and his debut with the Trinity Karting Group boys. And right now, Travis Pettit, who didn't make a ton of noise on Friday practice, had a good qualifying effort to go uh, into fourth, worked his way back up to second, and he is putting together a very smart race. Because, again, he's in the driver's seat here, Randy. Michael Mogoy can do everything he wants to to try and put good laps together. But Travis Pettit is controlling this race in second, deciding not to battle. It's all up to him when he wants to make that move. And I would not be surprised to have him wait all the way till that front straightaway in the run to the checkered flag. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And this circuit gives you so many opportunities for passing that he doesn't have to start racing. Because, as we know, if, he, if they do get side by side, although right now they've got a, a really good gap on the rest of the field, but that side-by-side -side racing will slow you down because you're not running your line. You're not running your fastest lap. Those two have really been impressive in that they've just stepped together. They stayed together, kept their pace, nose to tail in line, and turning, you know, very fast laps. Uh, let's give a call out to Marco Salmon. He started 19th. He's about to crack the top 10. He's running 11th right now. So a good run by Marco Samet as they head down uh, Long Pond Straight towards the line it'll be two to go i believe uh indeed two laps yeah. to go this time by for your top two third and fourth have hooked up in jackson gibson and marco romero they're still together as well and you talk about drivers further back how about our championship points leader lucas palacio with his worst qualifying effort on the entire season was 21st he's up to 14th has the fastest lap of the race is up seven uh but the teammate of travis pettit way back having to come from 21st for all three heat races there is a lot of points up for grabs in all three heats they add up to almost the exact same as a main event if you can win all three so this is a big points opportunity for both drivers here michael mcgoy who's in the championship hunt travis pettit as well to run first and second they don't need to uh, fight for the win they could still go one two in this first heat and lock a lot of points and start to build into that gap because of course lucas palacio winner of the opening two rounds of the championship dominant it felt like through that even though it was a big pack all the way through most of these last lap battles we've seen in 2023 have gone the way of lucas palacio he's been the kid to beat so with him out now we'll see a little change in the lead here we're going to watch pettit down the inside take back the take the lead for the first time today coming to the white flag mcgoy to second and with the way this start finish line is look how long this straightaway is of course uh randy that finish line is not until all the way down here by the flagman by turn number one you can wait and we'll see a lot of slingshot moves on the final laps but we're going to battle now nice crossover there from mcgoy to go through michael mcgoy getting that top spot back he lost it uh, in the final turn there at I-70, but he gets it back, but we're not over. This uh, battle's going to rage on, I think. And there goes uh, Pettit back to the oh, He goes to the high side, can't quite do it. McGoy hanging on. Uh, Cameron Marsha, another spot. He's up to six from 17. So Cameron Marsha, possibly he's, uh, he's trying to catch up to Tristan Murphy right now. Could wind up in the top five, but a great run by Cameron. But back to the leaders now as they head down the hill they're side by side once again it's anybody's race for that top spot Tristan Murphy uh, Michael McGoy and Travis Pettit going for the win 
Yeah, still going out of there. You can see the next pack's closing up. They won't get there in time, but we're going to go side by side again. McGoy defending on the low side. Pettit opening up to give himself a big run. He'll have a run to him. He pushes him down the straightaway. This could be a really good spot to be in for Travis Pettit if he can line up a good I-70 corner. McGoy low to defend. Just got to wind that motor up here, get himself a big run down the straightaway. The pack won't be close enough. Pettit's got to get the run. Here he comes to the inside. They're going to drag race down the line. He'll have the momentum. He'll get nearly fully clear. Travis Pettit, heat one winner in DNJ Intermodal Services, Mini Swift, and everybody sending it through that final uh, straight away into turn number one, nearly missing the breaking marker. Nice move by Marco Romero to take over third at the end. Gibson fourth. Marsha again, like you said, up to six. That's a hell of a gain. 11 spots picked up for Cameron Marsha uh, up to P6. He ends up just behind Tristan Murphy as the field files on through. Then it was William Kim in eighth. Fion Shi ended in the ninth spot as they continue to cycle through. Lucas Palacio, he made up one more. He got himself to 13th. It's still not where he needs to be for tomorrow, but here's a look at the results here, top 10. Back on through, Marsha six, Vega, Kim, she. How about Thomas Chrisman? He picked up six spots and to uh, intent there, and then further back down the order. There's still some other drivers we've seen up front this year. Kai Mars has had a good year. Rocco Simone as well. They were 23rd and 24th, and there's that beside McGoy before McGoy could protect low, and they were side by side on the front stretch, and it gave Pettit, Pettit the win. So he was he was prepared for that move. It was. Uh, it was done perfectly, and he came away with the victory, but those two put on a heck of a show and stayed in line for, for, until there was two laps to go before they, could, they uh, decided to make a move, and that allowed them to race each other and no one else in the field as they gapped everybody else. Well, we've gotten to see what the track looks like from our outside cameras. How about an onboard track preview? Thanks to our good friends Dave Sarah at Car Class. Let's take you through what it takes to be able to be fast here around Newcastle Motorsports Park. Hey guys, here we are at Newcastle Motorsports Park in Newcastle, Indiana, home of some of the largest races in North American karting. We're out here today to show you guys the fastest way to drive this all-important track. So as we're making our way down the main straight to start our lap at Newcastle Motorsports Park, the key to turn one is not overusing the brakes. It's gonna be a very gentle trail brake into the apex, but not enough to lock up the rear brakes. You wanna be concentrating on the right hand green flag point. This entry point is towards the outside of the racetrack, but it's a corner that you're better off braking a little bit earlier and accelerating way before the apex. So the key here is to brake nice and early but you still want to be in that groove as you're turning in towards the apex. If you find yourself turning in too late, you're going to miss the camber to the corner and your cart's not going to make it towards the apex. After the acceleration point, allow the carts to flow all the way towards the outside of the racetrack, but only just want to touch the outside curbing. If you're finding your tyres and your cart is halfway over that exit curb, that's probably a little bit too much on this part of the racetrack. On the exit now, you're only going to bring the cart out only about half a cart width as we make our way through the flat out left hand kink. And once you're making your way through the kink, you want to keep the cart towards the left-hand side of the racetrack. But if you're looking for an overtake, this is a great opportunity to pull your cart towards the middle of the racetrack. And this sets you up nicely to make the overtake into the right-hand hairpin corner. The key to these next two hairpins is to brake nice and late to keep the cart turning late. So you can acceleration point is nice and early. So there you have it, guys. That is the fastest way to drive at Newcastle Motorsports Park. I'm Dave Sarah from Car Class. I hope this has helped you and look forward to seeing you guys at racetrack soon. As always, a good thanks to our buddy Dave Sarah at Car Class for uh, giving us the intel and inside scoop of what it takes to go fast here. Randy, this is the first of two KA100 senior heat races here. They're split in four groups, two uh, race each other each heat. You race everyone in your group three times, everyone else once. Let's go through the lineup really quickly. 
Mike Doty Racing, sponsor of K100 Senior, one of our biggest classes. In the front row, it's fast qualifier Austin Jurors alongside Peyton Phillips. In row two, it's Brandon Lemke and Braden Eves. Mick Gabriel and Aiden Levy in row three. It's Aiden Rudolph and Eli Warren in row four. Finnegan Bailiff and James Overbeck in row five. Josh Campbell and Alex Feldstein will roll back in row number six as they did not get the green on the first time by. Emery Lida and Dalton Haynes will make up row number seven with Seamus McKendry and Mason Surgener in 15th and 16th. Row number nine, it's Matthew Maccabee and Ian Howell. Vinny Miskellis and Araf Shea in row 10. Row 11, it's Kyle Raymond and Ger Geronimo gomez Aza. In row 12, it's Braden Johnson and Clay Robbins. And in row 13, Travis Varney and Carter Thompson. That makes up the starting field in our first of two heat races for the KA100 senior class. They take formation heading up to uh, I-70, hopefully for a green flag this time by. This division, of course, in the first two races of the year exceeded the total car count of uh, typically 40 to 44 uh, at this racetrack, they opened the cap up on the circuit to make it up to 50. We ended up right at 52, and the word from the officials has been they will start all 52. So all drivers in K.A. Senior, while they will be split for the heats, will transfer into the main event. Can't say the same for K.A. 100 Junior. That will be later on in the lineup. They'll have to go through an LCQ if they don't make it through the heats. But here we go, an early green flag from Porter Wason Sensel down on the start line. And Austin Jurors gets a nice jump. Brandon Lemke will slot into second. Phillips is side by side on the outside there for fourth. He'll fall into fifth maybe as they come through turn number three. Here we go, Austin Jurors, Brandon Lemke, Mick Gabriel on that blue and white AEM carding EOS cart, Aiden Levy. On the Alonzo card who leads the championship standings is in fourth. And their side by side is Gabriel decisively going into second. Brayden Eve side by side further back. He goes by Peyton Phillips on that red and white MPG Motorsports Cart Republic. He brought Aiden Rudolph with him. And all the battling already from second on back has given a healthy margin for your race leader in pole man, Austin Jurs, who leads them here in his sophomore senior season through the green corner. Once again, that outside row just doesn't get much of an advantage and they do lose some spots heading into that first turn on the start. But Austin Jurors now already with about a five-car length advantage. Fast qualifier, Union Illinois driver Austin Jurors, sponsored by Advanced Studio. And Austin right now getting some pressure from uh, that second spot, Brandon Lemke. So we'll see as they, uh, as they head up towards uh, the front straight for the first lap. And we'll give a quick rundown here at lap one in the books. We've got Austin Jurors, your leader. Right on the rear bumper now, Mick Gabriel as he's closed back in that gap. Running third, Brandon Lemke, Braden Neves, Aiden Levy. That's your top five. Then it's Aiden Rudolph in sixth. Eli Warren, James Overbeck, Finnegan Bailiff, and Josh Campbell. Side by side for the lead. Mick Gabriel quickly tracked down Austin Jurors at the end of the lap with the help from Brandon Lemke. And Mick Gabriel now leads the way into the Cell Tower hairpin. Jurors, Lemke, Braden Eves has also gone around Aiden Levy, and Braden Eves on the charge. He's up a couple already from the start after having to start on the outside of row number two, fell back, worked his way back up to neutral there in fourth on the 951 machine. Aiden Levy trails the end of the pack. It's a little gap from the top five backwards, but Mick Gabriel, your newest leader here in KA Senior Groups A and B, presented by Mike Doty Racing as they rocket up the uh, straightaway to the I-70 corner. And here we go to put two laps complete as they exit and head down that long pond straight away. Will we see another change in the lead? The pack being this big, you would expect it. But for now, Austin Jurors going to follow the veteran Mick Gabriel to turn number one. Peyton Phillips with a really rough start. Three laps or two laps in the books. And Peyton Phillips, who started second, is all the way back to 12. So he's got his work cut out for him to regain some of the positions he had when we started. He was on that outside line and lost a lot of ground when the green flag flew. So Peyton Phillips uh, falling back 10 spots already. Fast lap of the race just turned in by Eli Warren, a 109.117. Eli Warren running in seventh as a quick lap so far, two laps in, but they're still chasing Mick Gabriel. Austin Jurors now on the rear bumper. They've gapped about three cart links over Brandon Lemke and Braden Eves. Yeah, and Eves, uh, part of the reason for that is he went by Lemke back in the cell tower. So Braden Eves to third, Lemke's back to fourth. Levy still fifth. Now they have to work together, whether Lemke wants to or not, to keep those leaders within striking distance. That pass has allowed more drivers to join the fray. How about Eli Warren, fastest driver on the racetrack last time by, in that red and white 
uh, uh, Red Speed chassis here on their own, pitted out of their garage. The local kid from Indiana in seventh, right behind Aiden Rudolph, and everybody is single file down to turn number one here in the lead pack. No changes, quick laps coming all the way through, and it goes to Aiden Rudolph that time by just ahead of Warren in six. So you can see all the leaders coming through. Let's see if Braden Neves has enough speed and help from Lemke to track down the top two. Once again, a Lemke have to go back around him to keep them within distance for the moment. Single file through the horseshoe and over to that cell tower hairpin. Mick Gabriel still leading the way, but uh, everybody kind of minding their own business right now in line. Uh, no, uh, no passing at this point, and that's allowed uh, that second group to close in now just a, less than a second, probably and on the naked eye, probably about three or four cart lengths difference between second and third. But uh, it's still Gabriel and Jurors leading the way, but now closing in almost to the rear bumper, Braden Eves and Brandon Lemke. So we're going to have about a five-card battle here before long as they head up towards I-70. Mick Gabriel over the hill making the turn, but Austin Jurors is right there, as is Braden Eves and Brandon Lemke. And now they head down the long pond straight, crossing the stripe one more time. Everybody stays in line at this point, just kind of uh, setting their position for later in the race. But Xander, if you're back in fifth, sixth, seventh spot in this league group, you can't wait too long. You've got to position yourself a little bit better than that if you want a shot at it in the end. Yeah, you got to kind of play leapfrog. That's what Eli Warren did last lap. Used Aiden Rudolph to get up to the pack, then went by him. Now Brandon Lemke doing exactly that here with Braden Eves. Used him to get back up to Austin Jersey's bumper. Once they got there, he's gone by. So the Millwright Racing x now back to P3. Eves to fourth. Still only lost about a car length in the exchange, and it's kept them all still tied together. Austin Jersey had a bit of a look. Uh, down into turn number one on Mick Gabriel last time around. He decided against it to go with it as Lemke drops a tire. Big mistake from Brandon Lemke coming out of that green corner. He'll go way wide here. Eves has to go or go somewhere. And now he's on the outside. It'll get Levy the opportunity to go by him. Lemke's going to say, hey, my bad. Go ahead on front of me. I'll let you go or was going to until Levy pushed him. But a mistake there from Brandon Lemke. As a big bobble out of that green corner, it really hurt Brayden Neves as he tracks all the way back to seventh. And now Austin Jurors maybe will be a little more patient because he was starting to look impatient at turn number one the lap prior. Now that one mistake, that one drop tire for Brandon Lemke in the green corner has cost that group the top two. Absolutely, about a 10 cart link difference now, and they were right in, on the rear bumper of Austin Jurors. But keep your eye on Eli Warren as he remains on the charge. He's up to fifth now. He's been working on Aiden Levy and Brandon Lemke. I think he's a little quicker, actually. Peyton Phillips, we talked earlier, that started in second, fell all the way back, got a really bad start, just turned fast lap of the race, a 108-293. And Peyton Phillips has now cracked the top ten, is trying to get back into a decent finishing position so he can get a better start in heat number two. But right now, Mick Gabriel and Austin Jurors enjoying about a, almost a full second over the rest of the field. Austin Jurors to the lead now in the scoreboard hairpin. So Austin Jurors now leads the, the duo up the hill towards I-70. Mick Gabriel led for a good bit. Now Jurors wants to take it back, thinks he's a little bit quicker. We'll see how he does as the leader of the pair as they come down the front stretch. Aiden Levy and Brandon Lemke hooked up. Eves by himself in fifth. That next group, there's Phillips peeking out further back as they come through turn number one. Peyton Phillips has picked up another one, I believe, or was trying to on Josh Campbell. He could not pull it off there. He is still back in around the eighth or ninth spot, was ninth at the line. But it's a five-car pack thanks to the battling from second onwards. He was able to claw his way back forward. And now uh, still a long ways to go to get to these two, but he's at least kind of mitigated some of the damage from that poor start for Peyton. Three and a half to go here for Austin Jurors. And, and Eli Warren had been on the charge in that lead group, but has fallen off now. Braden Eves got back around him and has now gapped him a little bit. So Eli Warren back to sixth. He was up to fifth. And now with Braden Eves and uh, uh, Brandon Lemke and Aiden Levy trying to stay in line and get back to that lead group. And it looks like they're succeeding. That gap is closing a little bit. We could have a five-card battle here before this one's over. Yeah, well, they've been disconnected most of this lap here, Randy. You look at the gap from Mick Gabriel to Austin Jurors. After Jurors went around him, a mistake from Gabriel. There was a little mistake. You saw Jurors get on that inside curb in the I-70 corner, um, but they've not been connected. 
whereas the group behind them, they have been more so. Lemke on Levy's bumper, and Eve's closing back in. So because of that, Austin Jurs and Mick Gabriel were significantly slower last time by, by two to three tenths, with still three laps to go here now. Uh, they need to be hooked up, or this group that is hooked up will run them back down. The gap was one second at the line for Levy to the leader, nine tenths to Mick Gabriel. It is coming down. If Lemke stays patient behind him, they will get back to him, and Eves will get there as well, as Gabriel, again, did not get a good exit for the second lap in a row to that cell tower. You can see up in front, they're disconnected still. The two third and fourth place drivers were pretty close together, so the, the little bit of separation. Austin Jerry's, I do think he is faster than Mick Gabriel. The draft is keeping Gabriel there but they were probably better in the opposite formation with Gabriel leading and Jers pushing him around when it came to building a gap further back. We're going to come this time by, though, to two laps to go as here comes Eves to the inside of uh, Lemke. Nearly ends up going by Levy by accident, and Lemke's going to cross him over and take back fourth. And that helps those leaders as that side-by-side -side behind them has now allowed that gap to get a little bit uh, further apart and I think now white flag next time by, it may be too much for them to overcome in that second group. Although Braden Eves did go purple a lap before, but now they've got uh, probably almost a full second advantage now over uh, that second group. So Austin Jurs and Mick Gabriel will be, I think, left to fight this one out for the win. But I agree with you. Jurs looks a little bit quicker, and Gabriel is kind of clinging to that draft, but it's all he can do to hang on to Austin Jurs, who was our fast qualifier yesterday, by the way. So he's showing it today. Clearly the fastest in the field. Another pass there by Braden Eves on Brandon Lemke. This time it's stuck in the cell tower. He's taken over fourth. Lemke back to fifth. It's given Bra Aiden Levy some breathing room. Unfortunately, that's the last thing he needs right now. He needs those guys pushing him to get up to the top two. I don't know if he'll arrive in time. Mick Gabriel's going to get saved by the draft window off of Austin Jurs. But Jers has moved to go to the lead. It might be the smartest move of the race right now because he's pulled enough that even with Gabriel getting a big toe down this straightaway to close up to him, it won't be enough to pull out and pass him at the line like we saw in that mini swift main event. So Austin Jers, one more perfect lap, a lap around, and he won't have to defend. He won't have to do anything. He'll just be able to ride this one to the finish as behind them, Eves, a slick move there in turn number three. He takes over third from Aiden Levy. One of the fastest carts on the track right now is the, the uh, 958 of Peyton Phillips, who started second, fell all the way back to about 15th, has worked his way back to six, but now has about a second and a half to close into that fifth spot with Brandon Lemke. Yeah, Lemke there going by for fourth on Aiden Levy in that blue and yellow Alonzo cart. Brandon Lemke now to fourth. It's given Eves plenty of room on the final lap. He'll be safe in third, and I think it'll about stay this way. This will be the battle to the line before will be the highest one. You can see there Phillips at the end of the screen there on that purple and white suit for the high five performance. Tony Kart team in six, but coming up the straightaway for the final time, Austin Jers has driven a perfect race, pushed with Mick Gabriel to build the gap, realized he was quicker, went by him a few laps ago, and Gabriel will not be close enough across the line. Give he one, groups A and B, the heat win to Austin Jers as the checkered flag flies. Gabriel second, Eves, Lemke, Levy, Phillips, the top six. Here comes a big group across the line. Look at this. They're three wide. Eli Warren versus Aiden uh, Rudolph. Josh Campbell. Rudolph around the outside, and they wrecked across the line. Josh Campbell and Finnegan Bailiff sitting out here on the grass as they all sent it to get as many spots as they could at the checkered. And they crossed in ninth and tenth. One 100 the park. Give the advantage to Campbell. They were in that massive, massive swarm coming to the line. Let's look at the results here as uh, Austin Jurs wins heat number one in Mike Doty Racing, groups A and B. Here's a look further back at a few drivers that went off. Only DNF was Geronimo gomez Aza down in 26th. Uh, but your top 10 all the way through there. You saw Emery Lida, James Overbeck, Dalton Haynes kind of up and down at the end 11, 12, 13th. Matthew Mockaby, 14th. Mason Surgener, 15th. And Eli Warren up, down, and ends up in the middle down in eighth, exactly where he started as the rest of the field cycles through. Good run for fast qualifier, Union Illinois driver, Austin Jurs, showing that it was no fluke yesterday. He was the fast qualifier. He was the fastest in the field. And when it came time to, to step up, he did gap Mick Gabriel enough that Gabriel couldn't hang on and, uh, and landed in second. But a good run for Austin Jurs, and certainly a good way to start the day for him. Fast qualifier and winner of the first heat. 
with that, the next group is already onto the racetrack here, groups C and D. So this is uh, third and fourth on back through qualifying. The way that they split the groups up is uh, based off of uh, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. And then again, it's A, B, and C, and D in round one. Then it'll be A, and C, B, and D. Then A, and D, and B, and C as they kind of mix and match. But it starts one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight. So if you're fifth, you're second in group A, which means you start third on the inside in every heat race. For C and D, this will be the only heat race that the group C boys get to start on the inside lane. That's good news for Connor Ferris on that team. Ferris Racing, Kurt Republic, the black and blue machine late in the field down the line to come to the green flag. And we are underway here in heat number uh, one, group C and D down through turns one and two. A good start for them. Looks like most of the pack is safely through through turn number three and four. Here they come up the short shoot up the hill as uh, we head down the straight. It's uh, going to be Ferris over Elio Meza from the second spot. They're three wide for third. Look at this. Harley Keeble on that Sodi cart around the outside. All the way he'll get a two for one move in the horseshoe. And a good move on the outside by Elio Meza. Uh, the first two races that outside lane is certainly in the front row. The first couple rows have lost positions, but Mesa got a good clean start, found his way right behind Ferris and fell into second. So a good start by Elio Mesa, and right now he and Connor Ferris have checked out about 10 cart lengths over third. Big pass there, John Burke on that orange and black CRG for Tesoro Raceworks going through on Adam Maxwell in the Amax Tony cart. He'll pick up a spot. He slots in behind Henry Wheeler's uh, Mike Doty Racing, Brandon Jarsacrack Racing, Landon Norris cart. Lined up with Cooper Shipman. Up front, though, Elio Meza, the superstar standout from the Speed Sports Racing Park round in Houston. He's had a phenomenal uh, summer start, beginning back at Speed Sports, then coming here for his next stop on the tour, qualified second overall in X30 Pro in the top 10 in KA Senior. He's right there with Ferris as they've traded the third and the fourth spots again at the line, and we'll update you on those. It looks like Cooper Shipman has gone by Harley Keeble. It is then Wheeler. So on your screen, again, it's Cooper Shipman on that black, gray, and chrome uh, Iron Rock Motorsports, Tony Carr with the white front bumper. He's in third. Harley Keeble on the PK Sports Sodi USA. Sodi card is the orange and black in fourth in line, or fourth overall, second in line. He'll get passed, though, by Henry Wheeler on the blue and yellow. Brandon Jarsacrack, Mike Doty Racing, Lando Norris card. Connor Ferris still leading the way, and uh, they've gapped now over a second already in two laps over third place. But uh, uh, Cooper Shipman, Harley Keeble, and Henry Wheeler now on the move. Henry uh, moving up to fifth. And we're looking at those leaders now coming up towards I-70. And as you can see, that gap from second to third quite a ways. And then uh, I believe it's a Harley Keeble that is uh, kind of on an island out there in third with nobody to draft with. I think that group in fourth, fifth, and sixth are going to catch them here pretty quick. But that uh, lead group of Ferris and Mesa nose to tail heading into turn one. One more lap in the books. Yeah, Co Cooper Shipman looks good. He was faster than the leaders by about a tenth of a second that time, but the bus has already left the station. He's 1.1 seconds back from the two of them, and his teammate Elio Meza not doing him any favors, but not uh, from malicious intent, just being a little selfish, pushing with Connor Ferris to keep the two of them away from the chaos of the midfield. The shipman there is through in third, and John Burke P4 leading that next pack. We'll see if they stay single file. They do. So here he is, that Tesoro Raceworks CRG of John Burke leading that group of six up the hill and towards the kink. Cooper Shipman running in third actually was a tenth of a second faster that last lap by himself than Ferris and Mesa. So Shipman, I think, maybe on his own is going to close in and make it a three-card battle, and that's pretty impressive with nobody to draft with. Well, it helps. He's right now, even as far back as he is, still getting a little bit of help from the slipstream. And, of course, Elio Meza, he has to break earlier than his normal marker because he's got Connor Ferris in front of him. So what they gain on the straightaway, they lose with that. And now Meza's saying, hey, you know what? It's not working. We're not pulling away. I got to go to the lead, and he does. And that brings Shipman all the way there. That brought Cooper Shipman right to the rear bumper of Connor Ferris. And now Shipman to the inside makes a pass on Ferris. He's up to second. Now Ferris will draft Shipman as they try to catch back up to Elio Meza. Yeah, so with that here, it's an Iron Rock Motorsports 1-2. Charlie Swain on the fence side has got to be happy uh, with both of his two uh, senior drivers showing the way here in KA Senior. Connor Ferris again needs to go to work. He needs to learn a little bit because as we've seen and as we said, He's not been the fastest, even with Meza pushing him around. The toe will help, but he's got to find a little more speed, or he'll be no different than Mick Gabriel as we see a pass further back. Adam Maxwell on Harley Keeble. The Sodi's been up and down, and now back down again to the sixth spot. So 
not an ideal uh, first heat it looks like for Sodi with Harley Keeble actually seventh uh, there with the pass being made. The top three with the breakaway, Elio Meza, the rookie standout, showing the way here in Newcastle as we come down to put four laps complete, six to go. There's lap traffic up the road. That should get out of the way. Here comes his teammate, though. Cooper Shipman wants the lead, and he'll take it away. Xander, that's not uh, team order. Surely they don't want to have these guys racing each other. But Shipman, who's been the quickest on the track, does take over the lead. On further back, Colin Lloyd in the uh, number th number uh, 916, a 108, 341, just went purple. He's up to eight spot. He's on the move. And uh, we've got Brian Reddick, who started in 20th. He's up to 13th. But right now, uh, Cooper Shipman is the driver on the charge as he takes over that top spot with uh, Meza and Ferris in tow. And they still have a pretty decent gap, about a second, about 1.2, 1.3 tenths over that next group of John Burke, Henry Wheeler, and Adam Maxwell. Yeah, I mean, what a great story for Colin Lloyd there. Uh, he had such an impressive run, uh, a winner in Salt Lake City, Utah at the Scusa Pro Tour on a one-off opportunity with Speed Concepts Racing. After that, the team picked him up. He's not a guy that's been able to put together the budget to run a full national tour. He's here this weekend thanks to the, the performance he put on over in Utah, and he signed with the Speed Concepts team for the majority of 2023 to be their lead K senior driver. I mentioned at the broadcast there that all teams should take notice. That kid's deserving of a drive, and he's got himself. It's not been a good quality effort. He's still further back even than this group of three, unfortunately, and just got shuffled all the way down to the ninth position behind Josh Holtz and Harley Keeble or actually maybe Noah Rosser. But all that said, for Colin Lloyd, uh, it, he's making hay going forward up a couple, just needs a few more, needs some battling at the front, and I think we're going to get it here, Randy, because the top six are closing together. That second group of three led by John Burke was faster last time by. Let's go side by side here while watching this second pack in uh, or second race for KA Seniors opening round of heat races. We're standing by with our opening round winner and our top qualifier uh, in uh, – of course, Austin Jers. Alexander Searle, take it away. Cooper Shipman now has... Uh about a two-cart length advantage over Elio Meza and Connor Ferris. But that second group has closed in. It's a six-cart battle right now for the lead. John Burke in fourth goes purple with a 107-586. Henry Wheeler, Adam Maxwell, they're all on the charge. And you've got a six-cart battle for the race win. We're past the halfway point. A pass for second. And Connor Ferris trying to get around uh, Mesa for that second spot. Backs it out at the last minute, but with those two racing, Cooper Shipman now gaps him about three cart lengths. Side by side for fifth, and Adam Maxwell makes the pass. He's up to fifth spot as he gets around Henry Wheeler. Maxwell up to fifth. He's on the charge. We're side by side now for fourth as John Burke tries to make a move to move up to that third spot. A lot of battling going on in that third, fourth, fifth position. Maxwell to the outside. He's going to lose a spot as he tries to make his way around John Burke but loses a spot to Henry Wheeler. So now we're three high and three low, headed down the Long Pond Straight into turn one, and everybody stays back in line. Cooper Shipman with the lead, but John Burke goes purple with a 107.586 on his last lap. Yeah, that CRG continues to move. Let's try that one more time here. We'll send it down. Alexander Searle, he got us down on pit lane. Decided to go for the lead. I thought I had a little bit more pace and uh, never looked back from there. All right, thanks, Austin. Good luck. 
There you go from Austin Jersey. We'll get that interview uh, audio turned up just a little bit more for all of you guys to hear better. But what a performance there, as you could hear from Austin Jersey. Nice and smooth, lots of speed, lots of speed for Cooper Shipman, but there's more fast guys behind him. Look at John Burke wanting to get racy here as we come to the two to go signal. And three drivers up front. The more they fight, the rest will get back to them. Elio Mesa and Henry Wheeler licking their chops right now. Harley Keeble in six, Holtz is seventh, Maxwell eighth. Lloyd fell back to ninth there that time by. But that little move, that little defensive move going to turn number one, that's all it took here to break the momentum, Randy. And just like that, we've got a big pack all once again. And how about the charge by John Burke? He was in that second group for most of the race, but now he's up to third trying to battle Ferris for second. He just went purple two laps ago. Elio Meza and Henry Wheeler have caught up. As we wind this one down, it'll be white flag next time by. It's about a six or seven cart battle, nose to tail for that top spot as they head down uh, almost uh, three-fourths the way through on this lap, heading back up now to I-70. So they're winding this lap down, seeing the white the next time by. Cooper Shipman trying to hang on, but it's not going to be easy as Connor Ferris peeks to the inside, crossing the line now for the white flag, and Cooper Shipman will try to protect. Here comes Connor Ferris to the inside. He's bringing some company into turn one. No, he closes the door on him. Cooper Shipman hangs on. He's in the dirt, and Ferris takes the lead. And now Shipman goes all the way back to fifth. Got wide coming through turn one, kicked up some dust, and now it opens the door for Connor Ferris. Ferris now up front with John Burke now to second. He'll try to make the move on Ferris to take the win before this one's over. It'll be checking flag next time by. They're all chasing Connor Ferris. This one's getting wild in the last lap, Xander. And it continues further back. Look at this next group here. You got uh, Lloyd Holtz. Keeble, Shipman back to fourth. Meza is up to third. Little gap for the top three for the moment with half a lap to go. Connor Ferris down to the inside to defend. Burke has to follow because Meza is there. So Meza can cross him over. And here he comes with a run. Not enough to the uh, infield hairpin. Burke will block. And that'll give Connor Ferris the separation he needs. Will it be enough? They're going to get a big run down this straightaway here. John Burke taking him to the low side. Ferris should be safe as they block for second. And out of the I-70 corner, Connor Ferris looking to pick up the heat race win, but it's going to be a mad dash for second across the line. Heat one, group C and D, side by side. Mesa with help from Shipman, will take second, and Connor Ferris wins his opening heat race. Mesa and Shipman both getting around Burke at the line, and look at that, Henry Wheeler on the BJR MDR LN cart going for a ride in the spin cycle there in turn number one as he sent it for sixth to hold off Josh Holtz. It pays off. He holds him off. But, man, that one got a lot more wild there at the end as we put more and more players into the mix as the race kind of went on. You got to hand it to Connor Ferris. He started off early in the race leading, fell back to third, fourth, fifth position a couple of times, Was uh, just kept his pace, stayed with the lead group, and then made the most of it, slipped inside of uh, Shipman on that uh, white flag lap, got to the corner. Shipman got wide coming off of turn one. Ferris dipped down low, made the pass, and then, as you said, Xander, they started racing behind him. And that's all Connor Ferris needed as he brought it home, Victor, in heat number one. There's a look at your results there. Ferris, Meza, Shipman on back through the rest of the field. Everyone made it through. X30 Pro Jr. is up next. Before we go there, let's take a quick commercial break and a word from our partners. We return more heat racing to come here live from Newcastle Motorsports Park. You're watching Car Chasers coverage of the United States Pro Car Series.
Welcome back here as we get set to go green for X30 Junior, but the young gun's a little bit too antsy to get it on start attempt number one. It'll give us at least the time to go through the lineup here, Randy, but no uh, go for first try here for the X30 Juniors. Starting lineup for X30 Junior, fast qualifier Anthony Martella on the pole. Ernest Rivera outside front row. In row number two, it's Charlie Smith and Jensen Burnett. Row three, Jackson Walney and Diego Guay. In row four, it's Nathan Dupoy and Stephen Miller. Row five, Ed Ethan Tovo and Oliver Weld. In row six, Sarah Bradley and Davin Roberts. Row seven, Enzo Vidmontien and Wesley Gundler. Row eight, Carter McMurray and Frederick Lemieux. In row nine, Lillian Scarborough and Antoine Lemieux. And in row 10, Luke Powers and David Ramirez. That's your top 20 starters in X30 Pro Junior, brought to you by Rollison Performance Group. As we look for a green flag, good formation, Sander, heading down to a start. Yeah, this one a lot more tame, nice and slow. It'll get the green flag there this time by. And Anthony Martella with his first career pole award in the U.S. Pro Card Series leads your field through. Let's see if they all can survive turn number one. They will, and we're good through over to turn number two and three. Single file for the top four to five, and then everyone's got to try and find their way into line by turn number four, and they do. And we're full throttle down the short shoot to the horseshoe for the very first time as Martella defending already here from Ernesto Rivera. He's feeling the pressure. It's bringing Charlie Smith right up into the mix as they go to the cell tower. No change up front. Martella still the leader, but they are hot on his heels as they go up the hill. Great start for Ernesto Rivera. Coming from that outside front row, you've got to be positioned well if you... Green flag drops. If you know you're not going to have a shot at the pole, at the uh, top spot headed into turn one, you got to find a spot quick. He did, and now he's running in second. Slips to the inside, makes the pass. Rivero is now the new leader. He gets around Martella. Well, let's go side by side. While X30 Junior races on on the racetrack here, coming to put one lap in the books, we get set for X30 Senior action, and we wrap up KA100 Senior. Let's send it to David Land down on pit lane. David. there. Uh, give me the blow by blow up. Open up my inside so I tried to open up to maybe cut him back on the exit but he kind of washed a little bit wider than I expected so I kind of had to just try it on that happened. Um, ultimately didn't work out but it was good to come away with the top five. Now, it's such a close race in your class. I mean when they're all packed up like that and you're leading can is it really easy to hold the lead or are you kind of a sitting duck? You got nobody to draft off of. Um, but in my opinion, in the heats at least. Well, he is. And try and stay out of trouble. Bag a couple of the top fives and hopefully start somewhere inside the top five for the finals. That's the story down here. Back to you, Xander. Thank you, David, there again, and uh, we go back to the on-track action for X30 Junior. Ernesto Rivera making his way around Anthony Martella. Hasn't seen a challenge yet back on lap number two, but the pack is still close, and we've got a pass for third. How about Stephen Miller on that red and yellow dap cart for the Chad Dawkins Racing Camp up another position? The to, uh, perpetual contender, it feels like, with Ernesto Rivera. These two, we think back to Orlando, Randy, they had an absolute bloodbath in X30 Junior. Stephen Miller and Ernesto Rivera. They're getting close together again, but more than that, we've got a lot more new players at the front of the field. Jensen Burnett is there. Jackson Woolney is there. Oliver Weldon's on the end, and again, Charlie Smith having a heck of a run. Here comes another change for the lead. Martella through, and Miller through as well as we go side-by-side -side for third for a second. Oliver Weldon uh, just went purple the last lap. He's up to seventh. He's moved up about three spots. And also on the move, Enzo Vidmontien, who started in 13th, already up in the top 10 in ninth. So a couple of drivers on the charge. Oliver Weldon in that lead group. So Oliver running uh, running well early and moving up some, uh, advancing some spots from his starting position. But Ernesto Rivero still leading the way in that lead group of five or six, still awfully close together. So it's anybody's race at this point. we got about three laps in the books right now. Well, Rivera fell all the way back to fourth by the end of the lap there. We saw Miller go by for the lead on Martella just off screen, and then Martella took it back there down the front stretch. So Anthony Martella, he wants to stay out front. He doesn't want to even fall anywhere. 
further back than the top spot. He's passed everyone at every opportunity, no more than a lap beyond the lead to uh, command the pack. And it's bringing more back into it, like you said. Vidmontien on the way forward, Diego Guillo. Uh, even fast lap that time was Ethan Tovo on the RPG Cosmic down in, third, or down in 12th. So this whole group, as we see, Weldon has gotten around Jackson Wolney. Here's a look at where they run right now. Third place under fire. Charlie Smith's blue Nash Motorsports machine falls back to fourth. Rivera back up to third in that purple and pink. Rollison Performance Group Cosmic and Anthony Martella will take them out of the I-70 corner down the front straightaway. Let's go side by side for more here with X30 Pro Senior getting set to go. Alessandro DiTullio has got some new colors here this weekend. He's standing by with Alexander Searle. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, like you said, new colors this weekend. I mean, Alessandro... Rolling off P14 here, first time on the Car Republic International Motorsports team. I mean, how welcoming have they been to you? And I mean, talk to me about kind of the progression of the team so far this week. Yeah, I mean, uh, the whole team has been very welcoming, uh, both international and uh, Car Republic. Um, yeah, even even Joe has been helping me. Um, Rick Hart from Car Republic, Eric Jones, they've all been super helpful. My mechanic, Jorge, and yeah, they've all been there and all been helping me to adapt as quickly as possible, and yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, I mean, rolling off P14 here for all three heats, I mean, what do, what do you think you're missing here to get up to that top spot? Uh, just a little bit, a little bit of me, um, a little bit of just setting up the chassis to make it, make it work for me, and just maybe some driving as well. Uh, we'll we'll keep, keep looking and keep trying to find, trying to find more. All right, good luck, Ale. Thank you. That was again Alessandro DiTullio there from the International Motorsports Camp. Uh, obviously, 14th is not where we're used to seeing ADT, but that class is just so stacked to the brim with talent. And we've got a great feeder program with the X30 Juniors here, uh, looking like we've got a lot more faces this week in a Newcastle that could contend. But while we were side by side, that pack has kind of exploded. It's allowed Enzo Vidmontien to move his way back up the order once again on that Cart Republic to get to six behind that bright yellow Tony cart of Jensen Burnett, and he's going to take fifth away right here, or he's going to try to. There it is, fully clear for the Motaz Sport driver. Two fastest drivers on the track right now, Oliver Weldon and Enzo Vidmontien. They're moving through the pack. Both of them have advanced seven spots from the start, so they're really improving their position in the case of not having too good of a qualifying session, but right now they're really uh, on the charge. Change in the lead. Ernesto Rivera going by on Anthony Martella there. He'll take over the spot as they go up to the I-70 corner. Side by side further back, Charlie Smith trying to fend off Nathan Dupuy. That's back for P8. <coughs> Anthony Martella and Ernesto Rivera have been swapping the lead back and forth uh, most of this race. Rivera now back on top, fast qualifier. Anthony Martella runs in second. Oliver Weldon trying to close that gap in third. Stephen Miller, who just went purple with a 106.548, runs fourth. Jackson Wolney fifth through the top ten. Enzo Vidmontien in sixth. Jensen Burnett, Charlie Smith, Nathan Dupoy, and Diego Gio is the top. That's the top ten currently. We've got four laps to go. Three next time by. And Ernesto Rivera leads the way, but he's got company. as Anthony Martella, Oliver Weldon, and Stephen Miller are right there. Anybody's race amongst that top four. Ernesto Rivera trying to hang on. Uh, Martella was fast qualifier. Martella coming down from Toronto, Canada to race with us this weekend here at the U.S. Pro Kart Series. And Anthony Martella now trying to chase down Ernesto Rivera. We'll come to three laps to go this time by for a little more intel. How about it from Harley Keeble? It's a busy day from KA Senior to X30 Pro. He's standing as well here with David Land. David. And, uh, you know, X30 Pro, it's so competitive. What can you do in the heat races coming up? I think it's more about of just trying to push away with the right people and then battle it out towards the end. You know, you don't want to cause a you don't want to cause a fight at the beginning and then there's seven, eight carts for the win and then you're just making your your job much harder for yourself. Three heats in one day. I mean, this is a pretty big workload for anybody. You know, what are you looking forward to? I mean, what can you really get out of the first heat? Is it really just kind of reconnaissance, or is there there's something to gain from uh, one heat early on? Uh, it's just all about consistent heats, you know. Like if you if you have a crash or anything like that, you're already on the back foot for the final. So you got to keep yourself for um, consistent heats and carry on going. One of the big storylines everyone's been talking about has been the temperature fluctuations. It's been cool. It's been hot. Looks like it's going to be pretty warm today. What's that going to do to your cart? 
Um, I think we're good with a cart, you know. It's going to be an exciting one. Uh, heat number one, X30 Pro coming up. Thanks, David. Good to hear from Harley Keeble. He seems in good spirits, and he's, again, talking about name of the game today. It's not about winning every single battle. It's winning the war, Randy. You've got to be consistent, and while these guys are dicing it up once again, Rivera there going by for third on Oliver Weldon, who had just tracked his way up to the top three. You want to make up spots. You don't want to go backwards, but you don't want to have a wreck or a big blunder that sends you down the order in any one of the three because they all count to your starting spot on Sunday. Well, I think there's a fine line in these heat races, but... Between, between being aggressive enough to advance if you got a bad starting spot, but being too aggressive to where you knock yourself out. And a couple of races ago, we saw two or three drivers in the top ten that crashed on that last lap for position. To me, that just shouldn't happen. You know, settle where you're at, but don't put yourself out with a couple laps to go because that's going to haunt you all day, and more importantly, it's going to haunt you Sunday for your starting position. You've got to have solid finishes, even if it's not, if it's not first. And we got to pass now Rivera slipping back inside of, uh, of Stephen Miller, it looks like, for second. But uh, Anthony Martella now gapping about three cart lengths, and we're four wide across the line. And coming through on this last lap, it's Martella, Rivera, Weldon, Wolney, and Vidmontien. That's your top five, but they're racing side by side all through that lead group. Here they come through turn number four, Anthony Martella by about three car lengths. Uh, still holding over Rivera there side by side again. That's Wolney on the inside defending for the fourth spot from Vidmontien. It's still back to Nathan Dupuy. They haven't added any more. Davin Roberts is the next one, the young kid, up two spots. Luke Powers is up eighth. Dupuy trying on Stephen Miller, who's gotten all the way back to the eight, uh, eighth position from seventh last time at the stripe. But the battling and defending up front should bring them a little bit closer here on this final lap. Anthony Martella trying to hang on. He goes low to the scoreboard hairpin. Ernesto Rivera to the high side. Stays in line. Here comes the run up to the I-70 corner. Oliver Weldon's two car lengths back. He'll open up. Rivera opens up. Martella low. Look at Rivera trying the high side. Now back in line. Here comes the slingshot move. Who does Oliver Weldon push to the win? As they come to the line, he wants to go himself. Rivera's going to be the one he helps out, and Ernesto Rivera will easily clear Anthony Martell, and Weldon almost got there. 19,000 shy for Oliver Weldon uh, off Anthony Martella at the stripe, and how about the run for Vidmontien? He gets around Jackson Wolney at the end as well to take over fourth, so an impressive run uh, for, uh, again, Enzo Vidmontien, nine spots gained to position number four for Enzo. Ernesto Rivera and Anthony Martell again, your winner, uh, top two. Uh, all race long, it felt like it really netted out to the two of them. But for uh, the run to the line, let's look back to the results right here. Again, your uh, full field, a couple of issues for Ethan Tovo, who was quick early, as well as Frederick Lemieux. But your top ten on back, Burnett, fifth, Wolney, Miller, Dupuy, Charlie Smith, Davin Roberts, your top ten. And again, Luke Powers, one of the biggest movers there. Eight spots gained to 11th. And then you go down the rest of the grid for more drivers looking for a little bit more. A big turnout for X30 Jr. after what's been not the best year for them. Let's put them in a good spot. And uh, let's take a look back here as I believe. Do we have a, well, we'll take a look uh, up forward actually, up to X30 Pro. The starting grid as they begin to release onto the racetrack here. The first of the two headline divisions competing for five thousand big ones here this weekend presented by franklin motorsports look at the full outlap on the racetrack to warm the engines up which will give us time to run you through the lineup diego ramos the brazilian aboard the psl karting Bureau art snags what i believe to be either his second or third pole award on the 2023 pro national calendar uh he will start alongside rookie standout elio meza who was our pole winner back in houston and uh, a near winner in X30 and a winner in KA Senior to complete row one. Then you go back. Row number two, Blake Nash was a pole award winner here for the Scusa Pro Tour going the other direction a year ago. He lines up in the third spot, and we spoke with Harley Keeble aboard the Sodi cart. David asked him, of course, is there anything you can take away from these heats? He said, well, we're not taking away too much. The biggest thing is just being consistent on the results. You can't test too many different setups and potentially go backwards. Row three's got the reigning series champ, Mr. Seven-time. Ryan Norberg is fifth 
on the lineup. And alongside him, it'll be Braden Eves on the MPG Motorsports Kart Republic, who we just saw in action in KA Senior a few moments ago. Paulie Massimino in the MDR BJRLN cart with a decent qualifying effort. He starts along uh, veteran racer Austin Garrison, and that's Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed. Brandon Carr leads the championship point standings after a couple of consistent runs and podium finishes at both rounds of the season thus far. He lines up in the ninth seed. Alongside him, reigning OK senior FIA world champion Mateus Morgato, who is still looking for that elusive first X30 senior win of 2023. He was dominant at the Florida Winter Tour in the Rock senior class, but nothing in the IAMI power plants for Mateus. Joe Turney has been a winner at nearly every single American race weekend he started at this year, all but one. He's back in 11th alongside him, rookie Caleb Gaffaro in the BJR MDR outfit for the first time. Aiden Ingrata, ADT, and Alessandro Tulio on row seven. Aiden Fox rounds your top 15. We look to the flagman. No green that time by. Too early on the power for Diego Ramos, Randy. Not uh, not a clean enough start for our uh, starter, and they'll go one more time around. That's uh, that's three now. This will be their third try going by. Diego Ramos, uh, a little bit of a jump on the inside line over uh, Elio Meza. It's, uh, it gets even harder when you're, you're going by and you think you got a start, then it's a false start. You come by again, another false start. Uh, nerves get uh, start to come into play, a little anxiety. Uh, these guys need to get going. They need to get under green because the more false starts we have, so to speak, uh, the more I think we're apt to have some uh, – some attrition in these first couple of turns. So these guys need to get racing here pretty quick. Hopefully we can see some good formation as they uh, get up and line up around I-70 to head down the straight. Uh, we're looking for hopefully a start this time by for our pro X30 Pro Senior class. Well, uh, we go back outside the top 15. Last year's uh, double winner, Hayden Jones, with the Trinity Karting Group Kart Republic, was fastest in happy hour. He was 16th. But here is the green. We're underway down to turn one. And the inside line will get at least one. No, Meza, hard around the outside. He's going to get into second. Nash back to third. Keeble is fourth. Still side by side through turn number four and three and four. Braden Eves gets one over on Ryan Norberg to get into fifth. And there they go down the short shoot. Everybody cycles down to the low side to block. Eves goes high on Keeble. Norberg pulls alongside him. Sends it deep in the horseshoe, but Eves will get back clear. And it's no change into the cell tower hairpin for the very first time. All out front chasing Diego Ramos on that PSL carding. Factory beer alert. Up the hill we go for X30 Pro for the first time today. And into the green corner. Any move here? Nothing yet. They all stay on the low side. Single file. Ramos still trying to keep the field at bay to the infield hairpin. Great start for a fast qualifier Brazilian Diego Ramos as he is uh, leading by about four cart links right now. Oh, man, it just got wild there. Blake Nash taking over second. Eves gets the worst of it. He loses two or three spots. Massimino's going to go by. Keeble's on the high side as well. He's going to get shuffled back a little bit. Look at the rest of the pack there. That was going into the corner. Here's the run down the front stretch for the first time. Elio Meza goes low to block as he pounds the limiter. And Massimino getting one on Norberg, who crosses him over through one. And Ryan Norberg holds net even. Massimino trying again. Turn three. Can't do it. And it's going to bring Harley Keeble alongside who nearly gets him, but he's almost off the racetrack. And that'll bottle them all up as Eves now pulls alongside. Well, it's getting crazy there. Not, it's a wide racetrack, but still not wide enough sometimes. They were side by side. You get in the corner. You take the wrong line. And a lot of times unintentionally, you, you slide out. Next thing you know, the guy beside you is in the grass. And, you know, one thing leads to another and so on and so forth. It, it can always uh, haunt them later in the day if the two get together. But uh, things are clean right now in line. Uh, Diego Ramos still with a good clean start and running a good clean race right now. Third place there, Ryan Norberg going by on Elio Meza. The reigning champ has picked his way up here after falling to six off the start to avoid that chaos, and he's got himself in a great position here in heat number one. Still looking for that first win of 2023. Ryan Norberg, it feels weird to say it, but he has yet to get that first win of the season in all the racing that he's won over the last couple of years. It's been no more than about a couple of months since his last victory. His last one came all the way back at Trackhouse Motorplex in North Carolina for the IAMI USA Grand National Championship in October. And he is hungry to get that first win of 2023. He's right there on Blake Nash's bumper and Nash as well looking for his first career 
major U.S. win. Well, he's not going to be in the best spot as Norberg takes over second. And keep an eye on Braden Eves, who continues to close up the order as well. It's a five-cart breakaway. Massimino is sixth, and Joe Turney carving his way forward is seventh with Elio Meza defending just a tick from Eves. He knows he's got company. Here we go into the infield hairpin. Meza again blocks low. Eves has to go for two of them, and he gets it done as Nash really gets the push to the wayside back to fifth. Tyler McIntyre starting in 25th position, already advanced 11 spots. Ryan Norberg, now your new leader through the I-70 corner. Norberg, now the new leader. What a run by Norberg, starting back in fifth. He's slowly but surely uh, found his way to the front, and now a two-car breakaway with Diego Ramos. So Norberg got really uh, surprising a little bit. Wasn't as fast in qualifying as he wanted to be, but has certainly found the groove now. And he's actually got about two cart links over Ramos. Yeah, he's pulling away a little bit. Thanks to them battling behind. Braden Eves was equally quick, but he did not have the best navigation through the pack, it felt like, for the uh, MPG Motorsports machine. Here's fourth with Blake Nash under pressure from Paulie Massimino. And just as always, creeping his way up the pack. Round two winner from Houston, Joe Turney on that Chad Dawkins Racing Factory Kart Republic is sixth. Massimino can sense him there. He defended into the green corner, and Paulie Massimino is going to need to go now or risk Turney going. Here he comes, Joe Turney into the top five from 11th. He'll pick up another one as he goes by there in the infield hairpin. Just went purple with a 105-603. What a run early by Joe Turney as he's now closing in on that lead group. So Turney with a good run out there. Uh, Tyler McIntyre continues to climb. He started in 25th. He's up to 13th. He's trying to crack the top 10. But Ryan Norberg still leading the way his last lap, a 106.957. Turney the quickest on the racetrack right now with a 105.603. Turney running in fifth. Diego Ramos did pick up the pace a little bit last time by to close to Norberg, but Braden Eves was three tenths better than both of them. A 66.60 to Ryan Norberg, 66.95. It's been a while since Braden Neves has put on a superstar run. One of his most recent wins coming all the way back here at Newcastle Motorsports Park in stunning fashion with the Scusa Pro Tour back in 2017. Went from 17th on the grid in the main event to the lead and the win in a 70-driver main event field, which was unheard of. And while the last two years have been trying efforts for the MPG Motorsports uh, outfit, the last best run they had was back in 2021 at the Miami USA Grand National Championship with a third. He's in third now. He's tracking down the leader. Here comes Diego Ramos to go back to the point, and he'll take it away as the Brazilian leads them into turn one here at the halfway marker. And that falls right into the hands of Braden Neves. Now he is on the rear bumper of Ryan Nor Norberg. And he takes it right there. Eves is through to second. Braden Eves up another one. Norberg back to third. And Diego Ramos has company here arriving on the doorstep as they lost no time with that move in turn number three. He's definitely on the move and now closing in on Ramos. And we'll see if Eves can make his way around. It takes a peek. Can't quite do it there. And now side by side, uh, with uh, Ramos, he's trying to get back into that uh, second spot. Norberg getting back into second over uh, Braden Eves. Eves looked like you said. He took a look there, kind of went in deep, and then uh, really bottled his exit up. And while we've been focused on these three up front, they've spread apart. Welcome to the party, Joe Turney. He's caught his way up to fourth, and the winningest driver in the 2023 Pro National season has got his way closer and closer to the top three drivers. It looks like at the speed that Joe Turney's got, he will arrive before this one is said and done. Six complete, four to go. Diego Ramos on that red and white PSL karting Bureau Art leads them to turn number one. Norberg on the RPG Cosmic second. Eves on the MPG Kart Republic in third, and then fellow Kart Republic and Joe Turney back and forth. Eves, once you get past here, you see he's not caught back up to Norberg. We've heard from drivers it takes him half a lap to a full lap when you go offline, inside or outside, to fully clean the tires off with all the marbles, all the dirt, all the rocks that get pushed to the outside of the racing line. So he's got to kind of clean his stuff back up and then make another run with that bobble he had in that turn right there, the cell tower hairpin one lap ago. But Ryan Norberg didn't look super fast when he was out front. 
He looks better now as he starts to try and manage his pace, manage the race a little bit. These guys have to make these tires last through all three heat races after qualifying. It's four total sessions on the softer MG Yellow compound only used in the X30 Pro C, uh, Division and the Pro Shifter classes, whereas the K100s, the X30 Juniors, the Minis, the Micros, and the Masters, they have a harder compound. It lasts a little bit longer. This tire, a little bit faster, but it wears a whole lot quicker. They've got to manage that as much as they want to fight for the win in heat number one. You can't burn your stuff up and leave yourself like a sitting duck for heat number three with three laps to go, seven complete. Ramos the leader, the fastest on the racetrack that time. It wasn't Turney. It's the kid behind him, the rookie, Elio Meza on that Iron Rock Tony Kart P5. Meza just goes purple with a 105-109. It'll be two to go next time by. They're still chasing Diego Ramos, but Ryan Norberg is right there. Norberg to the inside. And uh, looks like makes the pass. And we've got uh, Eves. Braden Eves that uh, gets inside of Norberg. He gets the top spot. So slicing and dicing in that top three. And that allows Joe Turney and Elio Meza to close the gap. It's a five-car battle for the front. Well, with Eves narrow in that cell tower corner a couple laps ago that allowed Norberg to cross him up, he learned from that move and to put it right back on Ryan. Ryan passing Ramos, open the door. Turney there on Ra uh, Ramos up the hill. Here comes Norberg all the way to the inside on Braden Eves. Joe Turney to the high side trying to keep the momentum spooled up. And now Eves back to the lead. Ramos and Turney will freight train Norberg. He goes low. Here comes Ramos back to the lead. He'll bring Joe Turney with him all the way to second from 11th on the grid as Norberg gets the door. Slam shut by the rookie of Elio Meza in that black and chrome Iron Rock Motorsports Tony Kart. It's Diego Ramos with two laps to go who leads them up the short shoot. And Joe Turney right there here at the end of it. Joe Turney making the charge all the way back from 11th position uh, up to uh, second now, and he is trying to close in and make the move on that lead to spot. Diego Ramos has been up front most of the race, trying to hang on. He's got about a two-cart gap right now on the field, but a five-cart battle for that front. And uh, just looking here, uh, Tyler McIntyre, a 10-spot uh, advancement, started in 25th. He's up to 15th. Oh, I thought we were going to have a little battle for the lead there. We had a battle for third. Joe Turney looked like he would have had the opportunity on Ramos. He didn't take it. Elio Meza, the rookie standout, up to P3 as Ramos blocks low. Turney again goes high, sets the momentum up. Here we come to the white flag, Randy. One to go. We're side by side for the lead. T Ramos low. Turney high. Turney trying to get fully clear by turn one. Here they go. They're going to make contact and off the racetrack for Joe Turney. Ramos the leader. Turney's going to go all the way back to sixth or seventh. It's Diego Ramos and the rookie. Elio Meza into P2. Norberg P3. Eves P4. Here they go down the short shoot. Meza's got a block low. I got a little wild. Uh, track got a little narrow there in that first oh. turn. And oh, we're bumping and grinding a little more here. That's... Uh, that's, That's not going to bode well. Eves on Norberg sent it in. Norberg tried to close the door, and he drove into the back of Elio Meza in the contact. So now Eves to second. It's a big lead for the pole man, Diego Ramos, here in heat one. Pauli Massimino, where did he come from? How about the BJR MDR driver? Up to third there on that black uh, and white and blue machine. Meza still fourth, hanging on for dear life. Look at the rest of the pack all there. Blake Nash is back in it. Here is Aiden Ingrata as well. As they go up the hill, the top three are safe. This this group is crazy. Blake Nash, what a move on the inside of Norberg. He'll shuffle him back. And at the line, Diego Ramos will pick up the Heat 1 win in X30 Pro. Eves, Massimino, and look at this across the stripe. Norberg and Turney working together on the outside. They go 7th and 8th, both having led. Turney goes from the lead at the final lap to 8th at the drop of the checker in a crazy ending to heat number one. My goodness, Randy, what a finish in X30 Pro. That was a wild one. Ramos, who wasn't necessarily the fastest the whole race, but he was the cleanest. Stayed out of trouble, and behind him, it was crazy. Braden Eve finishes second. Pauli Massimino will finish third. Finishing in fourth, Elio Meza. Blake Nash, fifth. Aiden Ingrata, sixth, coming from 13th starting position. Ryan Norberg, who had led part of the way, back to seventh. Joe Turney, also near the front. He gets shuffled back to eighth. Math, Matthias uh, Morgado finishes ninth. Coming up nine spots from a 19th starting position, Cooper Shipman finishes in the top ten. Then it's Hayden Jones, also good advancement for Hayden Jones. Uh, so he finishes in seventh. 
or Let, I'm sorry, in 12th. Let's take a look back at what just happened to Joe Turney. Here is the look coming to the white flag here. Sends it around the outside. Ramos didn't want to give either. Hop the curb. And then from there, through the dirt, gets dirt on the tires, goes back to six. Blake Nash going by him there, forcing him by in turn number three as well. And then it was kind of all over here as we watch the rest of the final lap on through. Mesa getting into second. And then this move right here, let's look at this into the horseshoe. Braden Neves sending it on Ryan Norberg. And the contact sends Norberg into Mesa. And Eves gets two spots out of it. So an aggressive move from Braden Neves, an aggressive move from Diego Ramos. We'll see what the officials say. It was elbows up racing. No doubt about that here to round this one off, Randy. But my goodness, what a performance. Diego Ramos surviving it all from the pole. It's hard to do. We've got, again, nearly 15 factory-level backed efforts in the X30 Pro class in 2023, and everyone under pressure to give them results. And this is what happens when these guys get paid to try and put themselves on the box. Well, I think you have a situation where we had some drivers yesterday that were fast but just did not come and together in qualifying. Yeah, there's the there's the two wide and the bumping and grinding on that final lap, and there was plenty of it. And here's that run to the line. You could see it again back behind the leaders as they went through this group. Blake Nash with that move. Aiden Ingrata, what an improvement on the field as well to make up all those spots to get himself in a, a good ending. And Hayden Jones getting there. Last year's double winner on that TKG Kart Republic picking up some time so ka master or uh sorry ka uh, junior no ka master Masters. indeed is uh now getting set to go green presented by speed concepts racing as there's a look over in the scale line and randy why don't you take us through our starting lineup here in this one front row starters fast qualifier out of arlington heights illinois laurentia mardan starting in second will be mike rollison in row two it's nikki coelho and adam Crepin. row three we got mario barrios and Mar martin stone in row four it's danilo romalo and alex dancho Row 5, Scott Cobb and Miguel Mir. In row 6, it's Tim Meyer and Tyler Prestel. Row 7, Mingan Zhu and Jose Eduardo de la, de la Garza. In row 8, it's Pete Vetter and Scott Carapaletti. Row 9, Alfonso Santiago and Kim Carapaletti. And Ariel Castro and Caleb Lanuski round out your 20 starters in the K100 Masters. Brought to you by Speed Concepts. Coming down the hill towards I-70, looking for a start next time by... And Laurentia Mardan, fast qualifier yesterday. He's he's been running this series really since it started back in 2013. One of the uh, one of the real regulars of the U.S. Pro Kart Series, and just as strong as he ever was. Now leading him down for a start, Mike Rollison, who's been strong all year. He's on that outside of the front row, and a good formation for these 20 drivers. We should see a start as they come down the hill. Yeah, here we go, coming to the line for the K Masters. As uh, the veterans, the 30 and over division uh, here, getting set to have some fun and get after it. Laurentia Mardan, Mike Rollison, side by side, green flag in the air. We're racing down to turn number one. How can the captain of the Rollison Performance Group powerhouse do? He'll survive turn one from the outside and get into second as Adam Kreppen, who was right with him all the way through in Houston, gets into third as he gets by on Nicky Coelho. Good start again for uh, Laurentia Mardan and Rollison, a, a good clean start from the outside. As he holds down the second spot. Adam Kreppen shuffles up to third around Coelho. And Mario Barros, I believe, is in fifth. But uh, everybody's staying in line. Good, clean start. We're working our way halfway through this first lap. And Laurentia Mardan, about a two-cart length advantage over Mike Rollison as we work our way through our uh, heat races. Heat races number one. We've got a few more to go yet before our lunch break. And we'll be back with our second and third group of heat races today. But X, or KA100 Masters, uh, sponsored by Speed Concepts, on the track at this time as they head up towards I-70. Laurentio Mardan leads the way over Mike Rollison. Yeah, Laurentio Mardan by a car length through the I-70 hairpin here. Spoke with the Technocart USA uh, uh, team owner here last night. It's a small effort for the Technocart boys, just himself and one junior driver and his father, a very old school style pit set up with a trailer and two pop-up canopies as we see a pass further back with Barrios going by on Coelho. But Lorenzo Mardan proven one of the beauties of this sport is that at the end of the day, you do have these factory backed efforts, but the equipment all the way through the single manufacturer classes you can buy it right off the showroom shelf and take it in the back of your pickup truck. And if you know what you're doing on what setup adjustments to make, you can go lead at the highest level here in North America. And he's doing that right now, even though, again, he's got the experience. Don't get me wrong. Multi-time National Team USA and Team Romania member and multi-time national winner. He's got the experience. 
but he's just, uh, again, a nice layman setup here, if you will, this weekend, Randy. Three-card breakaway for the top spots with uh, Mardan, Rollison, and Kreppen. About a second advantage over Nicky Coelho and Mario Berrios. So a good, clean run by those top three. They're behaving themselves, not racing each other just yet. Coelho and Mario Berrios back in fourth and fifth. <clears throat> then a little further back, it's Danilo Romillo, uh, Martin Stone, Alex Doncho, Miguel Mir, and Scott Kopp. That's your top ten running order as we head down for one more lap in the books. No changes to the front. A three-card breakaway now a little bit further. Uh, going purple in the pack, uh, seventh position, Miguel Mir, a, a 111.065. So he's uh, trying to close in a little bit, but he's in that second group. As we look now, we see those leaders uh, heading into uh, the cell phone area, the, the cell tower area, and Lorenzo Mardan is still the leader, bringing that group of Mike Rollison and Adam Kreppen along with him. Now Krep, uh back Barrios. further. Yeah, Barrios. Oh, Coelho off the racetrack coming out of the cell tower. So Mario Barrios getting his elbows up a little bit as he kind of shoved him a little wide. Look at Kreppen. How about that on Mike Rollison? Adam Kreppen up to second there on that green and white Tony card. Good move by Adam Kreppen. Slips around Rollison. Rollison gave him the space. These guys know they've got to just keep it clean in these heat races and have a good finish. But I think they don't want to race too much because Mardan has not missed any of his uh, any of his spots, let's say. He's run a clean race so far. Strong. He's going to be, he can be hard to beat. They're trying to draft up to him, but he's actually keeping a gap. It's, uh, it's about a cart length now. Kreppen closing in a little bit. Uh, Danilo Romalo, a fast lap, a 110-577. He turns purple the last lap. He's trying to close in on third place. Rollison got a little bit of a gap there to do that. But right now, Mardan is trying to hold off Adam Kreppen, who's moved up to second. Rollison closes back in, but Kreppen right on the rear bumper of Lorancho Mardan as they head down to the cell tower area and head back our way around the green corner coming up here shortly. But Lorancho Mardan leading every lap Fast qualifier, but Adam Kreppen starting back in the uh, fourth position has moved up to second and wants to see if he can take a peek at that top spot. Yeah, he's uh, getting closer and closer. Laurentiu Mardan has not seen a challenge for the lead just yet here in heat number one. And keep your eye again on the reigning series champion Danilo Romalo on that black and orange Sodi for the PK Sports North America camp. He's creeping up on this group. He was fastest last time. He's faster again this time. He's a car length away from Mike Rollison as they come down the front stretch. Rollison pushing on Adam Kreppen. Four down, six to go. Kreppen all the way up to half a car length away from Lorenzo Mardan at the line. And Danilo Romalo continues to be the fastest car in the racetrack, and he's closed in to the point he's at the rear bumper of Mike Rollison. So Romalo, who started back in seventh, is now in that lead group trying to challenge for that top spot. Laurentia Mardan, not much breathing room. It's inches now between him and Adam Kreppen. But right now, Kreppen seems content, holding his line in second to the inside, trying to get around Rollison, and Danilo Romalo makes the pass. Romalo to third, Rollison back to fourth. They lose about three cart lengths over second spot, Adam Kreppen. And now side by side, Kreppen to the inside, makes the pass. Around the green corner, headed to I-70 now. And now they're side by side one more time, but it's Kreppen with the lead. They come around to I-70 and head back up that long straight. Kreppen with a two-cart length advantage over Mardan. Uh, Romalo and Rollison, that's your top four. And through the I-70 corner and down the long straight, and it's Kreppen by a cart length over Laurentio Mardan. Yeah, Adam Kreppen here now going to have Mardan pushing him down the front straight. A white cross flag shown. That's halfway in, halfway home. Five laps down, five to go. And Adam Kreppen... Laurentiu Mardan, Danilo Romalo, Mike Rollison. They've still got, even with the battling, about a second back to Martin Stone and Miguel Mir, who are uh, uh, back up a couple spots. Mir up five from his starting position at 10th. Uh, but if they battle more, that next group could get there. But look at the gap already for Adam Kreppen on the Gillard. My goodness, he's pulled a couple car lengths on Laurentiu Mardan in the most technical section of the racetrack, coming out at turn four through that horseshoe. It's the least draft dependent. It's really where you get to see these guys flex their muscle, or especially if they're running a gear ratio with a little more bottom end speed is what a send on the inside for Danilo Romalo. He locked the brakes up. We was full on sideways right there, Randy. Yeah, good move on the inside and held his line. Didn't uh, knock anybody out of the way. It was a good, clean pass. Romalo now trying to chase down Adam Kreppen. 
Kreppen was actually two tenths of a second quicker than the rest of the field on that last lap, and he continues to stretch it out. So I think that Romalo said, look, if we're going to catch Kreppen, i got to get around uh, uh, Rollison and close in on Kreppen. So he did, and now actually Rollison has gotten around uh, Mardan, and Mardan all the way back to fourth leader for most of the way, but now Mardan's finding himself back in fourth position, and Martin Stone moving up uh, now to fifth. He's closing in on Mardan, so Mardan now is uh, at risk of losing a couple more spots. Martin Stone and Mario Barros, uh, fifth and sixth through the top ten. Miguel Mir, Nicky Coelho, Tim Meyer, and Alex Dacho. But Adam Kreppen now with about a five-car length advantage over Danilo Armalo. Well, with Adam Kreppen uh, getting that birth of a, uh, or gift of a bit of a gap over the rest of the pack here, let's go down to pit lane to hear from our top qualifier and heat one winner. It wasn't easy, but Diego Ramos pulled it off, and he's standing by with Alexander Searle. Alex? Thanks, Sandra. Yeah, like you said, it wasn't easy. I mean, the first half of that race was pretty calm. Halfway through, it all kicked off. You and Ryan got into it there a little bit, just battling. You and a few other drivers started battling together. I mean, after about halfway through, you kind of fell back, went back to the lead. You and Turney side by side on the last lap. I mean, just describe the race to me. Yeah, for sure the race was difficult. Uh, staying in the front is always hard because you don't have draft. Uh, was, you are the first one to get the doors in the track. And we try work a little bit together, me and Norbeck, but the turtles start catching us a little bit, and then we start in f fight. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, tell me, you mentioned the dirt. You are telling me before the interview how difficult it is to lead around this place. I mean, how hard is it with the dirt being the first guy to get there? Oh, for sure. It's really hard because you don't know where is the dirt. When you pass, you turn the dirt and then you go wide. wide. Uh, but yeah, we, we did a good job. Uh, won the race and let's keep pushing. Thanks, Diego. Good luck. Thank you. There you go from Diego Ramos. Thank you to Alexander Searle for that little bit of intel of what it's like for Diego. And he mentioned again, they were working together. The guys started catching back up, and they kind of had to go. Uh, as much as you want to break away in a two-car draft here, it doesn't always pan out. We go from Diego Ramos here from another driver who really had to work through that chaos to get himself up the order. How about a third-place heat result for Pauli Massimino? It's not been the best of years for 2023. It's been a trying one, but this weekend starting off strong for the North Carolina driver. David. Pauli Massimino, you were kind of, uh, oh, where did he come from? Uh, you know, everyone else was battling up at the front, and then you pull a podium out of that in the first heat race. Describe your race for me. Yeah, the race was pretty good. Um, just kind of stay, stayed calm in the beginning. Uh, definitely feel like we're missing a little bit of pace um, compared to some other people out there. So we need to go back and, and work on some things. But like I said, I just stayed calm. I knew they were going to get crazy at the end. So just kind of put myself in the right spot and got a little lucky. Well, you mentioned that X30 always seems to be elbows out, contact, especially with the competition level as high as it is. What can you do in these next two heats to stay up in that good position? Survive. That's it. There you go, Xander. Survival of the fittest. All right, Paulie Massimino. Never uh, too many words, but definitely you get the message from him. Survive. The idea of it. We saw that one was crazy. This race still has been a little more tame here, Randy. You've been keeping an eye on it. Adam Kreppen, he hasn't really seen much of a challenge. They battled behind him enough, and he's put good laps together. That gap is a good half second coming to the white flag here. He's taken advantage of the battle behind him, and it's allowed. As you see now, they're side by side coming down the straight as Rollison tries to get around uh, <clears throat> Romalo and does. So Rollison back to second. He's going to try to put a final charge on. But with just two laps to go, it's going to be tough because Greppen is now gapped at about, uh, looks like about a second over the field, about a half a second over uh, uh, Laurentio Mardan. So uh, Rollison, Mardan, uh, they're all trying to close in on Greppen. And Mardan has closed a little bit. This is actually the final lap, so he's going to run out of time, I think. But Laurentio Mardan, he was uh, purple on that last lap, so he found something on that last uh, lap to close in and get around uh, third spot, uh, Romalo. And now Mardan trying to close in. Don't know if he's going to have enough time. They uh, round the final turn, the green corner, and head up to I-70. Does Laracho Mardan have enough to close in on Crepin? He's drafting up. I don't think he's going to be close enough to make a move. I don't know. He's awfully close. Man, where did that horsepower come from? And down one final time for the checkered flag. Not going to quite be able to do it. But a good run back by Laracho Mardan to finish second. Adam Kreppen with a strong charge. Your winner, a Mardan second, finishing in third. 
is Mario Berrios. Danilo Romalo finishes fourth. Mike Rollison fifth through the top ten. Miguel Mayer finishes sixth, followed by Nicky Coelho, Tim Meyer, Alex Doncho, and Scott Kopp. Your winner in a strong run, taking the lead about midway and winning by about two-tenths of a second over Laurentia Mardan. Your winner, Adam Kreppen in KA100 Masters, brought to you by Speed Concepts. Yeah, there you go. As uh, Randy went through the lineup, you can see again how they ended up in the division. Adam Kreppen, a, a smooth heat race, very opposite of what we saw in X30 Pro. But don't worry, there's more action coming your way. We go to some of the young guns with KA Jr. and Micro Swift still to roll before the Pro Shifter class. Before we get to all that, though, another word from our partners, and we'll be back with more action for the U.S. Pro Card Series live from Newcastle Motorsports Park. You're watching Kart Chaser. Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. We're based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. Welcome back to Newcastle Motorsports Park as KA100 Jr. Heats uh, Groups A and B coming together, presented by BBS Race Engines, getting set to go green here on the racetrack. It is uh, Fernando Luque on that Super Tune USA Tony Kart that got the overall pull award in qualifying. Second overall and first of Group B, Austin Olds on the MPG Motorsports Kart Republic. Isaac Melkut, the privateer aboard the Gillard chassis, rolls off in third. Home t uh, uh, Midwestern kid getting set to go on the inside of Sebastian Garzon's Orsolon Racing Tony Kart. Max Weiland and Ernesto Rivera will make up row number three. We are on the power now, and we are underway. Down to turn number one, Fernando Luque leads the field through the first corner. Can all the young guns make it through? 11 to 15 years old on your screen, and they've survived turn one, turn two, turn three looks okay. Turn four might be a bit of a trouble spot if they're still side by side further back, but for the most part, we're single file as we go to the horseshoe for the very first time. Down to the inside, Isaac Melkett defending from that Orsalone Tony car to Sebastian Garzon, who stuffs him in the horseshoe. Sebastian Garzon up to third, but out in front. Fernando Luque as Malkit back on Garzon. Rivera now alongside. Not enough. It's given the leaders a big breakaway. Big opportunity already here, Randy, for Austin Olds on the MPG Kart Republic and for the race leader as well to get further away in Fernando Luque on that green and white Tony Kart. You know, watch these kids in, in happy hour and qualifying yesterday, and they were so close. Now you see a gap now, but it's only because that second group is doing some racing back and forth. But that lead pack of two, uh, Luque and looks like Luque and Olds, have, have checked out quite a bit. Battle for third there with Malkwit as we cross the line now for lap uh, number two. And we'll see what we uh, have as they cross the line here. Uh, Luque, still your leader. Austin Olds, Sebastian Garzon runs third. Isaac Malkwit, Ernesto Rivera up to uh, fifth. And Jackson Wolney, Anthony Martella. 
Max Whelan, Braden Zervis, and Landon Skinner. That's your top ten in the early going with one lap in the books. But fast qualifier out of Mexico City, Fernando Luque leads the way. But Austin Olds driving a smart race right now, just staying in that draft. Yeah, he's just riding right there behind Luque coming out of the cell tower corner. Fernando Luque uh, leading here. He's a, both drivers well into the championship chase here. They've had a consistent run in the opening couple of rounds. So, they're looking to get some major points. And, again, just like we mentioned in the mini class, Austin Olds is in the driver's seat right now. He's controlling whether or not we're going to battle for the lead or uh, if we're going to have a runaway. Unfortunately, as he looks back there, Sebastian Garzon in that bright yellow helmet on the Orsolan Racing Tony cart is closing in even with the two working together. So if I'm Austin Olds, I'd wait probably maybe a little bit more, and then I'd go to the lead because here it is. There we go, seeing that they're not breaking away. It's not going to work. He's got to get out in front and try to drive away on his own. Luke K, not fast enough to lead them away from the field as Garzon pulls up. Smart move by Austin Olds. We'll see if he can break away a little bit now. And Sebastian Garzon's wasting no time. He gets around uh, Luke K. He's up to second. Uh, Garzon just went purple the last lap, a 110-173. So he is the fastest cart in the racetrack. And he sneaks inside of Austin Olds and makes the pass on the lead. So all the way up to the top now, Sebastian Garzon is taking the lead. Uh, Olds and, uh, and uh, Luque third. And now that second group with uh, Malquit and Rivera has closed in. It'll be a five-card battle now as they're staying in line and closing in on that lead group as that front group starts to race each other. Yeah, they are closing in there to make it a five-car party. This will help some more. How about Austin Olds with a little send down the inside to retake the lead? So it's Olds on the red and white MPG machine. Garzon on that bright yellow helmet and the Orsolo and Tony Kart second. Now going back to the lead, Luque behind him. Then the, the purple and white of Ernesto Rivera is about to be third. As he's side-by-side -side with Olds, he'll get clear. And Isaac Malkut, the little guy there at the back on the uh, all-black helmet, and red and black go-kart is up to fourth as Olds goes from first back to fifth in one straight away. Again, when we looked at these guys in qualifying and happy hour, they were so, so close. And it shows right here. When they race, the lead group, if they're in line, is going to check out a little bit. But Isaac Mockwood, who's been lurking back in fifth position, now up to third. He's got a little bit of clean racetrack, and he'll try to close in on Luque. But Sebastian Garzon... Uh, trying to check out a little bit. I don't think there'll be any checking out because there's about seven or eight drivers now that are so equal, and if they stay in line, they're going to kind of like a slinky. That slinky's going to get a lot tighter, and we'll see some more racing for that top spot here before long. Yeah, we definitely will see, I think, even more uh, pulling up now as we've got tagging onto the train. Jackson Wolney is there. Braden Zerves is there. Landon Skinner has also arrived there. Landon Skinner up even to seventh as Olds going by Rivera back for fourth. Malkit now going to get a little bit of a gap from third on back. And it's Sebastian Garzon over Fernando Luque. Garzon, the Colombian, uh, leading the way here based out of Aventura, Florida. And Luque back by him in one. Fernando Luque from Mexico showing the way through turn number three as side-by-side -side back behind Olds versus Skinner. Olds gets it back in three. All the while, it just lets these guys get further away. Isaac Mockwood slips up into second around uh, Garzon. So Mockwood now to try to chase down Luque. Isaac Mockwood on the charge. A couple other movers, Oliver Weldon up five spots, as well as Justin Music. Both drivers advancing five spots to 10th and 11th position. So those drivers on the move. Landon Skinner just goes purple the last lap with a 109.755. Side by side there into the green corner. Garzone getting through on Isaac Malkit once again. So he takes that second spot back. Malkit gets into the back of him there. Maybe a little bit unintentional, but it messed them both up. And here comes the RPG teammates. Ernesto Rivera looks back to Jackson Wool. He says, yeah, it's go time. Follow me. It, it, not close enough there. Ernesto Rivera looking to go up to third. Will he have enough of a run at turn one? I don't think he will. Malkut's going to still be in the toe. It's Luque, Garzon, Malkut, Rivera, Jackson, Wolney. Look at Malkut, last second at the line to go to second. He caught him off guard, and he'll take the spot away at the halfway mark. I like that move by Malkut because he didn't show his hand too early. He waited, and just at that last second, got the right amount of draft, but he's going to lose. Oh, he doesn't lose the spot again. He almost did. But, oh, uh, off nice the racetrack move. for Rivera. Look at that. Way wide for Ernesto. Oh, man. He was trying to go by on Malkit, like you said. Malkit held that third spot after losing second right back to Garzon. 
and Ernesto Rivera just had no racetrack left. He drops all the way outside the top ten. Not good news for your championship contender in Ernesto Rivera right there. It is good news for Fernando Luque and Sebastian Garzon because those two now have checked out a little bit. Good battle out there for third, though, as Rivera, try, or uh, was Walney, I believe, tries to get around Malkwood. Yeah, Jackson Walney trying to get around Malka. Now he's got Austin Olds back on him again. Landon Skinner right there. Look at these two up front, Sebastian Garzon and Fernando Luque. Garzon, you saw the hand signal. He said, let's get away from everybody. Olds now going to go by on Woolney. He'll bring Skinner with him. Landon Skinner is now up four spots, I believe, to either fifth or sixth on the racetrack. And down the line we go. Malka in no man's land in third. Olds fourth, Skinner fifth, Woolney. Zerves, Weldon up seven. Rivera back to ninth there at the stripe. And Justin Music in 10th here with four laps to go. Great battle out there by these kids. They're putting on a heck of a show. And uh, Sebastian Garzon still leads the way with Fernando Luque now second. Those two trying to move out just a little bit, but Isaac Malkwood still has him in his sights. And that second group right now, Austin Olds, Landon Skinner, Jackson Wolney, they're in line and will need to stay in line if they have any hope of catching that lead group as we wind this heat race down. Malkwood now kind of out on an island a little bit as he's got about 10 cart lengths behind him and about five in front of him of nothing but clean air. But he's going to have to get a little closer, I think, to get a toe with that lead group to catch back up. It could be a two-card battle if things don't change. Yeah, it, they need to uh, really get going. This, four, this second group of the five of them looks like it's kind of calmed down for now. I think Landon Skinner's content to follow Austin Olds if it works. With three laps to go, time is of the essence, though. They cannot afford another pass further back if they want to keep the leaders within shouting distance. And Isaac Malkett needs a good lap. He got a decent one. He held the gap even. Olds and Skinner a tenth quicker that time by. As they come through three and four, that group behind there battling at the end of it. That was, uh, I believe, Oliver Weldon getting around Brayton Zerves. He takes over seventh, but Landon Skinner there on the bright white helmet for the Allen Rudolph Racing Academy Tony Kart. Behind Austin Olds is uh, MPG Kart Republic. Fourth and fifth, they're catching up to Malkit. They'll get up to third, and they've got an outside chance to get into the lead. They need just a little bit more battling for the top spot. And Ernest, Ernesto Rivera, who a few laps ago had that off-track excursion, Trying to gain some of that ground back. He's back up to ninth. Just went purple with a 109.561. We'll see if he can gain a couple of spots before this one's over. But certainly it's going to hurt him overall today because he's going to have a not the finish he was hoping for in this first heat race. But it's still Garzon and Luque with a nice gap. It'll be two to go next time by. And Isaac Malkwood has company in third as Austin Olds and Landon Skinner are closing in. Yeah, here they come. Watch this. Big run coming for Austin Olds down the straightaway. Big push from Skinner. Is it enough to get there? Malka thought it was, so he blocks low. Olds had to follow as the two-to-go signal comes out, and this is going to hurt the progress towards the lead, but it'll make it just an all-out dogfight for third going to the end because Malkit knew they were coming. He heard the engines spooling up behind him. Look at this run here. Olds saying, come on, man, let's go forward, and Malkit's like, I want to go forward too, but they got to decide who gets to lead them forward as we saw Jackson Wolney already splitting up. He gets by on Skinner, and into the cell tower. Now Olds is going to go. He takes over third. Wolney's going to go to fourth. Malkut back to fifth, and oh, that was a little bit dicey right there, Randy. Kind of chopped the nose off of Landon Skinner. That could have got ugly quick, but everybody recovered. So on their toes, I mean, that was that was close. I thought we were going to have a little sideways action there, but everybody kind of gathered it back up. But look at the gap now as we got a pass for third. Looks like uh, Austin Olds and Landon Skinner going at it, but a big gap now from first and second back to third. Yeah, Olds and Wolney continue to fight there for third and fourth while the leaders, look at this, Oliver Weldon, he got punted to the wayside and he's all the way off the racetrack, was trying to defend it down low. Let's watch the battle for the win though here on this final lap as now it's going to turn up. Sebastian Garzon defending from Fernando Luque who's been a loyal pusher for the second half of this heat race here. Again, this is only half the field and what all these kids got to understand, Randy, as we mentioned in KA Senior, while they've got split heats, all 52 will go to the main. That's not the case for KA Junior. They've got 60 in total. 10 drivers will not make the top 50 to go to the main event on Sunday afternoon. So they've got to be smart. They can't afford any totally bad heat race. A 30th place result, that'll be an average of a 58th or 60th when you combine them all. So it's good right now that the top guys are, are racing. It's fun for us, but they've got to keep that. Again, like we heard from Harley Keeble, consistency. Garzone. 
blocking low. Luke K not taking too many unnecessary risks. Over, under. He'll set him up for a slingshot run coming to the front straight away. Luke K second. Garzon first there, headed up the hill. Down into I-70 corner, going wide, trying the over and under. Can he do it? Luke K to the inside. Not going to do it there. And now protecting low is Garzon. Down the front straight one last time. Luke K tries to dip low. Now he goes high, side by side across the stripe. And it's going to be... Sebastian Garzon by, it looks like, about uh, six, six thousands. thousands. Six thousands. Luke K, he did not get the best exit out of that I-70 hairpin, and it cost him coming to the line just that last little bit. Jackson Wolney edges out Austin Olds. He gets third. There's a look further back as the top ten come back up here again. Uh, from Olds to Rivera, Skinner, Music, and seventh, Malkut eighth, Zerves ninth, Weldon went from fifth all the way back to the tenth spot there at the end. And everyone survived it. So it's all good in KA Junior Groups A and B. C and D will be coming up next here. Let's go to another break. We'll come back with more. Coming to the green for Group C and D and K uh, uh, Junior here, presented by BBS Race Engines and other MPG Motorsports Kart Republic on the inside. It's Landon Boer, and he'll lead them to green as they go down to turn number one here, Randy. Through turn one, pretty clean. We've got a couple high nipping the edges of the grass, but everybody stays on track, headed in the right direction. And uh, Caleb Charter is your early leader. The uh, 873 is Stephen Miller, a good, uh, good start from the outside. Holds down second spot. Caleb Tarter and Stephen Miller already with about a three-cart length gap over the field early in this first lap. Uh, Caleb Tarter leading the way. Stephen Miller. Diego Guillo. Gu Diego Guillo. Gu Gu <laughs> Thanks, Sander. <laughs> I got you, Randy. Yeah, my mistake on Landon Boer. I apologize there. Fellow MPG driver, it's Caleb Tarter indeed who leads there. Stephen Miller on the Cart Republic in second in the blue suit. And then you've got that uh, chrome and black and white Iron Rock Motorsports machine of Diego Guillo in third on the 848. Look at that red and yellow Giller. That's the team GWR of uh, entry of Chase Puscalia as for the lead. Stephen Miller wants to take the top spot away, and he will. New leader coming to the uh, end of lap number one as we'll bring the leaderboard up and see where they all stack up at the end of the first lap. Stephen Miller, your leader through the end of the long pond straight away. Stephen Miller, Caleb Tarter runs second. Diego Gouet runs third. Chase Buscala, Buscaglia. Buscaglia is, oh, around Gons Turner-Brown. 
Turner Brown on that speed. Concepts raising red speed and contact there inside the top 10. He was seventh between himself, Quentin, McF uh, Quentin McPherson, and Mayor DeHonor, and all coming together. That was a wild ending to lap number one and going into turn uh, lap number two. It's now kind of spaced out the top four and sixth on back as well as a gap. So it's Miller over Tartar. And then back you go to Gio and Buscalia with a little gap further away to Peyton Westcott there in position number five. Quentin McPherson, Turner Brown, Mayor Dianer, Luis Alessandro Umana, and Enzo Vidmantien uh, round out your top ten, but they're all chasing Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller on the charge. Good start from the outside. Uh, moves up to that top spot. Caleb Tartar uh, runs in second. And Diego Gio runs in third. But that's uh, those top four, Chase Pascalia in fourth. They have broken away from the rest of the field by about a second. Peyton Westcott holds down that second group. they are two laps in the books now. And going purple, Chase Pascalia with a 109-848. Uh, going purple in that lead group. He's in fourth, but closing in ever so slightly on those top three. Stephen Miller now closely pursued by Caleb Tarter for those top two spots as they work the back part of the race circuit now. And we'll start working their way back towards the tower as they uh, go around the, uh, the cell tower area and then head back down over the hill to that nice left hand at 90 degree. A good gap between Basagli in fourth and Peyton Westcott, who currently runs fifth. So uh, those top four right now with about, uh, looks like about uh, a 1.2, 1.3 second advantage over the field. Another pass made by Diego Guillo. He going, he's gone back to third as Buscalia went to third, then lost the spot just as quickly in about half a lap. So out of the final turn. We'll come and put three down, seven laps to go. This time by Stephen Miller continuing to lead here over Caleb Tarter, Gio, and Chase Puscalia through turn number one. Another uh, lap in the books for Stephen Miller out front. The, the update there is Peyton Westcott making up any time as the Nash Motorsports EOS cart rides in fifth with Mayor Dionor and right there in sixth. She did not lost a tenth of a second to the leaders. As long as they stay single file in this formation with Stephen Miller leading the way, this could be the only four drivers with a shot at the seat race win. And it sounds early to say that. Only got three laps completed, seven still to go. But again, they are the fastest drivers. Nobody quicker further down the order. And what shows right now is that, and I'll probably jinx it, they'll probably be passing as soon as I say this, but everybody seems content where they are in that league group right now, staying in line with those top four. And they are a little bit quicker. If they stay in line, I think they can gap far enough where with a few laps to go, It'll be up to them to settle it. And currently, Jace Basagli in fourth remains the fastest card in the track. In fact, the only driver to get into the 109 second bracket. So those top four slowly but surely checking away from the rest of the field. And that will uh, make it very difficult for Peyton Westcott and Mayor Dianer, Dianerin to, uh, to catch up to that uh, lead group. Don't see it happening. A Gio of 109.534, Diego Gio is uh, now the quickest as he runs third, but Stephen Miller and Caleb Tarter knows the tail in those top two spots, and everybody, again, that lead group, seeming content to stay just where they are in line and continuing to gap the second group. Let's go side-by-side side down to uh, pit lane. It was a wild race for Joe Turney. From the lead to off the racetrack, you heard from Diego Ramos, not too much about the incident. I'm curious what Alexander Searles found down on pit lane. Alex? Thanks, Andrew. Joe, I mean... Pretty solid race. You starting P11. I'm sure you'll take a P6, but considering. Yeah, man. Pretty solid race for you overall. X30 Pro being, you know, kind of a, the characteristics being pretty chaotic. Is there any way to avoid that around this racetrack? No, not really. I mean, like, uh, the first guy can't get away, and then everyone's trying to get to the first guy, but then when people close, it, it's, it, it checks the race up. Um, so I think uh, that one was pretty messy then, but I don't think it will get much better through the week. All right, go. Thank you. 
Apologies about a little bit of technical difficulties there on that first answer. But again, you heard it from Joe Turney. He's like, I don't think it's going to get any better. We've got too many good guys on too big of a racetrack to keep everybody together. And it's just going to stay pretty wild and pretty gnarly. And we're seeing that again here in the 100cc classes, even less horsepower. This is a 22 horsepower restricted engine for the junior drivers from ages 11 to 15 years old. Uh, compared to the X30 Pros, they're unrestricted at 30 horsepower. And even them, again, saying they can't break away. Nobody able to have an edge, even if you are faster. There's too many guys that are fast enough and too big of an advantage of the draft at this 1.1 mile racetrack here around Newcastle Motorsports Park. Now, Randy, we said a few laps ago, Peyton Westcott, Mayor Dion Ryan were not making up time. They have made up time now as they've gotten their act together, and it looks like they've picked up even more that time. Uh, actually, about even, a 69.67 uh, to a 69.67 for the lead. In fact, they were almost identical to the leaders, but they're not losing, and they're only 1.3 to 1.5 seconds away. At that kind of gap, you only need about maybe three to four passes, Randy. I think they'll be ready to pounce if that lead group does start racing in the next lap or two. That would allow them to close in. So if these guys wait till the, the two to go. I, I don't. I don't see it. I could be wrong, but I just don't see that gap diminishing that quickly, unless the uh, the top four really start racing each other pretty soon. And that could very well happen. If you're Caleb Tarter or Chase Basaglia, you probably aren't settled right now in third or fourth. You probably need to realize you need to make a move. And they do. It looks like Miller just made the pass around uh, uh, Gio to take over that top spot. Yeah, he did again. So now Stephen Miller, having learned a little bit from Diego Gio for the last lap or so, uh, wants to uh, lead the most laps in this one and, and see if maybe, just maybe, he can break a little further away. Now, they didn't really lose any time in the past with Buscalia and Tartar also changing spots. It wouldn't be the best total lap time, but all things considered, they were still quicker than Mayor Dionorin and Peyton Westcott in fifth and sixth. The gap goes from 1.5 to 1.9. So you can see the lap times there, the best on the session as they cycle through now. But with three to go, it's starting to heat up. How about that? Chase Buscalli on that red and yellow Gillard going to second. Gio on the chrome and black Tony Cart there for Iron Rock Motorsports back to third. And now look at Tartar almost alongside there for that spot as well, Randy. And all the while, Stephen Miller says, have at it, fellas, because I'm gone. You guys uh, you can uh, battle all you want, but right now he's got a half a second on that second group. So Stephen Miller, it'll be two to go next time by, wants him to keep racing. If they do, then it's his to lose. I think Stephen Miller right now has a big advantage on the field. Yeah, I mean, he, he definitely uh, is in a good spot, but this would have been a better spot to be coming to the checkered flag. He's not fully out of the dark just yet. You can see again fifth and sixth at the end of the screen trying to get there. Here comes the pack. Closing in, side by side at the line. Gio going around Buscalia to take back second, and it opens it up for Miller. Just as they got almost close enough, they swap spots again. And uh, every time you pass, it's a two or three tenth loss. They have to make up time uh, with a lap and a half to go. They can't afford to do that too much more if they want a shot at Miller. They've got to at least stay single file, probably for the rest of this lap to get to his bumper by the finish line because Steven Miller's not put a wheel wrong thus far. This will help at least as they're single file for second because Caleb Tarter, about a half cent on Buscalia, had to go on onto the curb. No net change, but it cost him. Look how much time it cost him there, Randy. Now it's a two-car battle between Miller and Gio, and I think it's uh, probably going to boil down to that because those uh, third and fourth spots, uh, Buscalia and Tarter, got together. And uh, that really cost them a lot of time. So now with the white flag coming out the next time by, could be down to a two-card battle. Yeah, here we go up the hill for Stephen Miller and uh, Diego Guillo side-by-side side further back. That's Westcott, Peyton Westcott, the young lady out of California, making her way up to fifth. Mayor Dion run back to sixth now. White in the air. One to go. Stephen Miller down low. Guillo right behind. No crossover attempt out of turn number one. He'll stay tucked in line, and Miller... Now you just got to low line it all the way to the end of the race and hopefully not get freight train coming to the checkered flag, maybe trigger a fight for second. The more he blocks low, it'll bring third and fourth back up to him. That's what Steven wants. He doesn't want a two-card battle. He wants four or five and them to fight for second again, and he's brought them back into the picture as he goes low to the cell tower. Look at this again now. Oh, contact and perfect situation for Miller for a moment as Buscalia kind of got up alongside Gio. What a battle. All of a sudden, that one-card breakaway is a five-card battle for the win. Side-by-side side for second. 
Basaglia trying to sneak back up in there. That allows Miller to check out about two cart lengths. Running out of time, final lap. And down the I-70 straight one more time, and Miller stays low. Yeah, Stephen Miller still low. He'll open up for the corner, though. He should be safe enough. No, he stays back low. Buscalia there. Look at Diego Guillo all the way around the outside. He's going to run out of real estate, though. He has to stay back in third. But Chase Buscalia is in a perfect spot, trying to slingshot, trying to get there at the line. He'll run out of time. Stephen Miller wins heat one in uh, KA Junior Group C and D, presented by BBS Race Engines. So he'll take that one in uh, stride, leading the most laps. And again, like I said, just all you got to do at that point, if you're the leader, back the field up, trigger that fight for second, and then you don't have to worry about that slingshot move coming to the checkered flag. Well, that's kind of what happened. With two laps to go, Miller had about a five-car length advantage on the field. When they crossed the line, the first nine carts were nose to tail, but they were all battling behind him. So Stephen Miller with a great race, a smart race, Comes home the victor. A good run by Stephen Miller. Chase Basaglia finishes second. Caleb Tarter third. Peyton Westcott fourth. Diego Guillo fifth through the top ten. Uh, Mayor Dianarin. Uh, Enzo Vidmatien finishes seventh. Finishing eighth, Jensen Burnett. Advancing six positions from his 14th starting spot. Luke Powers finishes ninth. And rounding out the top ten, Beckett Friesen all the way up from 18th starting spot. Together a top 10 finishing position. And again, that's uh, your top 10 finishers here. Randy, we've seen a good amount of racing already so far here this weekend. So uh, the, the dry racing conditions, that's predictable. We've seen it here time and time again at Newcastle Motorsports Park. All about the draft, all the way up, really even a little bit of a toe factor in Pro Shifter, but there they can break away. But tomorrow, it's been uh, kind of iffy all the way through. Where do you stand? Do, are you a, a good enough weatherman to call us if we're getting rain tomorrow, Randy? One thing I can tell you, living in the Midwest, if you don't like the weather is, don't worry because it'll change. <laughs> well, we'll roll with that at least. Uh, again, that is the, of course, uh, big variable. We had a chance of rain yesterday for practice. It stayed dry. For a lot of drivers, they've said they have had no rain experience at this specific racetrack. We have not had really many wet races at all in our 2023 calendar that would be mega if it shook things up for tomorrow for now though it's dry the last report i heard is there could be a little bit of rain in the morning that it was supposed to clear up till evening but i it can pass through i, I think i'm optimistic that we're going to have good racing conditions what i'm excited and anxious to see is uh, heats two and three we have had some real movers in these heat races drivers that had really bad qualifying positions and they've uh, and they've come they've come out and they've gotten a good finishing position. So we don't get a start yet. Let's go through the lineup for Micro Swift. But drivers that got a bad qualifying position yesterday and they advanced 10 to 12 spots in the heat races. They've got to do that now every heat race to get a good starting spot for Sunday. Let's take a look at our Micro Swift by Team Ferris Racing starting lineup on the pole fast qualifier from Columbus, Indiana. AJ Stoner. Parker Eyes will start outside front row, followed by Aston Wyatt and Emerson Lane. Enzo De Janeiro and Maxwell Macha will start in the third row. Luke Gillio and Alex Chandler in row number four. Jake Man Ma Manalio and Colton Schniggenberg will start in row number five. In row six, we've got Nicholas LaRusso and Zane Burgess. In row seven, Liam Nakawati and Pasha Ali. Row eight, it's Cameron Johnson and Mickey Collins. In row nine, Massimo LaRusso and Oscar Gus Wunderl. And in row 10, Lawrence Perriman and Liam Van Beek. And we're coming down uh, I-70 corner right now. Looking for a start. Yeah, let's see if we can get the there green we go. here for Micro Swift, presented by Team Ferris Racing. Looking for it. We've got it. Green flag in the air. They're racing down to turn number one as the field goes through turns one and two. And uh, all the way through, uh, single file for the top couple, side by side further back as they go through. Good start for A.J. Stoner. That inside row really moved out. Parker Ives got shuffled back from that outside starting position. But A.J. Stoner with an early gap of about 10 cart links on the field. Talked to A.J. yesterday. He's pretty excited about that pole qualifying position. Really solid run out there by the local Indiana driver, actually. But A.J. running for that AMAX racing group. A good solid qualifying run, and now trying to duplicate that in his heat race. Right now, a good clean start as we round up our first lap. A.J. Stoner with a nice little gap over the field. 
Yeah, A.J. Stoner. Of course, what a great run for him in uh, uh, this race, just uh, or this track a few months ago at the Route 66 Sprint Regional Series. Battled for the lead and the win almost all day long, side by side, lap after lap. Now, there he's going to get freight trained here as the national regulars send him to the wayside. And back to third goes the AMAX Racing Machine. Is up to the front for Aston Wyatt. A couple of Texans working together. Aston Wyatt there, the leader. Emerson Lane on the TKG Cart Republic right behind him in the number 50. Fourth in lines, Maxwell Macha in that bright yellow helmet on the orange and black Sodi cart. One lap complete, nine laps to go. Crossing the stride for the first lap. Aston Wyatt is your leader. Emerson Lane runs second. A.J. Stoner gets shuffled back to third. Maxwell Macha and Parker Ives, your top five running order. Enzo De Janeiro runs sixth. Uh, Jake Manalio runs seventh. Luke Gillio runs eighth. Alex Chandler ninth. And Colton Schneigenberg runs tenth. A uh, mover already in one lap. Mikey Collins started in 16th, already up to 12th, advancing four spots. So a good start by Mikey Collins. But Aston Wyatt leading the way, starting from that third position up to the front with Emerson Lane and A.J. Stoner uh, in tow. Right now a little bit of a two-car breakaway, actually a four-car breakaway, with Wyatt leading the way, Lane, Stoner, and Maxwell Macha, your top four. And then you've got uh, Parker Ives trying to reel them back in. Parker starting from that outside front row, in the first turn, that outside row did not move as quickly as the inside. So he lost a few spots there, but he may have pace to go ahead and, and catch up to that lead group. But Maxwell Macha to the inside makes the pass on A.J. Stoner. Now Macha up to third. Pole sitter A.J. Stoner back to fourth, and that allows Parker Ives to close in ever so slightly on that lead group. It would be a five-cart battle for the lead very soon. And peeking to the inside was Emerson Lane, but he backs it out of there. Aston Wyatt still leads the way, going purple. Parker Ives back in fifth with the 114-467. Yeah, Parker Ives uh, now will get all the way up to this pack by the end of the lap with a battling like this. How about Emerson Lane? He wants the lead once again through turn five. Emerson Lane is through on Aston Wyatt. And Maxwell Macho with a big run to the cell tower. Look at that already. Parker Ives on the silver helmet there in fifth. And a coming as well. How about it for Enzo De Janeiro? On the Team Ferris Racing, black and blue, Cart Republic in sixth. It's made it almost all six drivers into frame. Seventh looking on is Luke Gillio in the Ryan Perry Motorsport Nitro Cart. But for the Trinity Karting Group camp, their boy is out in front. Emerson Lane leading side-by-side. -side. Parker Ives picks up another one. He'll get back up to fourth as he claws his way towards that original starting spot of P2. Qualified second, just missed the pole position yesterday. And Parker Ives now up to fourth, showing he's got some steam. And uh, Parker Ives now up to fourth in that lead group, trying to make a move now on third, and that would be Maxwell Macha. Ives takes a little peek to the inside, but backs it out of there. So in line, that top four, trying to, to gap a little bit over fifth spot, Enzo De Janeiro. A.J. Stoner now, our pole sitter, back to sixth. Yeah, Enzo De Janeiro at least got himself up to fifth at the very end of the lap, getting around A.J. Or, uh, uh, Stoner, like you said, the pole sitter going back all the way down to the edge. The problem's now for the 19. That's the Racing Edge Motorsports Cosmic. Um, I believe I'll try and figure out who we had in the 1-9 uh, that went all the way down there. But Nicholas, nonetheless, Nicholas LaRusso. Nicholas LaRusso going down the order. Up front, Emerson Lane, Aston Wyatt, Maxwell Macha, Parker Ives. Still no change yet to the green corner. We stay single file here. Early in the going, though, just settling in, really, for these micro slip drivers presented by Team Ferris Racing as they go to that infield hairpin. How about it for Emerson Lane on the bright yellow helmet in the green and white group? It's only a second race weekend aboard a Cart Republic chassis and working with the Trinity Karting Group camp. He had such a good run winning the main event of the Stars Championship Series. And uh, his dad and him uh, mentioned to me at the end of the day, he said he's ready for an interview. He's got his words together. Well, don't put the cart before the horse. He got a long weekend to get there, but he's doing a good job right now. He leads him to one as a near pass there for third, but Maxwell Macha just ran out of steam right at the end of the uh, they, straightaway. They took a peek. He had some help from Parker Ives, who looks to the inside but can't quite make the pass on Macha. And now joining the party, Enzo De Janeiro, who's turned the fast lap of the race, is now on the rear bumper of Parker Ives. He's made it a five-car battle for the top spot. Pass for the lead. Aston Wyatt takes over the top spot. Gets around Emerson Lane. New leader, Aston Wyatt. And look at Enzo De Janeiro working Parker Ives to the horseshoe. Couldn't get by. Enzo De Janeiro almost there. But Aston Wyatt on that AR Academy Bureau Art, the number 21. 
leads the five car pack. Six now goes to Luke Gilio as AJ Stoner continues to drop, unfortunately. He's down to seventh now. Gilio on the way. He was a tenth better than the leaders last time by. Thanks to them cha changing the position for the lead. Gilio and Stoner are now going to pull within about a second and a quarter. So we could get even more players into this fight for the lead. Down the straightaway to the I-70 corner. Macho wants second. Looking for it. Not going to get it from Emerson Lane in the I-70 hairpin. Here comes Parker Ives to the bumper with a big run down the front straightaway. He'll look for third. Not going to have the toe. But Emerson Lane will. He'll pull out a line. And Emerson Lane back to the lead with Macho. And nearly Parker Ives. It got messy there as they were all weaving back and forth. And Aston Wyatt holds on to third. I, that, I tell you, that was smart driving by all those kids because that could have that could have been a real problem. Ives backed out of it the last second, knew the move wasn't there, didn't send it because he knew he didn't have it. That was just a smart move by Parker Ives to wait for another day and another opportunity. That does allow those top two, Emerson Lane and Aston Wyatt, to, to uh, gap a little bit, but not for long as that second group, uh, Macha, Ives, and De Janeiro are right there closing back in, but right on the bumper is uh, a battle for that top spot. Let's go down to pit lane. Pro Shifter, the second of the two headline classes, is coming our way here after this. And Alexander Searle has caught up with one of the members of the big three. A.J. Myers is back in action, and he's standing by. Thanks, Xander. A.J., I mean, pretty solid qualifying effort for you there. Rolling off on the front row, missing by two tenths this morning. And that's in the field. I mean, what did you guys find from yesterday? And uh, felt really good. Yeah, I mean, pretty hot day today. You were telling me before the interview. It's, uh, I mean, it's going to be what it's going to be. We're all going to be struggling probably when it comes to the Heat 3. But uh, my used tire pace has been good. It's more that new pot tire pace I need to work on for tomorrow. All right, thanks, AJ. Good luck. Thank you. Bad. On the racetrack here for uh, Micro Swift as we go back to it with three and a half laps to go. Maxwell Macha to the lead. Parker Ives to second. Emerson Lane back to fourth. Aston Wyatt back to third. It is Macha on the peak on the SLA Kart Racing Sodi Kart leading for the first time here in the pre in the heat race. Parker Ives wants to take that spot away already. He'll go through to the I-70 corner and Aston Wyatt a send and a half down the inside. They'll go three wide for second coming out of the corner. Side by side down the front stretch. Look at Emerson Lane. He'll get clear on Wyatt. How about Luke Gilio? Luke up to third down to turn number one. He'll take the spot and get clear on Emerson Lane. How about the run by Parker Ives? Got a bad start. Got shuffled back to fifth spot. Lost the lead draft. Slowly but surely worked his way up to the front. Just makes the pass for the lead. Parker Ives now leading the way. Maxwell Macha in second. Gap of about five cart links to the rest of the field. But we've got some more contenders now all the way back to A.J. Stoner in eighth. They're all relatively close where they could have something to say about this before it's over, but time is running out. It'll be two to go next time by Parker Eyes with about a five cart length advantage over Maxwell Macha. Yeah, now Macha will get a big run on him on the straightaway. He's close enough right now. When you start that long, uh, those two long straights, two or three car lengths back, especially here in this restricted micro slip division, this is the slowest and the youngest drivers on the circuit. At a nine horsepower restricted motor, uh, along with seven to ten years old being the age bracket, you lack experience, you lack top speed. It makes it feel like a huge draft fest, and that's why the pack is getting so big because they can really pull up on each other down at the end of the long straights. And for Maxwell Macha, he's going to have an opportunity maybe by turn number one. How big of a closing rate can he get to Luke or uh, Parker Ives? Not as much as I thought. Ives actually pulled away with a great exit out of that back corner. That gap will stay at three car lengths while they battle back for third. Gilio, Lane, De Janeiro, Wyatt. How about Colton Schneegenberg sneaking up into the mix there on that GWR Energy. He's up to seventh. Here comes the pack through turn four. That is De Janeiro over Aston Wyatt, over the blue and red of Colton Schneegenberg. And then your original pull setter, A.J. Stoner, back in eighth. But Macha, a little better this time, closes up. Here's that group once again going to the cell tower hairpin. Parker Ives getting a good launch off of I-70 on that last lap. 
He's got some horsepower now, really close. Macha seems to be stronger, the tighter, more technical part of the course. But straightaway speed, Park Rives has really got some horsepower. And they head back uh, uh, this way. They'll make the right-hander and then go up I-70. And we'll see how close and what kind of a run off of that I-70 corner Maxwell Macha can get. And when does he want to make the move? Uh, right now, he's close. But if, uh, if Ives can get a good run off of that corner, he does seem to gap him out of there. And we'll take a look as they head down now around the last corner and down the front straight to see the white flag. And Ives pretty content on running, running the high side. And Macha seems to be content on staying right there and not making a move. He'll try to make it on the tighter end of the course. So we've got a pass for a third. And that's Gillio up to I'm sorry, it's Emerson Lane up to third getting around Luke Gillio. Yeah, Luke Gillio back down to fourth. Emerson Lane up to third. Look at how much that gap has grown now from first and second on back. Macha and Ives, a car length apart. Two drivers that have already gotten multiple race wins on the 2023 national calendar. Going at it, looking to get every point that they can. We said in some of the other classes, you got to be consistent, especially with the split groups in KA, junior, and senior. But in Micro Swift, when you've got only a couple of championship contenders, every position, every session matters. This is, again, a about a 10- to 15-point gain from first to second in every heat. Parker Ives knows it. Maxwell Macha knows it. They're trying to race as clean as they can. Macha got a terrible exit there out of the infield hairpin that we got kind of knocked backwards off the bumper. So up the hill towards I-70. Final time. Parker Ives by a car length. Can Macha get the exit he needs to pull alongside by the front straightaway at the finish line? Here we go. Coming to it. It will not be enough. Parker Ives will take heat number one in Micro Swift. Good solid run by Parker Ives, showing his strength out there and a big gap on the rest of the field. Maxwell Macha finishes second. Luke Gillio, Aston Wyatt, and Emerson Lane, your top five, followed by Colton Schneigenberg. Zane Burgess, A.J. Stoner finishes eighth. Uh, Liam Nakawada finishes ninth. Finishing in 10th, Enzo De Janeiro. Zane Burgess with a nice little run out there, finishing in 7th, advancing five spots from his 12th starting position. And how about Santiago Diaz de la Vega? Started in 22nd, almost cracked the top 10, finishing in 12th. Good run by Santiago, your winner, and a good solid run out there, Parker Ives. Yeah, another good performance out of Parker Ives on the Ryan Perry Motorsport Nitro Cart. There's only one more session before the lunch break, and that is, of course, the heavyweights in Pro Shifter. They're on deck as we get set to go green. We'll be right back.
Carts back on the racetrack for the final session of the opening round of heat races here for the United States Pro Kart Series. Midway point of the 2023 season, the third of five rounds in this championship taking place right here in America's heartland in uh, Newcastle, Indiana at the Newcastle Motorsports Park, of course, created back in 2004 from former IndyCar Series star Mark Dismore Sr. And it has played host to countless national and international events. It's a staple on the North American karting calendar with every major championship coming here. And it gives guys a lot of time. But now uh, for this class, the new division for 2023 in the US Pro Kart Series is Pro Shifter, running this multi-engine manufacturer KZ format. Uh, these drivers getting more seat time at Newcastle in a gearbox car than we've ever had in any pro national season. So uh, it's allowed a few of the American hotshots to be able to close the gap to some of the European factory drivers that come and join us from time to time. And at the same point, it's just allowed the field to tighten up. More seat time means everyone has more time to get to the limit. Speaking of Americans, how about Auburn, Washington's own Kyle Wick? The GFC Karting Boys are hot off one of their best weekends ever at Salt Lake City, Utah, Utah Motorsports Campus, going 1-2 on both race days for the Supercarts USA Pro Tour on those brand new IAMI Generation 4 Screamer KZ power plants. Again, we said multi-engine manufacturer. It's an IAMI-powered KZ for Kyle Wicks GFC on the front row on the inside. It's a TM uh, KZ uh, for AJ Myers and the majority of the field as well on the outside. Marin Kremers, the reigning champ, as an off for Jordan Muster there off in the grass. Marin Kremers on the PSL Karting Bureau Art will start in the third spot. And we spoke to him yesterday. Wasn't in the highest of spirits. Said he still felt a little down on power. And that was no different than him uh, fighting what with probably one last bullet in the gun than the GFC boys in Utah. He was the next best in third there. Here he's third again. But Myers a little better than him in qualifying. Jacob Gulick joins him on the outside for that 1-2 GFC punch at the pointy end of the field in fourth. Talon Yockel and Hunter Pickett. Two drivers on the Magic Kart and the PSL Karting Camps have two apiece for each of the three major race teams and major manufacturers inside your first three rows. Then it goes back to Ethan Boer, the rookie, in seventh. Justin White in eighth. Giorgio Carrara and Ayrton Hernandez, your top ten. We go to our head flagman for the first standing start of the weekend. Porter Wiesenzenzel. Let's see it. Who gets the whole shot off the line? A.J. Myers will, and he'll clear Kyle Weck through turn number one. From the outside of the front row, A.J. Myers leads through turn number three. What a whole shot for A.J. Myers around the high side. Gave plenty of a racing room to Kyle Wick, but gets a good clean starter on the high side. Gets a good line into turn two and takes the lead by about a three-car length gap already on Kyle Wick, who runs in second. Marion Kremers tried to also get by Wick in turn number four, but he thought better of it and backed out and had to defend from Jacob Gulick, Hunter Pickett, and Talon Yockel and company. So uh, an, an attempt, but unsuccessful for the reigning series champion and former world champion and Maureen Kremers there in third. He's still feeling the pressure. Look at Jacob Gulick. There's some confidence. That's what two Pro Tour weekend wins will do for you as he makes an aggressive move to take over the third spot and further back. Hunter Pickett versus Talon Yonkel versus Justin White for position number five. They're side by side. Side by side for third. Kremers back to the inside and retakes the spot over Gulick. And the top two, Kyle Wick and A.J. Myers, have been able to stretch out uh, quite a bit already with just a couple laps in the books. One lap complete, actually, and they've already gotten a pretty good gap on the rest of the field. And if they can uh, continue to race behind him as they are right now, that's just going to play right into their hands. But A.J. Myers with a nice little gap, about a half a second on Kyle Wick, who's another full second over Marion Kremers. We'll pull the leaderboard up on the left-hand side of your screen to figure out where your favorite driver is here now as Giorgio Carrara on that factory Lenzo cart for the International Motorsport team in what he described was his worst qualifying session of the entire year. He had so much pace throughout final practice, ended up qualifying ninth where he has to roll off for all three heats. He's up a couple spots already to the seventh position. He's right behind this good battle in the midfield. Justin White versus Talon Yockel. Couple of younger drivers here. White on his first full season, I believe, or second full season in the shifter class. The same for Talon Yockel. And Yockel getting through there in that infield hairpin to take over that fifth position. The top four breaking away. There's a look at the gaps. A.J. Myers over Kyle Wick. What does it look like at the end of the first lap at full speed? Give the advantage to Myers, a 62.910. Wick, a 63.13. Kremers out of .4. Same for Jacob Gulick. They were half a second off of A.J. Myers last time by in third and fourth, not making up any time right now. 
Great battle for that third spot between Marion Kremers and Jacob Gulick. They've gone back and forth two or three times out there battling for that third spot. Back in fifth, Talon Yackel. I'm moving up a little bit here as we look through the field. Oh, look uh, at this. Back for six. How about Giorgio Carrara? Like you said, moving back through the field. He's gotten around Justin White. In fact, White is under heavy pressure from Hunter Pickett on that PSL Carding Bureau Lard. He's got his teammate Jordan Musser behind him, then Ayrton Hernandez. So into that infield hairpin, Carrara, White, Pickett, Musser, Giorgio Carrara up already three positions, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is significantly hard to pass it. And Shifter is look at this move. Hunter Pickett on that Jim Weed PSL Factory Bureau Lard up to six now as he gets around Justin White. But once again, the leaders, A.J. Myers and Kyle Wick, continue to just gap the field. A full second advantage, first to second, and another two seconds from second back to third. Good move from Jordan Muster there, as you saw on your screen, on that SRP factory team, Marinello, of uh, Justin White there. He's got the Cartworks USA satellite operation for him and his dad in uh, their race team. He lost that uh, spot for uh, eighth to Jordan Musser in turn number one. The Wiley veteran calls himself uh, the elder statesman of the division. Jordan Musser, we're used to seeing dominate master shifter classes for all the 30 plus drivers, but uh, here it's just a pro uh, single adult category, and you've got to go up against A.J. Myers, Kyle Wick, Marion Kremers, American champions, world champions in peak physical condition on the most physically demanding class. It's very impressive. A guy like Jordan Musser is able to crack the top ten. It shows you how talented that man is. And what a stellar field throughout from front to back. we got some great drivers out there. Tremendous battle for that third spot. Uh, Marion Kremers and Jacob Gulick been going back and forth. And easing into that battle is Talon Yakel in fifth as he's closed in to almost make it a three-card battle for the third spot. Meanwhile, Kyle Wick goes purple, running in second, turns in a 102.151, closing in a little bit on A.J. Myers, but with only six laps to go, he's going to run out of time. Myers with a great hole shot, good clean start to the high side through turns one and two. Myers with a good gap, and right now running a very smooth race for this first heat. And the benefit for Talon Yockel to continue to learn from A.J. Myers. A.J. was joking with Talon that he's getting a little bit too close in terms of speed to him. He's not just going to lead him around every practice. He's going to need a toe off of Talon every once and again because Talon is starting to figure things out. And it helps to have the number 202 plate holder uh, be the guy to lead setup, lead engine tuning, and lead driving as well. Where Talon, a young kid himself there, almost, uh, I believe, about 19 years old compared to A.J. at 26, has a lot less years only his second year in pro shifter, getting to learn, and now he's getting a big lesson on passing as Jacob Gulick, the Utah winner, going back and forth. Kremers back on him. Crossover move. Talon Yockel just eyed him up, seeing where he can set them up for the move. Now he's outside, now backs out of it, and we are all to play for for third, fourth, and fifth, Randy. A.J. Myers a little bit faster, goes purple that lap, a 102-024. So Myers, hearing footsteps from Kyle Wick, decides he better turn it up a little bit, and he did. And sure enough, he's gapped him now to about a full second advantage over second spot Kyle Wick. And both of them, they're trading hundreds, not even tenths as well. Last lap, couple hundreds to Wick. This lap, couple hundreds to A.J. Myers. They're so incredibly consistent at this level, so good at what they do that you cannot bank on mistakes and you really can't bank on being uh, much faster than anybody else on the racetrack. You've got to make every move count, can't make a single bad decision when it comes to passing. And that's what we saw right there. Gulick, it wasn't a bad decision. It was just uh, probably about two feet too late on getting onto the brakes. That time by, though, Wick did make up time on Myers, who might be starting to slow the pace down to save some rubber as he gave up two tenths with four laps to go. So you can see A.J. Myers, Kyle Wick, the gap coming down a little bit. Maybe A.J. trying to force Kyle into drive harder. And look at this, Yockel trying to get to fourth. Drives into the side and messes up and kind of loses the gearing. And here comes Giorgio Carrara and Hunter Pickett. They're ready to take advantage for that fifth spot as they've been chipping away at the gap. It's five together from third back to seven. So technical to make a pass with a shifter car. You're not only making the pass, you're making sure you're in the right gear. And if you lose speed and don't get to grab the gear quick enough, look at all the speed that uh, uh, that uh, Talon Yako lost and all the, uh, the space on the racetrack he lost. So a tough break for Talon Yako as he's losing some more spots right now. Yeah, now Talon Yockel, unfortunately, still side by side. Here comes Pickett again, trying on him, putting pressure on. Carrara, the biggest loser out of that is Pickett got around him. 
Hunter Pickett with a slow start here to his Saturday is at least starting to make up ground at the closing stages of the uh, opening heat race. He's back up to neutral in sixth. He fell all the way back to the eighth spot at one point, and now he's trying to get at least one spot higher into the top five. The lap at the line, another tenth gain for Kyle Wick as we watch the leaders through the bus stop. They've got still plenty of a, a gap back here to third and fourth with Kremers versus Gulick, but uh, Kyle Wick might just run out of time. This battle still wide open, still anyone's guess as Talon Yako has gone from offense to defense. He was tracking down third and fourth with that one mistake on the botch pass to Gulick. He's now in to fend off more company as Myers and Wick will come to the line this time by Randy to see two laps to go. That gap seems to be getting a little bit smaller each lap, but with two laps to go, don't think it's quite close enough. But you can clearly see on the racetrack that Kyle Wick has closed in on A.J. Myers. We'll get a good read on it here as they cross the line. Last lap it was .67 seconds. It's now .54 seconds. As you said, Xander, about a tenth of a second a lap. But with two laps to go, he will probably run out of time. Can he catch the draft? I don't know. I think it's still going to be uh, too little too late for Kyle Wick, but a good charge back to try to catch A.J. Myers. At the end of the day, there are points up for grabs in the heats, but what's kind of understated, and we see it more or less at, depending on the racetrack, is the outside groove, of course, is the cleaner part of the racetrack on the straightaway. Well, if you're on the pole, you have to start on the inside, on the dirty part of the racetrack. We saw A.J. Myers get the whole shot from the outside. It's not a bad place to be. You're just trying to be by row, less by position. So if Wick goes second through all these heats and Myers gets the inside in the main, he might be better off. As the battle for third continues to rage on, Kremers full defense here from Jacob Gulick. So they're going at it, continuing as well and he knows he feels like Gulick's got some horsepower how about it Jacob Gulick to the inside Kremers trying to crowd him down on the bottom and he is able to rip the top side and hold on to third nice line on the high side there by Kremers to keep that spot uh, his but it was uh, too wide through the I-70 corner which is not easy to do especially when the high side ends up keeping the spot so nice drive by Marion Kremers now, now Talon Yockel, thanks to them battling, is back up into the mix. He's driven away from Hunter Pickett and Giorgio Carrara. Carrara getting around Pickett a moment ago to take back that sixth position. So on the final lap, it is Kremers, Gulick, and then Yockel again after about five laps of being separated. Yockel back there, but they're separated enough. I don't think much will happen. And for the lead, probably not too much either. You can see Kyle Wick closing in, but A.J. Myers is a smart race driver. He knows how much of his gap he can kind of use up and slow down to kind of manage his tires without throwing the race away. Wick is going to get all the way up to a car length back. He might have a slingshot on him, but I think it's still not enough. A.J. Myers will collect a close Heat 1 victory. Oh, look at that at the line. Wick almost there, and I think it probably caught A.J. off guard. Kyle Wick by 8 thousandths shy of the win, going purple on the final lap. A.J. Myers started to cruise to the end, slow the pace down by about 2 to 3 tenths, and Kyle Wick turned it up, and he, man, almost stole one right there from A.J. What a finish by Kyle Wick making that charge. Uh, A.J. Myers, though, got the good start and led the entire way uh, through the rundown. A.J. Myers is your winner. Kyle Wick finishes second. Marion Kremers third. Talon Yakel now up to fourth as he does get around uh, Jacob Gulick for the uh, fourth position. Whoa, Gulick. look at this. Someone lost a right front tire, and they're still driving. Are you kidding me? That's a 272. Who, Riley Pegram has lost her right front tire. Wait, watch this. She was trying to... Oh, now she'll finally pull off. She drove to the finish. Never give up Riley Pegram. She drove all the way across the line and through turns one and two without the entire right front tire on that go-kart. A three-wheel expedition for Riley Pegram there, Randy. Good, good job by Riley under some uh, real tough conditions. Uh, through the top ten, Giorgio Carrera finishes sixth, followed by Hunter Pickett. Let's pull up that replay here. Check this out. Taylor's got it for us. Watch this. The right front tire must have come off, coming onto the front stretch. And Riley Pegram on that Trinity Karting Group, uh, Kart Republic, is just cruising with no right front tire <laughs> to make sure that she turns all the laps and completes it. 
And uh, again, cool look, but man, I'm sure that chassis is grinded against the ground there for the last couple corners. Then finally she pulls it off into the grass at the end of it. Wild scenes there to end the Pro Shifter race. That was a, 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 something to give us a little bit of excitement after a bit more of an anticlimactic run outside of Kyle Wick nearly stealing it. Good concentration by uh, by Riley to uh, to be able to get by with that because uh, that that could have been uh, that could have been a problem. Well, with that, folks, now we've got post race interviews coming from Pro Shifter, but the on track action takes a bit of a backseat until we go uh, for another 35 minutes. We are back green, I believe, at 12:35 uh, with the next uh, round of heat races going back to the top of the order with the mini swifts. So uh, we've got two full rounds of heats coming this afternoon. 12:37, my correction. 12:37 uh, Eastern time. Again, that's in about 45 or 40 to 45 minutes from now. We will go to commercial break now. We will come back with post-race interviews from Pro Shifter, and then we'll take our lunch break as well as we get set for a full afternoon of action from Newcastle. Well, uh, following up our opening heat race here in Pro Shifter, David Land and Alexander Searle have the scoop for us as the scale lines start to work their way on out with one heat race in the books. What do you have for us down in pit lane, Dave? Uh, so it was an exciting uh, shifter race. What was it like uh, from the cockpit? Oh, it was good. I mean, just trying to manage my tires as much as I can. It's, it's hot out there, so it's tough. Well, with the heat, I mean, you mentioned it, uh, the most physical class in the field by far. What is it like to manage, you know, you got three heat races today. Obviously, physicality is going to come into factor as well. How do you keep yourself cool and how do you keep yourself fresh for two more heat races later this afternoon? I mean, water and naps. <laughs> That's probably the best bet. 
All right, we'll let him go get to his nap. Xander, back to you. Thanks, Dave. Again, live from Newcastle Motorsports Park, that's from Jacob Gulick. That was a, an intense one and definitely worthy of a nap after uh, with the battle that he had to hold on and uh, fight with Marin Kremers and from Talon Yockel. So a good performance from GFC Karting's Jacob Gulick to uh, complete a 2-4 uh, result there with Kyle Wick up the road in second. A.J. Myers again dominant all the way through, able to hold it. And then at the last second, Wick nearly got to him but just came up a little bit shy. So again, that was from one half of the GFC karting camp. Kyle Wick nearly stole one at the end uh, of that heat race here. A good run to come up 8,000 shy from A.J. Myers. And uh, at least setting the fast lap of the session in the process is a good boost to confidence for the pole man who just lost the jump off the line. Let's see as he makes his way over here to Alexander Searle. Hear from it. Uh, 8,000 shy of keeping the sweep going, but hey, Poland qualifying P2 with the fastest lap. Not a bad way to start your Saturday. Alex? Yeah, thanks, Xander. Kyle, I mean, oh, so close to the first heat race. You know, just didn't get the whole shot off the line that you would have wanted, but slowly, methodically worked your way up to AJ, missed it by 8,000. I mean, talk to me about the heat race. Um, AJ was really quick at the beginning, and I just slowly got back up. I wasn't expecting necessarily to get there, but. I was able to get to him at the end and almost got there, but not quite. Yeah, I mean, the pace that we saw at the end of that race, I mean, is that, was that you pushing really hard? Is the cart just really good towards the end of that race? I mean, you know, with, with, with three heats coming up, tire progression, right? The heats coming throughout the racetrack. I mean, were you just pushing really hard? Is the cart feeling really good right now? The cart's feeling really good right now. I feel like at this track, there won't be that much tire dig like we saw in Utah. So I think it'll be less important to keep the tires really good because we're not seeing the wear that we saw in Utah. And I think we'll be able to push through all three. All right, thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Kyle Wick just, again, 8,000s close, but definitely the message sent and received to A.J. Myers and the rest of the Pro Shifter field. The black and white GFC Karting boys are here to play here this weekend, so they've got a good run with all that. And now we'll take our short lunch break off the air. We'll keep the live stream up, so uh, grab yourself something to eat for those watching along at home. A nice uh, uh, tasty be er, beverage as well. And we'll be back at 12.37 p.m. local time here, East Coast time in North America with the next round of heat races.
And as we close in on the end of our lunch hour here, we're getting uh, back to racing in just a few minutes. I'm going to take this time to thank our great sponsors of the U.S. Pro Kart Series, sponsors of the Indiana Grand Prix, B&B Electric, Fox and & Son, and AIM. Also, I am a...
Welcome back to Car Chaser. I'm here in the booth, Randy Coogler, with Alexander Sura. We're going to bring you the action for our second round of heats. Alexander, we got our mini Swiss sponsored by DNJ International Services coming to the green, and we got a green flag headed into turn one. Yeah, one of the first times uh, all day that we've seen green on the first time around. They got it sorted out here for the second round of heats. Good start there for your pole sitter, Tristan Murphy. He's going to lead him uh, up through turn three here. Yeah, Murphy was strong in the first heat, as was Travis Pettit. Nice, good start by Murphy, and it looks like the 111 of uh, Murphy running in second. Actually, we'll get a read on who uh, the, who the leader is there. That's a 130. I think that's Tovo that might have got the early jump. So Jackson Tovo that struggled in the first heat uh, looks like he might be leading the way early in this one. A lot of competition in this mini swift. Qualifying was strong. It was really uh, well balanced, and uh, we saw it during the races as well with Murphy and uh, – and Travis Pettit really going hard at it in that first heat. But the Jackson Tovo and Tristan Murphy right now battling out a four-cart breakaway. Yeah, I mean, like you said, Jackson Tovo didn't really have the first heat he would have wanted there, you know, finishing 29th after starting in P2. He's looking to make amends for that in the second round of heats here. Tristan Murphy in the first heat finished fifth after starting on the pole position, but it was such a tight field there in the first heat. We saw some tight action there. Travis Pettit was your winner in the first heat, making up three spots shortly uh, ahead of Michael McGoy there, and I think we're going to see more of the same here as we see a four-car breakaway here out front out of the, after the first lap. Yeah, these guys have to work. And for those of you who don't understand the format, <clears throat> even if if you're the winner of the first heat, if your qualifying position warranted a 10th starting position, you're going to start 10th in heat two and three as well. So you got to do that work every single race. So Jackson Tovo is your early leader. Tristan Murphy, Michael McGoy, Travis Pettit, and Royce Vega are your top five. And we got a spinner there, the 141. Oh, that was Tyrone Kemper Jr. Tyrone, he had a DNF in the first heat, a spin here in the second heat. It's been a, a really, really rough opening couple of heat races for uh, Tyrone there. Not, not what we want to see for them. Yeah, tough break, break by Tyrone. He did have a tough first heat, and now he's got a lot of ground to make up in this uh, second heat as well. But Jackson Tovo uh, making up for a rough heat number one. Uh, leads this pack, but the back is now about seven carts breaking away in that lead group as they head up towards I-70, about to complete lap number two. Jackson Toga, uh, Tovo leading about seven drivers through I-70 corner and about to cross the line for lap number two. Yeah, like, like I was saying, you know, as it crossed the line last time by, it was a four-cart breakaway. Now it's six. Look a little further back. There's three guys battling there for seventh, eighth, and ninth. If these guys up front inevitably battle, it's going to be a nine-car train. I mean, the first heat, it was a five-car train with Cameron Marsha and P6, who made up 11 spots. Let's see if you can see where Cameron Marsha is in the second heat here. Didn't really have the qualifying he would have wanted, but made immense for it there after the, with a really, really good run in the first heat, making up 11 spots to finish in sixth. But again, here we see six guys breaking away. This is classic Mini Swift racing. As you see, I think that's Travis Pettit and the Trinity Carding Group. Uh, Car Public there trying to make a move, couldn't make it stick. And there's Royce Vega now on the inside to go up to fourth position, and Fionn, she's going to follow him through. So there's a good move from the Bennett driver to go up to fourth position. And as you said, Alexander, when they start racing, the gap changes, and now that six-car breakaway is a three-car breakaway because fourth, fifth, and sixth started racing. So Tovo, Murphy, and McGoy now have a little bit of breathing room back to uh, Travis Pettit, Royce Vega, and Fionn, she are battling for that fourth, fifth, and sixth position. we got two laps in the books, eight more laps to go, and right now, Jackson Tovo is leading. But we've got a pass for second. Michael McGoy makes the pass in I-70 corner, moves up to second, and now we'll try to reel in Jackson Tovo. Yeah, I mean, like you said, with all that battling, you lose ground of the leaders. But without, uh, besides that, you start, you know, stacking yourself back to the guys behind you. But up front, we see battling for the top three here. That brings Royce Vega right back into the mix. So Royce Vega in fourth on the bumper there of, I believe, that is Michael McGoy there in P3. No, Michael McGoy is up to the P1 now, sorry. So Michael McGoy, good run for him. He was your second-place finisher in the, in the first heat. Looking to have a really solid run here again in the second heat. Six cart out front here in Mini Swift. Yeah, McGoy made his way around, or I'm sorry, Tovo made his uh, way around McGoy right at the line on that last lap in a battle for third spot. And Royce Vega, you just called it to Alexander. He's on the charge. Royce Vega up to third, making the pass. He'll try to reel in Michael McGoy. So a good battle by these top six. Those uh, back three, uh, Romero, Kim, and Maj Majeski, all in line trying to close in on that lead group, and they're two by two in front of them. I think we got a good chance, as you said, for a nine-card battle, but Jackson Tovo now with about a five-card length advantage. 
Yeah, watch for the run down this front straighter coming up here by Royce Vega because Michael Mogoy has a monster lead ending to the, into the I-70 hairpin here. But Royce Vega with a push here from Tristan Murphy and uh, Travis Pettit might have a chance in the turn one. A little too far back here, but Mogoy, that gap's not going to stay uh, big for long. Yeah, all alone out there, nobody to draft with, and when you get a big draft behind you, they catch up pretty quick. And now that group is seven strong, eight strong, actually, with William Kim. Uh, how about Marco Samet? Started in 19th, already in the top 10, so a strong run by Marco Samet. He charged up in the in the first heat as well. So Marco Samet trying to make a uh, make some noise out here and get a good starting spot for Sunday. Yeah, move up front there by Royce Vega to go to P1, but not for long. McGoy's going to take it right back. So Michael McGoy from P1 to P2, back to P1. Pettit gets around for third, and out of nowhere, Marco Romero from P7 to P4. Marco Romero, what a move there for the Benek driver, but there goes all oh, Fianchi, all oh, hooks bumpers there into the showcase corner, couldn't make it stick. Marco Romero stays in P4. A lot of battling going on from third back to seventh position. That allows McGoy and Vega to stretch it out a little bit over the rest of the field. <clears throat> now they'll try to get in line as Jackson Tovo and the whole group back there is trying to draft back up and get to that lead group. But right now, those top two enjoy a bit of a gap, maybe to the tune of about a full second over third place. And that's uh, that's Michael McGoy. I'm sorry, it's Royce Vega leading Michael McGoy second. Travis Pettit and Marco Romero trying to chase them down. Yeah, this is a great situation here for Royce Vega and, and Michael McGoy. These two guys are going to hook up and work together here for the next six laps, I suspect, and try to pull away from Pettit and Romero. You saw down the front straightaway, Pettit gave Romero the go-ahead, saying, push me, we need to work together. You know, the two are faster than one here, and they see these two guys up ahead working together really, really well right now. Really patient driving from Michael McGoy. He's going to stay behind them for the upcoming laps here, but Pettit and Romero seem to be closing that gap. Martin Jaramillo in the number 189. Just went purple with a 113.383. Jeremillo started in 13th, up to the top 10 right now, so a good run by Martin Jeremillo. Marco Salmon, who did crack the top 10, back in 11th. But Royce Vega and Michael McGoy still enjoying about a half a second advantage over the field. Travis Pettit leading that second group as they try to reel in the leaders, winding down the second half of this heat number one in Mini Swift, brought to you by DNJ International Services. I tell you, keep an eye out for Tristan Murphy here. He... He was pretty far back from Marco Romero last time by. This time he's closed the gap here. I expect a pretty good lap out of Tristan Murphy. He's about to make it a three-car battle. And there he goes. Tristan Murphy goes purple at a 112.8. Just like I said, he is flying right now. He's closed the gap on the bumper now of Marco Romero. And Pettit is actually making the jump. He's pulled away from Marco Romero just a little bit. And he's closing the gap now to Michael Magoy. Travis Pettit, two to three tenths faster. And, Murph and Magoy, knows it. Magoy knows it. He goes to the inside of Royce Vega. He knows he has to get around him. He wants to lead this heat race right now. McGoy hears the footsteps, makes the pass around Royce Vega, takes over the top spot, checks out a couple of cart links on Vega. Here comes the second pack led by Travis Pettit, Marco Romero, and Tristan Murphy. And that group is trying to reel in those two leaders. It could be a five-cart battle before long. It'll be three to go next time by in this mini swift heat number two. Yeah, we see a move there for third now. Marco Romero up to P3, makes the move on Travis Pettit now. So move the Benick driver into P3 and Tristan Murphy all over the bumper now of Travis Pettit. It is a three-car battle for third place, but it's about to be a five-car battle for first place here any moment now. Marco Romero late on the brakes there in the I-70 hairpin, closing the gap even more of the Royce Vega. Let's see the run he gets uh, down this front straight right now. Yeah, I think if they stay in line, they're going to draft right up to that lead too. By turn one, I think we're going to clearly have a five-car battle for the lead. And we do as they get into turn one. It's up for grabs now with a top five. Michael McGoy, Royce Vega, Marco Romero, Travis Pettit, and Tristan Murphy, who goes purple again with a 112-748. Tristan Murphy running in fifth, fastest card in the racetrack. Tristan Murphy, Tristan Murphy, proven why he is your pole sitter for these heat races. He is absolutely flying right now, just buying his time, being patient. He's the fifth car in line there, getting a good draft off of these guys, just seeing where he's faster, where, he, where he's slower, you know, planning his moves now, but he has three laps to make it happen. Almost a two-second advantage between this top five group and the rest of the field. So with three to go, it's pretty much up to them to settle it. And right now we got a pass for the lead, and Royce Vega makes the pass, and here comes Marco Romero. We've got a change for the lead. Romero side by side with McGoy. Can't quite make the move. There he does. And now McGoy gets shuffled back out. But uh, Royce Vega Ooh. now back out front. Contact there with Tristan Murphy and Michael McGoy. Good, uh, good driving there for both those guys to stay on to stay on the on the racetrack there. But 
contact there for sure. Michael McGoy, how easy it is to go from first to fifth around New Newcastle Motorsports Park here. They're going to get the two to go signal here. Royce Vega on the Benick uh, back in the P1. Marco Romero, it is a Benick 1 2 now. Good run for those drivers. Travis Pettit, he's impatient all race long. It is coming to him now. He's in third place. As you said, Alexander, it's so easy to get shuffled out in freight train. If you get somebody underneath you heading to a tighter corner and it's a freight train of two or three carts, nobody's letting up. You're there, and you're there till there's an opening. So you can lose three spots just like that. Yeah, it is super easy around this track, especially with the draft being so prominent. I mean, if you just pull out a line, more than one cart's going to go by uh, most of the time there. As you see, these th uh, five drivers just being super patient right now, but there's two to go. You want to keep it clean, though. Like you said, right, the heat races, where you qualify is where you have to start every single race. You don't want to have a bad finish. It sets you back for the, for the final tomorrow. These guys is driving real well. Royce Vega putting together a solid heat race, you know, finished seventh in the first one, making amends for it here in the second one, showing the true pace of that Bennett cart. Royce Vega leads a pack of five up towards I-70 corner. Vega with the lead, but it's anybody's race amongst this top five. They'll see the white flag this time by. They round I-70. Nobody makes a move off of I-70. Good launch by Royce Vega, nice and clean, but they head down the long straightaway now. Seeing the white flag, I have to believe somebody's going to try to make a move on this one. Yeah, let's see. Surprising there. I mean, Royce Vega has the luxury of his teammate being behind him, right? So his teammate could play blocker for him just a little bit in this heat race. He gets a little bit sideways in the turn two. But I believe that's why we didn't see a move for the lead there because it's teammate Benick 1-2. They want to keep it that way in this heat race. Let's see if they work together now. Down to turn four. No move from Marco Romero. Pettit's going to have to defend a little bit from Murphy. Murphy's going to the inside. That's going to create a little bit of separation now for these top two. The two Benick drivers could try to pull away here. Late move there from Michael McGoy in the turn five. Moves Pettit wide. So Pettit from third to fifth now in two corners. Tristan Murphy on the charge, and you mentioned earlier, he is very quick out there. He's went purple a couple of times, and Murphy could very well have something to say for these two leaders, but he's running out of time. He's going to have to make that move here pretty soon. They come over the hump, the left-hander, then the right-hander that leads him to I-70 straight, and here's the move for the lead. And Marco Romero makes the move around Royce Vega, takes the top spot, and that brings Travis Pettit right up. We got him two wide heading into t to I-70 corner. Oh, yeah. Oh, Royce Vega late move to the inside of I-70. That is teammates battling there for the win of Heat 2. Vega goes wide. We're three wide down the front straightaway. Somebody's going to be in the grass. It's going to be inevitable contact, and there is. Marco Romero is going to win Heat 2. Royce Vega holds on to P2 here, and Travis Pettit might get P3 there. Oh, across the line, Tristan Murphy holds on to P3, but Murphy and McGoy make contact. Luckily, they both stay on the racetrack. What a finish there in Heat 2 for Mini Swift. Wild finish in Mini Swift for Heat number 2. These guys have been racing hard all day and uh, had some really good qualifying runs yesterday. Good movement. Uh, Marco Samet started 19, finishes in the top 10. So give you a rundown here in just a moment. But Marco Romero with a great job out there. Yeah, no. here's the replay yeah. there. I mean, I saw it happening, right? Because there's a bit of a dog leg that happens as you uh, cr crest that hump a little bit, and there was three wide. Somebody's going to turn left, and the guy on the inside is always going to be having to avoid the grass, right? So he's turning right. The car on your, on your right is turning left. They make contact. Luckily, they keep it on the racetrack there, but you never want to see two tires in the air. There's only so much real estate to deal with, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's get a quick rundown here of the results for Mini Swift. We're going to have Marco Romero, your winner there, making up six spots. It's a good run for the Bennick driver. It's a Bennick 1-2 there with Royce Vegas second. Tristan Murphy, your pole sitter for all three heats. He's going to finish third. Pettit fourth. Michael McGoy in fifth there. We're going to run down here uh, through six, through tenth here. William Kim, Fionn Sheen seventh. Jackson Tovo, two, uh, rough two heat races for him. I mean, he's had two uh, heat races where he you know, started second, fell back a little bit, finished the eighth. Marco Samet, good run for him, up ten spots in the ninth. Lucas Palacio up 11 spots in the 10th here. And then 11th is going to be uh, Jacob Majewski, Jackson Porter 12th, Landon Boer 13th, Martin Jaramello in 14th, and rounding out your top 15 is going to be Jackson Gibson. That's going to round out your top 15 in Mini Swift when we come back. KA Senior Groups A versus C. Don't go anywhere. Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. The 
We're based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com.
All right, welcome back here live from Car Chaser. Rounds three of the USPKS Championship Series here at Newcastle Motorsports Park. We're getting set to go Heat 2 racing for K100 Senior. This is groups A versus C. Let's take you quickly through our starting lineup, or at least the top 10 here. Austin Jers going to be your pole sitter for every single heat race that you see for group A. Connor Ferris, P2. Lemke, P3. Cooper Shipman, P4. He had a good run in the first heat. McGabriel should have started P5 in this race, had to do a last-minute motor change. He's in the back of the grid, so that's going to move Henry Lear into fifth, Aiden Rudolph sixth, John Burke seventh, Finnegan Bailiff is going to be in eighth, or ninth, sorry, Josh Holtz, or eighth, yeah, Josh Holtz ninth, and Josh Campbell in tenth. We have the green flag here entering turn one. Good start for Austin Jers. Lemke trying to hold the inside there on Connor Ferris. He might have it. No, Connor Ferris shuts the door on him. Ferris holds on to P2, Lemke P3. Good uh, start by Connor Ferris on the high side. Keeping his line and then finding a space, so he runs a solid second right now. Austin Jers with a good clean start. Uh, Brandon Lemke and Cooper Shipman will keep our eye on uh, Mick Gabriel to see how he progresses through the field. So we'll watch that throughout the race. But a lot of work uh, left ahead for Mick Gabriel. But Austin Jers, the early leader, Connor Ferris in tow. Yeah, good start there for Austin Jers. Austin Jers in that first heat race was a super impressive. I mean. The car got better and better as the race went on. It was it was fast enough to where he was pulling away from the draft of McGabriel, which is not something you see very often around uh, this racetrack, especially in K100 Senior. So I, I suspect you're going to see guys, you know, like Connor Ferris, Lemke, Cooper Shipman. They're not going to let that happen again. They're going to try to battle him and make him, you know, work his way for that victory. Yeah, you can see that now. And Ferris to the inside makes the pass. Connor Ferris, the leader, brings Brandon Lemke with him. So Connor Ferris, your new leader, uh, Lemke Shipman. And uh, Jers all the way back to fourth. Yeah, just like, just as, as I expected, really, these three guys, and I, I expect, you know, guys like Rudolph and Wheeler are going to make it hard for Jers as well. I mean, they're going to make it to where Jers is going to have to really fight his way forward. You know, he kind of said in the interview as well, they, they have the cart set up for the late race pace. He said he's going to make some tire pressure adjustments here, especially as the day gets hotter. But they have that cart set up for late race, and these guys know it. So if they can get around Jers early, make him work for it, and, you know, overheat his tires, it'll make his life very difficult here in the second heat. As you see Rudolph, Trying to go around, around the outside there. Jers not going to, you know, let him have it there. Rudolph goes for a late move there into the cell tower corner. Can't make it stick. Further back here, John Burke fighting with Josh Holtz. Holtz makes a good move around the CRG driver, but all that battling uh, separates the gap to Aiden Rudolph. And we're all the way back to eighth position in that league group with Josh Holtz. So uh, we've really got a, a big, actually further than that now, it, they've, they've been able to kind of clump together. So uh, we're back to about 12 spots with Finnegan Bailiff and Noah Rosser bringing up the tail end of that pack, and they're in 11th and 12th. So still a lot to be said for the outcome of this one. We're uh, one lap in. It'll be the second lap next time by Connor Ferris still leading the way. A little bit of a gap him and Lemke have over Cooper Shipman. Now that's Austin Jers now, but Austin Jers quickly passed by Aiden Rudolph and Cooper Shipman. So Jers went from fourth to third, now back to fifth. Aiden Rudolph, the man on a mission right now, up into P3. Cooper Shipman, a solid run so far in fourth, just, you know, holding where he kind of started. He won. He had a good run. I mean, he, was, he had a chance at a victory there, kind of threw it off the racetrack just a little bit, but he was able to make a good save there in the first heat, looking for more of that here in heat two, up into P4 right now. Jers uh, still in fifth. Burke made a move on Josh Holtz. See a move there for Jers up into P4, but John Burke on the CRG. Passes uh, Josh Holtz, and, he, and Wheeler followed him through. So now here's Burke up into P6. Still uh, Ferris leading the way, getting back to ninth spot, Josh Campbell. Josh just went purple with a 108, 893 in ninth. Let's take a quick check on Mick Gabriel. Mick hasn't really moved too much. He's up to 23rd, so not a lot of movement yet by Mick Gabriel. He's got a lot of work to do to get back up to that league group, at least to get a decent finish in this heat. Yeah, we just saw a move there for fifth. That was John Burke. Wheeler followed him through. You know, did the classic, open the hands a little bit early there, pushed Shipman a little bit off the racetrack. We'll see what race controls say about that one. But John Burke up in the fifth, Wheeler falls him through in the, in the sixth. Connor Ferris, Brandon Lemke, Aiden Rudolph up to third from seventh starting position, Austin Jers in fourth, and John Burke through the top ten. Henry Wheeler, Cooper Shipman, Josh Campbell, Josh Holtz, and Emery Lida cracking the top ten. Matthew Maccabee on the move, started in 17th. He's up to 13th. Still looking at Mick Gabriel. Now he's up to 21st, moved a couple more spots, and we'll keep following Mick Gabriel, who ran so strong in heat number one, had to start at the tail end of this one. We'll watch his progression through the field. It's all Jers peeking nose there. A little bit of an impatient move there in the cell tower. Didn't make it work. That's going to bring John Burke back into play here uh, for fifth. Jers, he, he knows his cart's fast. He needs to you know, buy his time. 
He has a good first heat under his belt. He needs to just keep it clean. Running in fourth right now. He, he knows the card's fast, and it'll come to him uh, later in this race. Further back, uh, we see the guy going purple. is Colin Lloyd. He's the kid who's had a real breakout year this year. You know, has he had a real solid win there in Utah uh, a few weeks back. Got a, got a ride now with Speed Concepts. Um, you know, really happy for him, and he's, he's right now purple. Hasn't been the weekend he would have wanted. He said they made a couple setup adjustments uh, from yesterday to today. He said the motor's looking good. He said he's driving good, and that they, they, they found a few things in the cart, and he's feeling good for this race coming up. Uh, 14th right now, but we'll see what he can do there. Up into 12th now for Colin Lloyd. Brandon Lemke seems content right now just drafting Connor Ferris. But that third and fourth uh, tandem of Aiden Rudolph and Austin Jurors right there about to pounce. In fact, Jurors looks to the oh. inside. Oh, and they get together. Austin oh. Jurors and Aiden Rudolph collide into turn four. That move was happening for a few laps. Now Austin Jurors was being really impatient with the Burrell driver there. And again, at the turn four, made a, you know, a move that maybe shouldn't have been made. Late move. Rudolph was already turning into the corner there. And now Austin Jurors and Aiden Rudolph are out of this heat race. Yeah, it's a tough break for both of them as they were that second tandem. And now that opens up for uh, John Burke, who he moves up to third with uh, just an opportunity there for him with the carnage in front of him. Uh, Henry Wheeler and Cooper Shipman, fourth and fifth. So a little gap there now for the leaders back to third. Connor Ferris and Brandon Lemke. John Burke just goes purple with a 108-217. Uh, Mick Gabriel up to 20th. So slow move there by Mick Gabriel. Got a lot of work left to get up to uh, a good scoring position. But back to the front with five laps in the book. It's still Connor Ferris and Brandon Lemke leading the way. But going purple in third, trying to chase down the leaders, John Burke. I'll tell you, really impressive stuff here from John Burke. I mean, to be two tenths faster than the leaders last time by by himself. He had no toe that entire lap, and here he, you can see him there, the, the CRG driver, John Burke, absolutely flying. He has no help of a draft, but the card is just on rails right now. Cooper Shipman behind him will have, you know, will inevitably catch him with the help uh, from Josh Campbell, I believe, behind him. So yeah, no, Henry Wheeler now. Henry Wheeler pushing Cooper Shipman up to John Burke. There they are. It is a three-cart train now for third place. If these three can work together, they'll inevitably catch Brandon Lemke and Connor Ferris up front. Yeah, you know, I definitely I think they've got enough time to do it. We're not quite to the halfway mark. We may have just hit halfway. So they still got a lot of racing left and only a separation of about a second. And now they've got the uh, benefit of a draft now with John Burke and Henry Wheeler together, Cooper Shipman and Josh Campbell. Those four drivers, if they stay in line and draft each other, I think, as you said, Alexander, will be able to uh, run down Connor Ferris and Brandon Lemke, which would give us a six-card battle. But right now, uh, Ferris and Lemke behaving themselves, staying in line. No threat right now by Lemke. He's happy just staying there and drafting Ferris. Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned him a few laps ago, but I'll mention him again. You're Colin Lloyd up four spots now into PA. It's a move there for Josh Campbell and Henry Wheeler. Josh Campbell moves, moves himself into the top five now here in Heat 2. But Colin Lloyd up four spots to PA. He's only 1.4 seconds from the lead right now. They must have found something in that go-kart from yesterday. Oh, there's a bit of a gap now to Josh Hoad, so something must have happened there uh, from last lap to this lap. Yeah, Colin Lloyd now four seconds back uh, when they crossed the line, so something must have happened there with Josh Hoad, but Colin Lloyd flying right now. Entering, Eddie, entering Eddie. showcase corner here. Connor Ferris still your leader over Brandon Lemke, but Lemke looks back. You're going to see him get a little bit, you know, antsy now here with Connor Ferris. He sees John Burke has closed that gap. He and Cooper Shipman have worked really, really well together this lap. They might even go purple this lap with how much they've closed that gap. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I see a move here from Brandon Lemke in a turn one. I agree. I think that Lemke see, hears footsteps, and he thinks, you know what, I, I got I to gotta lead the way here. I've, I've waited long enough. I can't, uh, I can't have these, uh, these other drivers catch up with me, which they almost have. Burke going purple, 108, 217 a couple of laps ago. It'll be three laps to go next time by, and John Burke has chased down Brandon Lemke. It's a six-card battle now for that top spot. Yeah, John Burke has closed the gap. He is now in the draft of Brandon Lemke. It is a six-cart train out front here in KA Senior. Brandon Lemke really experienced here in this class. So is Connor Ferris. These two guys know what it takes to win around this racetrack, but Brandon Lemke here was three to go, two and a half laps to go. Gets the curb there a little bit, entering a over there up the hill. So Lemke's now going to fall into the clutches of John Burke, who might make a move here to showcase hairpin. John Burke might peek a nose. He won't. Lemke has lost ground a little bit to Connor Ferris here, but down this back straightaway, John Burke's going to close the gap over Brandon Lemke. You see John Burke pointing to Cooper Shipman, saying he's going to go for the move. There he goes. John Burke on the CRG to the inside of Brandon Lemke. Makes it stick. Shipman's going to follow him through. So there goes John Burke to P2. 
John Burke on the move, allowing Connor Ferris to get a little bit of a gap, but they'll draft up to Ferris very quickly. Two lap to go sign, and it looks like uh, Josh Campbell may be slipping inside of, uh, of uh, Henry Wheeler on that uh, last lap. But uh, Connor Ferris now maybe a tenth of a second, one cart length, not much, as John Burke, who's been on the move the entire race, has now closed into the rear bumper of Connor Ferris. They'll see the white flag next time by. Mick Gabriel on the charge now has moved up to 12th position, may crack the top 10 before this is over. Yeah, Mick Gabriel absolutely flying right now. I mean, we knew he had the car underneath him with a P2 finish in the first seat. Must have saw something in the motor there to make to, you know, have to change it. Uh, but man on a mission right now, Mick Gabriel up in the P12 from last on the grid. So good run for Mick. Out front, though, John Burke didn't really have the infield he would have wanted. You know, the gap kind of extended there to Connor Ferris, but down this back straightaway with the help maybe of Cooper Shipman, he might have a run in I-70 hairpin, if not the front straightaway. Connor Ferris, not a lot he can do right now. Late move there for Lemke on Josh Campbell. He's going to make it sick. Lemke goes a little bit wide, but he's going to hold on maybe to P4. Yes, close the door on Josh Campbell. Josh Campbell's going to peek a nose for fourth. We see up front, though, a white flag here for Heat 2. Connor Ferris defends slightly on over John Burke. Shipman goes for the crossover, couldn't make it stick. Campbell's going to hold on there to P4. Wheeler, P5, and Lemke now falls back to P6. John Burke running out of time to make a move around Connor Ferris. Connor Ferris driving a flawless race so far. Really been hitting his marks. Nice uh, entry and exit uh, through the cell tower corner. And now heads back. Uh, we'll see him here in just a little bit heading over the hill. They'll be coming up our way. And uh, J Connor Ferris now about a two-car length advantage, stretching it out. A little surprising over John Burke on his own, pulling away some. And Burke is not close enough to pounce just yet. So now they come around the uh, hill and down to the showcase corner, turning right up to I-70 corner. Time about to run out for John Burke and Connor Shipman. This is it. And Ferris protects low down the I-70 straight. And they go high to try to make a crossover move. And now they're side by side for a second. That's not exactly what they wanted to do. And that played right into the hands of Connor Ferris. Ferris coming down for the checker, and I do believe Connor Ferris will pull it out. They were racing behind him. Winner of heat number two, Connor Ferris. Connor Ferris, solid a run for him, and we, we saw how strong he was in the infield of that final lap. I mean, they have that cart on absolute rails right now. Shipman with a good move on John Burke on I-70 hairpin to finish second, and John Burke, good run for him. Up five spots, a solid run in the third. Josh Campbell up seven spots to finish fourth, and Brandon Lemke, Lost a few spots there. He was in the mix. You know, got pushed off a few, pushed wide a few times. Rounds out your top five and Wheeler and P6. Solid run for the speed concept driver of Colin Lloyd to finish in seventh. Holtz in eighth. Emery Lada P9. And Mick Gabriel from the back of the grid to finish in tenth position. That rounds out your top ten here for KA Senior Groups A through C. When we come back, we're going to go more KA Senior Racing. This time for Groups B versus D. Don't go anywhere. Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. We're back here live from Car Chaser. Heats 2 for KA Senior Groups B, 
versus uh, D here. What a start there for, I believe, that was Peyton Phillips. Peyton Phillips out front, a solid start. Brayden Neves up in the P2. L.A. Mesa falls, falls back to P3. Slight defending there from Adam Maxwell on Aiden Levy. Not going to make it uh, work, though. Aiden Levy up in the P4 now. We see a little bit of contact there from Harley Keeble on Adam Maxwell. Harley Keeble is going to push Maxwell into the grass. And that's going to have his tires all dirty. He's going to push Harley Keeble wide. And now Keeble, that looks like a bit of a retaliation move there from Adam Maxwell. He wasn't happy what Keeble did to him in turn five. So he gave it back to him in uh, cell tower. But all that's just going to ruin both their races. And they're both going to fall back now to the clutches of these drivers back in the 10th. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on in mid-pack, and that's allowed the leaders to already kick out and uh, gap the field without even one lap in the books. They've already got about a second or second and a half on the rest of the field, those top three or four. Checking out early as we cross the line for lap number one, and we'll get a rundown here in the early uh, lineup. But we're side-by-side side for the top spot as they cross the stripe. And it's uh, Braden East, Peyton Phillips, and Elio Meza, one, two, and three, Aiden Levy and Eli Warren. That's your top five. Adam Maxwell, Lucas Zabo, James Overbeck, Jordan Perry, and Mason Surgener. That's your top ten, one lap in the books. But Braden Eves, the, uh, the new leader, as he crosses at the line and makes the pass and now checks out about two cart links over Peyton Phillips and Elio Meza. Yeah, Braden Eves on the MPG Car Public Go-Kart. See a late move there from Elio Meza in the cell tower and Peyton Phillips. Elio Meza up in a P2 now over the RPM driver, but Braden Eves, this is a track that he's always been really, really quick at. I mean, a really quick driver in general, but around this place, he seems to just have it down. Leads here in Heat 2 for K Senior. He's also been really, really quick in X30 Pro. That will be coming up in a few races' time, so Braden Eves feeling really good around this place on the MPG Car Public. Elio Meza, though, back in the P2. Phillips falls back to P3, but these guys are going to all work together. You know, here comes Aiden Levy now in the fourth, and that is, I believe, Eli Warren now uh, in fifth place there. He's up, uh, coming to the clutches there of Aiden Levy now. So there's a five-car breakaway up front, K Senior. They have at least a two-second advantage now over what I believe is Adam Maxwell down at P6. Rafe Shaw up to 13, started at 19, so he advances six positions in the first lap. And uh, uh, Harley uh, Keeble, a tough start, started uh, in sixth all the way back to 13, so he's trying to recover a little bit. Uh, going purple, Eli Warren, 109.073. So a driver to watch out there, Eli Warren, closing the gap on the leaders. There's a move there for P4, Aiden Levy on the car public there, making a move on Peyton Phillips. So he's going to go to P3. Peyton Phillips falls back from pole position now to P4. Now Eli Warren just buying his time, sitting there in fifth place, just seeing you know where he's quicker than these guys ahead of him. But this battling now, see Eli Warren makes a move on Peyton Phillips. So Phillips falling back even more from third to fifth in one lap. Again, all this battling gives Elio Meza and Braden Eves just a bit of breathing room they may need. Phillips goes back into the showcase hairpin on Eli Warren. So Phillips doesn't want to fall back to the back of this group for much longer. Goes back to P4. Again, this battling, though, look in the background. You see Adam Maxwell on the OTK go-kart. He's closed that gap. It was two seconds up to Eli Warren. This time by, I expect, much less. Yeah, they've got to be careful because if they start battling too much in third, fourth, and fifth, these two leaders, which are running very disciplined right now in line, are not, uh, are not racing each other, at least not yet. So Braden Eves and Elio Meza leading the way. Slowly but surely, Aiden Levy closing the gap. Peyton Phillips and Eli Warren trying to reel him in as well. Alex Feldstein goes purple on the last lap, a 109.027. Alex running in ninth. But uh, Braden Eves still leading the way. Uh, three laps in the books. Cool. we got seven to go. Elio Meza with a late move in the cell tower corner. Got the left rear, Braden Neves. Good driving for both of them. They're going to go side by side through the dog leg up the hill here. Elio Meza is going to make it stick, but he drops a tire in the dirt, and he's going to fall back to P2. Aiden Levy takes advantage of that and goes to P1. So Elio Meza stays in P2 somehow. Has to defend now from Braden Neves. But that defense turns into offense. Makes the move of Aiden Levy. Braden Neves going to push Levy into the dirt now. And Eli Warren's going to take advantage of that. He's going to go from fourth to second. And here comes Peyton Phillips now around the outside. Eli Warren around the outside of Elio Meza too. Peyton Phillips. Can he do it from third to first? He just might through the dog leg. Peyton Phillips on the outside here. Oh, he's going to lose a couple spots here now because of the push from Eli Warren. So Phillips. Briefly to first, now to fourth, maybe even fifth. Here comes Adam Maxwell making a three wide in the turn two. Adam Maxwell from sixth to fourth, and Peyton Phillips down in a P5 or P6, sorry. So Peyton Phillips ab aboard the RPM from first to sixth. And here comes the group from seventh through 11th. That is Jordan Perry on the Dap Cart Car Public. He's brought this entire group, and it is 11 carts now here in KA Senior. 
Elio Meza and Eli Warren leading the way, but so much has happened this last lap. A lot of side-by-side, -side, a little bumping and grinding, and it shuffled a lot of people around, some dust flying. But everybody has now seemed to settle in a little bit. But as you said, Alexander, we've got about 10 drivers now that are relatively close together. Pass for the lead, Eli Warren. Now we're three wide heading around that left turn and down into the showcase corner. And it is not settled yet as they go single file finally up towards I-70. It is all kicked off here for K.A. Senior. Just what you would expect around Newcastle Motorsports Park here in a draft-heavy class. Elio Meza has them all stacked up in the I-70. I can't even count how many go-karts we see on our screen right now. There's too many. Elio Meza on the Iron Rock, Iron Rock OTK. Braden Eve's going to try to go around the outside here in a turn one. No way he can make that stick. Yes, he does. The MPG car public driver makes his stick. Maxwell and Keeble get into it. No surprise there. That's retaliation from what we saw on lap one there. Harley Keeble giving it back to Adam Maxwell. Maxwell falls from sixth down to, you know, outside the top 15 now. Jordan Perry on the Dap Car Car Public. He's uh, making a few spots here now. Jordan Perry, we don't see him drive m uh, very much any longer, but making it work here up in the top eight. Yeah, tough break from Adam Maxwell. They've been going back and forth on it, and uh, Maxwell now well out of the top ten. In fact, Maxwell, let's see here, he's knocked all the way back to... Uh, yeah, timing and scoring still hasn't listed as seventh because they haven't crossed the line yet. Yeah. But, I mean, he's going to fall back easily outside the top 15 with how many go-karts are in this train now. But out front, Braden Neves has managed to hold on to P1. Elio Meza, P2. Eli Warren just being really patient in P3 there. Aiden Levy in fourth. And there's Peyton Phillips in P5. All that racing there for P6 has let these five carts pull away a little bit. But Jordan Barry, P6. What a run for Jordan Barry. Five-card breakaway crossing the stripe. Four laps to go this time by. And Braden Eves uh, still leading the way. Elio Mesa, Eli Warren, Aiden Levy, and Peyton Phillips. Adam Maxwell got shuffled all the way back to 22nd, nearly the end of the pack. So that was devastating for Adam Maxwell as he gets moved back quite a ways in the lineup from battling with that lead group. But Braden Eves still with a slight advantage over Elio Mesa and Eli Warren. Yeah, these top five carts have uh, smartened up just a little bit here. Aiden Levy makes a move on Eli Warren, makes a stick, really clean move. You're not going to lose a lot of time making a move in cell tower corner there. But with four to go, these guys have, you know, learned from what they've done in the first few laps. You know, they realize that, that they don't want to be a part of a 15-cart train because that's when things can really kick off as we see uh, Adam Maxwell falling, you know, victim of, one of, a, of, a, of a move that happens when carts bunch up together. Um, but Braden Neves and Elio Meza now have pulled away just a little bit after that move we saw from Aiden Levy. It is two carts out front here coming to three to go, but that won't last for much longer. Looking back, though, Jordan Perry has closed the gap to Peyton Phillips. He is absolutely flying right now in the Dap Car Car Republic. He's going to have to make a quick work of it because we're going to run out of laps here. It's uh, three laps to go this time by. Three to go for Braden Eves as he leads the way down into turn two with Elio Meza right in tow. Aiden Levy, Eli Warren, and Peyton Phillips through the top ten. Jordan Perry runs sixth. Harley Keeble seventh as he's recovered from a bad start. Lucas Zabo runs eighth. James Overbeck ninth. And Michael Levitt, your top ten running order. It'll be two to go next time by. Yeah, let's see what Aiden Levy can do here. He's, he's leading this second train here. He's pulling away just a little bit from Eli Warren. Gets a good run out of South Tower Corner. That's going to give him enough of a, of a breathing room here to get the toe here on Elio Meza just enough to when they head through this uh, uphill right-hander and heading into showcase corner. If Aiden Levy can just get that corner right, He'll get a good enough exit to get the toe entering the back straightaway here. Elio Meza might have to start thinking about making a move on Braden Neves. And Braden Neves right now, he's punching a big hole in the air. You know, he has, he has no draft, but he's towing everybody around the racetrack. Uh, so the MPG car public driver right now out front, but it's really difficult to lead around here, uh, especially in K.A. Senior. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and Braden Neves is having to do it on his own, as you said. Uh, Elio Meza taking advantage of that draft. Two to go, and we'll see if Meza makes a move. He does not. He's still content running right in the rear bumper of, of uh, <coughs> Braden Eves. But you got to think that maybe Aiden Levy's going to try to make a move now because he wants to be up there challenging for the lead. White flag next time by, slowly running out of time. Yeah, two to go here, about one and a half to go now, entering turn four. Aiden Levy has brought Eli Warren and Peyton Phillips with him. Looking a little further on the other, though, if things really kick off here, one and a half, sla one and a half laps to go. Harley Keeble and Jordan Perry are coming. Keeble went purple last time by at a 1087. Those two guys have been working together for these last couple of laps. Look in the background. Harley Keeble actually has gotten around Jordan Perry now. So Keeble, after a rough start, has clawed his way back up into P6 where he started. 
Let's see if things happen here to make him have a chance at a heat win. But Brayden Eves, still your leader here, exiting the showcase corner and down the back straightaway here. He's ducking his head. He, he wants every bit of pace he can get out of that MPG car public. Aiden Levy has closed the gap. He's on the bumper of Elio Meza now, entering I-70 hairpin and come to the white flag. Yeah, what a recovery by uh, Harley Keeble as he was well back in the pack after a terrible start, now challenging for a top five or six position. White flag is out, final lap. This is where Elio Meza has got to make the move, and if you're Aiden Levy or Eli Warren in third or fourth, the time is now. You can't wait any longer, and already it's getting dicey up front. Yeah, right now still, Braden Neves, your leader, has to defend slightly into turn four, holds on just enough. We saw just a slight uh, attempt at a move there from Elio Meza, but Braden Neves defends it well, gets a good run on the double right, so doesn't have to even defend in the cell tower. A good run again, exiting cell tower. Braden Neves may not even have to defend through the dog leg here. Elio Meza is going to fall to the clutches of Aiden Levy, but Aiden Levy has to now worry about Eli Warren behind him. And there he is, Eli Warren to the inside. He's going to make that move stick on the red speed OTK. Eli Warren to P3. Peyton Phillips, textbook crossover, couldn't make it stick. Good defense from Aiden Levy and Warren. So now Warren, Levy, and Phillips are going to be battling for third here. That's going to leave it a mano a mano fight with, two, with one corner to go. Let's see if Meza can make anything happen entering uh, I-70 corner. Almost out of time. They'll be coming down for the checkered as we speak. And it looks pretty good for Braden Eves. Last chance for Elio Meza. Checkered flag comes out. It's going to be Braden Eves, your winner in the KA Senior uh, C B versus D race. But uh, three wide across the line. A lot of racing on back in the pack. Elio Meza running in second. Strong run by Eli Warren. He actually went purple on lap nine, a 108.516. Just ran out of time. But good racing out there by all as we finally got things kind of settled in a little bit with about three or four laps to go. Braden Eves, your winner. Elio Meza finishing in second, followed by Eli Warren, Peyton Phillips, and Aiden Levy. Through the top ten, Harley Keeble with a strong run after a bad start. Finishes in sixth, James Overbeck, Jordan Perry, Michael Levitt, and Dalton Haynes. That's your top ten finishing order, KA100 Senior. When we come back, we're going to have X30 Junior on track for their heat number two. Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials. Welcome back to Newcastle Motorsports Park for X30 Pro Junior, presented by Rawlison Performance Group. We're coming to the green, and we are underway on the first attempt. Anthony Martella leads them into turns one and two with Charlie Smith slotting into second. Ernesto Rivera into third as they go through the first couple of corners, and it's single file for the top four. You have that black and white SCR red speed of Martella, the all-blue and white suit of Charlie Smith, and then the two RPG Cosmics, Ernesto Rivera and Jackson Wolney, third and fourth through the horseshoe. Good clean start by Ernesto Rivera, starting from the outside, 
Had to give up one spot, but found his place, and now is the spot back now as he moves around Charlie Smith and takes over the second spot, trying to run down Anthony Martella. Martella now enjoying about a five-cart length gap as they work their way through lap number one. Yeah, that nice little pass hurt Rivera's obviously exit there. A little slide through the green corner. You saw the top of his steering wheel kind of go a bit to the left-hand side coming out of the right-hander. Passing further back, how about Diego Guillo? He picks up a spot there on that Iron Rock Motorsports Tony Kart getting around Jensen Burnett's all-yellow machine. So we'll come to the line to put one down, nine laps to go in our PGX 30 Junior as we get set for more heat racing action. And if those of you tuning in, you get a whole other round of heats later this afternoon before it goes to KC Premium members exclusively tomorrow for main events. And LCQs is off the racetrack is Jackson Wolney with a slide job that did not pay off. And now he's got dirt on the tires, Randy, and they are swarming behind him as well. That could have been a lot worse than it was, but it still didn't uh, bode well for Jackson Wolney trying to make that move. Uh, lucky for Charlie Smith, he uh, falls back into that third spot. Ernesto Rivera trying to chase down Anthony Martella, but Martella, who's been strong all weekend, still leads the way with uh, Rivera second, and now Charlie Smith running in third. Yeah, Charlie Smith now has a big gap out back. It'll be all on, on his own to try and run back up to the top two. They come out of the green corner towards the infield hairpin, and you can see nobody else in sight from fourth on back with how much they battled uh, just off of Jackson Wolney's one mistake. And these races are too short to afford any one of those, Randy. You just you can't give up too much time. Ten laps. I mean, it feels like a long time around on the lap at a, a minute, five, minute, ten second pace, but it goes by really quickly, and you've got to be on your game from lap one on. And you hate to see it happen when they're up in the first two or three positions because those are good starting positions, good finishing positions, I should say. But, uh, you know, Adrenaline starts flowing, and uh, you think you've got an opportunity to make a move, and as it turns out, you don't. But on back in the pack, you can see it as they're trying to work their way up. But uh, there are times sometimes when patience needs to outweigh the competitive spirit, and you need to just slow down a little bit, not necessarily slow down, but back it out of there if you don't think you can make the move. That doesn't always happen, and it, when it doesn't happen right, uh, it really uh, hurts them immensely, and that's what uh, we just saw with Jackson Walney. Well, I will say, I think we got a move coming up here for the lead sooner rather than later. Here it is, right here in the green corner. Ernesto Rivera had been tracking down Martella the last lap and a half. He goes through. Charlie Smith follows. Now Charlie locks into second, not going to go by him in the infield hairpin. And Anthony Martella, the Canadian, will have to go to work. So you got a California kid there in second. Ernesto Rivera hailing all the way from Mexico City, Mexico, uh, leading the way coming out of I-70. And so three different countries, three different race teams, three different chassis between the Cosmic, the EOS cart, and the Red Speed headed down to turn number one all under that OTK master brand manufacturer umbrella with two down and now three down and complete seven laps to go. Where's our gap set? It's about two seconds back to the next group led by Wolney and Steven Miller. They've pulled away a little from Oliver Weldon. They made up three tenths on them that time by a 67.69 for these two on screen compared to a 67.9 for Ernesto. So as long as they stay hooked up, there is a chance they could run back forward. And Oliver Weldon trying to reel him back in after losing some time there. Did go purple on that last lap, a 107.537. Oliver up to sixth. So Oliver Weldon trying to close back into that top five. Ethan Tovo losing six spots. Moving up seven spots, Emma Kate Scarborough up to 16. She started 23rd. Uh, Oliver Weldon, a big mover. He started 10th. He's up to 6th, but he's trying to uh, regain a little bit of that gap and uh, try to close in on those leaders. But Ernesto Rivera still leading the way. Yeah, Ernesto Rivera doing a fine job leading the way. Let's see what the lap time looks like this time by. I think it's going to be a pretty good one. Won't be good enough to keep the lead as Martella goes back on by. But Rivera, 67.91 as he had to back out of it at the line. Martella, 67.6. And that slower lap having to get past into turn number one, go off line, gives Martella a little gap. It shortens that gap from third back to fourth as Martella takes uh, retakes command with Charlie Smith still looking on in third. But again, Stephen Miller going around Jackson Wolney, a 67.47. That was half a second better than Rivera, two-tenths better than Anthony Martella. The gap is down to 1.5 seconds from third to fourth. Oliver Weldon continues to climb up towards the front. 107.475 going purple on that last lap for Oliver Weldon running in sixth. But Ernesto Rivero, Anthony Martella, and Charlie Smith, still the uh, the top three out there that have 
Checked out now about one and a half seconds over Stephen Miller. Yeah, they have, uh, again, pulled away early off the one mistake from Jackson Wolney. That's what split this whole field up was one bobble on lap number two. Uh, going wide at, right here at the end of the front stretch in turn number one. Now, look at the run Martella got. Thanks to Rivera pushing him. That kind of doubled the distance from Charlie Smith back up to uh, Rivera to make it three or four car lengths. Charlie's on the cusp of losing touch with the top two. Needs to put a good lap together right here to stay with the three and make it still a three-car pack. Miller and Wolney that time, 67.1s apiece. The leader, 67.4. This will slow him down more as now Rivera goes back through. Smith to second, make it back to third. Martella quickly with a decisive answer to fight that backward momentum. He'll put himself back to P2. That's exactly what Stephen Miller and Jackson Wolney needed. And as you can see, when they start racing up there, those two have closed in, as has Oliver Weldon. So we could have as much as a six-cart battle before this one's over. It'll be four laps to go next time by Stephen Miller going purple on the last lap, a 107-122. And let's give a call out to Carter McMurray starting in 15th up to 9th. And Enzo Vidmontien, who had a great run in heat number one, also on the charge starting in 13th. He's already in the top 10 running in 8th. Here we go, coming down the front straightaway. Look at 4th and 5th there, that red and yellow dap cart of Stephen Miller. Gets bigger and bigger in the picture lap by lap. Now with four laps to go, another 67.1 out of Miller. A four out of Rivera. As Smith, that was a nice move in turn three. Take over second. Uh, but Stephen Miller and Jackson Wolney are now only 1.2 seconds back from the lead. They are almost there. One to two more passes for the top spot. They will be there with the final couple laps coming up. So how about that? Not giving up. Jackson Wolney not getting too rattled by the bobble from earlier in the race. As he goes a little bit wide there, coming out of cell tower, loses a little bit of touch to Stephen Miller, but Miller is already into the drafting window of Anthony Martella. He's getting close enough. He should be easily able to stay with him as they go to the infield hairpin. This time by, Randy, three laps to go. Anyone's got it. It's about to be a five-car party. Ernesto Rivera leading the way most of the way here, but he's going to have some company now. It's a battle for second and making the pass. Charlie Smith gets passed by... Anthony Martella. Martella and Smith. Yeah, but that was Martella going back around yeah, Charlie right, Smith right. right there. They'd swapped it already yep. once in the lap, and they swapped it again. They've continued to swap it. It's hard to keep up. Again, all in the same overall manufacturer. Uh, just a difference of color between them. The black and white there in Anthony Martella. The blue and chrome is Charlie Smith there on the Nash Motorsports machine. Steven Miller. Jackson Wolney still fourth and fifth and again surprisingly enough with that pass whereas some of the other laps uh, they pass in different sections that one move by Martella didn't lose them any time they stayed at an even two or three car length gap to Ernesto Rivera but it did back them up to Stephen Miller and Jackson Wolney they are there now second through fifth are all a car length apart Oliver Weldon did lose a spot to Jensen Burnett on that last lap Oliver back to seventh going purple Stephen Miller on the last lap of 106 874 as they battle it out for that top spot, all very close. That top group, three seconds ahead of sixth place, Jensen Burnett. And he now is into third with that nice move in the infield hairpin. How about that for that red and yellow dap cart on the Chad Dawkins Racing banner? Stephen Miller up to third, still climbing, had the, held the fastest lap of the session multiple times over. He'll reset it again, 66.71, the only one of the only two drivers in that 66-second bracket. Stephen Miller is flat flying right now through turns three and four. Here we go up the hill, little bobble for Miller that time. But they're going to block for the lead. That'll bring him close. And so Ernesto Rivera feeling the pressure from Martella. Low line and through five. We go through the horseshoe. Over to the cell tower corner here this time. Here comes Charlie Smith back on Stephen Miller. Jackson Wolney trying to get both of them. They will. And Miller's going to go back on Charlie. He'll go all the way back to fifth. Jackson Wolney, the uh, one that really came out on that one as he got around both drivers. And now Miller trying to make his way back up towards the front as well. But Rivero and Martella have taken this as an opportunity to check out and settle the race on their own as they now gapped him about a one-second advantage. Yeah, that gap now big time here for Ernesto Rivera and Anthony Martella. And that's good news for Martella. He can open up his entry. He can leave himself vulnerable going into the corner, whereas when you got a guy on your bumper, you can't go wide to set up for the crossover. Here comes the run to the line. White flag in the air. One lap to go. Rivera low, Martella high. Crossover coming out. Not enough. Let's see to two and three here, Ernesto. Going to stay narrow in three. He'll cover that spot off as well. We go over to turn four and up the uh, short shoot to the horseshoe. 
Ernesto Rivera doing a fine job of defensive driving right now to keep her Anthony Martell at bay. About a half a lap to go for Ernesto Rivera. Can he hang on? Will Anthony Martella have something for him? It's down to those two drivers as Stephen Miller, although he's been one of the fastest drivers on the track, has had to battle Charlie Smith and Jackson Walney and hasn't been able to focus on closing in on that lead group. So it'll be down to Ernesto Rivera and Anthony Martella. And right now Rivera has a pretty good gap on Martella as they wind it now down to the uh, showcase corner to the high side. Now Martella trying to slip around, can't quite do it. They'll head to I-71 last time. And let's see if uh, Rivera can hang on. Going wide is Martella. They'll try the crossover now. Heading down for the final time, and it's side-by-side, side and Martella makes the move. Here comes Stephen Miller as well. This one's not over. Coming to the line, Miller's got a big run, but it won't be enough. Anthony Martella wins the heat race there. Nicely done by the SCR Red Speed driver. He was looking for that crossover for those final two laps at every passing zone, Randy, and he gets it done on the last chance in that last corner run to the checkers. What a performance for Anthony Martella here in heat number two. Yeah, great racing by all. That was, a, that was a good run by these junior drivers. But Anthony Martella, a great run. Uh, Steven Miller had it when it was needed right at the end. Ernesto Rivera finishes third. Charlie Smith fourth. Jackson Wolney fifth. Finishing in sixth, Jensen Burnett. Oliver Weldon seventh. Enzo Vidmontien eighth. Nathan Dupas and Carter McMurray, your top ten. That's the rest of the results as they cycled on through. Let's go down the pit lane here. One of our newest partners on Kart Chaser is the Skip Barber Racing School. And uh, they have their representative Carter Bowles here with us at Newcastle Motorsports Park. He's standing by with David to talk about their newest involvement in uh, becoming a part, an integral part in our karting community. Dave? Hello, hello. Do we have audio? Okay. Hey, I think we have audio. Okay. Yeah, we got you, Dave. We got audio. We got you. We got you? Okay. We're here with Carter Bowles. Hopefully uh, the mic actually works, but I, I did all this great intro and then we had nothing. But uh, no, Skip Barber Racing School at all levels does such great things for auto racing in this country. And obviously, you know, we got some pros here, but we also got some people looking to take the next step. Carter, tell us a little bit about what Skip Barber Racing School is doing here at Newcastle Motorsports Park for the USPKS. Yeah, I mean, what we really want to do is find that real karting talent. Uh, a lot of these young guys, they're just getting started and they might not know about the next step up uh, into cars. It's a big bridge to cross, but we kind of want to make it a little easier for these guys and their families stepping up to the next level and they learn a lot here and we love to teach them at our school as well to make sure they're ready to go to the next level. Well, we talk about that next level. I don't know exactly what the percentage of the Indy 500 went to Skip Barber, but it was a significant portion of them. Talk about some of your alumni. What are some big names that have come through the Skip Barber racing ranks? So about 20 of the 33 IndyCar, Indy 500 starting field graduated through Skip Barber. Obviously the winner, Joseph Newgarden, was a graduate, a champion. Uh, a lot of the guys, Sergio Perez in Formula One was a, was a Skip Barber champion as well. A lot of these guys started in Skip Barber, learned what they know now at Skip Barber, and, and still credit what they know now to Skip Barber and all the uh, instructors and great personnel we have in our series as well. Skip Barber Racing School doing a lot to help racing at all levels in this country. It's a great thing. and. Uh, definitely check it out if you're looking to make that next step. Thank you, Carter. Thank you, Dave. Now let's go back to the on-track action. The big boys and girls X30 Pro presented by Franklin Motorsports. Heat number two. It was a barn burner. Heat number one with Joe Turney, Diego Ramos, Ryan Norberg, and everybody getting after it. Ramos lead him to the line, and rookie Elio Mesa is going to slot into second. A better start from the outside groove as it was a slow run to the line for everyone. They'll safely make their way through turns one and two. It's single file for the top seven, and it is Ramos over Mesa. Blake Nash and that Nash Motorsports Sports EOS card into third. Mesa saying, don't block, go forward. Ramos saying, yeah, I don't know if I trust you yet. I'll stay on the low side. Harley Keeble on that PK Sports of North America Sodi card in fourth. Ryan Norberg is fifth. Pauli Massimino sixth. Austin Garrison is seventh. Braden Eves in eighth. Mateus Morgato is ninth. As they climb the hill over through the kink and into the green corner, it is all behind the Brazilian. That PSL Carding Bureau Arts under fire. Elio Meza, the rookie on the Iron Rock Motorsports Tony card, leading the way to the infield hairpin. 
Good move by Elio Mesa and a good move on the start. When they dropped the green flag, he immediately found a spot on the low side and fell in right behind uh, Diego Ramos and now leads the way with... Uh, uh, Ramos right there yeah, with Ramos. Nash right there with Norberg going by on Harley Keeble for fourth. Here we come down the front stretch. Braden Eves is on the wayside. He'll lose a couple spots as up for the lead. Ramos wants it back. He'll go with Meza to the inside. And Blake Nash wants to as well. And the rookie's off. Elio Meza off the racetrack. He'll lose four or five spots as he tries to slide in front of Austin Garrison. And Harley Keeble gets an elbow there from Paulie Massimino. He'll go to the wayside. And Keeble's back to about 10th or 15th down the short shoot. They are not taking any prisoners here, Randy. It is wild stuff as Braden Eves is off in the dirt. Here's Turney. Crossover. Eves going to go back. Ingrata gets through. It is just chaos all the way through the mid-pack. Did the track just get narrower when I wasn't looking, Xander? It doesn't seem to be quite as wide as it was earlier in the day. No, I don't know what it is. Problems for Cade Downs and the RPG Cosmic. The 307 is out going into the turn five horseshoe section. So end of the day for end of the uh, heat race for Cade is Ryan Norberg goes to second. And Blake Nash, the California kid, leads them up the hill to the I-70 hairpin for the first time today. Norberg to second. Paulie Massimino on another smooth start is into fourth. He kind of came out of nowhere at the end of that first heat race. He's much closer now. It's Mesa fifth, Garrison sixth, Massimino wants third. Ramos looks back, says, I'll give it to you. Let's him go into turn number one. And Pauly Massimino now cracks the top three. A little bit of a four-card breakaway now. Massimino on that pass went purple with a 107 200. They're all chasing Blake Nash, but Ryan Norberg right there on the rear bumper. Massimino, Diego Ramos, and Elio Mesa, your top five. Austin Garrison, Joe Turney, Alessandro Dutulio, Matthew Margada and Aiden Ingrata, your top ten. Pass for fifth. Pass for the lead. Ryan Norberg takes the number one plate to the point. Coming out of the cell tower, Austin Garrison got around Elio Meza a moment ago. He was nowhere to be found in the top five in heat one. And Austin Garrison is there here in heat number two. It's Ryan Norberg, Mr. Seven-Time, lead into the infield. Blake Nash trying to put one back on the champ. They'll bank tires. Norberg into the dirt, side by side for the lead. And Norberg saying, no, 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 follow me. Yeah, no one's going to listen. They're still going at it. Three wide, Norberg. Norberg in the middle, Garrison down low, Nash up high, Pauly Massimino is your leader, coming out of the I-70, and there's more contact as Garrison and Norberg bang tires, here comes Diego Ramos, back to the lead to turn one, not enough, furled black flag given to one driver there going down the front stretch, we'll find out who that was, it is a 10 car train, it is tough to keep up with, but it's the BJR MDRLN car to Massimino as there's more wrecks, further back, Way in the back. Brooke Nachman's involved. Brayden Domey is involved. One more Tony card is involved as well. Over in turn one, that was around the high 20s. As the leaders continue to battle, look at Norberg. Look how far back he is. There goes Alessandro Tulio, the newly signed Cart Republic driver. And off is Joe Turney. Turney's off in the cell tower. He'll get right in front of his new chassis teammate, going to the kink. And everyone just trying to hang on for dear life as Massimino leads. Look at Ingrata to six. Here's Norberg on Turney. He'll go by with Tulio, and it is so hard to keep up with Randy because there is so much going on everywhere. Is this the, the last lap going for the checkered flag? No, wait, there's seven laps to go. Unbelievable. We do have a little bit of calmness now, if you want to call it that. A four-car breakaway with Massimino, Ramos, Nash, and Meza as they head to the stripe. It'll be six to go this time by, but, uh, boy, just a lot of bumping and banging going on there. Some off-track excursions. And things have settled somewhat. Two carts, uh, Austin Garrison and Aiden Ingrata, fifth and sixth, as they try to draft up to that lead group again. But right now, about a one-second advantage for Ramos, Massimino, Nash, and Mesa. Diego Ramos has been able to stay out of trouble so far with that pole position starting spot for all three heat races. Your heat one winner already has the best one in the first heat. Now he's side by side with Massimino. He's going to run out of real estate. Nash and Meza will give him room, but they will go by. Here comes the SCR Red Speeds. Austin Garrison in fifth. Aiden Ingrata in six as they go to the green corner. They'll trade the fourth spot. Garrison on Ramos. He goes wide. Ingrata's trying to follow. He does. And now Elio Meza feeling the pressure for third. He'll block the low side. So it's six. 
And it's Paulie Massimino who is still looking for that maiden pro national win. Him and Blake Nash. Here comes Garrison, multi-time race winner, broken here four-year winless streak earlier this year at the Winter Series. He's digging, and on his partial schedule, he's up to third. A much better weekend than in Houston. And with a bent-up nose cone after the contact with Norberg, you'd have to think maybe the front end of that go-kart got bent as well as the rear is typically heavier, and it went over the top of Garrison's front tires as in Grotta. Oh, look at that right there a little more contact as Mesa drops back and here comes the world champ Mateus Morgato side by side with Elio Mesa back and forth for sixth and there's a look look at Joe Turney Ryan Norberg they are all the way at the back of the second pack headed into the cell tower unbelievable changes in this race from start to, to where we are now Paulie Massimino and Blake Nash with about three quarters of a second six to seven tenths of a second advantage right now from that second group Austin, Gearing lead, Austin Garrison leading the charge in that second group, trying to close in on those leaders. And now he's in the leaders as well. Look at that here as this second group continues to go side by side. Turney throwing a wheel at Braden Eves there on the scoreboard. He'll go wide. Norberg follows through. This is Morgato into Tulio at the front of it. Turney blocking from Norberg. But Mateus Morgato in that seventh position or sixth position. Elio Mays is all the way back. And up front, they are going to trade the lead. Massimino falls to third. Nash up to the lead. Austin Garrison, highest he's been all weekend. Six spots gained now to second for the Davie, Florida native. Four so. laps to go, three laps next time by. Looking at some of the movers, Alessandro DeTulio up seven spots from 14th. Austin Garrison now up to first, and he started in, in, in an eighth. So he's uh, been on the move as well. Great run by Austin Garrison. Uh, Cooper Shipman up eight spots from 19th, trying to crack the top 10. But uh, Blake Nash and Austin Garrison battling up front. Garrison, your new leader. Yeah, Austin Garrison felt really confident about his piece yesterday as now Norberg throws a haymaker on Mateus Morgato. He gets through, and him and Turney continue to carve forward. Massimino losing that third spot. That's Ingrata going by. Ramos is fifth. He says, all right, you can tuck back in line. We're safe enough in the top five. Diego Ramos already with one heat win. He doesn't need to win every heat because it is such a big scramble from uh, guys one heat to another. Again, Turney and Norberg leading that next group there. In the middle of them, I believe, is ADT, Alessandro DiTullio. Three laps to go. Austin Garrison showing the way in this five-car lead pack. Blake Nash, Aiden Ingrata, Paulie Massimino in fourth on the blue and yellow LN cart. And fifth in line is Diego Ramos, the pole man. Two and a half left. It's anyone's guess. Do you have a guess, Randy, at who we've got taking this one to the checkers? I'm shocked Diego Ramos is all the way back to fifth. He's been leading the charge all day, but that's just the level of competition. I, I like the looks of Austin Garrison right now. He's got a little bit of a gap. He's been strong late. And I think uh, he's got as good a shot as anybody unless they can draft up to him. But he's got a nice little gap. It'll be two to go next time by. Austin Garrison, slight advantage over Blake Nash, Aiden Ingrata, Pauli Massimito, and Diego Ramos. They're all close enough to pounce. But right now, surprisingly, Austin Garrison on his own is gapping just a little bit over Blake Nash. Yeah, just a touch, but that draft will pull that pack back close to him. Austin Garrison's not home for yet. It's about to really get wild for the lead and the win. Two to go here at the line. Garrison trying to hang on. Blake Nash trying to snag a heat race victory there in second. He'll pull up to within a car length after Garrison built that gap. And now he's going to be looking before Garrison pulls back away. No, here comes his teammate. Aiden Ingrata is up to second. Nash back to third. Massimino fourth. Ramos fifth here as they head to the horseshoe. It's a speed concepts racing one-two. And Blake Nash defending from Massimino when Ramos is trying to hang on for dear life while he cleans those tires off, headed into the cell tower and out of it. And that's what Austin Garrison needed was a little bit of slicing and dicing behind him so he could get a little bit of a gap. But now uh, Aiden Ingrata has closed up enough where he can challenge. And Blake Nash isn't out of the picture yet by any means. Yeah, a little bit of a wide run out of the green corner for Blake Nash, but not bad. Aiden Ingrata did not have a good qualifying effort. He's had to come from 13th as Ramos and uh, Massimino swapping the spots there. And Diego went a little bit too wide, so that hurt him. But he'll clean that tire off coming down the straightaway. But for Aiden Ingrata, having to start 13th every heat race, that's pretty difficult. He's done a good job to get himself all the way up to second. White flag in the air. What's he going to do with his teammate, his coach up the road in front of him? He'll follow him to one as Massimino goes back on Ramos for that fourth spot. And now that's going to bring more drivers up to him. It's Blake Nash outnumbered now in third. SCR 1-2. Look at this whole gaggle. Turney, Norberg, DeTulio, Morgato, 
all top level guys running down. Fellow top level guys, look at Tulio. What a send there on Ryan Norberg to take away the sixth position. And they're still going at it as Morgado looks on. What a run by Tulio. Started in 15th and now has moved up to uh, sixth. So a great run by Alessandro Tulio. And back to the leaders, Austin Garrison and Aiden Ingrata. Time winding down. This is the final lap. Can Austin Garrison hang on? It's as close as it can get right now as they head to I-70. Aiden Ingrata is in a perfect spot. Blake Nash is not close enough to force Ingrata to go high or low. Garrison's going to leave the door open. I think Ingrata might just ride with him to the line, maybe see if he can slingshot it. Austin Garrison, Aiden Ingrata, going to make the Speed Concepts Racing boys happy. Here comes Ingrata's run at the line. Garrison's tight with him, side by side. Give it to Aiden Ingrata by five hundredths of a second. He'll slingshot engage, pull it off. Aiden Ingrata, Heat 2 winner from 13th on the grid. Nash, all he can do is watch, and everybody else left scratching their heads after a crazy second heat. We thought that first heat was wild, Randy. They just found another gear to go even more spectacular. And what a great move by Aiden Ingrata. He waited till the slingshot on the front straight, so there was no chance of getting underneath uh, Austin Garrison and causing some sort of an accident. He waited. They got in a straight line. He pulled the draft, got a good slingshot to the inside, crossed him at the line. First and second finish for the two. Everybody's uh, clean through the uh, through the finish. So a good uh, a good move by uh, by Aiden and Grata to pull off the win, and a patient move where there was uh, really no doubt it would be down to him and Austin Garrison for the win. Yeah, they, they were definitely head and shoulders better than at least Blake Nash. Here's a look at the top 15, how they stacked up there with Ingrata, Garrison, Nash, Massimino, and Ramos, the top five. Turney, DeTulio, Morgato, Norberg back to ninth by the end. Eves recovered to 10th after his off earlier on in it. And then further down the order, championship points leader Brandon Carr, 20th. Not what he needs. And we saw, of course, Braden Domey, Sam Kate, Kate Downs, and Brooke Nochtman all collected an incidents in that one. Here's a look over at the scale area. Ryan Norberg on screen. He's obviously frustrated with that one and can't blame him. I'm sure a lot of those guys would want some of those moves back or some of the moves back from other drivers made on them. But it was an intense heat race here in X30 Pro. And it seems like the temperature getting up on the air is bringing the temperature up on the racetrack. The chaos continuing all the way through. We'll go to a commercial break here. Is it? Oh. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's stay on this one. Looks like we've got some penalties coming in. That right there is the uh, steward, Bob Kreppen. And it looks like Ryan Norberg has received a position penalty in the number one plate. So that's going to bump him further back from ninth. There's probably a couple of pushback bumper penalties that might come in as well. But not what you want to see if you're the reigning champ trying to back up that title. As the classy, we've heard from him that it's gotten tougher. But he gets one, and there's still more sheets in Bob's hand that it's easy to work his way down. Looks like that's one for Nicholas Terlecki as well. He'll get one in the 388. <laughs> Early on in the session, and what sent Gaffera all the way down the order. That was the rookie on the BJR MDR cart. That took him out of contention. So that was a, a quick look over there at what happened to Caleb G. So the rookie having a bad run in heat number two after a decent one in heat one. But again, he's starting in that hornet's nest there in the teens. Good stuff for Diego Ramos. See him on screen. He's rolled on through tech and uh, clean, another clean race for him with penalties and chaos around. Diego Ramos able to stay pretty clean in this one. He survives. Turney, uh, again, a decent rebound from a not-so-great quality effort. That's kind of been story of his season, it feels like, unfortunately, with uh, Houston as well having to come through in the heats to eventually get that main event win. And, of course, let's look at that finish one more time. Aiden Ingrata pulling it off at the line there over Austin Garrison. Garrison, nothing he can do. That long pawn straight away. So long, so much time. If you're not battling for second, you'll almost always be able to pull alongside and drag race to the finish. And this time it's the, the kid putting one over on the mentor in Austin Garrison. Still a good second place result in a 1-2 for Speed Concepts Racing. As we get set now for KA Masters. They're coming to the line here, Randy, to get set to go green. There's a look more at the scale line as they get set to go, but we've got the field formed up, I believe, 
on the circuit and coming down the front stretch. And here they are, Laurent Schumardan and Mike Rollison, your front row, Nikki Coelho and uh, Adam Krepp and Mario Barrios all in line. And we are racing down to one. And look at the jump for Mr. Mike Rollison from the outside. He'll take the lead by four car lengths over to turns two and three in that pink and purple OTK machine. Great jump for Mike Rollison. Already a gap of about five cart links over Adam Kreppen and Laurentio Mardan. So Mike Rollison with a good jump in the uh, K100 Masters class. Speed Concepts, sponsor of K100 Masters. Mike Rollison, the early leaders that work, work their way through our first lap. The 427 of Mike Rollison working his way through the back part of the, part of the circuit. Now heading down our direction here over the hill shortly around the green corner. But it's Mike Rollison leading the way with Adam Kreppen and Laurentia Mardan in tow. Here they come into the infield hairpin for the first time with them all lined up. And at least it's been a, a little more tame for the K Masters. Granted, they don't have nearly as many competitors that have shown the speed to run at the front. X30 got about 20 out of that 35 car class. Only about five to seven guys realistically with a chance at the win. We saw that first heat, Randy. It came down to about four of them. Mario Barrios, Lorenzo Mardan, Mike Rollison, and Adam Krepp. And Nikki Coella was up there early, then kind of faded off. Now we see the top five with some separation as Mardan, the pole man, back to fourth. At least rebounds one spot, getting around Barrios at the line to kind of claw his way back to his original starting spot. Nikki Coelho is up to second. So Mike Rollison now with a nice little gap over Coelho, about a half a second. Adam Kreppen third, Laurentia Mardan fourth, Mario Barrios in fifth through the top ten, Danilo Romalo, Martin Stone, Ariel Castro, Tim Meyer, and Scott Kopp. But Mike Rollison now with a half a second advantage, but slowly but surely Nicky Coelho trying to reel him in. Coelho running in second. Adam Kreppen runs third. Kreppen was strong in heat number one. But uh, Rollison now the driver there chasing as they come by uh, – down the hill and through the right-hand showcase corner and up towards I-70. And you can see on track that gap from Rollison to Coelho is tightening up as they come around I-70 corner next and down the long pond straight. It will be Rollison with a slight advantage over Nikki Coelho, Adam Kreppen, <coughs> and Laurentia Mardan. Mardan gets around Kreppen, and he'll now try to chase down Coelho for third, crossing the stripe for lap two, your leader, Mike Rollison. Yeah, Mike Rollison putting some consistent laps together. Uh, that second lap still pretty good. He did lose a little bit of time as he goes a little wide there in turn number two. So Coelho closes up. He actually went then up, up and over the curb at turn number three. But for Nicky Coelho, the gap is coming down for the lead. Mardan the fastest by half a second, though, that time by Randy. Laurentia Mardan, old Larry, is getting going right now here in heat number two. He's been strong. He was strong yesterday. He was strong in heat number one. And a lot of times, if he doesn't get the start he wants, he's more than patient enough to fall back and just let the race come to him, and that's what he's doing right now. And that lead group all of a sudden isn't just Mike Rollison, but in fact there's about five drivers now awfully close together. And it looks like uh, Laurentia Mardan is closing the gap now on, uh, on Rollison, as is Nicky Coelho. It's Coelho second, Mardan third, and then Coelho to the high side. Trying to make the pass and does. And it's Nicky Coelho now on top with uh, Laurentia Mardan following him. Looks like Rollison gets shuffled all the way back to third. And we're too wide across the stripe. And it's Mardan, oh. Coelho, and Rollison. Oh, off the racetrack for Mike Rollison. Coelho was trying to tuck into third there, Randy, and he clipped the right rear tire of Mike Rollison in turn number one, and it sent Rollison into the grass, and now the uh, leader for the first half of heat number two is all the way to the rear. Coelho back to fourth. It's Kreppen into second. Rollison's teammate and customer in Mario Barrios up to third, and here's the reigning champ, Danilo Romalo, on the Sodi cart for PK Sports to the inside and clear for position number four. Yeah, some wild racing going on. That Masters isn't as common as we thought, thought it would be, Xander. But uh, Laurentia Mardan now back out in front with uh, Adam Kreppen running in second and Mario Barrios in third. Rollison falls by the wayside, and Coelho gets shuffled back a bit as well. So Laurentia Mardan, who's been kind of uh, the, uh, the class of the field, so to speak, uh, all weekend long, now finds his way to the front once again. But Kreppen was strong in heat one, and Kreppen trying to chase him down in heat number two as they head down one more time, crossing the stride. Yeah, Adam Kreppen 
Four back here, Mario Barrios on the charge. That was a good lap from Barrios there. He was able to make up some more ground uh, on uh, Crepin, but uh, the bo both of them did lose a little bit to Larry. Laurentiu Mardan, fastest on the racetrack that time by. Ariel Castro was even with him as uh, we watched him come on through uh, into turn number five. There's a nice slider from Mario Barrios. He'll take over second. Thank you very much from Adam Crepin. And uh, behind again, just looking on, is Danilo Romalo, who's had to claw from six on the grid, lose a spot or two off the start and go forward. And there is Nikki Coelho's Franklin Motorsports Merlin in that fifth spot. Let's go side by side down in that crazy one. Austin Garrison wasn't able to get out of the madness in heat one, but he was in heat number two. He's standing by with Alexander Searle. Alex? Thanks, Xander Austin. I mean, a pretty good turnaround after heat one. Unofficially P2 there. We'll see after penalties uh, if you move up or down a spot, but describe that race. I mean, it was just absolutely chaotic from start to finish. Yeah, that race was, uh, was pretty wild. I wasn't uh, uh, expecting all that. Um, you know, the, the first heat, the first few laps, it was a little bit crazy. Everybody was blocking, which I understood that. Um, but no, it seemed like the whole the whole time it was just slicing and dicing. Um, you know, we had, I know our, our pace was going to be really, really fast. Um, but it was just nonstop carnage. And I got going into the uh, last corner. It was coming out like three three wide. Uh, I got ran over on the uh, uh, on my on my front end, which I think it, it bent a tie rod. Um, but still, our pace was still fast. But it was just it was just crazy the whole the whole entire time. Um, having Aiden behind me as a teammate was for sure good on on my end. I was more comfortable having a teammate behind me than somebody else. Um, and we just kind of coordinated on the racetrack. I was like, just push me, just push me all the way to the last lap. And then, you know, a couple last corners that we can go after it. Um, I kind of defended in the second to last corner. I turned around and he said, don't block, just go, just go. So I went all the way down and uh, he got a little bit of a draft on me on the straightaway. He ended up winning. I came in second. So I think for our team being a, a one-two finish was, was very good. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned your pace. Pace looked really solid. Do you think this is a true to form or is this kind of a result of the chaos or a bit of both? Um, I think it's true to form because Aiden has been super fast as, as well because his his uh, his chassis actually cracked in the first heat race, so which kind of set him back in pace wise. But now it kind of seems like our stuff's on rails, so our, our engines are running fantastic and the go kart is handling well. So hopefully we can keep up the the pace for the final heat race. Thanks, Austin. Good job. Thank you. There you go from heat race. Uh Second place finisher and most laps led, Austin Garrison. Obviously in good spirits. He filled with good spirits yesterday. But then again, being fast, an X30 Pro senior and a, and a number of our classes at the X U.S. Pro Card Series, it's only a ticket to the dance. No different than what we're seeing right now in K Master where there is a gaggle of cars at the front. It's Barrios now the leader. Mardan back to second. Uh, then you have, of course, Danilo Romalo going through in the third spot on that Sodi cart. And behind him, Adam Kreppen and then Nicky Coelho, the top five. Yeah, Coelho got shuffled back, but he's got some speed. He's reeled that uh, lead pack back in. He may have something to say about this before it's over. It'll be three to go next time by. Barrios has found his way to the front. Romalo went purple lap five, a 109.638. That has been the fastest lap of the race. And Mardan slips inside of Barrios. Makes the pass in I-70 corner. And they'll head down the straight with Mardan, the leader. Barrios back to second. Crepin uh, back and forth now as Romalo's up to third. And now we're side by side. And, boy, it, <laughs> it got kind of wild there for a minute. It looks like we're going to go three wide. But they all settled back in line with Lorenzo Mardan directing traffic. And everybody finds their spot. We're clean as we head back up towards I-70 in the back part of the circuit. Yeah, that was a, a new hand signal with the arm fully extended. I haven't seen yet this year from Mario. Barrio says, oh, no. Danilo Romalo trying to send it on him in turn five. Went onto the curb, and Romalo is going to get shuffled back to fifth. And somehow they didn't end up crashing there. That could have gotten ugly. But, yeah, Barrios looked like he kind of pulled out to go to the lead, ran out of steam, and was like, I'm going to back out. Don't try and pass me. Let's keep him in, in, uh, in reach. And, and everyone listened that time, but uh, we'll see. Lorenzo Mardin now, biggest gap we've seen in a little while coming to two laps to go. Well, the funny part was, like you said, it looks like we got a pass there. Coelho now working his way through, gets around Crepin. But not only did Mardin make the signal, but everybody said, oh, all right, yeah, that's what we'll do. And they all fell in line, which I thought was uh, kind of surprising. So Coelho over the hump now and headed down uh, towards the uh, Long Pond Strait and crossing the line. And it's uh, Mardin by about five cart lengths over Berrios. But Nicky Coelho now may have something to say about this with two laps to go. Coelho is one of the faster carts on the racetrack. Right now he's trying to reel in Berrios. If he can get by him, he may have something for Mardan. But right now Mardan's enjoying almost a half a second advantage 
over Mario Barrios for second. Nikki Coelho is still about a half car back from Barrios, like you said, and Barrios a little wide there. Coelho a little more narrow. Looked, didn't go in the horseshoe, and you could see in frame the gap there from first to second. They've still got work to do to catch Lorenzo Mardan. They're going to have to try a little bit harder. Coelho will need to work with Barrios, and Barrios need to hit his marks perfectly if they want any kind of a shot before this thing is all said and done. Danilo Romalo hoping they fight for second and kind of come back towards his way without him crept in there. And also coming back into frame, can you believe it? Mike Rollison was wrecked off and in the grass at the start of this one. He's back up to six now at the end of that train in that purple and pink Rollison Performance Group Cosmic. So a great recovery for Mike Rollison and a good lesson to all of his drivers, all of his juniors and minis. Never give up. You can still make up some time, and he's coming to the white flag now with an outside shot at the top five. Nicky Coelho right on the rear bumper of Mario Barrios. Let's see if he can make a move as he rounds that turn two through the right-hander and back towards the, the back part of the circuit now as they head up towards the uh, cell tower area. And Nicky Coelho now close enough to pounce on Mario Barrios, and both of them closing in a little bit on Laurentia Mardan, but with this being the final lap, not sure if it's going to be enough. Barrios is right there, climbing the hill now, making the left-hand corner, and they're heading right down into the green corner and down over the hump. We'll look for them to uh, head our direction shortly here, and to the inside goes Barrios, makes the pass around Mardan. They're side by side. Now they head up to the showcase corner, and Mardan back in front. Here comes Barrios, here comes Coelho, and we've got uh, Romalo. Crepin all together, those five, and even Mike Rollison is in the mix a little bit now. And here we go, Crepin to the inside, makes the pass to second. That all works out for Mardan, and spinning is Barrios. We got a big spin, Crepin's out, Romalo's out, Rollison's out. Oh my goodness, four of the top six off in the I-70 corner. Your winner's going to be Lorenzo Mardan, Nicky Coelho finishes second. Ariel Castro moves up to third, Martin Stone, Miguel Mir, Scott Kopp, Tim Meyer, Adam Kreppen falls all the way back to eighth, followed by Caleb Look Winooski. at this, Danilo Romalo. Look how bent that rear axle is on the reigning champs car. The number one plate just going to struggle to get across the line with a heavily bent rear axle. Crazy stuff to end Masters. And again, you were right. I called him tame. That was not a tame finish. No, they ran out of racetrack. They, were tried, they tried to go four wide on a two wide section, and that just never works. And uh, four drivers actually lost about six or seven spots over the mix. So... Tough break for those guys, but cream rises to the top. And Lorenzo Mardan, once again, your winner, Nicky Coelho, finishes second. Ariel Castro, third. Martin Stone, fourth. Miguel Mir, Scott Kopp, Tim Meyer, Adam Kreppen, Caleb Lanuski, and Alex Dancho make up your top ten finishers in a wild one. Lorenzo Mardan, the winner of heat number two in KE 100 Masters, sponsored by Speed Concepts. So, KE 100 Masters, uh, Wrapped, sealed, and done. That's, of course, group number five. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more action here live from Newcastle Motorsports Park. You're watching Kart Chasers coverage of the U.S. Pro Kart Series Indiana Grand Prix.
Welcome back here as we get set to go green. Green flag in the air for the first of two KA100 Junior Heat Races in the second round presented by BBS Race Engine. This is groups A and C. And so far, so good. Everybody survives. Fernando Luque to the lead. Then it is Caleb Tarter to second. Isaac Malkett into third. And the rest of the pack has made it through the opening couple of corners. They're side by side back for fourth. Malkut hanging on as he lost the third spot and now he roughs up a little bit with Diego Guia, uh, Guillo. They kind of bang side pods and survive with a position change, but a lot of ground loss to the top two. The uh, 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 are here for KA100 Junior. So KA Junior presented by BBS Race Engines uh, headed uh, through the green corner as they come on through. So Isaac Malkut. Diego Guillo, there goes the rest of the pack. How about a good start for Max Weiland on that magic cart? He did not have the best opening heat race. He's into the fifth spot right now, and they're side by side behind him. So coming through I-70, Fernando Luque, Caleb Tarter, one and two, Isaac Malkut, Diego Guillo, forced to work together now. Weiland in the fifth spot as we put one lap complete, nine laps to go, a little two-driver breakaway with the opportunity to solidify that breakaway and make it a two-horse race, Randy, which based on what we've been seeing is the safest course of action to just finish. Well, it is, and I think we saw in the last race, even the last turn of the last lap, if you guys get too aggressive, yeah, you're, you're, it's going to cost all four of those drivers. It's going to hurt their starting position for the final for sure. But Fernando Luque and Caleb Tarter now checking out, and Luque has kind of been the driver to really – measure how good you are how fast you are if you can run with them and Caleb Tarter's doing just that right now about a second back to Isaac Malquit running in third he needs a drafting partner Diego Guay is in fourth and he's trying to uh, help Malquit get back up to that lead group but they're not too successful at the moment Max Whelan runs in fifth but Luque and Tarter one and two still checking out Malquit trying to close in a little bit eight tenths of a second the last time by We'll see how close they are. It looks from the naked eye like they're a lot closer as Malquit appears to be reeling them in. Isaac Malquit now in third but closing into the rear bumper of Caleb Tarter. To the inside goes Caleb Tarter. He makes the pass on Fernando Luque, taking over the top spot. Luque to second, and Malquit is right there in third. How about that for Caleb Tarter on that red and white MPG Motorsports Cart Republic? A good run here in heat number two. And like uh, we said, he was trying to work with Luque. Unfortunately, the pack caught him. It was not faster in that uh, formation initially, so he had to go by. He had to drop him. And now Malkut's going to take advantage of Luque. He'll go through in the horseshoe. Guillo will follow. And so Luque going all the way back to that fourth spot as they come out of the cell tower. Caleb Tarter, the leader. Here's Wyland and Landon Skinner as that second group kind of shuffles a bit themselves as well. Jackson Wolney in the mix of it. He's trying to get himself going a bit as they come through the kink. Let's watch them coming out of the green corner. Does Isaac Malkut want the lead? He does inside and clear. Isaac Malkut, your new leader, coming down the back straightaway. Isaac Malkut from a third position from a third position up to first in one lap. But how about Luque? A half a lap, fourth or first to fourth. That's how competitive this class is. And with all the passing going on up front, it's turned into about a 10 cart length uh, group that's trying to a 10 cart group that's trying to run okay. for the top spot. And now uh, Tarter gets inside of Malkut, makes the pass. Malkut falls in line into second. Now back to third as. Uh, it looks like uh, Gio is back in uh, in second now. So Malquit gets shuffled high. He's trying to hold on to that spot. Luke to the inside, and they're side by side to the cell tower corner. And now Malquit really gets shuffled back all the way back to fifth. Yeah, Landon Skinner is splitting him up there. He was able to follow through. He's got that bright white helmet on the AR Academy Tony cart. And then behind Malquit, there you see Jackson only in the purple and pink cosmic up into six once again. Chase Buscalia. Is seventh on the red and yellow GWR machine, but Diego Guillo, your new leader here as they come to the infield with Caleb Tarter in second on that blue helmet and the red and white MPG car, and then that green and white Tony cart is the original pole man, Fernando Luque. He's back to third. Look how many of them we got lined up here. We're coming to see four laps completed, six laps to go. Anyone's guess who wins it, and it's still anyone's race, really, as they come to the line. Nine drivers going all the way back to Max Weiland on that factory magic card in ninth. Landon Skinner, one of the movers, up to fifth. He's moved up four spots, went purple the last time by with a 109.702. Also a mover, Oliver Weldon, up six spots from 15th to the top 10 in ninth. 
And we got a pass for second. Fernando Luque working his way back towards the front. Gets around Caleb Tarter, takes over the second spot. Also Cash Perkins up seven spots from 18th, trying to crack the top 10 currently in 11th. And we got one off now. Had to get a number on that one. It was, uh, was that Tarter or Skinner that went off there? Yeah, I think Jackson Wolney. Wolney, Jackson Wolney went off there. That's Wolney on the screen. Yeah, yeah. So Jackson Wolney off there. Yeah. Meanwhile, Diego Guillo, Luke, Malka at the updated top three with Wolney going back and Tartar falling all the way to the fifth position. We'll come to five laps in, five to go at the halfway marker here this time by Diego Guillo, Fernando Luque, Isaac Malkit first, second, third, headed to the I-70 corner and coming to put uh, another lap in the books. Diego Guillo, let's see if Luque wants the lead back. He hasn't seen it in a couple laps. Here he goes inside with help from Isaac Malkit. He'll easily clear him by turn one, and Malkit will follow into second on that black and red Gillard. Some great racing up front, but that allows that second group to close in a little bit further now. But Luque, Malquit get around Guillo for, for first and second. Guillo back to third. Landon Skinner closing in ever so slightly with Caleb Tarter on his rear bumper as is Max Whelan. Those six kind of breaking away a little bit on the rest of the field. But to Fernando Luque now back to the front. Got shuffled back to fourth, but showing patience, not getting excited. Just picked his way through the field and now leads the way again. Appears to be possibly the strongest card on the course. Isaac Malkwood has some horsepower. He's right behind on the rear bumper of Luque. And is Isaac going to be content on running second? I kind of doubt it because he's getting pressured by uh, Diego Guillo. He wants to get up there. He doesn't want Guillo knocking on the door. He wants to be around and lead, I would imagine. We'll see if he can stay in line or is he going to take a move around Luque. They get around I-70 corner, and Guillo to the inside makes the pass on Isaac Malkwood. Takes over to the third spot, and now Malkwood being challenged by Landon Skinner for fourth. Malkwood hangs on. They're all chasing Luque. Crossing the line, here comes Guillo. Here comes Malkwood to the inside and making the pass. Guillo to the lead, Malkwood second. Yeah, Diego Guillo through, Isaac Malkwood second. Fernando Luque is third. Caleb Tarter fourth. Landon Skinner still fifth. Wyland sixth. All the way through up the short shoot, single file. Nobody dive bombing here. Buscali at the end of the train. How about Oliver Weldon from 15th up to 7th? Eight spots gained, but look at this. Luke is all over Malkin. He's got to go. He goes right there. Skinner's going on Tartar. Overshot for Luke. And now Malkin goes back by. Retake second. And it gives a nice little gap here for Diego Gio with three and a half laps to go. Strong move by Malkin. Took him on the outside, on the high side, entering that right hander. So a good crossover move by Isaac Malkwit. Now he's gapped Luque a little bit as he tries to close in on Diego Guillo. So Malkwit in second, but closing the gap. And Luque trying to reel these guys back in. So right now Luque has fallen back a little bit. We've got to Landon Skinner and Caleb Tarter in the chase, as well as you said, Oliver Weldon. Great one by, run by Oliver. Caleb Tarter going purple that last lap, a 109.693. But a two-card breakaway for the win, Diego Guillo. And Fernando Luque, it'll be three to go next time by. Not able to get through on the inside was Max Weiland. He had to back out of it on Luque, and Buscalia went around the outside on him. Meanwhile, like you said, it's Guillo and Malkut, then Skinner, then Tartar, and Isaac Malkut, who has run so many races here at Newcastle Motorsports Park growing up. He's still a young kid, still in his first junior season, but this is big boy mini swift racing with the 100cc junior class. You can push, you can get away. I'd be surprised if I see Malkut go around Guillo. I think he'll push him to try and at least wait one more lap, hold the gap. Even if you don't build it anymore, if you can just keep it even at where it is right now back to Landon Skinner for that last lap, you can open your entries up and you don't have to defend for a second. You can just focus on attacking, but that's what we're seeing right now. Isaac Malkut still pushing on Guillo. He's probably going to take a look back. There it is, right there to check on Landon Skinner, see where he's at, decide whether or not to make the move down the front stretch if he has to. I think these guys are realizing they're better off to start that uh, last stretch down the long pond straight away in second. But does he go this time? Two to go at the line. He does. Isaac Malka to the lead into turn number one. Isaac Malka making the pass on Diego Guillo. Landon Skinner, third spot. And uh, Caleb Tarter, fourth. Oliver Weldon cracks the top five in fifth, all the way from 15th starting spot up to fifth spot. Fernando Luque back in sixth. So he's got shuffled back. And here's a pass. And oh, Guillo gets it sideways. Malka gets by him. So Diego Guillo tries to make the move, gathers it back up, and Malka takes the lead back. 
and Nagio looks like he's uh, now trying to hang up that second spot. We've got Landon Skinner right there in the hunt, as well as Caleb Tarter, and now Oliver Weldon. So those five now chasing the, the leader, Isaac Malquit, over the hill now and coming down to Showcase Corner one more time. Malquit with about a half a cart length advantage over uh, Diego Gio heading up to I-70 corner one more time. A little bit of breathing room for Malquit, but we could see some action for the white flag lap as they head down the straight. Don't be surprised if we get a little drafting help and maybe an inside pass to turn one. Here we go. Two wide across the stripe. And it's Malquit and Guillo side by side. And now Guillo takes the lead. Malquit to second. Tartar in third. It'll probably be settled by these three, Xander. Yeah, I think so. Um, as they head out of turn at number four, Malquit looking back says, Tartar, will you work with me? Can we go forward? No. He tried to point forward. Caleb said, nah, I'm not pushing you. I've had to claw to get my way up to you guys. I'm going by and I want the lead in the win. So Caleb Tartar now to second. Guillo. Didn't know about the pass, so he's still defending all the way through. That's kept him close. And now, what does Caleb Tartar do? He can hear Malkit behind him. He can't open the door, or Malkit will go back in on him. So he's got to go low and follow Gio. Gives him a little love tap coming out of the corner. He's alongside, nearly there, but Gio gets back clear. Now Tartar, high side, low side. They're all stacked up. How about that for Oliver Weldon in the blue and yellow? Hot Wheels Racing LN cart for JC Carding. He's up to fourth all the way from 15th. Down the straightaway in I-70. Malkit finds a hole down low. He gets by Tartar. Weldon all the way across over on all of them. They're going to drag race. Oliver Weldon to the lead. Can he hang on at the line? Oliver Weldon stuns him. Fourth to first coming to the line. How about that? Oliver Weldon all the way from 15th starting position. Last lap, last turn. Makes the crossover move. Goes three wide to the inside. Crosses the line. Winner of heat number two, Oliver Weldon. Most exciting finish of the day so far. These kids are putting on a heck of a show today. Yeah, what a performance there, though, again, from Oliver Weldon. 15th to first, and to navigate that, that was a slick move for the lead and the win on the J.C. Carding Hot Wheels car. And then going back, Malkit all the way through. Here's some of the drivers taken out in that one. Federic Lemieux, unfortunately, second heat race in a row with an issue. Indy Anderson out, Lillian Scarborough out. And again, these kids, they got to go top 15 on average to miss the LCQ. How about Buscalia, uh, Wyland, Landon Skinner, 6th, 7th, 8th, Luke 5th at the end, Wolney, and Cash Perkins. Now that's, of course, uh, in uh, KA Junior, but uh, we had a few off. Luckily, in this case, all the major players ended up finishing. We didn't really lose anyone to a DNF or a major, major loss. But again, in this class, Randy, these guys got to worry about trying to transfer and not have to go to that last chance qualifier, potentially not have to use their new set of tires for the main event because they get two sets all classes through the weekend. They'll run them through the heats, and they'll try and save that second one for the main event. But if you're on the cusp of not making the main, you kind of got to go new tires in the last chance qualifier and run the main on scuffs. I would agree, and, and, and pardon the pun, but the real winner in that race was Oliver Weldon, the winner, because he has that 15 starting spot. He had a solid finish in Heat 1. He gets the win in Heat 2. He has a solid run in Heat 3. He's top two or three rows easy for the for the main event on Sunday, and that's where he needed to be with that bad qualifying run. He needs to just have a solid run in the third heat, and he's where he'll want to be, where he needs to be tomorrow to have a shot at the win. So congrats and kudos to Oliver Weldon on a good, steady, solid run. Patience, waiting for the race to come to him on that final lap. Yeah, awesome stuff from Oliver Weldon. They're still cleaning the track up here. We'll go quiet on the microphone for a moment. When we come back, it's the other half of the KA100 Juniors headed onto the circuit.
And we've got a start for K.A. Junior Heat number two, B versus D, as they head through uh, turn one and now turn two. And we've got a good clean start, actually. Uh, Stephen Miller and Austin Olds leading the way right now. Good run by Austin Olds as he gets off to a good clean start. Stephen Miller in tow, running in second. Everybody's still headed in the right direction on track. Don't see any dust flying just yet. Hopefully we can get these drivers rolling and into uh, some rhythm here in this second heat of the KA100 Junior B versus D, second round of heats, I should say. It's the Indiana Grand Prix U.S. Pro Kart Series here at the Newcastle Motorsports Park, brought to you live by Car Chaser on YouTube. So some great racing already, and, of course, we have our main events coming up tomorrow. Make sure you tune in on the YouTube channel, Car Chaser, for the main events starting tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. So some great racing in store for you, and we still got a lot of racing left today that you can join us and watch. Hope you're all enjoying as much as we are bringing it to you. We got a pass for the lead, and it looks like it's going to be Stephen Miller slipping inside of Austin Olds to take over that top spot as we cross the stripe for lap number one. We'll give you a field rundown for the top ten, and Austin Olds back to the top spot. It's Austin Olds, Sebastian Garzan up to second as he drafts Austin Olds for that lead spot. Stephen Miller, Ernesto Rivera, and Anthony Martella. That's your top five, followed by Peyton Westcott, Turner Brown, Mayor Dianaran, Chase Gassioli, and Louis, Luis Alejandro Umana. That is your top 10 runners right now as we got some two wide racing through that lead group. About seven carts breaking away from the rest of the field. So we've got uh, eight carts actually within a second of each other. Then we got a little gap for uh, Gassioli and uh, Umana. Those, uh, those two drivers in eighth and uh, ninth and tenth are a little further back. But those first eight drivers are very close. In fact, we got a four-card breakaway now, and now we're three wide through Showcase Corner. That's not going to last very long, but the drivers have singled up as they head up towards I-70, making that sharp left at I-70 corner. And we're, well, we're two, three wide coming out of I-70 corner, and we'll take a good look at what we've got crossing the line. These guys are not settled in at all. Everybody takes a low line, and we're looking at uh, – Stephen Miller up to that top spot with Ernesto Rivera moving up to second. Austin Olds third. Sebastian Garzon and Peyton Westcott. That is your top five. So Stephen Miller now back up front, but a lot of shuffling going on behind him. It's Miller and Ernesto Rivera running in second. They've gapped a little bit on Austin Olds in third, but not much. So uh, Stephen Miller now trying to get a little bit of a stretch run out there with uh, Ernesto Rivera in tow. Austin Olds back in that third spot. Rounding the green corner and now over the hill and down to showcase corner. And we'll see if we have a move. Nope, nobody yet. And we've got uh, now headed up towards I-70 corner. Two cart breakaway and we're side by side over the hump and to the inside that is Stephen Miller. Trying to make the pass and crossing the line now. We've got Sebastian Garzan now taking the spot over Stephen Miller. So it's Garzan, Miller, Ernesto Rivera, Turner Brown, and Peyton Westcott. That is your top five. Ernesto Rivera now in third, kicking up a little dust there. He tries to make his way around Stephen Miller and does, makes the pass. And now uh, Rivera up to second. Three laps in, seven laps to go. Sebastian Garzon is your leader. Yeah, Garzon on the Orsolon Racing Tony Kart and that yellow helmet on the green and white machine. Then Rivera, then Stephen Miller working together nicely as they head to the infield hairpin in second and third, uh, and then a little gap, about an even gap back to Turner Brown. Remember, Turner Brown had that awful start uh, to his day earlier today with already a, a big crash at turn number two uh, early in uh, the first round of heats, I believe. So now Turner Brown trying to turn it back up, get a little bit closer towards the front, make up for some lost time. Everybody, again, worrying about that cut line, Randy. That's, uh, from what we understand, it's going to be at 40th, so it'll be the top 20 drivers will auto-transfer 
to the main. The top 10 out of the LCQ, I believe, will be the ones uh, that make up the last 50 on the grid out of the 60 total drivers in KA100 Junior, presented by DBS Race Engines. Our largest class of the weekend, largest category, and there will be some drivers that will not make the main event because of it. Right now, Sebastian Garzon in the 855, leading the way ever so slightly over Ernesto Rivera and Stephen Miller. They got a little bit of breathing room back to Turner Brown and Peyton Westcott. Austin Olds just went purple on the last lap as he tries to close back in. He was up front early, but got shuffled back. A 109.571 for Austin Olds, fast lap of the race. He's in sixth, trying to reel Peyton Westcott back in. But right now, a good solid run by Sebastian Garzon. He tries to hang on, but he's got Ernesto Rivera and Steven Miller knocking on the door as they head to I-70 corner to the inside, and Ernesto Rivera makes the pass and following through is Steven Miller. They go first and second, shuffling Sebastian Garzan back to third. Fourth is Turner Brown, fifth Peyton Westcott, and here comes Austin Old. He's trying to close in on Westcott to make a move for that top five spot, but right now the new leader, Ernesto Rivera. Ernesto Rivera there on that RPG Cosmic with Steven Miller behind him. Miller's been loyal to push him all the way forward to get to where they're at now. Is he going to stay with him, or does he try to go to the lead now that he's used him to get all the way up into second? Graham Trammell, a mover, started 17th into the top 10 and just went purple with a 109.451. So how about a call out to Graham Trammell in the 866? Not a good qualifying spot, but certainly one of the fastest drivers on the racetrack. Another solid mover is Beckett Friesen. Beckett started 18th. He's cr trying to crack the top 10. He's running in 12th. So a good move by him. Ernesto Rivera started fifth, and he has taken over the lead. So Rivera, Miller, Garzon, Brown, and Westcott, that's your top five. And right now, Rivera and Miller are literally nose to tail out there and not that far back. Sebastian Garzon in third, waiting to see if there's going to be any changes here as they head down the straight. Will they be satisfied staying in line? Will somebody try to make a move to the inside? Nope. They're going to stay in line and try to gap the rest of the field. So Ernesto Rivera, once again, one more time by, leads the way. Six laps in, four laps to go. So Ernesto Rivera, your leader. So Stephen Miller, Sebastian Garzan, who just went purple, a 109-166, runs third, Turner Brown, and Peyton Westcott. That's that top five group that has gapped a little bit over the rest of the field. A pass for second, and it's Sebastian Garzan getting around. Stephen Miller takes over the second spot. Garzan will now try to reel in Ernesto Rivera. Will he be able to do it? He's right there as Garzan tries to roll in and take that stop, top spot over Rivera. Good move by Sebastian Garzan. Yeah, very good move for Sebastian Garzon to get through. Now he dropped a tire coming out of that green corner, so he lost a little bit. Uh, but Ernesto Rivera over Sebastian Garzon. Steven Miller, Turner Brown right there. Peyton Westcott again. Westcott, that first race, her and Mayor DeHonor were kind of just Back and forth, fifth and sixth while we change the lead. Garzon going through on Rivera, now coming to three to go. Westcott now is in the lead pack. Brown is in the lead pack. Miller right there just as he was in his first heat race. As we come to the line for three to go, Garzon blocks low, gets a little bit of a love tap by Rivera, and they're side by side to turn two. Rivera on the bump and run is still wheel to wheel to three, and now Miller gets into it in his bumper, gets hooked behind the left front tire, and it takes him both, Ernesto Rivera and Steven Miller off the racetrack. Again, not enough racetrack for the areas they were trying to cover. Unfortunate, you got a little too uh, tight in there. They locked wheels, and obviously it's, uh, it's going to hurt them both. So a tough break for those guys. But so now we're looking at uh, who, let's see, our leader now would be Stephen Miller, I believe. Uh, no, indeed, it's Sebastian Garzon. Sebastian Garzon. Turner Brown is next, then Peyton Westcott, then Austin Olds, Miller, he was the guy that went off there in turn number okay. three, so he went so far wide along with Rivera. Right. It is now Garzon, Brown, the blue cart. That's Peyton Westcott there on the Nash entry. Fourth is the MPG cart republic of Austin Olds. Look at Peyton Westcott looking for second. How about that for the young lady out of uh, California on the Nash Motorsports EOS cart? As Sebastian Garzon, the Colombian, continues to show the way down at turn number one. Turner Brown. And looking high, low, Westcott now going to get a shuffle to the outside as Brown gets by for second, going back on her. And now here comes Austin Olds. He wants third, not close enough. Seven to eight carts now have closed in on that lead group, and it is anybody's race. Sebastian Garzon still leading, but uh, Peyton Westcott has moved up to that third spot. 
and into second, Turner Brown. It is anybody's race out there. Austin Olds up in there along with Enzo Vidmontien, who's advanced seven spots. How about Justin Music up in sixth? He started 16th, and he's up to that sixth position. Graham Trammell now up to eighth. He started 17th. So a couple of drivers really moving up through the ranks in, uh, in bad starting positions but making the most of it. And we've got the oh, 841. No. Uh, the 841, Anthony, Anthony Martella. Martella. Yeah, Martella out. That was in the, in uh, seventh. So another one dropping off the wayside. So it's a five-car breakaway now. Vidmontien has gone around Austin Olds for fourth. But up front, we're coming to the white flag here, Randy. One to go. Garzon's done a good job to hold the lead. Turner Brown's going to have a big run on him. He's leaving about a lane to the bottom side. Can Brown get there? He won't do it yet. I think Turner might be having watched his Speed Concepts teammates in X30 Senior with Aiden Ingrata waiting till the front stretch to go to the lead and paying off to win the race to the line. So Sebastian Garzon right now not under too much pressure uh, in terms of a pass attempt for the lead. Turner Brown's got to worry a little bit about Peyton Westcott. She's right behind him. She gets that rear bumper, and Turner Brown can't really run the line he wants to run to be faster because if he does, he's going to leave the door open for Peyton Westcott. So he's got to defend as well as be aggressive to try to take the win or possibly say, you know what, I'm running second. That's a good finishing position. Maybe I should just lay low, but I kind of doubt it, Xander. These kids have been racing hard. He wants to get that win. And right now, Sebastian Garzone, as they head down to the showcase corner, try to hang on, and it looks like uh, Brown tried to make a, a move to the inside but couldn't quite do it. Now we've got Vin Montian and Olds all together as they climb the hill now to I-70. It's still Garzon with the lead, but we're going to, I'm sure, go side by side down the straight. Garzon trying to hang on. Is he going to be able to hang on for the win? Let's take a look, and it's going to be close, but it's Turner Brown. Turner Brown at the last moment, two tenths of a, two one hundredths of a second over Sebastian Garzon. Peyton Westcott finishes third. Enzo Vidmontien fourth. Austin Olds fifth. That is a heck of a finish out there for Turner Brown. The 868 of Turner Brown pulling off right at the end in a side-by-side -side finish over Sebastian Garzon. We'll give you the full field rundown or about the top 10 rundown if we can here in just a moment. But Turner Brown, your winner. So uh, Turner Brown finishes first. It's Sebastian Garzon second. Peyton Westcott third. Enzo Vidmonti in fourth. Austin Olds rounds out your top five. Through the top ten, Justin Music on a solid run started in 15th, finishes in sixth. Graham Trammell started in 17th, finishes in seventh. Stephen Miller eighth, finishing in ninth. A good run for Jensen Bennett. And finishing in tenth, Luis Alejandro Umana. That is your top ten finishers in KA100 Junior. Heat, uh, heat number two, B versus D. Your winner, Turner Brown. Let's take a look further back. We heard in Austin Garrison's interview, he mentioned that his tie rod got bent. How about this replay look at it? Ryan Norberg with a three-wide crossover back in that second heat race. Garrison gets trapped in the middle between himself and Blake Nash. And then right there, Ryan Norberg, look at the airtime, the number one plate got all over. So uh, Garrison gets his right front tire clipped over by Blake Nash, his left front clipped over by Ryan Norberg. Said he drove that thing uh, to the line with a bent tie rod, and there were a host of penalties in the session. Aiden Ingrat across the line first. He spent a lot of time, as a lot of drivers did after that race, over talking to the stewards. He's now talking to us. Alexander Searle, take it away. Thanks, Xander. Yeah, like you said, a long protest process there for you, Aiden. Finally got it overturned, though, so P1 there officially now for Heat 2. It's been a pretty good turnaround for you since Utah. You know, he struggled a little bit over there really quick this weekend. I mean, you made up a lot of spots around the heat. Describe that race to me and kind of the, the incident that happened with the protests. Yeah, I mean, it was a good race. I mean, it's just so hard in the back. I mean, everyone battling and stuff, bunching up. But, I mean, it was a really good pace. We showed really good pace. Uh, me and Austin won, too, obviously, really good for the team. And uh, I want to thank the USPS officials for making respectful calls. I mean, obviously, it wasn't great with the two full pushback bumpers. I would be, like, 16th, 15th. But, I mean, thank you, USB guests, for making really good calls. And, yeah, uh, good points going into Heat 3, and hopefully we get a good result like we did uh, Heat 2, Heat 1, and we should be good. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned how difficult it is to start from the pack. With you consistently having to start outside the top 10 with qualifying, how tough is it in X30 Pro to get through those guys? Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, everyone's so good. There's such close pace, really good racing. Obviously, the straightaways here, I mean, no one can pull away because of draft. So it makes it pretty interesting, and, yeah. All right, thanks, Aiden. Thank you.
Appreciate Aiden and Grata taking the time there. As again, there were a lot of guys we saw, of course, on screen. Norberg, Trelecki, among others, getting the uh, dreaded white slip in the scale line there, Randy. The last thing that you want to see. Well, uh, we've got some more. How about uh, uh, the, the uh, Flying uh, Dutchman from the Netherlands? Ryan, uh, Marion Kremers has been close here this weekend. But, again, not yet P1 for the number one plate. Alex? Yeah, uh, Xander, I mean. It's been an okay weekend for you, Marion. You know, just kind of more of the same what we've seen from you all year. You know, just consistently there at pace, maybe lacking a bit of motor, but I mean, with about eight seconds off the pace there uh, at, at the end of the result in the second heat, or first heat, sorry. Just walk me what you're missing for, for this weekend. A uh, couple of extra horses, I think. I mean, uh, it was a struggle in Utah seven days ago, and uh, yeah, we can't make one within seven days, so uh, we knew coming into this week it was. We were going to fight a hand, uh, with our hands tied behind our back, but we we're trying to make some progress, um, slowly getting there. Obviously, eight seconds is uh, definitely far off where we want to be, but uh, yeah, we'll keep chipping away and uh, keep working hard to close that gap, obviously. Yeah, I mean, you're saying, you know, missing a few horses, right? But it's like with the long straightaways and this track, is, it's pretty good for racing. I mean, do you think you can kind of race your way to the front or is it just one of those things where you, with, with the motor, it's really difficult? Nah, it's, it's going to be difficult. I mean, I'm, I'm going to need some help from AJ and Carl to slow up a little bit, I think. I mean, race-wise, I know I can, I, I can mix it in with these guys, so uh, race, racing-wise, we should be fine. But, uh, yeah, at the moment, we're too slow to, to contend f for the win. So, uh, hopefully, we can find something overnight and, uh, and fight tomorrow for the win. All right, thanks, Marion. Thank you. There you go. You heard it from Kremers again. Everyone's been on the road in this busy summer stretch. Only uh, about a seven days uh, off break, really, for everyone uh, in the trek out from Utah back to Indiana, then about a week off, and then back in action here at the U.S. Pro Card Series. Barely enough time to refresh the motors with the top end, much less do R&Ds. They'll have a little bit more of a gap uh, for a shifter, at least about a month, till the Scusa Pro Tour heads here in uh, the end of July to make some more headway, but we'll see. For these kids, though, they have the IAM USA Grand National smack dab in the middle. It's been a busy summer. It's been a lot of fun, I'm sure, for all the micro kids to get all this seat time. And how about the field? It's a big one. A AJ Stoner bringing him to the line, looking for the green. We'll get it on attempt number two. Park arrives on the outside trying to hang in there. He gets turned sideways a little bit, and there's more contact further back. Colton Schneegenberg's around. Off the racetrack goes another one of the PK Sports drivers along with Mikey Collins and the U-Race comp cart. Multiple drivers in the mid-top ten to teens going off on the start, but it's clean for the top five or so here, Randy, as they go to the horseshoe. Everybody trailing AJ Stoner. A.J. Stoner had a good start the last race, then kind of fell off pace a little bit. Does lead the way in the early going, and now a pass for the second spot. I believe that that Aston Wyatt, I think, Xander that could have taken over uh, the, the top spot there. Yeah, uh, yes, indeed. Aston Wyatt, great call there, Randy, on the AR Academy Bureau of Art. We got one. We got it right. We're not making too many mistakes up here. But, yeah, Aston Wyatt, easy to spot there on that red and white Allen Rudolph Racing Academy Bureau of Art machine. Over the green and black and white entry of A.J. Stoner. Then that black and blue and chrome is Enzo de Janeiro on the Team Ferris Racing Cart Republic. And that big silver helmet, that's Parker Ives. Your championship points later. Right there behind, going through for third as de Janeiro goes to second. And just as we saw in Heat 1, A.J. Stoner from the pole starting to get swallowed up again by the pack. Here comes Luke Gillio. Here comes Maxwell Macha. Here comes Emerson Lane. Oh, man, A.J. Stoner all the way back to seventh as Enzo De Janeiro goes to the lead. Unbelievable racing. One lap in, and these guys are racing like it's the last lap. But to Aston Wyatt, uh, Parker Ives now up to second. Uh, these guys are really going hard at it out here. Uh, but uh, Lou Gilio, uh, Maxwell Macha, Emerson Lane, all of these drivers just really going 110% out there every single lap trying to work their way to the front. The competition is so close out here in this class, and these kids are just putting on a heck of a show. Here we are side by side now as the show continues. How about Aston Wyatt being the next one to kind of get shuffled down the line? He slots into fifth uh, as uh, another couple spots go back. How about Luke Gillio up to third? Machas back up to fourth. Macha, of course, championship contender, multi-time race winner this year, but he's under fire. Aston Wyatt back on the inside in the infield hairpin, and Emerson Lane there, A.J. Stoner there. How about a good run as well from Jake or from Alex Chandler in that Iron Rock Motorsports Tony car? He's that bright yellow helmet coming into frame there at the edge of the top ten. So across the line, 
Enzo De Janeiro on the KR. The Nitro car to Parker Ives. It's an Orion Perry Motorsport 1-2 trail in the Team Ferris racing entry. And into turn one for the first time in a minute. It feels like we haven't had a change in the lead. All right, Xander, I got a question. You say these two up front are, are in the same team. Is that right? Second and third are. Second and third are in the same team. Because you got to wonder if Parker Ives is going to be content just drafting right now or is he going to want to have that lead and, and kind of set his own pace? Yeah, it's hard to say, right? I mean, again, the, the main logic with what you do when it comes to being the guy in second is you push the guy for about a lap if you have a little bit of a gap, and then you take kind of a, a gauge on it. You look back at the beginning of the lap. You look back at the end of the lap. You say, did we pull away? Did they catch us? Did it stay the same? If it stays the same or you pull away, keep doing what you're doing. They're not going to get to you. If they catch up, which right now they're catching up, then you got to go because it's not going to do you any good to push the guy. You're still going backwards in terms of lap times. So if you're Parker Eyes, your teammate's behind you, although now there's a battle for third. Oh, and his teammate gets shuffled outside. Luke Gillio way off the racetrack there in the 68. Tough break for Gillio, and that's uh, that's uh, Parker Eyes now losing his drafting partner in behind him. So now you got to ask yourself, well, Ives has got a little bit of a gap, so maybe he's going to be content racing where he's at right now if that gap can stay, but I kind of doubt if it will because you got three carts in line, in draft, trying to close back in on that lead group. Yeah, they're all right there as they go through turn number one. I mean, if Aston Why, I mean, all of them have been able to put some good laps. Everyone in the top seven or eight, once their tires are up to temp, can run around the same lap time. So it's just a matter of kind of getting the guy behind you to, to trust you and work with you. And sometimes not even trust. It, it's, it's almost like winning an argument is the way I kind of look at it because, you know, they can pass at about eight to ten different corners on this racetrack at any given time because the draft keeps them so close. It, it's having that patience and that restraint is the right word, I should say, for the guy behind to say, I can go, I will have another chance in another couple corners. I don't need to right now. It's better for me to wait. Um, and sometimes that's it. It's not even working together. It's just waiting. In this case, Parker Ives, he's not really working together to the point that they're pulling away, but he's still waiting. And by him staying tucked up behind Enzo De Janeiro, he'll always have a toe. Let's go side by side down to pit lane here. While the micros are on the racetrack, the pro shifters are gearing up for their second heat race. And we've got Alexander Searle standing by with more. Alex? Thanks, Xander here with Talon. Yako Talon, it's been a pretty solid day for you so far. I mean, first heat, oh so close to a third place finish there with the Battle of Kremers. Still, overall, the final result shows, you know, seven seconds off your teammate there, AJ. After coming back in the pits and kind of debriefing with him and seeing, you know, the similarities and differences, I mean, what have you noticed that you can improve on for this next heat? Uh, it all just came down to battling from lap one and basically to the finish. But I just learned a few things, how to just get better exits down the straightaway and maybe keep up with him and Wick. They're pretty fast. They know how to get away, keep it clean. Uh, I'm just trying to move my way up fast and not waste too much time. Yeah, we've heard guys in other classes like X30 Pro complain about kind of the dust on the racetrack. I mean, how bad is that for you guys in Shifter? I definitely felt it on one of my half attempts out there for passing. My tires were a little bit greasy after being in, you know, the dirty part of the track. But it just takes like half a lap or a lap to recover from it. And you just got to get your move done and try to protect it because I made that mistake during the heat race. All right, thanks, Talon. Good luck out there. Thank you. There you go from Talon Yockel again. Make your move and protect it. Well, Parker Ives will be where away. Made his move and has taken over the lead on the Ives Racing Ryan Perry Motorsport Nitro Kart. Aston Wyatt is second. Third is De Janeiro. Fourth on the orange and black Sodi for SLA Kart Racing is Maxwell Macha. And fifth is Emerson Lane. They've dropped everybody else. Gilio, unfortunately, after getting knocked into the grass, has not been able to recover back in that sixth spot. But we're halfway in and halfway still to go. Five laps down, five laps to uh, uh, still to run. And it is Parker Ives leading over Aston Wyatt coming up the short shoot with a little bit of a gap forming uh, from first back to second even, Randy. Slight advantage right now for Parker Ives. Not a lot, but uh, at least a little bit of breathing room right now. Aston Wyatt close enough to pounce, maybe one to two cart links, and then a little bit of a gap back to third with Enzo De Janeiro. Emerson Lane went purple uh, two laps ago at a 114-239. Yeah, Enzo De Janeiro, again, uh, a good lap uh, for him was a 114-509 for a guy in the middle of the pack that looked as fast as Emerson Lane, his best lap three tenths off. Now, good pass, Maxwell Macha gets through for third. De Janeiro back for, to fourth. Lane not close enough, still at the end of the train trying to catch up. Parker Ives. 
I think, though, Randy, is probably the fastest of the five of them. The fact that they have not been able to get to his bumper and they're just sitting kind of in the wake of that draft about a car length or two away. Now, I could be wrong, but right now, no one, I don't think, has anything head-to-head -head individual speed-wise on the 48. The good part for us to be entertained is this track is so draft-dependent. You could be two-tenths better. It doesn't mean you get to get away. Well, that's right, and I think even if Ives does get past, he probably has the horsepower to gain that spot back. That's why it's critical. Maybe they want to just size him up and wait till that last lap to make the move. we got to pass for second now. Maxwell Macha working his way around Aston Wyatt, taking over the second spot, and Maxwell Macha will see if he's got anything for Parker Ives, but I agree. Ives has been running up front now for a few laps, gets a good launch off the corners, and although they do appear to close in a little bit at the end of the straight, he's really coming off the corner strong, and that bodes well here because if you get a good run off the corners, you might spend the rest of the straightaway just trying to position yourself to pass for the draft. Let's go down to Moore here on pit lane. Hunter Pickett had a you know decent start, faded a little, and drove back forward in heat number one. What has he got on his mind? We'll find out with Alexander Searle. Alex? Thanks, Xander. Hunter Pickett, I mean, it's been an okay day for you, right? You Qualified P6 yesterday, P7 today in the first heat. Pace has been okay, right? Lap time-wise, looks all right. But, again, you know, nine seconds off the leader there. I mean, what are you guys missing right now? We just got to work on the setup. Uh, we didn't get very lucky on racecraft that, that heat. So, hopefully that, you know, comes to us and we figure out some things on the cart and uh, go from there. Yeah, I mean, you talked to me about kind of how important the gearing is around this racetrack, especially in shifter. I mean, you, have you guys done anything with the gear so far? We, we could make adjustments. We'll, we'll see how that ends up here, but it could be possible. All right, thanks, Hunter. Hey, man. Thank you. Short and sweet for Hunter Pickett. We'll see if it's possible as uh, we take a look on the racetrack here for the uh, race lead. Right now in Micro Swift, two and a half laps to go. Parker Ives, Maxwell Macha, Aston Wyatt. Fourth and fifth have fell and fallen back a little bit as Emerson Lane and Enzo De Janeiro got into it. So coming to two to go, they're almost in frame, almost out of frame as the leaders head through the infield hairpin. Side by side, there's De, De Janeiro going by. And uh, Parker Ives now has some, uh, some real company right now. That gap he's been enjoying for the last few laps is gone. And Maxwell Macha and Aston Wyatt have closed into the point where they do have the ability to pounce. But once again, he gets a good launch off of I-70 corner, and that is critical. Two to go this time by. They've got to keep him in line. And, boy, that fourth and uh, fifth position side by side, they're getting a little dicey back there. That's Emerson Lane and Enzo De Janeiro. They're well off pace for the uh, lead group, but they're battling it out for that fourth spot. And now Ives getting through the inside of the circuit now has a nice little gap of about two cart lengths. We'll see if they can close in on him. But straightaway speed for Parker Ives, Xander, has been really strong. And as you said, it's going to be difficult to draft up unless they can get a really good launch off of I-70 corner at the line. But Ives really is strong in that part of the circuit. Yeah, he's kind of been able to keep, you know, about a, a car length to two car length buffer back to Maxwell Macha and Aston Wyatt. So that's been good enough to kind of keep them at bay. Uh, if he can open it up to a two or three car length gap coming out of the final corner, they'll only close up a car length or two. Like you said, it looks good. The entire package for that Ryan Perry Motorsport Nitro card has been the one out front the last few bits, but here's Macha, first opportunity in a while. Maxwell Macha down the inside for the lead. He'll take it away in I-70, and Aston Wyatt uh, sees in the moment as well. He'll take over second. White flag in the air. Macha leads. Wyatt's going to have a big head of steam here coming down the front stretch. He'll run with it. Down on the inside and back to the lead. And back to second for Ives as Macha falls to third. And I have a feeling Parker Ives may think he's in the right spot right now because he's got the horsepower to make a move. The question is how long will he wait? Will he wait till that final straight? Nope. He's looking, looking left and he passed him on the right. So a good move by Parker Ives around Aston Wyatt. He makes the move. And now they're chasing Parker Ives again. Boy, strong horsepower by Parker Ives. He's got him by uh, just about a half a cart length. Aston White and, uh, and Maxwell Macha, uh, those two will try to chase him down again. They come over the hill now, and it's going to be uh, just a few more corners, about a half a lap left for Parker Ives. Can he hang on? They're right there where they could make a move around Showcase Corner and to the inside, and they make the pass. So we've got Aston Wyatt up front now. And uh, now Ives to the inside, into I-70 corner. Ives makes the pass. Macha follows him. 
through I-70 corner. One more time down for the checkered. Who's it going to be? We've got side-by-side, -side three, three wide. Oh, my gosh. Three wide down the straight, and it's going to be a three wide Indy 500 starting finish. Three wide as you do at Indy, and it looks like Parker Ives by 42 one thousandths of a second over Maxwell Macha. Aston Wyatt finishing third, a tenth of a, a second separation. I'm sorry, one one hundredth of a separation between first, second, and third. Literally three wide across the line. Parker Ives, Maxwell Macha, and Aston Wyatt and they never touched each other. What a great finish. What a great run by those three drivers. Parker Ives coming out on top. Problems at the end there for the number 56. That's one of the, another one of the Sodi machines going wide in turn at number one. Here's a look at the results for the whole top ten. Ives, Macha, Wyatt, top three. De Janeiro, Emerson Lane, the top five. Luke Gilio in sixth. Liam Nakawati in Nachawati. Nicholas LaRusso, Jake Manalio, and Alex Chandler, the top ten. There's a look further down the order. We've still got some big-name kids who have struggled this weekend. And then a look at the DNF list there. Colton Schneegenberg, 35th. So unfortunate. Colton had a good heat one and a not-so-great heat number two. We'll take a commercial break. When we come back, Pro Shifter coming to life here as we round off the second round of heats and go back to the top of the lineup once again after them, beginning with Mini Swift. Kyle Wick and A.J. Myers' duel is set to pick back up. Opening heat race there, separated by eight thousandths of a second at the line. But A.J. Myers from second on the grid got the whole shot, and that was the whole difference it came down to. Kyle Wick qualified pole. He'll line up pole once again for heat two and later on today in heat three for SRP Engines Pro Shifter. Behind him, we heard from Aaron Kremer said he needs a little help from AJ and Kyle, the battle to bring him into the mix. Jacob Gulick was battling with him all the way through. He ended fifth. Talon Yockel starts fifth, trying to go forward, just needs to, as he mentioned, get through some of the battling better. Hunter Pickett sixth, and on back to the rest of the field as they form up 
and we go for our second standing start of the day. Race director Blake Hunt goes to head flagman Porter Weeson Sensel, and we will get set to go. We're green down to the start. Look at the jump for Jacob Gulick, and it's a GFC 1-2 off the line. It is a great start for Kyle Wick, an even better one from Gulick, who shot out of the box from fourth to second. Well, that'll certainly uh, make it a little more uh, difficult for A.J. Myers. Myers tries to make a pass around Gulick, and now they're side by side into uh, turn number four, and they're still uh, bumping and banging. Gulick trying to hang on, and he does. No, no he it's lost Myers. It. He lost yeah. it, yeah. Myers able to get through, but he did hang on over Marion Kremers, and that little difference might be enough to keep that gap uh, up uh, big enough for Kyle Wick to run to the end of this one. That one little exchange that Myers had to do to get by Jacob Gulick has now given race leader Kyle Wick about a second and a quarter advantage. It's now the PSL Bureau Arts going at it. Hunter Pickett all over his teammate, Marion Kremers, for fourth. And A.J. Myers hasn't really shaken the rest of the field to close in on Kyle Wick. He's got to worry a little bit about what's behind him and not just what's ahead of him. Kyle Wick with a great start, and they were so close in heat number one. I agree with you. It's going to be difficult for Myers to close that gap if Kyle Wick can keep rolling off steady numbers. But maybe with some drafting help, he can do it. Over 90 miles an hour coming down at the end of the front straightaway for the gearbox carts in Pro Shifter. And this is the closest battle we got right now. You saw it going into I-70. Talon Yockel on that black, blue, and yellow magic cart trying to go by Hunter Pickett. And he does for position number five. That was a smoother run through. Pickett back to the sixth spot. Ethan Boer with a better start on that GFC machine is seventh. Giorgio Carrara on the chrome and pink and uh, uh, blue Lenzo Kart on the International Motorsport Camp. He's up to eighth, looking for P7 as they climb the hill. But Yakel defending a bit from Pickett. Boer's going to have to worry about Carrara. And here's your update on the top three. Myers chipping away and getting uh, away from Jacob Gulick, trying to make up ground towards Kyle Wick, who continues to lead as we go to put two laps in the books and eight laps to go here at SRP Engines Pro Shifter. Nine-tenths of a second separation that last lap. It looks like Myers may be closing a little bit. Seven tenths of a second, so we gained two tenths of a second that lap on Kyle Wick. And Jacob Gulick is right there as well. Fast lap of the race, A.J. Myers. He's not going to settle for second. He wants to close in on Wick and pressure him and make that move. So A.J. Myers on the uh, charge, trying to close in on Kyle Wick. Last lap, he got two tenths of a second. He can knock off a second or a tenth of a second or two every lap. It won't be but about four laps until you'll see a, a race, a, a battle for the uh, lead with Kyle Wick and A.J. Myers, and not that far back, Jacob Gulick. And to be fair, A.J. Myers against Kyle Wick right now, it's still early. They haven't gotten their tires fully to where they want them yet. Pressure-wise, Kyle Wick again trying to manage his stuff. You heard in his interview, he's not too concerned with tire deg. Not nearly as an abrasive of a surface is Newcastle Motorsports Park compared to where we were two weeks ago in Salt Lake City, Utah, at Utah Motorsports Campus. So he's fine to go at full bore in these heat races. AJ's going full bore right now, trying to run him down. And Jacob Gulick, the same. Where is the laps across the line? Two tenths better was Myers again. Two and a quarter tenths better was Jacob Gulick. Big time gains for second and third. At the same time, Marin Crummers is getting reeled in by Talon Yockel for position number four. Check this out. The black, yellow, and orange of Talon Yockel is reeling up to the reigning series champion. Only his second season in the pro shifter class. Talon Yockel challenging one of the best of the world here for position number four. A.J. Myers continues to close in. Another two-tenths of a second on Kyle Wick. And Jacob Gulick in third just went purple with a 102-494. He wants to join the party and is only he's actually less than a second from Kyle Wick and only four tenths off of uh, A.J. Myers. So we could have a three-card battle for this top spot. Kyle Wick trying to keep them at bay, but he's losing about two tenths of a second every lap and looks like they're even a little closer now as they round uh, I-70 and head back towards the uh, start-finish line. One more lap in the books. It's six to go this time by halfway, or actually just over halfway, or nearing the halfway mark. And A.J. Myers just went purple again. Now it's a three-tenths of a second advantage. He is there, and so is Jacob Gulick. Yeah, he is right on the bumper. Kyle Wick still leading. Look at this. Yockel able to get around Marin Kremers for that fourth spot. Kremers going to come under fire for fifth. Pick it going through in turn number five as well. So Hunter Pickett signaling to Marin saying, follow me, I can get back up to him. After getting passed by Talon, he started running forward. But how about that? Talon Yockel up to position 
number four as the field heads through out of the cell tower and towards the back section of the racetrack. That's fourth, fifth, and sixth. Up front, it is still Kyle Wick over A.J. Myers and then over Jacob Gulick. Like you said, though, Randy, the gap closer and closer every lap. It's a roll reversal from heat number one of Kyle Wick tracking down A.J. Myers. It's A.J. Myers tracking down Kyle Wick. The gap is now just three car lengths coming to the front stretch at the halfway mark. Kyle Wick up on the wheel trying to get as much speed as he can. A.J. Myers can feel the draft now. The separation, three-tenths of a second, but honestly, it's as close as A.J. Myers wants it to be right now. He's just trying to calculate if and when he can make a move around uh, Kyle Wick. And at the same time, Jacob Gulick not that far back. Myers has to be careful that the move he makes doesn't slow him down to the point that Gulick could make a charge. Uh, last lap on 102-184, even faster for A.J. Myers as he moves in on Kyle Wick. It'll be four to go next time by. Kyle Wick clinging to that top spot ever so slightly over A.J. Myers and not that far back, Jacob Gulick. Talon Yaka with a solid run up to fourth, and Hunter Pickett is fifth. But they're all chasing Kyle Wick, and Kyle Wick right now keeping A.J. Myers at bay, but not by much. Yeah, he is uh, hanging on for now. He was losing, like you said, two to three-tenths a lap. Only lost a tenth last time, actually about a half-tenth it felt like for Myers to Wick. Now big run for A.J. Myers at the end of the front straightaway. Kyle Wick half a car length back to Myers now through turn number three. We'll head over back to four. Uh, the leaders coming through the uh, quick, fast 90. We go up the short chute towards the horseshoe. AJ is almost there, needs about one more tenth of a second less, and he'll be close enough to send a big move for the lead in the win, and we're coming to three to go. It's getting hot right at the right time here, Randy. And Jacob Gulick, he's in the catbird seat, only about a half second away. These two get together on a pass, and Jacob Gulick's right there to pounce. The race could come to him. You never know. He is really, really close. But the, the, the separation between first and second right now is less than a cart length. A.J. Myers is right there, and only about two cart lengths back is Jacob Gulick. Kyle Wick once again up on the wheel into uh, – the I-70 corner, one more time down the straight. Three to go this time. Good launch off the corner for Kyle Wick. And he's got good pace and a good gap as they head down to turn one. Actually a little better than the last lap. He he increased that gap a little bit, Xander, on A.J. Myers on that last lap. I think Myers is starting to hear footsteps. Well, I think it, to me, it, Myers got a terrible exit on I-70. I don't know if he missed a shift or just kind of bottled the exit up, but... It was not a good launch down the long pond straightaway, and he paid for it. That whole lap, you, you, like you said, he was, he was gaining. Now that gap has doubled, and it's at the wrong time to do it. With two and a half laps to go, he doesn't have a lot of time to rebound from that. He might just try and ride it to the end at this point and uh, you know, take the, the second-place result and tie with Kyle going into heat number three as the tiebreaker between the two of them for who gets the pull in the main. Uh, but for A.J. Myers, again, that's not what you need with this little bit left. He had to be perfect to catch Kyle Wick. He was not perfect there. And I got to wonder, I'm looking at the uh, timing and scoring. Kyle Wick's last lap was the fastest lap he's had this race. So was he pacing himself a little bit, waiting for A.J. to catch up, saving tires, saving on the car, and then once he felt that A.J. was close enough, he, he turned it up a notch because right now he just went purple, 102-035. I think Kyle Wick was just kind of laying low for a little bit. Could have been that. Could have been setting up the pressures to come in a little bit later. As uh, we see now, problems for Larry Pegram in the 273 TKG KR. He's off the racetrack. Uh, so not good news for Larry Pegram, the former AMA Pro Superbike riding uh, rider and multi-time American champion off the side of the racetrack in this heat race. With a lap and a half to go, you could be right, Randy. I mean, I, I think maybe rather than him personally saving, just by opting for a uh, tire pressure that gave them a little more you know, longevity, going a little bit lower, sacrificing, knowing that the tires would be a little bit lower on air for peak pressure and peak temperature. Would be better to do that in heat number two. But either way, AJ's giving it one last burst here. He's found a second chance, a good exit out of I-70 is what he needs for any kind of a shot because we're coming to the white. One, flight, uh, one lap to go. These guys are leaving nothing on the table. Last lap for AJ Myers was his best lap, a 102.055. And that last, the, the best lap for Wick is a 102.035. So these two are giving it all they got. They've kind of gapped Gulick now. So Gulick has lost that that draft. He he was close enough to, to really uh, 
pressure A.J. Myers. He's fallen back now. It's down to a two-card battle, and Kyle Wick steady, 102-192 uh, in his last lap. Myers did close in a little bit, but right now Kyle Wick, it looks like, has enough breathing room where, as you said, Xander, uh, this could be a case of uh, uh, that third heat is going to be the one that decides. Colin Yockel and uh, Jacob Gulick going after it, and Yockel with a strong run out there moves up to third, so a great run by Talon Yakel. Sorry, I was trying to let you know it was Hunter Pickett getting it on Yakel for the fourth spot, Randy. My mistake, trying no. to point that one out. But how about it for Kyle Wick, though? He's going to survive it, and they'll split the heats. Kyle Wick, heat two winner into SRP Engines. Pro shifter, he hangs on over A.J. Myers. Jacob Gulick definitely slowed his pace down. He cooled things off by nearly two seconds on that final lap to cool the tires. Uh, then it goes Pickett fourth, who gets around Talon Yakel late in the game. Uh, Yakel fifth, Kremers. He, got, he went all the way backwards to the midfield. Ethan Boer, Giorgio Carrara, Justin White all giving chase to Marin, who had to go heavy defense mode to hang on for that one. But the key moment of the race really coming down to the start, it felt like Kyle Wick able to get that hole shot and get the gap that was more than enough to put himself out in front of the field. And here's a look at it again as they went to the, the flagman this time. Wick with a great jump. And again, what a jump it was for Jacob Gulick. Having his teammate jump to second and then A.J. having to get around him, that was all the difference in Pro Shifter. Yeah, not a good start for A.J. on that one. And it, it showed he had to get around uh, Gulick and then work his way to Wick. But uh, exciting. He closed in and then, uh, and, and then Wick uh, just turned it up a little bit and uh, won the race. Well, with that, there's a look again at your top ten, how they ended up. Kremers over Boer, Carrara, White, and Jordan Musser, your top ten. Uh, Kyle Wick, the winner in Heat 2 for SRP Engines Pro Shifter. DNJ Intermodal Services Mini Swift is up next. We go back to the top of the lineup here uh, for all eight divisions, and in total, ten heat races still to come this afternoon for the final round of heats. It's Desperation Hour on Saturday afternoon and a gorgeous and a hot one here in Newcastle, Indiana. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Car Chaser. Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. We're based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. Welcome back to Newcastle Motorsports Park as we get set for more. Yellow flags waving, unfortunately, no green on attempt number one for DNJ Intermodal Services Mini Swift. You can see one car at the back still trying to play catch up. It'll give us time, Randy, for the last time they're lined up this way to go through the starting lineup. On the pole will be the number 111 of Tristan Murphy. Outside front row, it's Jackson Tovo in row two. It's Fion Shi and Royce Vega. Row three, Travis Pettit and Michael McGoy. Marco Romero and William Kim in row four. It's Jacob Majeski. And Jackson Gibson in row number five. Row six is Landon Buer and Thomas Chrisman. Rocco Simone and Benja Fernandez in row seven. Row eight is Martin Jeromillo Ger and Bowen Green in row eight. Ashton Woon and Cameron Marcia. Row nine, Lucas Palacio and Brandon Siraki. Row 10, Carter Barkas and Jackson Porter. Row 12, Marco Sabat and Kai Mars. Row 13, Tyrone Kemper and Mateo Calderon. Row 14, Luis Fernunez and Nicholas Arbeza. 
And your top 30 starters is Carson Berry and Jude Thermolazami is the row 15 starters as we work our way around to uh, look for a start in our micro swift. Yeah, here they come coming out of the final tor or turn. Oh, do we have more to go through? Sorry, Randy. No, we, I said micro swift. It's mini swift. Mini swift for uh, DNJ Inter Intermodal Services. Mini swift. Tristan Murphy, Jackson Tovo, the Ryan Perry Motorsport Nitro Kart lockout of row number one brings this 40-plus driver field as we got one cone got knocked over there from the uh, outlap. But here we go, looking for the green. We'll get the green down to turn number one, and already one driver at the back spun, but the leaders cleaning through, and what a great start for Jackson Tovo from the outside, making up ground. He goes to the lead there, I believe. No, Murphy indeed leads them. He was able to get clear. Tovo falling back uh, and sliding in to the third spot, it looks like, as they come out of turn number four. I think Fianchi might be up to second, but, uh, yeah, like you said, a good a good start out there for uh, Tristan Murphy. Indeed, Fianchi on that red and yellow Gillard for Super Tune USA is up to second. Michael McGoy is fourth. Marco Romero fifth. Uh, right behind him is Team Benick teammate in Royce Vega, P6. Then Travis Pettit, P7. Again, keep your eye on the leaderboard to watch where championship points later. Lucas Palacio, who had to start 21st in all three heats today, is uh, going to get up to. He's able to get up into the lower teens in heat one, drove forward in heat two as well. We go down to the grid here with David Land as he's got both of our top two uh, and our, both of our heat winners so far in Pro Shifter standing by. David? Hello. All right. Hey, when I say hello to the mic, it works. Pro Shifter has been a two-horse race. It's been the AJ and Kyle show thus far. We got both of them here. It uh, was in favor of Kyle here. But, uh, fellas, just talk about your battle thus far this weekend. It's been a lot closer. I think the paddock chatter was that it, this was going to be a runaway. But you two have been making it entertaining. What's What's been the secret? Uh, I mean, I had the pace in practice. These guys worked through practice. They caught up, and they got ahead. First heat race, I had the gap early, and he closed me. He was faster. Second heat race, I messed the start up again. He got to lead. I ran him down this time, but was also difficult to pass. So uh, looking really close. Yeah, I mean, it was the same thing. AJ got the whole shot on the first one, and I couldn't get back around him. And then I got the whole shot this time, and AJ couldn't get around me. So it'll be close. So looking ahead to, to heat number three, who's got the advantage, do you think? Can you, can you get back around Kyle in this thing? Oh, it's 100% on me all day, all day, every day, baby. Woo! All right, Kyle, now you got to respond to that. How do you feel about the confidence from AJ here? I just got to keep it up front. We'll be good. I've got to keep it mature. We love maturity here. Xander, back to you. All right, we're back uh, on, on track action. Uh, Tristan Murphy still leading the way. Uh, one lap in the books, now two laps in the books as they cross the line. We've got Tristan Murphy, Fianchi, Michael McGoy, Marco Romero, and Travis Pettit. That is our top five running order. Everybody in line, kind of behaving themselves right now. we got about a 10-car breakaway. Jackson Gibson in cart number 142 just goes purple with a 113-953. But Tristan Murphy leading the way right now with Fianchi and Michael McGoy right there in tow, as well as Marco Romero. And Travis Pettit, that's your top five. Pass for second. Michael McGoy gets around Fianchi and now tries to chase down Tristan Murphy. Fianchi will slot into that fifth spot behind uh, Travis Pettit. Romero moving up to third as well. Here's Vega going by on Jackson Tovo. He'll pick up a spot. Royce Vega backed up to sixth. And uh, Tovo goes back down to the seventh position ahead of his teammate and William Kim. But Tristan Murphy, granted, as big as this pack has been, as still big as it is you would think they would have traded the lead but they have not Murphy now is going to get another uh, gap but still built as McGoy get, loses second now it's Romero going through Pettit alongside for third he'll get clear down the straightaway and McGoy will go right back to him as they come down to turn number one three down seven to go here's a challenge for the lead Marco Romero to the point and it turns one and two Marco Romero ahead of Tristan Murphy as M M uh, Romero goes purple on that last lap with a 113-533 Travis Pettit, Michael McGoy, and Fianchi. That's that five-card breakaway, and it's not a breakaway by much. In fact, six through tenth is right there in that lead group. Uh, Murphy leads the way back through the top ten. Royce Vega runs six. William Kim seventh. Jackson Gibson, Jackson Tovo, and Rocco Simone. That's your top ten. 
Early mover Cameron Marsha from 15th position up to 11th, trying to crack the top 10. And uh, looking through the rest of the field, nobody moving up too much. Travis Pettit, who started 7th, is up to 3rd. But Tristan Murphy still the driver to beat as he leads the way with Marco Romero in charge. And now Romero gets passed by Travis Pettit as Pettit now tries his shot at Tristan Murphy. Travis Pettit up to third. Tristan Murphy still leading the way as they climb the hill and make their way around I-70. One more time to cross the line. Tristan Murphy leads him down to start finish for lap number three. Yeah, here we go. Tristan, or uh, no, Marco Romero leads them down to turn number one. Travis Pettit second. Tristan Murphy third through the first couple corners. And then Michael McGoy is fourth. It's uh, Romero on that blue and orange Team Benick entry with the bright yellow helmet that leads uh, over the Trinity Carding Group green and white Kurt Republic of Travis Pettit. He's got that bright blue helmet in the 129. Your update on some of the big movers and shakers. Cameron Marsh had a big drive in that first seat. He's up 5 to 10th right now. Palacio is up 3, uh, actually up a little more than 3. He's up to 15th from 21st, so that's a big gain for Lucas Palacio. Fastest driver is all the way down in 18th with Jackson Porter. Uh, on the uh, TKGKR. So big moves uh, further back for some fast guys, but need more of this to bring them in the mix. Pettit on Romero for the lead. Murphy still looking on in the third spot. McGoy back in fourth. That change in the lead didn't cost him a done. Oh, coming together a little bit out of the corner. Michael McGoy for fourth was hanging on as Royce Vega went to the inside to go by him, and he could not complete the pass. And now William Kim wants to go by, and he will for fifth. Three-card battle for the front if they stay in line. May be able to uh, continue to check out a little bit. Michael McGoy in fourth. is kind of on his own, and we got a driver swinging wide to the inside, trying to gain some ground, and does so. Actually, that was... Uh, Fionn Shi right there in that red and white Gillard uh, for Super Tune USA. Big move, like you said, all the way down to the inside, Randy. Travis Pettit, Marco Romero, and Tristan Murphy still in that lead group. Michael McGoy trying to close in that gap and hasn't been successful the last couple laps as those three have decided, at least for now, to race together in line and not make any drastic moves. And when they do, they're awfully quick and hard to catch. Travis Pettit leading that group. We're five laps to go, four to go next time by with Travis Pettit, your leader. Yeah, four laps to go at this stripe. Six laps complete. Final time on track for these boys and girls. They'll be done early on the day. We're still going to run green flag racing probably till about 6 p.m. Eastern time with that last pro shifter heat slated for 545. Uh, these guys, top of the leaderboard, top of the lineup, uh, they get to get done early. They have to start early tomorrow, first thing in the morning with their uh, warm-up session for the main events. But this is, again, last chance of the day to improve your starting position for the main event. Where do you want to do? A lot of them normally like to calculate the points going in to know who they need to beat. For now, Murphy Going to try and go one, maybe two. He'll get one with help from his teammate in Michael McGoy. The Ryan Perry Motorsport Nitro cards move their way up to second and third. Travis Pettit still leading the way, but uh, he's got some new faces behind him. And I think we may see a little action up there for that lead spot as these two drivers are, uh, Murphy and McGoy, are really trying to close in and make a move on Pettit. They still continue to gap a little bit. We're looking at about a second and a half back to Royce Vega in fifth. Nice pass from Marco Romero there for third. Splits that RPM duo back up again. And so it's uh, TKG with the Cart Republic up front. And then Ryan Perry Motorsports Nitro Cart second and fourth. Team Benix. Uh, Benix chassis are third and fifth. In fact, you've actually got the RPM Nitro Cart back in sixth. to William Kim is there is a, a pass for the lead. For the Ryan Perry Motorsports Brigade, Tristan Murphy, the pull sitter, back to the point, back to the lead. It's four drivers together and more trying to catch back up as we come to the line to put seven laps complete, three laps to go, and DNJ Mini Swift. Does anyone duck out of line down the front stretch? I don't think anyone's got enough momentum to do it. It'll be single file to turn number one. Into turn one, it's Tristan Murphy leading that pack, and we got some bumping out there. A little bit of off-track excursion by Marco Romero, but he gathers it back up. Good job by Marco. That right rear was off track. He gathered it back up and did not lose a spot. But Tristan Murphy did check out a little bit because of it. Now a pass for the uh, second spot, Romero around Pettit. He takes over second, and now Pettit loses another one as the 161 of Michael McGoy moves up to third. And Pettit's falling back uh, every turn. Now he's lost a position. So Pettit now back. Uh, Royce Vega slips around Pettit. 
So Pettit loses about four spots there in just about a half a lap. So uh, tough, uh, tough positioning there for uh, Travis Pettit, who was running in the front for a while and near the front, but now back in about sixth position. So uh, Tristan Murphy still trying to hang on to that top spot. Michael McGoy going to second, and two more drivers are joining the top six as a round go. Four cars collected at the back of the field coming out of the cell tower. Here comes your leaders, though. We've talked about the leading group of six most of this race. How about the kids in seventh and eighth catching up as they change uh, up uh, towards the front of the pack? Cameron Marsha, Rocco Simone. They are on the way to the pack with two to go. Romero wants second. He'll take it away from Tristan Murphy or from Michael McGoy. Murphy still the leader, but Marco Romero back splitting them up again. It's Benick versus RPM, it feels like, and a TKG KR dropped in the mix, but it'll change up when Cameron Marcia and Rocco Simone get to the scene. They're side by side still. Third and fifth, McGoy, Romero, and Vega. All Vega side by side with uh, Michael McGoy. Not able to do it. How about Travis Pettit? He'll take fifth back away from William Kim. Speaking of Cameron Marcia, moves up eight spots. He started 15th, currently running in seventh. And uh, Lucas Palacio started 18th. He's in 11th. Jackson Porter started 21st, nearing the top 10. He is in 12th. So some good movement there by those drivers. But right now, Tristan Murphy trying to hang on to this one. But he's got uh, still a lot of, uh, about a lap and a half to go to pull off the, the victory. Coming on the straightaway towards the I-70 hairpin. Everyone jockeying for a position, trying to see if they've got the run. Where do they go? High, low, two by two into the corner. McGoy low. How about Cameron Marsh all the way up to fourth now with a big charge forward. Simone tried to go with him. He got trapped a couple cars back. It's a big backward slide for Travis Pettit at the front. It is a two-horse race. Murphy versus Romero for third on back. This will be an, uh, a complete toss-up. Michael McGoy, Cameron Marsh there in the black and gray nitro cart. Then his te uh, all teammates there uh, with William Kim in the fifth spot. As they go down to the inside to defend there for position number three, the leaders battling up the road. They're still all going at it. That's Rocco Simone on the white and red Motel Sport Perilin. Back and forth with Royce Vega. Here goes Travis Pettit through. Fion Shi back in the mix. Right there at the end, that's Jackson Gibson. And also coming up into frame for the first time is Palacio and Porter. But look at this. For the lead, what a crossover. Marco Romero gets one done on Tristan Murphy. Romero leading the way to the infield. Murphy may be out of time now as he's lost that position. He's been the leader for many laps, and now he's looking at it from a different uh, point of view, and we'll see if he can hang on as they head up uh, I-70, and we'll see if he can hang on for that final uh, lap, or does uh, Murphy have anything left? Crossover from Tristan Murphy. Marco Romero coming down the front straight away, holding the lead. Murphy's got to run. He looks low, pulls out again, still not enough. Can he get there last second? I don't think so. Marco Romero wins it, and what a run forward. Cameron Marsha comes up 27,000 shy of third. 11 spots gained for the 114. 11 gained for Jackson Porter. Seven for Lucas Palacio. Lots of great drives from deep in the pack. Unfortunately for Jackson Tovo, another rough heat there. That time he fell all the way down to 21st at the end. Here's a look as the uh, leaders came to the line in that battle coming to the checkered flag. Again, you see here Tristan Murphy tried to pull out once, tried to pull out twice, again went back to get the toe and finally committed with enough of a run. And that right there is about six hundredths of a second, just not enough to get by. Look how close they were back though for third, for seventh, and for this entire gaggle coming to the line. Lucas Palacio getting there late. Here's a look at the rest of the field. How everybody stacked on up in the 42 driver DNJ Intermodal Services Mini Swift class. Marco Romero, your winner over Tristan Murphy and Michael McGoy. Cameron Marsha, third, or uh, fourth, Mike, uh, Michael McGoy, third. William Kim, Royce Vega, Travis Pettit, Fion Shi, Rocco Simone, and Jackson Porter, your top 10 in Mini Swift. We'll take a quick commercial break. When we come back for more action, it's time to get into the 100cc K100 Senior Classes final two heats of the day.
Kart Store USA is a kart parts supplier that racers and retailers can count on when they need reliable advice and service. We focus on servicing all racers with honesty and pride while maintaining customer satisfaction. We carry a full stock of Kart Republic and Tony Kart chassis, as well as IAMI and Vortex Rock engines. We've also got a host of other parts available and in stock, such as products from Rev Performance Materials, Jekko Racing Seats, and more. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, and on top of that, if your order exceeds $200, shipping is on us. Check out all we have to offer today by visiting us online at cartstore-usa.com. All right, we've got a couple of announcements we'll hit once we get going with KA100 Senior. Groups A and uh, D, I believe, together coming to the green for this one. Austin Jurors on the inside, Elio Mesa on the outside. We're green down to turn number one for the final heat of the day in KA Senior, and it's single file quickly for the top five. We'll uh, uh, hit the announcements in a, just a couple laps once things settle out for your uh, Mike Doty Racing K100 Senior Drivers. For now, though, Austin Jur is the leader on the red and white Tony card, and they all fan out down the short shoot. How about Mick Gabriel? Quickly going up into second. Brandon Lemke back to third. Elio Meza did not get a great start, but not a bad one. Second back to fourth. Harley Keeble is fifth. Aiden Rudolph is sixth. Adam Maxwell on the AMAX Racing Tony card is in seventh. And then a little gap back to uh, the Cart Republic entry of Jordan Perry. Here we go to the infield uh, green corner, side by side. Brandon Lemke takes over second for Mick Gabriel. He'll take that one right back from him. And into the infield hairpin we go. Lemke gonna block low. It'll give Austin Jurors a nice and big gap as they head out into the uh, back straightaway. Good bell out there for those uh, top spots. Are only really not even one lap in the books. They're heading by this time around I-70 for the first lap. Austin Jurors already with a pretty good gap, but the battle rages on behind him as they cross the stripe. Austin Jurors is your leader uh, running in second right now. We've got uh, Brandon Lemke, Mick Gabriel runs third, Harley Keeble fourth, Aiden Rudolph fifth, Elio Meza, Adam Maxwell, Josh Campbell, Finnegan Bailiff, and Emery Lida. That's your top ten running order, one lap in the books. But right now, Austin Jurors with about a half a second advantage over Brandon Lemke, but Lemke starting to close in with the help of Mick Gabriel in draft. Those second and third drivers are closing in. We'll have a three-card battle with Austin Jurors for the lead. Yeah, they'll be there in just a moment's time. So uh, about two car lengths between them. Gabriel's gotten a pretty big gap back to Harley Keeble in the fourth spot. Mesa back to sixth here now and still just kind of riding. Same then for Adam Maxwell. Same for Jordan Perry, although he got shuffled back a couple spots. It's now Josh Campbell and then Finnegan Bailiff as Rudolph by on Keeble. That's for fourth. So... Aiden Rudolph taking his PSL carding AR Academy Bureau Art one step higher inside the top five. We'll come to the line this time. Two down, eight laps to go. Austin Jurr is the leader. And again, uh, through the announcement list here, Randy, you can go ahead and ping him on off as uh, we look for the lead. Brandon Lemke over Jurr's. He'll bring Gabriel through to second. Lemke the leader. So for KA Senior, there will be no last chance qualifier. Also want to remind everybody to stop by the U.S. Pro Kart Series trailer and check out the 2023 apparel. If you have fuel tickets you have not used yet, they will expire at the end of the year. It's better to use them sooner than later. We don't want to get to the last race and there's not enough fuel for everybody. So if you have fuel tickets, you should try to redeem them at this race if possible. Podiums will be Sunday following the uh, last final. They'll be for the top five uh, plus the fast qualifier for the podiums and we'll also have the money podium after that immediately following the finals. Coming through the infield section now as we pick back up the race. Nice pass by Austin Jurors. He gets by on Mick Gabriel. Aiden Rudolph followed. Now look at this. Move to the inside. Josh Campbell taking no prisoners here in heat number three and neither is Aiden Rudolph. Both of them are carving. At the moment, Rudolph is now up five spots. Campbell, I think, is up seven. And Gabriel trying to go back on Josh Campbell, and he will in turn one, and Campbell trying to hold off. Here comes Elio Meza, side by side, door to door to three. He'll get clear. Lemke pulling away, though, as Rudolph and Jurors now are going to need to work together to hunt him back down. Brandon Lemke, one of the uh, legendary names in the U.S. Pro Card Series, 
leading the way now as he gets around Austin Jurors and a good run out there by Aiden Rudolph as he uh, moves up to second and tries to chase down Lemke. But right now Lemke enjoying about a half a second advantage over Aiden Rudolph and Austin Jurors. A little further back, Josh Campbell and Mick Gabriel, who got resumed his uh, original starting position for this race but had to start from the back in heat in race number two. So uh, Gabriel with a good run right now. Um, Vinny Miskellis up eight position, started in 19th, currently in 11th. So he's got a good run. Josh Campbell started in 11th. He's up to fourth. And Aiden Rudolph, who started in seventh, all the way up to second. So a good run by those drivers. And right now Rudolph closing in on Lemke. He may have something for him as they head down I-70 straight, or Long Pond straight, rather, into turn one. Uh, Austin Jurors drafting with Aiden Rudolph inside of Lemke. They make the pass, and Rudolph takes over the top spot, followed by Austin Jurors. Lemke gets shuffled back to third. Yeah, Brandon Lemke back to P3. Aiden Rudolph, the new leader. Austin Jurors second. Here comes Mick Gabriel as well in that fourth spot. That was a good lap for Gabriel also. Josh Campbell in fifth had to get his way back up to the lead of that second pack, and now he's starting to charge it forward. He's bringing Harley Keeble uh, with him. Elio Mays has kind of faded backwards a little bit in this heat, but Aiden Rudolph laden laps. He's progressively gotten better, it feels like, just inch by inch, bit by bit, all day long. Aiden started the day kind of inside the top ten, outside edge of the top five. Heat two was even better speed-wise for him, and now here in heat number three, Aiden Rudolph is leading. Granted, not for long. Jers right back on him, and oh no! Commentators curse. Brandon Lemke went to the inside as Rudolph went to get behind Jers, and they get stuck together. Rudolph Quickly getting out of the way as he knew more cars were coming. And now they'll try to get back going at the end of this pack. Brandon Lemke just sent it there in a little bobble. And Rudolph can't get the car fired back up. So Lemke's going to try and pull his car around. At this point, then again, both of them are just about done. And oh, no. I, oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, Rudolph can't get. Whoa. Whoa. Aiden Rudolph. I don't know how. I'm not going to say anything on that, actually, Randy. We just got told we should stop race directing, so I'm, I'm going to be quiet. I think they were shaking hands. Yeah, that's what it was. That was shaking hands. Pretty sure that's what it was. Ugh. Austin Jers leading them into the cell tower here with Mick Gabriel behind. A couple of car lengths thanks to that crash. Now for the entire top two, back to the rest of the field. Clean and green, though, for Austin Jers in the uh, Team Jers Racing privateer operation. Mick Gabriel second, and it's a familiar place. So if we go back to heat number one for quick Mick Gabriel, unfortunately, uh, that second heat race, or the first heat race of the day, he was second, just a little bit slower than Austin, and he just couldn't hang on to him by the end of the race. And right now we're watching the same thing unfold. Big gap out back, no drafting help for Mick, and uh, Austin Jurors keeping him at about a four to five car length cushion. Good start out there for uh, Austin Jurors and Mick Gabriel uh, taking advantage of some carnage that was unexpected this early in the race. But to Austin Jurors, Mick Gabriel, one and two, Josh Campbell, Harley Keeble, and Elio Meza. That's your top five running order as we work our way through heat number two for the uh, A versus D group. Uh, the uh, K100 Senior sponsored by Mike Doty Racing. Austin Jurors, your leader with Mick Gabriel, Harley Keeble, Josh Campbell, and Elio Meza. That is your top five running order through the top ten. Jordan Perry runs six, followed by Finnegan Bailiff, Emery Lida up to eighth, Vaughn Best Beasley in ninth, and Michael Levitt runs in tenth. Yeah, Michael Levitt up two. Again, uh, Vaughn Beasley up uh, five. Lida up five. Everyone getting to be the benefactor of all the carnage going through, but Josh Campbell still the biggest mover inside the top ten in that fourth position. Here he is now back to fifth, though, as Harley Keeble's gone on by. So Josh Campbell there in the white suit on the Ryan Perry Motorsport machine. Harley Keeble right there in, in sorry, third, not fourth, for the two of them. Third, fourth, fifth. Elio Mays on the Iron Rock Motorsports. Tony Cart right at the edge of the pack of them. They're trying to run down the top two. Gabriel's made up a little bit of ground on John, on Austin Jurors, but they're still the two fastest, it looks like. Three to go, seven complete. Jurors, a 69 flat, and the same for Harley Keeble and Josh Campbell working together. Austin Jurors did that with no toe by himself. Austin Jurors pretty strong out there right now as he uh, leads the way with uh, uh, Mick Gabriel trying to chase him down. But Austin Jurors really strong out there as he has been most of the weekend. Uh, Mick Gabriel went purple on lap six with a 108.875. Harley Keeble trying to close in, but he's a second and a half back with Josh Campbell. They just don't seem to have enough time to even make a move if they had the speed. So it's really a two-card battle right now between Austin Jurors 
and Mick Gabriel. And right now, Jurors is enjoying about a five-cart length advantage over Gabriel. Gabriel's trying all he can to hang on to be in a position to make a move. It'll be two to go next time by. Not sure Gabriel have, has enough horsepower to do that. Yeah, I mean, Austin Jurors has been so strong. That card is just hooked up, and he's been driving flawlessly. Mick Gabriel's got the horses to close up on the straightaways. Jurors then pulls back away. See, right here, Mick Gabriel's going to pull all the way up to within a car length. And then this whole first sector, Austin Jurors is just locked on right now. I mean, he is perfect through the opening uh, first half to lap. And that's where Gabriel's just lacking just a little bit, it looks like. Because right here again, he loses about a half car length. Then through this horseshoe, this to me is where Austin Jurors is the strongest. Look, Gabriel, he sent it in sideways there trying to make up ground. That gap now opens to two car lengths. Now to the cell tower. Jurors even better out of here. And what a launch he'll get from this corner. Austin Jurors will pull that lead back to four car lengths. Every bit that Gabriel just gained down the front stretch, he loses all the way through the opening sector. Yeah, Gabriel's trying his best, but as you said, the, the inside tighter part of the circuit, Austin Jurors is just lights out. There is some straightaway speed there by Gabriel, but he's got to come off of I-70 really strong on the rear bumper of Jurors if he plans on making a move down the long straight, and I don't know that he's going to be close enough to do that. Jurors comes off the corner and heads down Long Pond Straight. About three cart length separation. Gabriel does close up, but not enough, I don't think, to make a move. He's going to have to make it here if he does, and he just isn't close enough to do it. And when they get to this part of the circuit now, you'll see where Jurors really shines. And I think Gabriel's going to be all he can do to hang on to that one. Yeah, we'll see. He was a little bit sideways going in the horseshoe last time. Little bobble that time from Jurors. Gabriel says uh, keep going forward. I think Mick Gabriel's happy with a second place here. He may not try to force the issue too much. They make a run at him at the line, but uh, Mick Gabriel, uh, I think to me, is you know kind of realizing that it's not worth the fighting too much with Austin. Take that second place result. Get some good points. Get a good starting spot for tomorrow. You don't got to win every battle. You just got to win the war. And that war is not won today. And that's a veteran move from Mick Gabriel. Harley Keeble and Josh Campbell. Then Elio Meza still the top five with a gap further back. Here's a look at the leaders, though. Final time through that infield hairpin. Yeah, I think it's got to be Austin Jurors all the way. Just too much horsepower for Mick Gabriel. But with the, uh, the work that Mick Gabriel had to do in heat number two, recovered well in heat three. We'll have a good starting spot tomorrow. I got to tell you, everybody in this field better be worried about Austin Jurors because he has been strong in every heat race. I think Austin Jurors is the driver to beat tomorrow. Well, he wins heat three in K100 Senior, presented by Mike Doty Racing Groups A and D. Mick Gabriel second, Josh Campbell eight spots up to third. Harley Keeble ends up in fourth. Mays a fifth. Nothing really happening as all the chaos was early on in that one. That was a. Uh, wild uh, opening half and kind of a more tame and anticlimactic second half heat race from the KA100 seniors. There's a look as Aiden Rudolph will uh, have to ride the recovery vehicle back as will Seamus McKendry and many others unfortunately at the uh, end of that one. So not ideal for many, about six total DNFs from heat number three. And uh, we go back to uh, take a look through everything as it'll be a while to clean this one up. Here's a look at that incident. I believe we're queuing up for uh, between Brandon Lemke and uh, Aiden Rudolph. Let's go back to it and check it out right here. This is coming on into the corner. You see Austin Jurors pulling out a line. He's looking for the lead on Rudolph. Rudolph sees that, starts to kind of close the gap, and Lemke was just, I think, kind of halfway following, halfway not. Rudolph was not trying to stay too far on the outside. I think he was trying to let Jurors go and quickly get in behind him so he didn't spend too much time in all those marbles on the racetrack. And then from here, uh, here we'll, we'll, we'll let the viewers decide of, of kind of what went on uh, from this point on. I honestly, I really do think they went like, hey, you know what, it's one of those deals. They kind of just... I, I mean that sincerely. Could have been. Either way, let's go down the pit lane here. Ryan Perry from Ryan Perry Motorsports is having a pretty good day. He's got a lot of fast guys. They had Josh Campbell off a great drive there in K.A. Senior. He's standing by with Alexander Searle. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, Ryan, um, like Xander said, you guys have good pace in all classes that you guys are a part of. I mean, Josh Campbell just finished third there. Kind of just describe to me how, how the team's been so far today and how you feel you guys could improve on maybe going on to the Heat 3 for X30, for example. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we have pretty decent pace in, in a lot of classes. We're missing a little bit with a few guys, but uh, some guys are struggling a little bit on chassis, some on power. But uh, basically with X30, we just need to keep the bumper from getting bent up. Keeps getting hit real hard every race, and it's bending the bumper up, putting it in a bind, and the cart won't work like that. So. All right, thanks, Ryan. No problem. There you go from Ryan Perry. Uh, quick announcement in the paddock. Uh, it's been a good day. We've given a lot of love to the Trinity Karting Group boys, especially with their strong contingent in the mini slip class. Well, we want to wish a big happy birthday to team owner Sean Bailiff. Happy birthday, Sean Bailiff here. Uh, and uh, we'll keep the age to ourselves. Happy uh, 29th birthday. Is that a good way to put it there, Randy? I believe that's a, a fair way to say it. Happy 29th birthday to Mr. Sean Bailiff. I, I think that was the case. Uh, you know, Sean, years ago, Sean used to race at our track in Port Washington, Ohio, back in the 70s. I'll just say back then he was very, very young when he did that. <laughs> We go on now uh, to the next uh, part of the uh, race day when we get back for more. We'll be right back after this. Coming to the green for KA Senior Groups B and C for the final time today. Uh, the K100 Senior Class presented by Mike Doty Racing will be split apart. Tomorrow we'll see all 52 drivers together as uh, we get set to go. Coming to the line, Peyton Phillips on the inside, Connor Ferris on the outside, Braden Eves third, and they're going to safely get through. Turns one and two for MDRK Senior. Randy Kugler stepping out for a moment. It will allow me to bring in my good buddy, Simon Sykes, to the booth, who's been busy with us all weekend long, watching the action as well. The K Senior class there. That one, a little gamesmanship, but a tame ending. This one, already a good chaotic start as it's a big line of cars through the horseshoe. Phillips. Ferris, Eves, Shipman, Henry Wheeler, your top five. As wild as the races have been today, I'm not sure we're going to see it calm down much. A clean start for these drivers as the top two start to make their breakaway from Braden Eves sitting there in third, Xander. Yeah, they've gotten a nice little gap as they battled further back. How about Henry Wheeler sending it on Cooper Shipman? John Burke going on the inside of Aiden Levy. We saw Levy and Eves get together pretty hard there in that second heat race. This time they're separated, but Peyton Phillips, Unlike some of the other heats where he's had to start on the outside like heat one and kind of get muscled back, his last two getting to start from the pole have been pretty nice for him. He'll lead them coming onto the I-70 straight away. And so Peyton Phillips over Ferris and Eves and on back. We put one down, nine to go. A little bit of separation, but a loosely tied pack still right now. And Connor Ferris with a lot of strong pace throughout today. today. So if you want someone behind you pushing him, it's probably him, that 902 machine sitting there in P2, pushing Peyton Phillips away from Braden Eves, and he'll make the move to the lead goes Connor Ferris. He'll take the lead heading into turn four as they try and run away from Braden Eves. Braden Eves closing the gap with that battle, and now we've got the top four and five all in one line. We'll see where the chaos starts to break out as they're side by side still Nose to tail headed through cell tower. Yeah, that was interesting, Simon. I don't think I've seen a cleaner pass in turn number four. And you and I have been to a lot of races, raced a lot of races here at Newcastle. That was smooth. Now, this one smooth as well. Eve's going by in the green corner to take over second. Phillips just kind of trying to hang on there for third. How about John Burke on the move? He'll pick up another one. That Tesoro Raceworks CRG cracks the top five on the black and orange 904. 
getting around Cooper Shipman, and Braden Eves wants to go to the lead. He'll do so easily in the I-70 corner with a big run on Connor Ferris. And now it's the MPG Motorsports Red and White Cart Republic that leads, but there's a big train coming behind, and they're going to freight train him into turn number one. Ferris, Phillips, Wheeler as well, and even Burke going through for fourth on Eves. And Braden wasting no time going to lead there, but he'll fall all the way back to P5 in one corner as the whole line drafts by him on the front straight. Connor Ferris looking for a move to the inside, won't make that one stick as they go side by side into turn four. The top seven, eight cars all in a line going side by side through the double right, headed to the cell tower turn here, Xander. Yeah, I think uh, Peyton Phillips cut Connor Ferris a break one time with that pass in turn four. He didn't do it the second time. He held the outside, kept the gas matted, and Ferris had to back out, and it bottled that whole group up. So Phillips now over the blue and chrome of Ferris. Look at Colin Lloyd making some hay there on the SCR Red Speed. Remember, we've talked about him throughout the day at parts where he's had to drive from way back in a rough qualifying effort. Burke is now up, I believe, five spots to third. He wants to go more. Looks, Ferris looks back, says, I want to go. Burke says, either you go or I go. And now he goes to the inside in the I-70 corner with Henry Wheeler, who unfortunately can't complete the pass there. And coming on to the longest straight of this track, our oh. front straight here at Newcastle Motorsports Park. What is that that's happened there, Xander? Uh, there was some guys getting ramped up on the rear bumper in that final turn at the top of the screen. But John Burke going through to the lead over Connor Ferris with Peyton Phillips there third in line as they go through four, Levy, and then Wheeler, and then Eves. Uh, but, uh, yeah, changing the lead, Burke quickly going through. And really I think the biggest thing to learn from this class is don't pass into I-70 if it's going to be the leader of the pack because they'll just get freight trained in the front stretch the next straightaway later. Is Now more contact as they bottle up behind uh, Aiden Levy. And Henry Wheeler gets the worst of it. He'll lose three spots as Eli Warren, Colin Lloyd, and Brayden Eves all go through. This extremely competitive KA100 senior here today. It is a 100cc class, which means the draft effect is going to be a little bit more than that of the X30 seniors. We'll see here in a moment. But Brayden Eves running double duty. He'll lose out a spot there as they fall back to about the sixth, fifth, sixth spot as we watch two by two the First, second, third, and fourth head through I-70 and start to break a little gap to that fifth place cart of Colin Lloyd as Braden Eves looking for a move to the inside of that 918 machine of Henry Wheeler. He will clear him into turn one here, Xander. Yeah, so well, I was I was actually, I believe, on Lloyd. Lloyd back and forth there on the black and white red speed as Wheeler got away because they traded the spot. Again, Eve's kind of learning from earlier. He lost that spot in I-70, got it back at the end of the front straightaway, and they lost a little bit of time to Peyton Phillips and Aiden Levy for third and fourth, but not much. They should be able to get back up there. So the KR, the Tony Carts, uh, Eli Warren, again, a good uh, run forward to get back to neutral in seventh. He's kind of in his rookie season, been muscled a little bit in the senior classes, starting to get his own footing here, especially this week and making his pro debut in the X-30 class. Here's back, that's Wheeler trying to make a spot up. He did on Cooper Shipman, but for the lead, it's John Burke with Connor Ferris pushing him around. Aiden Levy, terrible start, but the Alonzo Kart driver is now up to third from fifth, back, and then back forward now uh, to be a net gain of two with Phillips on his tail. Coming to five to go this time by a strong run for that 904 CRG machine of John Burke as he leads the way over Connor Ferris. Aiden Levy in that FA cart right behind, trying to get that draft and chase them down as they head into turn one here. Yeah, Aiden Levy and Peyton Phillips. Let's compare lap times. 68.95 for them, 69.0 for the top two. So the marginal gains, big gains for Braden Neves and Colin Lloyd. That MPG car, purple right now, and he's on Phillips' bumper, looking inside, easily done there. He'll take over the fourth position, and Phillips will also lose fifth as through and clear goes Colin Lloyd. One-two punch right there. Phillips going to go back on Lloyd. Lloyd can't cross him up, and Peyton Phillips will stop the bleeding at one position lost. Eves P4, Phillips P5, Lloyd back to neutral in sixth. Seems like everyone inside the top ten here has the pace to win. It's just about who positions himself the best to get the most out of this draft pack racing as we head through the hairpin down towards I-70 corner. It's still John Burke in the lead over uh, Connor Ferris and Aiden Levy chasing them down, trying to get as much draft as he can. Headed into I-70 here, right behind him, Braden Eves. We'll see if he can link up with Aiden Levy and push them to the front. Let's see it coming down the front straightaway. Braden Eves, big run to Levy's bumper. He'll push him into turn number one. That'll be a good lap for the two of them. 
And it was 68-59 for Braden Eves compared to a 68.9 for the leaders. That was a four-tenth gain for the MPG Cart Republic driver here in KA Senior. Here they come through turn number four, up the short shoot towards the horseshoe. It is Burke still over Ferris, but now it'll change the third place. One lap later, same spot, one more position gain for Braden Eves. He gets to P3, Levy back to P4, and Phillips going to follow suit. He'll go in the cell tower. Lloyd will follow as well, and they'll all cycle Levy back to the sixth spot. Yeah, Aiden Levy dropping off there. Was P3, will fall a few spots. You know you're going to get some interesting racing when the back half of the top ten is almost a half second quicker than your leader, so it will stack back up very quickly, just like a slinky here as everyone stretches out and then compresses again, and when they compress, that's where we see the action start to break out. These passes start to happen, but Braden Eves making short work getting back to p3 he's been as far up as the lead and as far down as about seventh or eighth here so far xander yeah he has uh made some good headway but then also kind of faded backwards luckily there's been enough time and enough guys in the pack that he's been able to to stay within it and continue to pull himself back up by his bootstraps through turns two and three for john burke and connor ferris this race has been pretty boring they've locked and loaded in first and second and stayed that way for the past few laps and now i think we may see Ferris make a move soon because Eves is there, and he'll go if he won't, and he's going to go now. Braden Eves into second. Another lap, another position made for the 951 in that horseshoe section, and uh, as they come on out, it is Ferris third. He checks the gap back. Still has some cushion room to Peyton Phillips, but the pack is uh, on its way, and John Burke in the Tesoro Raceworks CRG leading the most laps he's led consistently, I think, all year right now, having a really, really solid heat race. He's got a storm coming behind him, about eight to nine drivers strong that's going to arrive right at the two-to-go signal. And some great racing in this class so far. This is one of the cleanest races I've witnessed here today is everyone doing a good job of not making too much contact, making those passes cleanly, and keeping that top ten all in a line. Everyone fast, everyone looking to push the pace and try and set themselves up to close out this final heat of the day. John Burke looked back to Braden Eves and tapped his helmet and said, go for it. I don't know if he's going to get that much. Eves has been fast enough on his own. He doesn't need to work with him, but if he does, he might be able to keep the pack away for now. John Burke has still put together good laps. That was a 68.7 with no draft and no pushing, so not a bad lap at all. I don't know if Eves feels like he's better uh, in the horseshoe. Oh, he went a little further back to Levy, and we just missed the pass there, but Braden Eves now into the lead over Burke uh, through the cell tower hairpin. Braden's starting to feel the pressure from behind. Doesn't want to get mired up in the back half of that top five. Wants to go ahead and take that lead here with two to go left in this final heat of the day for K.A. Senior, the second group here as we had just watched the first one. A pretty chaotic race there. A lot cleaner here in the second outing, the second half of this K.A. field as Braden Eves with now about a three-cart link gap over John Burke as they head down towards I-70. Let's take a look at that instant replay here. We'll cue that one up on over. Here's a look at the move from Braden Eves just right there, turn six, nice and easy. Smooth, clean, no problem at all to get that job done. That was how the MPG driver was able to get through to the top spot. And now with the white flag, he leads them through turns one and two. Burke, Phillips, Ferris, Lloyd as they've separated out further back. And Eves with the biggest gap I think we've seen in a minute. That's about three car lengths. Look at this gaggle though. Levy, Dalton Haynes is in the mix there. Eli Warren's got a broken right rear bumper. That bumper is broken on the red speed. That'll be unfortunately potentially either a, an end of line penalty or a DQ for the bodywork coming off like that. It's typically a meatball flag to pull him off early but we're on the final lap. Finish it out, I guess, and see where you land. Put it in the official's hands. So the 997 right behind Josh Holtz as they go up the hill. Meanwhile, towards the lead, final time. Eves has Burke back close. Burke is close enough in the back infield hairpin. I don't think Eves expected it, and he'll go through for the lead. John Burke now going to try and defend. One corner to go up the hill to the I-70 corner. Peyton Phillips trying to get there. He does have pressure for third, but he can open up. Eves follows Burke low. Cross up, coming out. Look at the run Braden's going to get. Here we go. Coming to the line. Eves, big run. He's got Phillips still there. Phillips will follow to the outside and back to the lead. Braden Eves wins the heat. John Burke second. Peyton Phillips third. And I think, again, Braden not defending was thinking, yeah, you want to go by me in these hairpins? I have no problem with that. And Braden getting a little bit of help across the line there. Certainly made that effort a bit easier to get to the win. Like I said, one of the cleaner races we've seen today. Some good racing throughout the field and an exciting end to the K.A. Senior races of the day.
Let's go back and take a look at that again here. Here is that run coming to the line. We've seen it so many times today. Another run, and like you said, Simon, he got a little help. Looked like it was more. I don't know if Phillips ever got to his bumper, to be honest with you. It was just a really good slingshot move with Eves getting a good run out of that corner. Again, these 100cc carts towing so well down this long straight makes those passes on the last straight so so unpredictable, makes the finishes crazy as we uh, will get set for our next one. But what, what a way to end the KA Senior Racing of today. Uh, a little bit messy earlier, but a fantastic race in my opinion uh, in that second group of the KA 100 seniors here. Smooth all the way to the end. Braden Eves, your Heat 3 winner in groups B and C. He's got to quickly get through that scale line and suit back or keep that suit on with a one race gap to go in to the X30 Pro main. There he is chatting with John Burke after that one. Good clean run and uh, all still business because it's not fully done yet for either one of them uh, here today. Lots still to conclude. Lots more to come your way. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Car Chasers coverage of the U.S. Pro Card Series from Newcastle. Welcome back here to Newcastle Motorsports Park. X30 Pro Junior looking for the green. First time by, we'll get it. Anthony Martella will lead them into turn number one as Charlie Smith gets to second. Ernesto Rivera getting shuffled wide there. A couple hip checks through the pack. Hard to tell who that was there, but a bit of a slam for Ernesto. He'll drop down outside the top five as we come through turn number four here, Simon. Yeah, the outside line not getting quite a good jump there. Ernesto struggling into turn one and then dipping his tires in the grass on the exit will cost him a handful of spots as we work through five, six, and into cell tower corner. Still Anthony Martello with a great start there from the pole. will lead the field around cell tower corner, up through the kink, and we are working our way through the first lap. Yeah, halfway in the first lap. Let's go down to team owner Chase Jones of the MPG Motorsports Camp. He's going to be pretty stoked. That's a good way to end it off for KC Senior with Braden Eves. But the day is not done for him. Lots of drivers to go. Let's hear from him. Alex? Thanks, Xander Chase. Yeah, like Xander said, I mean, you must be pretty happy there with uh, what Braden just did over on track. He has another class to get to as we be interviewing him as well. But Chase, I mean, talk to me about how the progression of the team's been so far this weekend. I mean, you guys have been up top in every class you've been a part of. Yeah, I mean, not just this weekend, but uh, our program's done a complete 180. Um, there's a lot of team effort, uh, you know, amongst not just myself, but everybody inside that tent. It's a true team feel, but, uh, yeah, we unloaded off the trailer uh, very fast. Uh, we've hardly really done anything to the go-kart, just kept it in its window. Uh, been working on the drivers mostly, and everybody's responding and, you know, keep getting better. And, uh, you know, you're seeing rubber laid down. Uh, that's ex Brain's experience there, so... Uh, you know, you give him a good piece, he uh, gets behind that wheel, and, you know, the rest is history so far. So we, uh, we're we going to keep it rolling, and hopefully we got another good X30. Yeah, I mean, talk about the family aspect of the MPG team as well, right? You guys just had a boot camp over there, I believe, at Whiteland. Right, I mean, how much does that help the team? I mean, it's great. Like, the camaraderie inside the tent is uh, something that I never had when I was growing up. Um, you know, it's, it's the culture inside of the tent. All the families get along. All the kids are best friends. Uh, everybody, you know, the mechanics, myself, and, you know, Ray, Braden, those guys, you know, we're all very close. Uh, whatever we think that is going to make the program better, uh, we just talk about it and, uh, you know, give it a go, and it's been rolling really good. All right, thanks, Chase. Keep it up. Appreciate it. Thank you.
There you go from Chase Jones. And again, of all business, but still good business right now for them with some good results and more races to go. Speaking of getting down to business, the next 30 junior right now, two laps completed for Anthony Martella out in front in the Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed. Then it is Jackson Wolney, Charlie Smith, then the SCR Red Speed teammate, Nathan Dupuy, who had a good start. He's up three spots for the Canadian. And how about it for the Californian of Charlie Smith? Getting through, back to second, Wolney back to third, and Ernesto Rivera rebounding is fifth and trying to dig for more. Yeah, the RPG cart still working on getting the pace up early here in these first few laps. The SCR cart's firing off well. And it looks like Anthony Martella has gotten himself a several cart length gap out front as we see Stephen Miller make a move to the inside in that KR machine, working his way up, trying to make a few spots. He's now behind Ernesto Rivera as Ernesto finds another spot over Nathan Dupuy and moves himself up inside the top five. Well, while X30 Pro Senior gets set to go, we did hear a lot of you wanting some updates on what were those penalties from heat one, from heat number two. Well, again, Aiden, Ru or Aiden Ingrata had uh, gone to the officials and got his overturned. He was good. Austin Garrison was good. But then there were quite a few. Uh, there was a penalty for Caleb Gaffera into uh, Hayden Jones. There was a multiple position penalty. Big one for him, a uh, multiple position penalty for the 340 as well. That was a little further back. Didn't affect a ton of your uh, major guys. Uh, and then uh, a one position or five position penalty for Ryan Norberg that did get overturned. So it didn't end up changing a ton on the overall of the session. Your top 10 ended up staying with a couple of protests. Let's go back to the on track action though here. With six and a half to go, Simon, it has changed again. Ernesto Rivera making a move to the inside on his teammate, Jackson Mulney in cell tower corner. He is back up to third position after a rough start. He's climbing his way back up through the field, that RPG cart. Certainly with some pace behind it, we'll see where he can make it up to in this final heat. You can see the dark spot on the left side pod of Ernesto Rivera covering up the 704 from the hip check he took at the start of this uh, heat race. Now still trying to work his way forward. Doesn't look like any uh, real damage, just cosmetic for the 704 machine. And he'll get a big run from his teammate. My goodness, right all the way to the bumper of Charlie Smith as they go through turns one and two. And still a Martella and Smith leading, but Rivera is back there. It is back to neutral for Ernesto, and he could easily get a spot right here in turn five if he wanted it. And the, Anthony Martell has led every lap of this race so far from the pole position, but the pressure is mounting as Ernesto is working his way back up. The Nash Motorsports cart still sitting there in P2, a sitting duck for Ernesto as both the RPG carts are going to make the move in the cell tower corner and move Ernesto Rivera and Jackson Wolney up to second and third. And, oh, Jackson Wolney off. No, or, uh, Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith off the track, dipping wheels into the kink off the cell tower corner. He'll lose several spots off that exchange, drop him outside the top five. And I think that might be the first time this season that someone's hit one of the new signs. Uh, the USB gas signs take that. So Charlie Smith doing a little bit of landscaping, unfortunately, not what he want. Let's go side by side to pit lane. Hayden Jones, fastest in Friday happy hour, double main event winner in 2022. He's trying to repeat, but his work was cut out for him after a not so great qualifying. Alex? Thanks, Xander. Yeah, like you said, Hayden, I mean, last year swept the weekend, this exact weekend here last year. This looked to be P1 there in happy hour, but from there it's been a little bit downhill for you. What have you, what have you been missing right now today? Uh, I messed up qualifying pretty bad, so that put us on the, like a back foot to start the weekend with. And then heat one, I got a double pushback, so that didn't help. And then heat two, I got driven off in the first lap, so went back to 36th or whatever and made my way back up to 17th. So we just need one good heat, get close to top 10 starting position for tomorrow, and I think we'll be there for the final. I mean, you're saying you, know, you want to get a, 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 a better starting position for the final tomorrow. I mean, how difficult has it been starting mid-pack for all with kind of like the action that's been going on? How, how tough has it been? It's been terrible, honestly. It's so hard to make your way forward just because there's eight carts in one pack. So they're all driving like it's the last lap at Vegas. And I'm just trying to make my way forward, and they're just passing me back. So it's been pretty difficult. All right, thanks, Hayden. Good luck. Thank you. There you go, a product of everyone being the same speed, everyone trying to go to the front, and everyone kind of on top of each other. There's a few less players in juniors, so we're seeing a bit more tame racing, but we've definitely seen them get into it in terms of contact uh, over the course of this season. For now, though, it's clean up front with four laps to go. Six complete, Rivera, Woolney, Stephen Miller has entered the frame, five spots gained. 
And Anthony Martell leading when we went to that side-by-side -side, has dropped all the way to P4 now, several cart links behind Steven Miller. So he's fell, fallen to the wayside. And the two RPG carts, Ernesto Rivera and Jackson Mulney, making their way into a 1-2 spot right now. And Steven Miller from fairly far back has driven his way up the grid. Now will make the move into P2. Move Steven Miller up to that second spot. He and Ernesto, the classes, the field so far this season, will take the lead in this race with four to go. Both asking for a draft. Everyone looking for some help as they head down to I-70 corner. Yeah, here they come into the... Uh I-70 hairpin for the Rawls and Performance Group X30 Pro Junior Class. It'd be great, as always, to get the main win, but also to get the win in the last session of the day in the class sponsored by your uh, major race team. They've got two shots at it right now that look good with three laps remaining. Ernesto Rivera in first, Jackson Wolney in third. He'll now fall to fourth as Martella, the pole man, goes back through, picks up one spot, and the gap out back to Enzo Vidmontien, who's had to charge from 13th every session. He's done so well, uh, he needed more battling in this race. He hasn't got it. He's fifth up eight, needed a little more. Let's go side by side here with two and a half remaining. Mateus Morgado got closer to the front there in that le last heat, but he still has to start from rows five and six in each heat race. Alex? Thanks, Anna Mateus. Yeah, the pace has been there, right? Just maybe missed it a little bit in qualifying, but in terms of the races, you've been able to avoid the, the incidents you know, here and there, but still, it's been pretty tough, right? Yeah, for sure. We have the, the pace. Um, we both have good pace. Um, it's just so hard to make sure the field because many times you find drivers um, wanting to lose time fighting for the eighth position or ninth position, which makes it a lot harder in a race that is 10 laps. But I'm trying to lose as much time as possible and just try to finish every race in the top seven to, to have a good start in the final. All right, thanks, Mateus. Good luck out there. Thank you. Very similar answer again from what we've heard from many. Everyone wanting to battle, nobody wanting to follow or give, all take. And uh, right now there's been a bit of both in X30 Junior, but it's about to be a lot more weighted towards taking as Anthony Martella takes second from Stephen Miller on that red and yellow DAP card back to third. Does Miller go back in on him? He does not. Wolney not close enough. And it gives Ernesto Rivera the biggest lead we've seen all race long at about four car lengths, Simon. Yeah, it's, it's just a testament to, to how aggressive the racing has been and why it's been that way is we've seen Martella was leading earlier, dropped all the way back to four, and it took him several laps to make his way just all the way up to P2 now, still has to hunt down Ernesto. So you can make a spot, but it's so easy to lose that time. And once you lose that time, it takes forever to get back up there. So maybe that explains some of the X30 senior racing we saw earlier, uh, but fairly clean so far here in the X30 junior field. Coming to the line, it'll be the white flag in the air. One lap to go. Ernesto Rivera, Anthony Martella, Stephen Miller, and then Jackson Wolney. One, two, three, four. Through one and two, over to turn number three. Still single file through that section. Over through four now. It is uh, all Rivera, but all a bumper full of Martella, so he'll have to block into five and he does and it stacks him up and again Oliver Weldon Enzo Vidmontien fifth and sixth only a second away you can see them flurry through the shot they're almost there out of the cell tower still no change it's been a top four breakaway but if Enzo uh if Ernesto Rivera keeps defending we might see Oliver Weldon and Enzo Vidmontien start to close in as we see Stephen Miller make a move to second there under Anthony Martell. He'll ask for a draft as he wants to chase down. Ernesto won't get that as Anthony Martell will go straight back and take that P2 position away, all the while giving Ernesto Rivera a nice gap to close out this race. Yeah, here we go. Coming up the hill, Stephen Miller right behind Martella, not going by him for second. Ultimately, though, no one close enough to Rivera for the win. As they come to the line, Miller trying to pull to the side of Martella. Not enough. It's Ernesto Rivera. In heat number three, Martella second, Miller third, Wolney fourth, Vidmontien fifth, who barely edged out Oliver Weldon at the line. A great race, really clean racing we've seen in the past two. A lot of great moves made, and Stephen Miller was the lone KR in a, in a sea of OTK carts there at the end, the top four, having a great race, a nice breakaway, and as we see the results coming up on the screen, Ernesto Rivera, your winner, Anthony Martella comes home P2, Stephen Miller drives it up to third, as we move a little bit farther down, Jackson Wolney comes up fourth, Enzo Vidmontian in P5. Oliver Weldon drives it four spots up to P6. Not to, forgot to mention that Enzo Vidmontian made up eight spots in that race, 
all the way from 13th to 5th. So great drive for the 795 machine there. Behind that, Jensen Burnett in P7, Charlie Smith P8, Nathan Dupuis falls to P9, and Davin Roberts makes up two spots to close out your top 10 here, Xander. Yeah, again, like you said, very clean, good racing there in X30 Junior, but the action's starting to pick up. More uh, drivers and families moving around the pits as we've still got uh, a few more classes to run before this day is all wrapped up. And right in the middle of the order, it's the uh, headline class, X30 Pro Senior getting set to go green. I don't know if we're gonna get that clean racing to continue because it has been just too many guys, I think, as much as they're complaining about nobody wanting to work together, everybody wanting to fight too hard for every spot. Well, not everyone can go forward. Someone's gotta go backward for someone else to go forward. And to me, the thing that we're just seeing is too many guys at the limit at the same speed on a draft-based racetrack uh, where anyone can get into it. I mean, there's literally 20 guys that have a legitimate shot off equipment, off of uh, talent, and off of positioning to go and win the race, and, and they can't all win it, so they're all on top of each other. It's definitely one of the most stacked fields I've seen here in a while, and, and that just leads to chaotic racing, as everyone's pretty close to the limit, pretty close to that same pace, so it comes down to who can fight for position on track the best, and we saw a lot of chaos in that heat number two, and I just can't wait to see what's in store for heat number three here, Xander. It should be a wild one, folks. Again, Austin Garrison and Aiden Ingrata, 1-2 in Heat 2, way back in Heat number 1. Heat number 1 going the way of Diego Ramos. He was back to fifth. I think that's the best average on points coming into this one, but at least the good news for Diego Ramos, well, he's got the easiest starting spot. Rolls off from the pole. Let's go back onto the on-track action, and we'll show you as the field is making its way onto the circuit now. For the final time today, X30 Pro is getting set to go green. It'll be Ramos getting to lead it off. He's had two consistent runs, a P1 and a P5. To his outside, rookie standout, Elio Meza's Iron Rock Motorsports Tony Kart makes up row number two. It's the California, or, row, or position number two, row number two with the California kid, Blake Nash in third, and Harley Keeble on the PK Sports Sodi is fourth. Ryan Norberg hasn't had the most fun day, but he got a penalty overturned in heat two, so that's maybe his luck turning up. Rolls off fifth to the inside of MPG Motorsports driver Braden Nees, who's hot off that KA Senior ra heat race win just one race ago with double duty. Paulie Massimino and Austin Garrison, two drivers that have had both, I would say, pretty decent heats. Seventh and eighth on the grid to move forward from row number four. Brandon Carr, you heard it from Ryan Perry, just kept knocking the bumper and the bumper dragging, knocking the handling out of the Ryan Perry Motorsport Tony Kart. He's ninth. And we spoke to Mateus Morgato there right before the green. Same thing for him. Just wanting to go forward, not wanting to battle too far back. He's 10th on the grid. And Joe Turney went from nearly winning to 8th in Heat 1 on the final lap after getting forced off the racetrack for all three heats. He's had to roll from 11th. He starts alongside rookie Caleb Gaffaro, who got involved in that crash in Heat number 2 in 12th. Aiden Ingrata, Heat 2 winner, started 13th. Big drive forward. He's got to do it again to get something decent. Alessandro Tullio, 14th. Aiden Fox, Aiden Jones in row number eight. Nicholas Terlecki, Dario Vizarro, Cooper Shipman, Gia Cicero, your top 20. It's 36 drivers strong, and the green flag is out. We're racing down to turn number one. Ramos is through. Mesa's a little bit wide. He'll drop a tire. They're two by two going through turns three and four. Two by two all the way through three and four. Still clean so far. Elia Mesa to the inside there. He'll chase down Braden Eves now as he makes that move. We'll cover low into turn four here, Xander. Austin Garrison all over him. Norberg kind of got shuffled to the outside of the racetrack, so he lost a couple. That was the big loot loss for the outside lane. Eves with a great start. He's going to go to third. Garrison will go to fifth. Keeble back to fourth. And it is still Ramos, the leader. This one starting to look decent to start. Let's see if the boys and girls have calmed down in the headline class. It's 5,000 big ones to win the main on Sunday. This is just to help you set the grid as Mateus Morgato gets around Pauli Massimino. Says, all right, I got it. Let me, oh, no. Contact there is, I think he was just defending, and he gets into Norberg, and that'll hurt their momentum as we go side by side for second. Eves on Nash. Nash, I think, going to let him go, and Keeble going to go through as well for third. Some great racing to start us off here. That certainly didn't look intentional by Morgato. Simply trying to defend. Ends up getting just a bit into the side of Norberg as they'll lead that second group down. Now Morgato making the move to the inside of Norberg. Meza will get by as well. Norberg will lose two, three spots as Joe Turney follows through. Yeah, nothing Norberg could do. He just got freight trained. And also, how about this? 
Braden Eves going to the lead. Ramos back to second. Keeble is third. How about that? The 341. Right off a of heat raise win in KA. Hey, now leading the way in X30 Pro. That double duty certainly doing work here for Braden Eves as he is racing at his strongest track here in the U.S. A, a favorite of his. He's won the Scusa Summer Nats here as well as a long pedigree of karting history here at this track for the driver in the 341 machine. As we go a little bit farther back, Blake Nash having to go on the defense a little bit there on the 311 machine as they head through the hairpin and towards the I-70 corner. Yeah, he got by him and they had to kind of offend him off. That's Harley Keeble and that PK Sport North America Sodi who's under heavy fire from Austin Garrison in the fifth spot. Let's take a look at how Eves got the pass done. Quickly, we'll go to instant replay. It was back right there, turn three on the inside of Diego Ramos, caught him off guard and uh, just slipped right through Brayden Eves. That move in turn three a lap ago. He leads them now to turn number five under pressure uh, as they go through turn number four. It's Eves and Ramos, Nash a little bit further away uh, as they all have shaken out here. Two laps complete, eight to go. And I don't know what happened to Blake Nash because he lost a ton of time in the first couple corners. Yeah, not sure what happened there. The top four seeming to have a bit of a breakaway, but now Diego Ramos and Braden Eves having one of the biggest gaps we've seen out front of this field so far today as they look to try and work together and get away from the rest of this field, stay away from the chaos as we'll see a move to the inside there uh, through the kink and headed towards the hairpin here as we see a shot of Norberg going on the defense. Morgato just there behind him as we come through the hairpin and head down our second longest straight headed towards I-70 corner out front. Still Braden Eves over Ramos as they'll come through one and two with about a five cart length gap to P3. Yeah, nice and big gap. Diego Ramos saying, all right, I've already got a first and a fifth. I can push this guy. I'll still get the pole if I get second. Nash there in the third spot. Here's a look back at Norberg and Morgato. As, uh, again, Morgato with a little mistake earlier kind of ran into the right rear tire. And then back up front for Eves, Ramos, Nash. Austin Garrison made that move on Harley Keeble. Here's a look at Joe Turney. Driver on the move. Was fastest last time. He'll go to seventh. Gets around Paulie Massimino just behind this pack of four. So it's Turney seventh. Uh, Massimino in eighth, Norberg is ninth, Morgato is tenth, and after a lot of chaos, a lot of frustrating racing, I think, for the whole field, by the leaders getting spread apart, it's now allowed everyone to maybe not battle as much. Well, here's a little battle. Keeble on Nash, Meza trying to go as well. He can't, Nash will defend it in the infield. And now this is where the pack gets this big. It explodes at some point. Your leaders are coming up the hill to 11. And I think everyone might be a little bit calmer here as they realize the end goal is to get towards uh, Eves and Ramos at the front. We'll see Joe Turney make a move to the inside of Elio Meza through I-70. Keep an eye on Joe Turney. He was the fastest on track by several tenths last time by as he looks to make his way through this field. Elio Meza there in tow, giving him a little bit of help trying to work through this field as they head towards turns two and three and work through with six laps to go. Yeah, plenty of time left still for Joe Turney to go forward. For Norberg and Morgato, there's time, but Massimino, knowing he's going backwards, is starting to defend a bit, and look at this. Look at this gaggle as Meza nearly gets turned in front of the pack, and Joe Turney gets through both Nash and Meza. Massimino is there, and Meza now is getting swallowed up, but great move, great heads up driving from Joe Turney. What a move, let's see, as they head towards that uh, green corner for the field. So here we go, coming towards the back section of the racetrack. Ryan Norberg on Massimino, can he go here? He was close enough. Meza, Carr, and Grata's in this mess. Here's Aiden Jones on the outside. He's trying to get up there, and he's just, again, trapped in this midfield battle right now as they go up the hill to the I-70 corner. But back up front, Braden Neves, Diego Ramos, Austin Garrison looks to be maybe a little bit faster than the top two. What's his lap going to look like? A 65.7. How about four tenths faster than the top two, Simon? Austin Garrison in that 392 machine on one here. The fastest driver on track by four tenths of a second last time by. He's going to try and run down these top two, make it a three-car battle for the lead as we look here. As Ryan Norberg still trying to work his way through traffic. Uh, with all these drivers being so competitive, probably the most stacked field I've seen this year, it seems like it's whoever can get their nose clean with everyone being able to run pretty much the same pace once they get into clean air. Well, let's go back. I believe we may almost have it queued up from the incident. Let's go back and check an instant replay of what went down there in the infield. So this was Eves and uh, Ramos. Is, I think we may be a little bit off from it. 
It's, uh, yeah, not right there. Not, we'll, uh, we'll go back to the live action here. Let's take a look at it. Uh, coming down the back stretch. We've got a change coming for the lead. There's too much. There's a ton going on, and now it's heating up. With four laps to go, Diego Ramos retakes the top spot. He worked with Braden for a while, said, all right, now Garrison's here. Keeble's on the way. I got to go. And he knows that Austin Garrison, after that second-place result in Heat 2 and a decent result in Heat 1, has an outside shot at the front row and maybe the pole if he wins this. So he's got to get ahead and uh, still try and take uh, two heat wins on the day. Ramos with some heads up driving, recognizing the imminent threat of that speed concept machine of Austin Garrison closing in on the back of them. Wants to take a chance at leading this one, see if they can't break away even more. Eve's still there in second, and Austin Garrison all the way up to that rear bumper now. He's made that gap up as they head through the cell tower corner. So four drivers up in this front pack. Joe Turney's gotten to the lead of the second group. They're about two and a half seconds away. I don't think these guys are going to let them get close, but this will help a little. Garrison, second over Eves. Austin Garrison moving forward now as they go to the infield hairpin. And they'll come to the line this time. Three laps to go for the top four. Three seconds back is the rest of the pack here with a second group that's formed. But I, we're going to watch this battle because anything could happen. Harley Keeble hasn't made a lot of noise in this one. He's uh, had to survive the start, but he looks really good in these final few laps right now. Keeble silently making progress there. So we'll see him move to the inside. Austin Garrison will take the lead of this one. Brayton Eves will follow him through, and Ramos will fall to third. Garrison, the fastest driver on track uh, all but last time by. Harley Keeble throwing in a purple lap on that one. The top four now checking out from the rest of the field. It is a massive gap behind him, so this is going to be your fight for the end with three to go here in this final heat race of X30 Senior. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but Diego Ramos just full on waved Harley Keeble by there on the short shoot. Saw Keeble had a nose out and just completely let him go. Classy move from Diego Ramos, but a smart one as well. He's got a fifth first, he's got a fifth. As long as he rides in fourth, that's still going to be a top three, top four starting spot, and it could still be the pole in the main as well. So he's in a great position. He'll just ride and watch these ones and let the these three guys ahead of him who've had one good heat and one not so good heat battle it out for the top spot. Yeah, again, more heads up dri driving from Diego Ramos, realizing he has two strong results already and will just cruise to the end of this one, get himself a good starting position for the final tomorrow. One of the strongest drives we've seen from Di Diego Ramos this season is Braden Eves goes back to the lead over Austin Garrison as they head through turn one. Two to go this time by. Braden Eves, Austin Garrison back and forth. Austin Garrison back on him in three. Two laps remaining. Eight laps completed. Harley Keeble now going to look to the inside to turn number five. Eves going to cover that one off. He's trying to stay in second. Here's that second pack. Norberg's now gotten around Turney. Massimino's gotten six, but Turney's going to stuff him in the horseshoe. They'll go side by side. Look at that battle coming through. Oh, wait, wait a little too far back. Here's our leaders coming back up the hill. Through to the left hand, kink towards the green corner. Austin Garrison by three car lengths over Eves. Keeble still third, and I think if I'm Harley Keeble, after the way Ramos treated me, I'm almost opening up for every corner. I don't feel like I'm going to block it all because I don't think Diego's even going to send it in. And we come to the white flag this time. Austin Garrison, Braden Eves, Harley Keeble, Diego Ramos. One, two, three, four, white flag in the air. They come through I-70. Coming towards the white flag onto the longest straight here at Newcastle Motorsports Park. Still Austin Garrison, your leader, as Braden Eves will look to the inside. Won't make that move. Was looking to get some help from Harley Keeble. Not quite close enough this time. We'll save it for later in the lab, but it's still a top four breakaway. We'll see who comes away with this heat race win. I, I'm guessing it's going to be one of the three carts in the lead. Diego Ramos just not needing it. He's already run two strong heat races, recognizing that he just needs to get to the end, and he'll be set for tomorrow. These other three, though, are going to look for a heat race win. Braden Eve sitting there in second, not quite close enough to make a move into cell tower corner. It's still Austin Garrison, your leader over Eves, Keeble, and Ramos, your top four breakaway. Half a lap remaining. Ryan Norberg, you can see, starting to come into frame on that purple, pink, and white cosmic for RPG. He's not going to get there in time. He'll be there just enough to witness the finish. Ramos now not going to do anything. Still fourth. He's still riding there. Eves, I think, probably wanting to wait till the last straightaway. Garrison, I think, knows it. He's going to leave the door open. Eves is actually no. Going to go in I-70. Keeble will send it in as well. Kind of gets into Garrison. It bottles them up. Now, can Harley Keeble get the run? He's got a big run on Eves. Coming to the line. It'll be side by side at the stripe. Give it to Braden Eves by one, one thousandth of a second. Braden Eves over Harley Keeble in the smallest of margins. The smallest on the day. 
one one thousandth that MPG Motorsports Kart Republic holds on at the checkers. Keeble uh, ends up P2, Garris in third, Ramos fourth, Norberg in fifth. That was incredible. You cannot ask for a closer finish than what we just witnessed. One one thousandth of a second. Our timing doesn't even get any closer than that. So an excellent finish there. Braden Eves capitalizing on the opportunity in I-70 corner to go under Garrison. Harley Keeble follows them through, and they'll drag race to the finish for an excellent end to the X30 Pro Heat Racing this weekend. So we'll run you back down through the order. Braden Eves coming away with the win. Harley Keeble P2 as we saw that photo finish. Awesome. Anderson P3, Diego Ramos sitting there in P4. Nice finish for the 303 Burrell Art Machine. Ryan Norberg recovers to P5. Polly Massimino P6. Matias Morgado P7. Joe Turney comes up to P8. Blake Nash there in P9, I believe. Aiden Ingrata rounds out your top 10. Outside that, Hayden Jones P11 comes up five spots. Elio Meza losing several spots will fall back down to P11, P12 there as we'll run you through the rest of the field. A nice shot of the scale line. If we can pull that up, drivers chatting about what a good race they just had there. The two teammates, Ramos with a strong run, Mateus Morgado and Pauly Massimino all having a chat there in the scale line. Norberg still sitting in that cart as we're watching the officials with those dreaded white slips in their hands, Xander. Yeah, not the uh, slip you hope to get as there's the uh rest of the drivers taking a breather. It's been a hot afternoon for the X30 Pros, and I believe Mateus Morgato looks like he's getting handed a penalty. I'm curious if that was for the incident with Norberg. I know we had for a moment queued up the uh, line of the finish as well of how close it was coming down to the checkered flag. So uh, we'll uh, continue to look back through the footage there. But again, Mateus Morgato obviously was uh, just trying to survive. It didn't look like it was intentional, but it definitely didn't hurt it. Uh, didn't help anybody and really kind of built that big gap as he was defending for his spot and then ended up falling further back. There's all the way down the rest of the grid there. A few more drivers uh, coming in further down the order. It's not been a weekend to remember for Carol Pashewicz, uh, the driver who was a podium finisher and top 10 contender earlier this year. He's a little bit further back than where he'd like to be on that International Motorsport Factory Lenzo cart. And uh, I think we didn't have nearly as many DNFs, probably the, the tamest heat of all three. But nonetheless, we're on the racetrack now with KA Master getting set to go green. And welcome back here to Newcastle Motorsports Park for USPKS. Here we are in KA Masters, I believe, presented by Speed Concepts Racing as we head through green flag through the start, all clean through turns one and two here. Well, Retro Mardine with the early lead. Looks like Nikki Coelho uh, shuffles into second. Mike Rollison, I think, is running in third right now, I believe. So uh, Laurentia Mardin, who's been the class of the field, Simon, really all weekend, uh, the early leader, but he's had to earn it the last, uh, actually both heat races, he got shuffled back, had to work his way back to the front. So early leader with a good clean start, Laurentia Mardan, but Nikki Coelho uh, not far back. Yeah, it's been some great racing here in the heat races for the KA 100 Masters drivers. So we'll see a quick breakout for the top two behind that, the two RPG drivers of Mario Barrios and Mike Rollison follow through in third and fourth. They'll lead a group of four drivers as they look to hunt down the leaders here on the first lap of this K8 Masters heat number three. Surprisingly, an early breakaway by Mardan and, uh, and Coelho as those two have uh, kicked out about a five cart length advantage over the field as they come by for lap number one. We'll give you a top 10 rundown as they cross the stripe. It's LaRancha Mardan, your leader. Nikki Coelho running second. Mario Barrios third, Mike Rollison fourth, and Danilo Romalo in fifth. Through the top ten, Adam Kreppen runs sixth, Martin Stone seventh, Miguel Mayer eighth, Mario Castro and Tim Meyer make up your top ten. And now almost a full second advantage. Those top two, Laurentia Mardan and Nikki Coelho over 
that next group of Mario Barros and Mike Rollison. Yeah, certainly the inside line getting the best of that start as Lurnchy Mardan and Nicky Coelho taking off to an early advantage, but we know those RPG carts are quick if they can line up and stop fighting here. Danilo Romalo mixing it up. He'll get past Mike Rollison uh, and make his way into fourth place, and they'll try and keep their heads down and work towards the top two as we head towards the hairpin here. Still your leaders, Lurnchy Mardan, followed closely by Nicky Coelho. Behind that, Mario Barrios, Danilo Romalo, and Mike Rollison. And just behind that, Adam Kreppen make up that second group of four drivers. That gap getting a little bit smaller. And, of course, a lot of the race left will have, uh, I think we're two laps in this time by. So most of the race still left. And that gap the last time was eight-tenths of a second. And we'll measure it now to see where we're at. The gap now about the same. But Danilo Romalo has moved up to that third spot around Mario Barros. And now he's going to try to reel in Mardan and Coelho for uh, the uh, top spot there. But we've got four drivers, uh, Barros, Romalo, Rollison, and Kreppen that are nose to tail trying to draft up to that top group. Yeah, Romalo making quick work of Mario Barrios in turn one there. He's moved up po bat po past both of the RPG carts as Adam Kreppen looking to try and make a move on Mike Rollison. Won't get that one done in Cell Tower Corner, but Danilo Romalo closing in on those top twos. They're trying to work together, but Danilo Romalo, the quickest driver on track by a tenth of a second last time by. Already up four spots to start this race. And you can see that gap getting smaller and smaller. We've got a five-cart battle now. Mardan and Coelho, the party's over, fellas, because we got some company right now as Romalo, Berrios, and Rollison have all closed in on that lead group. As we come through I-70 corner onto the front straight, it is definitely tightened up. Danilo Romalo is there. He is on the rear bumper of Nicky Coelho. Still Lorenzo Mardan leading this field. And they're working together so far. No passes inside the top five as they will come through turns one, two, three. Make their way through the double lefts, the right, these 90-degree corners. No moves being made so far. And the RPG cart's not as quick as we expect them to be off the start of this race. It is Danilo Romalo, the quickest driver on track currently, as he drops a crazy time last time by. It'll be seven-tenths quicker than your leaders as he makes quick work of reeling them in. It's one thing to catch them, though, another thing to pass them as we come through Cell Tower Corner. And I think Laurentia Mardin's best friend right now is Nicky Coelho. He's a little quicker than Nicky, but I think if Romalo can find a way around Nicky Coelho, he's got something for Laurentia Mardin and could run him down. But right now, he isn't able to get past Coelho. And seven laps to go in this K100 Masters. The lead group closing up. We'll send you side by side as we head down to David Land here with Braden Eves to see how that race ended up. The closest finish we've seen all day. What do you have for us, David? We didn't even know you won that race in X30. Tell us about that because uh, that's a career milestone for you. Yeah, I mean, it was that was the closest finish I've ever been a part of. Uh, especially because it was like, he, I thought he was ahead of me, and then all of a sudden I was like creeping forward on him. We were both on the rev limiter, so it was like, I had no idea. I, th I didn't think I won, but probably came down to transponder placement a little bit, to be honest. I, I don't know. Maybe there's a photo finish somewhere. I'd like to see that picture. So it's a, it's a tough weekend for you. Two classes. You're starting on P1 in both. How difficult has this been in this heat physically for you, and uh, how can you perform tomorrow in uh, in two mains, starting from the pole? You know, it's a lot. It's a lot of driving. Um, had to take an ice bath last night to recover. That was good. Um, but you know, I'm I'm managing. I mean, I'm getting better throughout the weekend, so it can't be that bad. No, definitely not a bad weekend for Braden Eves, rolling off P1 in X30 Pro as well as KA100. A great drive there for Braden Eves, winning both KA Senior and X30 Pro Heat number three and, a, and an insanely close finish. Like you said, it could have been any number of things that, that gave him that thousandth of a second advantage over Harley Keeble as they come to the end. And as we head back to the KA 100 Masters action, we'll see Danilo Romalo making his move to the inside. He'll take over the P2 spot as they head through the corners. And off track goes Nicky Coelho. Not too happy about that one as Mike Rollison forces his way by. And Mario Barrios is going to follow Nicky Coelho. Hands in the air. Definitely not happy with how he's being raised currently you know the race has been really tight out here all weekend but you're going to have some of that i don't exactly know uh, what went wrong there if anything but uh, certainly when the heat gets up and you're in the third heat now you've got to get 
the best finish position you can for the main tomorrow. You know, you get a little anxious, but uh, all in all, I think the race has been pretty good today. Uh, Adam Kreppen, who's in that back group, uh, just turned a 109.857. That's purple. That's the best lap of the race. And he's run good all day, but they're so close out there, Simon. Even though they're they're close enough, you would think they could make a move. Uh, it's really difficult because they're so well matched. It, it is. It's been the story of a lot of classes here. A strong competitive field as we'll watch them head through. Five laps to go. Make it four this time by the line. We're going to send it back down side by side. Alexander Searles waiting by with Brandon Carr. Let's see how his race went. Down to you, Alex. Thanks, Simon. Here with Brandon Carr. Brandon. It's safe to say it's not been the day you would have wanted, right? Entering this weekend as the points leader at X30 Pro, had a few rough finishes out to the top 10. I mean, what are you missing right now? What do you need for tomorrow? Yeah, we just haven't got the car dialed in yet, but I think we're starting to get somewhere. Um, we just got to go on and keep pushing because you can't give up. It's senior X30, you never know what's going to happen. So I think we just got to keep chilled and go again tomorrow, and hopefully we find something overnight and see if we can be there for the final tomorrow. I thought it was really interesting, you know, walking, toward, walking with you towards this interview, uh, most of the drivers have been kind of complaining about how rough it's been next to the pro, but you, you seem to love this stuff, don't you? Yeah, it's proper racing, really. You're not just pushing each other to the win, but you actually have to race for it, and it shows who the good racers are. So, um, yeah, in my opinion, it's a bit better than just pushing each other, but some people may like it, some people may not, but we'll have to see. All right, well, there you have it, Brandon Carr. Not the day he would have wanted so far, but tomorrow's another day, right, Brandon? Yeah, just got to keep pushing. All right, thanks, Brandon. Thank you. Awesome to hear from Brandon Carr, one of the many drivers in a strong field. Danilo Malo looking for the inside move into turn one there. Won't quite compete, complete it, but he and Lorenzo Mardan stretching out an advantage over P3 and Mario Barrio. So a top two breakaway with three to go here in this KA100 Masters. And Mike Rollison gets shuffled back to six as Adam Kreppen and Nicky Coelho get around him. Mario Barros in third. Lorenzo Mardan still leading the way, but Danilo Romalo right there ready to pounce but whether he's got enough to do it well we'll find out as we wind this one down it'll be two to go next time by Lorancho Mardin is your leader Danilo Romalo five position movement from seventh to second another mover Tim Meyer moved up five spots from 12th to seventh and uh, Scott Carapaletti started in 17th and he's about to crack the top 10 he's currently in 11th position fast lap of the race so far has been Adam Crippen with a 109 857 two laps to go next time by for Lorancho Mardin I'm not sure what happened to Mike Rollison there, but he's fallen off the lead group. It is Danilo Romalo taking the fight to Lorenzo Mardan. Mardan leading most of this race so far, but Danilo romalo has been the driver on the move. He's already made up five spots. He's looking for one more to see if he can get this Heat 3 win in KA Masters. Two to go this time by the flag. We'll head through turns one, two, and three. Danilo Romalo still up on that gearbox of Lorenzo Mardan. And Mario Barrios bringing... Nicky Coelho and Adam Kreppen along with him as they try and reel down this lead group. Yeah, it's still a good battle out there for third, fourth, and fifth, but that group is running out of time to catch those two leaders. And Mardan and Romalo have been racing pretty smart. They've stayed in line. Romalo hasn't tried anything crazy to get around Mardan. I have a feeling he's going to be waiting, and the white flag next time by will probably see an attempt by uh, Romalo, whether he's got enough to do it. And here it is. It makes it the, through the right-hander. Romalo makes the pass. He takes that top spot over Mardan, and now Mardan is in the catbird seat with this final lap coming up, and that allows third, fourth, and fifth to catch up to the group. We've actually got six drivers now in that lead pack. Rollison side-by-side up to I-70, or I'm sorry, Mardan, and Mardan makes the pass back, heading to the white flag, Simon. Again, Mardan gave up the lead for about two turns, but didn't like it. Didn't like the scenery. He's back in front. Now he took that move straight back. Danilo Romalo with a slick pass in a corner you definitely don't normally see defended. It'll capitalize on that, but it'll imme immediately lose the spot back to Laurenti Mardan as they head through the first couple corners on the white flag lab. Mario Barrios closing in the gap. It is a 5-6 driver fight for the win here in heat number three of KA Masters as they'll head through the double rights towards Cell Tower Corner. It's anyone's game here on the last lap. I think it may get a little crazy before this one's over as they make that left turn and head back towards the uh, pit area and that right-hander, they'll climb the hill and then they'll go a left and then a right and that right-hander will take them uh, right down over the hill and into Showcase Corner and only I-70 will be left. Once they round this right-hander, inside goes Romalo, and he makes the pass on uh, Lorenzo Mardan. 
takes over the top spot. Here comes Mario Barrios. He's close up, and they're two wide coming up here now for uh, that fourth and fifth spot. Coelho gets shuffled to the outside. Rollison up to fourth, and down for the win. It's side by side. Romalo and Mardan. Who's it going to be? And it looks like, boy, this is another close one, Simon. It is Lorenzo Mardan by three hundredths of a second. We'll take that win over Daniel Romalo. It didn't look like he didn't even come out of the last corner in the top spot. We'll get that run to the finish line, and we'll take it out. Like you said, we're going to see the action break out, and it did as they went three wide into I-70, the last turn on the last lap of this heat. Uh, for a great finish here in the KA100 Masters. Let's run you through the lineup real quick. It was Laurenci Mardan coming home with the win. Danilo Romalo made up five spots to come home P2. Adam Kreppen worked his way up to finish P3. The two RPG cards, Mike Rollison and Mario Barrios, come home fourth and fifth. Nicky Coelho falls a few spots uh, all the way up as far as second. This race will fall to P6. Tim Meyer, Meyer up five spots to P7. Ariel Castro comes home P8. Miguel Meyer. P9, Scott Kopp will round out your top 10 here. Yeah, we had a good run there and uh, a lot of really close tight racing, but uh, hopefully Tempers will stay in check at the scales and we'll uh, move on to our next race, but it's uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, it was a close one, let's put it that way. A lot of uh, a lot of hard racing out there, but uh, hopefully everything will uh, Settle down, and we still got uh, racing tomorrow. So uh, the main event lining up tomorrow, but for uh, but uh, Lorenzo Mardan again, the class of Masters comes up uh, on top. We'll see uh, Rollison and Barrios there having a discussion with a couple other drivers about that last corner move, the three wide into the I-70 turn, coming home to finish that heat. It seems like. Uh, tempers may be high, but the feelings are good as, as everyone survives that one. They'll close it out in a, in a top five. It, it doesn't matter who finished where. With three heats, it's going to average out pretty decently for all those drivers. Being inside the top five is where you want to be to line yourself up for the final tomorrow. As we'll give you the last shots of the scale line and we'll uh, get ready to go racing. We're going to cut to a short break, and when we come back, we'll have more of Heat 3. Stay tuned. And welcome back to Newcastle Motorsports Park. K.A. Jr. getting ready to take the green flag. It is green for groups A versus D as they head through turn number one. It's all clean for the first couple of rows as they head side by side through turns one and two. Uh, it looks like Stephen Miller will take over the P2 spot and Fernando Luke holding on to that pole position. He'll start off in first. We'll lead the field through the first couple of turns here in the K.A. Jr. field. One of the cleanest starts I've seen today, the uh – the pole sitter, Fernando Luque, uh, took off, and uh, actually Miller found a spot right behind him going into turn one. Isaac Malkwood up there in third. Those three checked out a little bit. We got uh, uh, Peyton Westcott up there. Oh, we got 8-11. Uh, issues for a few drivers in the back on the opening lap. That'll be the 8-11 machine. Uh, we are currently David looking Martinez. for that. David Martinez. David Martinez will... We'll suffer issues there on the opening lap as we'll tap back to the leaders as they head through the hairpin. Still, Fernando Luke, Stephen Miller, and Isaac Malkiewicz 
will lead your field uh, through the first lap. It, typically, we've seen the inside line get uh, a, quite a jump through turn one, but Stephen Miller able to slot himself from P2 into P2 after turn one. Not, not a move we've seen many drivers be able to pull off so far today, but excellent work from the young driver to, to hold his position and maintain that P2 spot as he chases down the Tony Kart in front of him. Fernando Luke in that 825 machine will lead them through. we got nine laps left to racing here in KA Junior, and I'm sure the action's just starting to heat up. Oliver Weldon was quite the story in heat number two. He starts in 15th in every one of the heats, and they came out on top in heat number two. He's already moved four spots. He's up to 11th. We'll keep an eye on him, but already moving one lap in the books. He's past four drives. Yeah, I see it. he's had a strong run in the heat races so far today. We'll see what he can do in this last race of the day for the young driver here in that Hot Wheels machine. As they come over the hill, headed towards the kink, he'll head towards the hairpin. It is still Fernando Luke. Uh, leading the way, Stephen Miller will actually make the move. Luke will fall back to third, and Isaac Malka will follow Stephen Miller through, and they will take over the top two spots. Luke losing more positions down to the P5 spot. There's a lot of action cracking off here in the KA Junior field, but we're going to cut to side-by-side -side action to hear down with Alexander Searle. I believe he's with Harley Keeble, and we'll see what happened with the action in the X30 Pro field. Down to you, Alex. Thanks, Simon. Here with Harley Keeble. Harley, I mean, a good race for you. I mean, finally put it together there in the X30 Pro class. You know, stayed out of the chaos a little bit. Oh, so close to a win. One thousandth of a second. I mean, describe that race to me. Yeah, well, I got to the front. I got a really good start. Got straight into P3. And then after, I was just being patient, waiting for the moves to come to me. And then eventually they did. And then um, Diego uh, let me pass going down the straight. And then I um, stayed behind um, Brandon for a few corners and then he overtook um, Garrison into the last corner and I managed to follow through and almost get him on the line. Yeah, I mean, you were talking to me, you know, earlier today about how you have kind of a mindset change from how you've been earlier this year, you know, you kind of been aggressive, right? This this weekend you kind of went into it thinking, be more patient, right? Let the race come to you. I mean, well, how important is it to find the balance between being aggressive and being patient? Obviously it's important because if you're too aggressive you can end up having a crash and at the moment, I've been patient. I've had more crashes than I have all year, so, yeah, it's a bit difficult. All right, thanks, Charlie. Good job. Thank you. Great to hear from the driver that was on the other side of that photo finish coming home P2 by the absolute slimmest of margins, as we'll see the <laughs> a lot of action breaking out in KA Junior so far. Stephen Miller will lose that spot. It is Pey Peyton Westcott in the Nash Motorsports machine making up several spots. He'll drive it all the way from fourth or fifth, makes a lot of moves, and will take over the lead here early in this KA 100 Junior race. Peyton Westcott on the charge. Stephen Miller gets shuffled back to second. It's still Isaac Malkwood running in third. Max Whelan and Fernando Luque. Fernando, who had been running up front a good part of the day, uh, shuffled back to fifth, uh, even further back. It looks like sixth spot. So uh, Stephen Miller now trying to get that top spot back from Peyton Westcott. But Westcott on the charge. We're three laps in the book, seven laps to go. Your leader, Peyton Westcott. Yeah, it's Peyton Westcott leading, but it is a group of about ten drivers Fighting for that top spot. We'll see a pass there into the kink. That'll spread them out just a bit. Now we have about a five, six cart breakaway for that lead group as they head towards I-70 corner. It is still Peyton Westcott leading Stephen Miller and Isaac Malkiewicz as your top three here in K100 Junior. Another mover along with Oliver Weldon is Enzo Vidmontien. He started in 12th spot. He's up to eighth position. Uh, Fernando Luque, who started on the, uh, on the pole, back in fifth. So he's lost some positions. And there's the 851 out. 851, Cami Fister losing out early in this race. A tough break for the 851 machine. Uh, so so hard to, to reset yourself, but at least you know you have two other races to average out your finishing positions. And uh, hopefully she'll come away with at least a decent starting spot. So we see the action start to break out here. Stephen Miller losing several spots. He'll look for a dive into Cell Tower Corner. Ultimately won't go for it, but he'll fall down to the fourth position as the fighting heating up here in KA Junior. Isaac Malkwood finds himself back in second position, trying to run down Peyton Westcott. Malkwood with a solid run. He's been solid all day, but this is such a competitive class, Simon. Any one of these drivers at any given time you could see on the point. Malkwood trying to close in on Westcott and make that move to lead part of the uh, part of the, the way and see what he's got. But right now, Westcott's strong enough to hold Malkwood at bay. Yeah, a lot of action through the hairpin there. 
A lot of fighting and dicing as Stephen Miller still trying to hold off and make his way back up towards the front of this field. He's dropped several cart links down behind the leaders now. It is Peyton Westcott, Isaac Malkowit leading over Fernando Luke, who's worked his way back up to that third spot, trying to chase down your leaders. But Isaac Malkowit pretty quick on that last lap. He'll be quicker than your leader and quicker than Fernando Luke behind him. So trying to push Peyton Westcott out to a healthy lead, see if they can't make this a two two horse race with five laps to go. I think that's a smart thing to do, and right now they're doing it. We'll see if Malkwit will be patient and stay in line with Westcott as they're keeping Fernando Luque, who's up to third now. They're keeping him at bay. So right now it's uh, Westcott and Malkwit with about almost a full second advantage over the rest of the field. Halfway home in this one, our first of two heat number three races for the KA Junior class. Oh, issues in the kink. That is trouble inside the top 10. That looks possibly the 858 machine. We'll have to, we'll have to check on that 868 machine. That Turner is Turner Brown. Brown, who was having a decent run. He was in the sixth spot. We'll lose out, and that'll be the end of his heat number three here in KA100 Junior. A tough break for that driver uh, as it will spread apart the lead packs now. We've got a group of two, a group of three, and a group of two, uh, all spread apart by about a second each as the racing looking to start to close up. We'll see if the second group can drive their way back to the front, but Isaac Malkua pushing Peyton Westcott uh, as hard as he can away. Uh, the fastest driver on track last time by Stephen Miller setting the fastest lap of the race, two tenths quicker than the drivers in front of him. Uh, a small margin, but a margin nonetheless. So if he can keep that advantage, maybe he can work this group back up towards the lead as we're already starting to see that, that gap close down and it's starting to form into a five driver group for this lead. Oliver Weldon slowly but surely creeping his way up to that uh, lead group. He's up to six now advancing nine positions just going purple. Stephen Miller back and forth a 109 824 but Oliver Weldon with another strong run nine spots moving and uh, Be Beckett Friesen also up nine spots from 18 starting position into the top 10. Some great drives by those young drivers. Oliver Welton recovering from a poor qualifying session will make some ground up in these heat races, see if he can't average out a decent starting position for tomorrow's finals. But as we look towards the front of the pack here is Isaac Malkowit looking for the lead. Stephen Miller will follow through and Peyton Westcott will fall to third as it is a three-cart breakaway as of right now. Stephen Miller up to P2, working his way back towards the front of this field. And don't underestimate the horsepower of Stephen Miller. He just went purple again with a 109.453. Sneak into the inside of Isaac Malkwood makes the pass. Your new leader, Stephen Miller. Malkwood back to second. And uh, Peyton Westcott running in third. Stephen Miller showing a lot of pace, able to drive his way all the way back up to the lead. Was four tenths of a second faster than any other driver on the track with his best lap last time by. Will lead this field the Lead group starting to close up slightly as Stephen Miller will bring him around the kink and headed towards the hairpin here with three laps to go in this KA Junior. It's about the time we'll start to see the action kick off with about five, six drivers on your screen there in that lead group. Oliver Weldon closing up on the back of this. We'll see if he can make anything happen in the last couple laps here. Well, in the heat number two, they had a, had a lot going on in that final turn at I-70, and Weldon entered the turn in fifth and left the turn in first. And it's shaping up like almost a mirror image of what that uh, last uh, heat race was with this group. So we'll, f and it's not really the same group, but it's the same class. But we'll see what happens. Oliver Weldon letting the race come to him, which is so important. He's been patient, he's fast, he knows he's fast. And each lap, he just chips away. And now he's, he's right there. He could very well have something to say about this. Oliver Weldon up into six but less than a second off of that lead group side by side for the lead. It's still Mackwood by about a half a cart length. And the action certainly heating up here as we see the drivers start to fight inside this lead group. It'll give uh, Stephen Miller a, set, a healthy lead heading into this lap. He'll, we'll come back to the white flag next time by, so if he can hold on, it might be an easy victory here for Stephen Miller with all the fighting behind him. But Oliver Weldon set your purple time last time by, the fastest driver on track by several tenths of a second. So trying to capitalize on what he can. We'll see if he can repeat heat number two, have a strong end to this race as they're fighting heavily in front of him. He'll go to the inside looking to make up another spot as they come onto the front straight and they'll take the white flag this time by Stephen Miller, your leader in a big group behind him defending, fighting. Isaac Makowit 
to the bottom of the track for defense. And hit, oh, a big crash there, as we'll see the drivers just outside the top five take a ride. That is the 825 machine, your pole sitter, Fernando Luke, out of this race on the last lap. Yeah, it's up break for Fernando Luque, and right now the battle's for second. Steven Miller almost a full second over the rest of the field. Isaac Malkwood is trying to hold off the rest of the field, and he has his hands full for sure. Oliver Weldon has made his way to the top five. He may have something to say about this second, third, fourth, and fifth position before it's over, but nobody is going to catch Steven Miller. It's his race to lose right now as he's got a huge gap on the rest of the field, but can Isaac Malkwood hold off four other drivers which have found their way right to his rear bumper. Yeah, Stephen Miller with a healthy lead, but the action is heating up here for the edge of the podium. Positions two through five still undecided as Jackson Wolney making his way up. He'll look to the inside. It's instantly covered off by Isaac Mackle. He'll drive a bit wide. Jackson Wolney looking for the inside, not quite going to get it. And we'll see who comes out with the best draft here. But it is Stephen Miller taking home your Heat 3 win in K100 Junior. A two wide finish for the drivers behind hopping in the seat for uh, Peyton West guy is Isaac Malkowit will come home P2. So Stephen Miller, your winner. Isaac Malkowit comes home P2. Peyton Westcott with a nice drive to P3. Jackson Wolney comes home P4, making up three spots. But the, the mover of the race, Oliver Weldon, comes home P5, making up 10 spots over the duration of that KA100 Junior race. Behind him, Landon Skinner, another big mover. Beckett Friesen up 11 spots into that seventh position. An excellent driver for drive for the 826 machine as we'll go farther back. Max Weiland in P8, Jensen Burnett P9, Oliver McRack in P10, May, Mayor Dinerin <laughs> in P11, uh, Enzo Vidmontian coming home P12, William Rasmussen P13, Luis Alejandro Umana in P14, and Reagan Seville will round out your top 15 here in the Final heat of the day, the final heat for these K100 Junior drivers before they get set for final racing action tomorrow. We're back for the second group of KA100 Junior Racing for their heat number three here. It is the B versus C groups. 
as they line up exiting the I-70 corner and look to take the green flag this time by lining up, getting their tires warmed up. And we'll see what they have here. Two MPG Motorsports machines will lead your grid off. As they get set, head towards the tram lines and are looking for the green flag. Good formation, watching our flagman. And the green flag waves, and that inside row really gets a strong run. And Braden Eves and Peyton Phillips to the inside take over those top two spots. Issues farther back, the 849 machine going to have troubles into turn one as we'll look back towards the front of the field. Austin Olds with a great launch. That MPG Motorsports machine will go low into the defense for turn number five, but unfortunately won't be able to hold that. The 855 machine is going to capitalize, take over that top spot as the MPG Motorsports machines will fall to second and fourth. And we'll see possibly Ernesto Rivera crawling his way up into P3 as they cycle through through the kink and uh, work through lap one here of the second group of K100 Junior. As they head towards the hairpin, that Orsalin Motorsports machine, the 855. Sebastian Garzon. Sebastian Garzon taking the early lead here. He'll have a couple cart length advantage over Austin Olds as they cycle through, headed towards I-70 turn and still holding that advantage. Several cart lengths over Austin Olds and a Hefty group behind that. The next four drivers, the top five, all fairly nose to tail. A small group behind that battling side by side as they head down towards turn one to complete their first lap of heat number three. No real separation right now by anybody. There's a pack of five that's checked out a little bit. Sebastian Garzon does lead the way. Austin Olds runs second. Ernesto Rivera third. Caleb Tartar fourth. And Diego Gue is uh, fifth, followed by Asen Dramalov. Anthony Martella, Quentin McPherson, Chase Basaglia, and rounding out your top ten, one lap in the books, Braden Zervez in tenth position. Asen Dramalov, four spots in the first lap, is the biggest mover right now, but Sebastian Garzon leads the way with Austin Olds in tow. Yeah, an excellent start for that 874 machine of Asen Dramalov as he makes up several spots. We'll see a lot of fighting just outside the top five as they head side-by-side -side through the hairpin. And it's three wide on the exit there. A lot of action to kick us off here in heat number three. Sebastian Garzon has been strong all day, still leading the way. Early stages of the second heat race in our third round of heat races for K.A. Junior. We have two more heat races after this, Micro Swift and Pro Shifter. We want to thank BBS for the sponsorship of the K.A. Junior class. One more lap in the books. Austin Olds, your new leader, as he slips around Sebastian Garzon. Ernesto Rivera, Caleb Tarter, and Dega Guay. That is your top five. Three laps in the books. Two laps in the books, rather. Eight laps to go. Yeah, the top five nose to tail as Ernesto Rivera followed Austin Olds through. Now he'll capitalize, taking the lead of this race early. Ernesto Rivera, your new leader over Austin Olds, Sebastian Garzon, uh, Caleb Tarter, and Diego Gal. Austin Olds loses that top spot to Sebastian Garzon. But Diego Gue runs uh, purple a minute 10, 696. So that is fast lap of the race, a minute 10, 696. But they're all so close. That top five, a little bit of a checkout on sixth place, Ace and Dramalov. The fast times are going to start to click down as they work through several laps of this race. Still everyone trying to get sorted out, find out where they're going to be comfortable running. Still top five, nose to tail as they head through I-70 corner and Head towards the start line, coming to seven to go this time. Austin Olds with Sebastian Garzone in tow will head past Ernesto Rivera, and they'll take over the top two spots through turn one. Still top five all nose to tail, just sorting through, passing back and forth as they work through turn number three, and that's Sebastian Garzone taking advantage. We'll go back past Austin Olds there and will regain the lead of this race. Really surprised these guys won't settle on something for a few laps, but they're just moving and shaking these positions. Now we got a pass for second with Ernesto Rivera getting around Garzon. That allows Old to check out a little bit. Let's give a call to Justin Music in the 852. Once again, he moved really well the first two heats. Justin Music up to 10th, started in 15th, already five spots. As they work through the kink and they'll head towards the infield hairpin. Still Sebastian Garzon now has about a card length advantage over Ernesto Rivera who's worked his way up into P2. Austin Old's into P3 as they cycle through. Behind that, the 848 machine of Diego Guillo 
is sitting there by himself uh, in P4, trying to work his way back up towards the top three drivers. Coming through I-70 corner, working six to go this time by. Crossing the stripe for lap number four. And Sebastian Garzon leads the way. Ernesto Rivera runs second. Austin Olds third. Diego Gua fourth. And Asen Dramalov fifth. Fast lap of the race. Luke Powers back in 11th position. A 109.991 goes purple. But he's got a ways to go to catch that lead group. Right now, Sebastian Garzon leads the way ever so slightly over Rivera, Olds, Gio, and Dramalov. The top four starting to get a bit of a breakaway as they head through cell tower corner. Garzon leading the field through. In tow is Ernesto Rivera, Austin Olds, and Diego Guillo. The top four solidly with an advantage over the rest of the field as they'll head through the king and towards the infield hairpin. Ernesto Rivera closing up on that rear bumper of Sebastian Garzon. They'll come through the hairpin and he'll get a nice hefty draft down towards I-70 corner. Austin Olds working his way up towards the top two as well. They'll head towards I-70. Garzon with Ernesto in tow. It's two by two. Ernesto catching up to Garzon. Olds looking for some draft, looking for some help from Dio Guio as they have a almost a second advantage now over top five. Halfway home as they cross the stripe for Sebastian Garzon. Diego Guio goes purple with a 109.873. He's in the hunt. He's right there, not that far back, chasing down Austin Old. Let's see if the two of them can draft up and catch that lead group. They're not that far back right now, maybe two cart lengths. Sebastian Garzon and Ernesto Rivera, the top two. Those four drivers have checked out over two seconds over the field. So right now it looks like Sebastian Garzon, Ernesto Rivera, Austin Olds, and Diego Guillo will be the drivers that settle this barring any really surprises as fifth place Chase Pasaglia, which is having a great run out there, is 2.3 seconds behind. Justin Music starting in 15th. He's all the way up to seventh. Caleb Tartar runs sixth. Braden Zervis runs eighth. Asen Adramalov runs ninth. And Luke Powers runs tenth. That's your top ten running order. It'll be four laps to go next time. Bye for Sebastian Garzon as he leads the pack in the uh, second heat race of round three for KA100 Junior. Micro Swift and Pro Shifter are remaining two heat races left for the day before we wind down another day at the U.S. Pro Kart Series Indiana Grand Prix live action on Kart Chaser. As we work through four laps to go this time by, like you said, that gap from the top four back to the rest of the field with only four to go. Barring any passing, any hard racing, this could be your top four finishers if they keep it clean and keep everything steady as they head towards Cell Tower Corner. No moves being made. Garzon, Ernesto, Olds, and Guio, your top four still nose to tail as they work through the field. Austin Olds, purple, last time by. 109.790 will be the fastest time of the race so far. So the leader's fastest on track. That's going to make it extremely difficult for anyone else to catch him. Chase Buscalia, currently the closest uh, in P5 currently. 1.8 seconds back, but he's worked his way up three spots to to secure that fifth position so far as we'll see. Guio looking to the inside of Austin Olds. He'll complete that move. Move Diego Guio up to third. Ernesto and Sebastian Garzon working together out front. Look at Ernesto making that move to the inside. He's decided it's time. He wants to lead this race. Ernesto Rivera to the lead. Simon, I got to ask you, that seems to me kind of early to be doing that, but I think he might have heard footsteps and decided he'd rather have a little insulator between himself and that back group that's faster. Yeah, when you see that you have a, a massive advantage out back, it, it doesn't hurt to make one or two passes. What, what really gets you is the, is the hard defending and the racing every corner is they might start doing that as Garzon will take back the lead over Rivera, and it tightens up this top four. Rivera not going to let that slide into Cell Tower Corner. He'll take that position back, but immediately gets crossed over by Sebastian Garzon. So some impactful fighting here inside the top four. That might let the others run them down. Three to go, though, and a healthy advantage. Two seconds back to P5. So the fighting's heating up, but they still have an advantage. Rivera still leads this one. Garzon to the outside. He'll fall all the way back to P4. Diego Guillo into P2. Austin Olds P3 racing hard into I-70 corner in the back of the frame. You're starting to see P5 close in. So Garzon will go to the inside of Olds. He'll complete that move back up into P3. So the top four switching spots almost every corner now. And with two to go this time by, the action certainly heating up here in KA100 Junior. And believe it or not, I, I, I'm shocked, but they've 
lost almost a second to that second group. If they keep racing like this for another lap, that second group might just catch them. But right now, Ernesto Rivero is saying, guys, race all you want. I, it's time for me to just go ahead and check out on you. I want to win this thing. And they aren't holding back moves every other corner. It seems like Garzon will work his way back up from P2. Diego Guillo into P3 and Austin Olds rounding out your top four as the lead group. And in the back of the frame, uh, Caleb Targer and Chase Buscalia working their way towards this lead group with two to go. One and a half laps remaining. We'll see if they can make any headway into this lead group. See if they battle any more. Rivera still your leader as they head towards the infield hairpin. He'll go on heavy defense defense over Sebastian Garzona, Diego Guillo coming out of the corner. We'll see if he defends down into I-70 corner. This type of fighting is what lets P5, P6 back into this race. Ernesto Rivera down to the inside. Garzon will follow him. Diego Guillo went up high to try and get the crossover, but the positions remain as they were as we head back to the white flag this time by Ernesto Rivera. Download or defend? Unbelievable racing. White flag is out. Let's give a call to Cash Perkins. Cash started in 18th. He's up to 8th position. Advanced 10 spots, and he may not be finished yet. Cash Perkins on the move. But right now we go back to our lead group. Ernesto Rivera, about a half a cart length advantage right now. It's anybody's race. Diego Guillo, Sebastian Garzon, and Austin Olds. Those drivers are close enough where they could pounce. And sure enough, we've got Caleb Tarter and Chase Pisaglia two and a half seconds, like three laps ago, and all of a sudden they've caught up because they're in line and the drivers in front were racing. And now we got a six-cart battle, but a little breathing room right now for Ernesto Rivera. It's happened. I feel like we almost foreshadowed it talking about it. May Garzon will make a move back to the inside of Guillo. He'll take over that P2 spot. We're on the final lap into the last hairpin, and Austin Olds making a move to the inside. Diego Guillo getting run off just a bit on the edge by Caleb Tarter. So now those P5, P6 carts into the mix here. Rivera with a nice healthy advantage. Garzon P2, but to the inside, Austin Olds trying to defend. It is three wide for that P3 position as we head down. Two by two now, we'll see who gets the better draft. But look at Garzon looking for the lead here. We'll see if he got it. It is not, it is Ernesto Rivera by nine thousandths of a second. Some incredibly close finishes here. Ernesto Rivera will clean that one up. We'll take home the win over Sebastian Garzon, like we said, by nine thousandths of a second. But then it was back a second to Austin Olds in P3. Caleb Tarter in P4 managed to catch that top group, secured himself a spot up, and Diego, Diego Guillo fell back to P5. Chase Buscalia in P6, Luke Powers P7, Justin Music up. Seven spots to that P8 position. Quentin McPherson up to P9. Cash Perkins worked his way up eight spots to P10. That'll round out your top 10 here in the final heat of KA100 Junior. Micro Swift will be up next as we wind down today's uh, timeline. We've got two heat races left Micro Swift and Pro Shifter. We're live on Car Chaser. Stay tuned for the final heats of the day coming up next when we return. And welcome back to the Newcastle Motorsports Park. It's the U.S. Pro Kart Series round number three, the Indiana Grand Prix, brought to you by Kart Chaser Live. And we've got a great set of heat races left. A.J. Stoner and Parker Ives, front row starters. We'll have one more warm-up lap here. Aston Wyatt and Emerson Lane in row two. Enzo De Janeiro. And Maxwell Maja in row three. Lou Gilio and Alex Chandler in row four. Jake Manalio and Colton Schneigenberg in row five. Row six is Nicholas LaRusso and Zane Burgess. Row seven, Liam Nakawadi and Pasha Ali. Row eight, Cameron Johnson and Mikey Collins. Row nine is Massimo LaRusso and Oscar Gus Wundrell. In row 10, it's Juan Diego Garciars and Lawrence Perriman. In row 12, uh, row 11, it's Liam Van Beek and Grayson Walcott in row number 12. Santiago Daz de la Vega 
and Sterling Malata in row 13. Kima Ahmad and Marcelo Flores in row 14. Byron Bornman and Asher Ferris. And in row 15, Isaac Payne and Kaysen Hendrickson. That's your starting lineup. Top 30 starters, I should say. It's about all we can get to because we're coming down in formation for a green flag. Hopefully to see a start this time. It's A.J. Stoner and Parker Eyes bringing them around for a green. Not this time. Through the rest of the field, starting in 31st position, will be Dutch Westbrook and Hudson Howard on the outside of that 16th row. Luca Beckerl and Avax Captain Garano in uh, the row 17 and starting 35th in the field, William Vitor. That is your starting lineup for Micro Swift, sponsored by Team Ferris Racing. A.J. Stoner, fast qualifier, and Parker Ives, fourth fast qualifier, or second fast qualifier, rather, bringing them around for a start in this Micro Swift. They've had a couple runs at it, didn't go so well, so we'll see if they can get a better uh, start and a better formation this time by, and we can go green for one of two more heat races. we got Pro Shifter waiting on the grid for their final run. All the races today, Simon, have been really exciting, really close. Nobody's run away with anything, and that's typical of the U.S. Pro Card Series. It's a great competition, real exciting races. Some excellent racing so far today. Some of the best motorsports in the world to watch. Uh, honestly, throughout all the races, been some great actions. We'll look for green flag, and we will get it. A.J. Center and Parker Ives lead them into turn one. Parker Ives is going to fall several spots there, but everyone seeming to be clean through turns one and two. A couple drivers with slight contact, nothing race ending so far, but a lot of dicing throughout the field as they'll head tor through towards turns two and three. Four drivers off in the exit of turn three uh, as they work to get back on the track. Seeming like everyone's going to continue, but definitely without, uh, not without its issues to start this race. Yeah, unfortunate for those drivers. They're going to fall pretty far behind there, but... A.J. Stoner leading him around for lap one. Uh, we're looking to see where Parker eyes. He fell all the way back to six from that outside front row starting position. So that inside row really shuffled by him there. But A.J. Stoner bringing him around for that first lap. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, Stoner, a fast qualifier. Yeah, it seemed like Stephen Miller, one of the only drivers so far today to capitalize uh, on a rolling start from the outside row. Everyone else uh, falling back several positions on the starts. Parker Ives looking three wide to the inside towards I-70 corner. See if he can make some spots back up. He will, and he'll work his way back up to P3. Oh, no, contact, and he'll lose out several spots. Uh, some tight racing two by two through the final corner as they head back towards the start line. Crossing the stripe for lap number one, and we've got... Aston Wyatt will look for the lead there, and he will take it, but not without a crossover. The number 68, Luke Gillio, back to the lead as they work through the first couple of corners. It's about a 10-cart pack for the lead right now. Parker Eyes has worked his way back up to P4, uh, and he will follow as they look for an inside move on the 21 Aston Wyatt. Enzo De Janeiro uh, looking for that move. Uh, Parker Ives is going to lose one out on the exit, but some tight racing so far to start this race. Parker Ives back to the inside through Cell Tower Corner and will take over the P3 spot. Parker Ives, a lot of horsepower this weekend. He's been shuffled back each heat race, but he's been able to just be patient and work his way back through the pack. Luke Gillio, did, uh, Aston Wyatt does lead the way with Luke Gillio. I think Gillio's first, Wyatt's second. And now I think Parker Ives may have worked his way back up to third, as Simon uh, had mentioned. But uh, we're working our way now up for another lap. It'll be two laps in the books this time by. And Parker Ives slipping to the inside and makes the pass, takes over that second spot. So Parker Ives now up to second. As the top four starting their breakaway, if they can work together. <laughs> we foreshadowed it last time, but they don't always work together. Parker Ives instantly looking for the lead. He'll go to the front. The Luke Gillio is going to fall all the way back to P4. Still a top four breakaway, but Parker Ives, one of the most exciting drivers in the Micro Swift category throughout this year, has had some excellent races, and keeping on pace with that, making this one an exciting one. He'll take the lead uh, after starting P2, falling back to P5, P6, and working his way steadily back through the field. Only took him two laps to get back to the lead here. Luke Gillio starting in seventh, a big mover. He's already advanced five positions in just two laps. As he tries to chase down Parker Ives, he is right there. Gulio with some speed as he's challenging Parker Ives every step of the way. And Maxwell Macha also up three spots uh, as he looks to make some moves. The top two Parker Ives now trying to lead a breakaway of his own as they head towards the infield hairpin. 
No moves into it, but we'll see what happens down towards I-70 off this long straight. Grayson Walcott starting in 22nd position, already up to 12th. A big move out there for Grayson Walcott, advancing 10 positions in just two laps. So on the move, Grayson Walcott. An equally big move, but in the other direction, your pole sitter, the number 41 to A.J. Stoner, back in 10th place. He's lost nine positions so far to start this race, so definitely not the start he wanted in this final heat of the day, final heat race of the weekend, but he will look to capitalize. He's back to P11 now, so he's got his work cut out for him in the next seven laps here. Parker arrives still your leader over Maxwell Machos, works his way up into P2, and Luke Gillio into P3, both Maxwell and Luke up four positions each into second and third, respectively. Emerson Lane just goes purple with a 114.833. He's back in fifth, but trying to bring another uh, two drivers with him and close up on that lead group. Still Parker Ives and Maxwell Macha now up to second as Ives trying to pull away, but he just can't shake him. Yeah, Emerson Lane, your fastest driver on the track last time by, but not by much. Parker Ives setting a hot pace out front, trying to lead Maxwell Macha into a breakaway. Parker Ives certainly the one with the pace. He's about the only one I've seen that can, can lead from the front and almost make that breakaway work. In a, in a class with nine horsepower, it is such a restricted draft fest, uh, especially with a track as big as this. The draft is such a huge effect. It'll drag all these carts back together, but Parker Ives doing his best to lead from out front and try and ensue a breakaway of the top two, maybe even the top four, to get away from the rest of the pack. Enzo De Janeiro up in fourth spot, goes purple with a 114.726. So De Janeiro now pushing a Luke Gillio as they try to close back in on this lead group. Gap now one second over first and second. Parker Ives and Maxwell Macha staying in line, trying to keep their gap over third and fourth position. Aston Wyatt back in fifth through the top ten. Emerson Lane runs sixth. Jacob Man Manalio runs seventh. Alex Chandler, Zane Burgess. And Liam Nakawadi, that is your top 10 running order. But Parker Ives once again leading the way. But Maxwell Macha right there in the rear bumper. And they've checked out now almost a full second over Luke Gillio. Yeah, Enzo De Janeiro was the quickest last time by, quickest of the race so far. But he's going to need a little bit more than that as Parker Ives only 3,000 slower on that last lap leading from out front. As you can see the breakaway on screen and the fighting for third and fourth is not going to help. Enzo De Janeiro looking to the inside of Luke Gilio. He's going to make that move work into I-70 corner, move him up into P3, and we'll see if Luke Gilio can give him a nice little push and see if they can't catch these top two. It'll be halfway home uh, this time by, I believe. Yep, halfway home. So we got five in and five to go. And Parker Ives just went purple. How's that for horsepower? He went purple leading the race, a 114.570 fastest driver on the racetrack as he's pulling away from Maxwell Macha. Uh, even with the draft, Macha not able to hold on as close. It was almost two tenths of a second advantage for Parker Ives last time by. So with no draft out front, still leading the way, setting down an impressive pace that everyone else is struggling to keep up with. Parker Ives, your leader over Maxwell Mach Macha, Enzo De Janeiro up into P3 to see if he can't lead that second group up towards the front, but it's a hot pace they have to keep up with, with Parker Ives leading from out front, not needing that draft. As we work through the infield hairpin, we're going to check down side by side as Alexander Searle is standing by with A.J. Myers. What do you have, Alex? Thanks, Simon, here with A.J. Myers. A.J., I mean... You know, he too didn't really, it went your way, the pace was there, right? But didn't get the whole shot. You thought it was the clutch, turns out it was just you. I mean, what are you going to fix here going to this race? I'm going to work on my start. I haven't had a bad start like that in a while. I was due. Uh, just got to make sure I get that, and it'll be a battle between me and Kyle. Gulick looked quick, so we'll just see. Yeah, I mean, you told me that tire deck hasn't really been a factor, right? Your car got better, tires didn't fall off, lap times remain the same from heat one to heat two. What do you expect in heat three with the temperatures getting as hot as this? Uh, we got a little shade. I mean, I think we'll run maybe a couple tenths off that, but hopefully I keep that pace there, and hopefully they fall off. All right, thanks, AJ. Good luck. Yep, thank you. AJ Myers, your pro shifter driver, was starting on the outside of row one last time. Didn't quite get to capitalize as Jacob Gulick made his way from that P4 starting spot and hopped right past AJ Myers to take uh, uh, quite a nice hole shot and move himself into P2. Right now, in Micro Swift, though, still Parker Ives out front. Maxwell Macha is driven up to the back of them, and they continue to work together with four to go as they look to close out this race. Winding down, three to go next time by, and Parker Ives still leading the way. 
Maxwell Macha stays right there. And I, I'd like to think, uh, Simon, that Macha might have something for Parker. He hasn't shown it yet. But by the same token, Parker had pulled away, and Max was able to draft back up to him. And now a, a one-card separation. It appears as though, in, at least in drafting, he might have something for uh, Parker. Yeah, he might just be uh, working smart, working together to secure that one, too. But as this race continues on with three to go, we're going to check back down with A.J. Meyer's teammate, Alexander Searle, is standing by with Talon Yackel. What do you have, Alex? Thanks, Simon. Here with Talon Yackel. Talon, pace has been better, getting better and better throughout the day, right? Heat one was okay. Heat two was pretty solid. Hunter Pickett got you at the end of the race there. But you told me the only thing you really struggled on was kind of the first half of this racetrack, right? Maybe struggle to get through turns two through four. What do you guys fix for that? Uh, we just changed the rear rims and we're trying to get more grip in the rear, get rid of the lateral slide and hopefully it works for this heat race and we should be pretty fast, so watch out for me. Yeah, and I mean on Friday with, with the amount of practice you guys had and the testing you guys have done, I mean, how confident are you on old tires? Uh, I always practice with old tires back at home, so I'm pretty confident. Just try to keep around the same pace within the same couple of tenths of our fast lap in heat one. So we'll just see how the track changes and just see if we slide or keep it gripped up. All right, awesome. Thank you, Talon. Good luck. Thank you. Excellent to hear from Talon Yockel, an impressive driver so far this season. Teammate of AJ, Miners, he, AJ Myers, he's been learning so much and made such impressive gains as fighting at the front of that pro shifter field currently. But two to go in the Micro Swift category. Parker Ives still your leader over Maxwell Macha. They'll see the white flag next time by, and Parker Ives and Maxwell Macha are going to decide who wins this heat number three in the, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Micro Swift class as they have gapped now about 1.3 seconds over Enzo Di Gennaro, who runs third. Enzo just went purple with a 114.371. Luke Gillio running fourth, and Aston Wyatt, that's your top five. But Ives and Macha are the two to watch as those two have now really checked out on the rest of the field, and Macha has closed in where he could be making a move. They'll see the white next time by, as we said. And Simon, I got to believe right now that Mach is sizing up where he wants to make that pass. And it could be right here underneath. It makes the pass under breaking. Matswell, Mach, your new leader. Now Park arrives in the catbird seat. He can size things up with a white flag coming out. He can make the move back now, or can he? around Maxwell Macho. Randy, the king of foreshadowing. Every time you say something, it happens immediately. Maxwell Macho making that move to the inside. He'll take over the lead. And Enzo De Janeiro, the fastest last time by. I was going to say, if they work together, he might not get there. But if they continue to fight like this and go on some hard defense, we may see that number uh, 99 cart in P3 make his way up towards the top two. His white flag this time by. Maxwell Macho leads the field through. Parker Ives currently sitting in P2. Parker Ives has had two strong runs. Don't know where all the points sort out, but there's a good possibility he could be starting on the pole. I don't know. I don't, don't want to qualify that by saying that's totally unofficial. But I believe with his runs today, he could be on the pole. If he is and he knows that, then maybe a second. If he can finish in second, that's good enough. But you got to believe the competitive spirit's going to kick in, and he's still going to try to get around Maxwell Macho. Absolutely. A, a format here where a three-race average across the heat races will set your grid spot for tomorrow's final races as we work the last half of the lap, and Enzo De Janeiro is closing up on the back of Parker Ives. We'll see if Parker has anything for Maxwell Macho as they head through the infield hairpin headed towards I-70 corner. The last passing spot on the track. Look at that. To the inside, Parker Ives looking to make the move. Will he go? He will. He'll commit. He'll go to the lead. And to the inside, Enzo De Janeiro going to shove his way through. He'll make his uh, make his plans known as he works for P2 there as he's through the grass, hopping through. Not quite going to get it done. It'll be Parker Ives coming home with your win in Micro Swift. Heat number three, Maxwell Macha close behind in second. Enzo De Janeiro made a move, tried to get all the way up to P2, but we'll have to settle for P3 as Luke Gilio comes home P4 and Aston Wyatt is your top five. Another strong run by Parker Ives. And where in the world did Enzo De Janeiro come from? It seemed like two laps to go. He was a second and a half back, I think. But he made a hard charge, and you got to give him credit. He went for it in the last lap. Everybody kept it clean. Nobody kicked up any dust. And we crossed the line all in one piece. So that's what's important. But Parker Ives does it again. Absolutely. Some strong pace plus a little bit of battling made it 
Uh, possible for Enzo De Janeiro to run down your leaders there. He's at the fastest lap of the race. But let's run you through the rest of your top ten. Luke Gillio comes home P4. Aston Wyatt, P5. Zane Burgess, P6. Jake Manelio, P7. And AJ Stoner, P8. Alex Chandler, P9. And Liam N N Nachawati comes home P10. Emerson Lane drops seven spots. Unfortunately, starting fourth, will come home 11th. Colton Schneegenberg, another quick driver in the category, comes home P12. Santiago Diaz de la Vega comes home P13, up 10 spots. A great drive for him. Grayson Walcott, P14, up eight spots. Uh, Oscar Gus Wonder Wonderl comes home P15. Isaac Payne up 13 spots to that 16th position. Mikey Collins, P17. Lawrence Perriman, P18. Juan Diego Garciars, P19. Liam Van Beek, P20. Outside that, Nicholas LaRusso uh, will finish ahead of the other LaRusso La Massimo in P21 and 22. Uh, Asher Ferris in P24. In between that, Cameron Johnson, P23. Pasha Ali rounds out your top 25. When we come back, it's time to go Pro Shifter Racing. Stay tuned for some excellent action coming up here live from Newcastle Motorsports Park. Welcome back to Newcastle Motorsports Park. Pro Shifter presented by SRP Racing Engines to close out the afternoon. Kyle Wick on that GFC karting Miami powered machine will lead the field off for the final time without having to defend it here because after heat one with a, a heat race uh, where he tracked down A.J. Myers and came up 8,000 short, he was able to back it up in heat number two and get the win. AJ kept him on. It's both of them in good spirits, but they are tied in the points coming in. The tiebreaker would go to qualifying. That would go the way of Kyle Wick. But with three heat races, if they flip again, if AJ Myers gets two of the three, he'll get that pole starting spot for the main event tomorrow. Marin Kremers and Jacob Gulick will make up row number two. Talon Yockel, Hunter Pickett, row three. Ethan Boer and Justin White, row four. Giorgio Carrara, Ayrton Hernandez, row number five. For the SRP Racing Engines, Pro Shifter Division. We've got the last few coming into the lanes. Race Director Blake Hunt there at the start. We get set to go. 
for the signal from the back. The flag goes up, and now we pop it into first. Pull that clutch lever in. Pro shifter for the final time today. Porter wasted Sensel. We're underway, and look at Gulick again with a good start. Wick with the best one. A.J. Myers got a terrible launch. His teammate, Talon Yalko, with a good one. He'll go to third. Kremers to fourth. Here they come. Look at the gap already for Kyle Wick over A.J. Myers and Talon Yalko. What a start, what a phenomenal start for the sophomore as the second year senior now has gotten around the reigning series champ and uh, reigning or uh, world champion in Kremers who sends it back, tries to get alongside, not gonna get it done for B3. And once again, A.J. Myers just uh, comes off the grid slow and uh, Kyle Wick does not. Kyle Wick just launched off the grid and now A.J. Myers has got work to do, but He's, uh, he's closing in, actually. He's uh, already made up quite a bit of time, and he's, you've got to feel now he's determined he's going to win this thing. So I think we're going to have a heck of a battle here for one and two. And look at the battle for third. Kremer slipping inside of Yakel, taking over the third spot. Yeah, nicely done for Marin Kremers to get up to third after losing it off the green. However, Yakel wants it right back. Not brave enough on the brakes here on cold tires, though. Kremers holds on around the outside. They're still side by side back there for third as Myers tries to track down Wick. Both of them little choke of the uh, air box there coming down to turn them on. We've seen a few guys do that in Pro Shifter. And by the way, how about Ethan Boer there up to fifth for the rookie? This is superstar stuff for Ethan Boer to make it up the uh, amount of time he's in. What a great start. His best all weekend so far here in the heats as he looks low on Kremers. Can't get by. And while they're continuing to battle here, Randy, first and second, Kyle Wick is uh, getting tracked down very quickly by A.J. Myers on the factory magic cart for the lead. I think A.J. Myers is determined in this one he's going to win this thing. So we should see a heck of a battle coming up really any time. He's already caught Wick and now closing in, looking for a spot. We're only, uh, what, one lap in. It'll be two this time by, so plenty of time. A.J. Myers with a terrible start, but certainly now he's got the speed to make a difference. Looking not going to be able to do it there but maybe down the straight. Will he peek inside? I have a feeling it'll probably be somewhere inside the circuit under braking where he makes the pass. I think so as well. Not going to be able to be close enough in turn number one, so A.J. Myers will spend the second lap fully, completely behind Kyle Wick at the moment, and he's got to, again, take care of his equipment. Um, there's, you know, a little bit of understeer they get by not getting the full uh, force of the wind in the air on those nose cones that they've got with the evolved uh, evolution to cart bodywork. It's just a touch of downforce or in lack thereof as they call arrow wash when there's no air on the front nose uh, when they run behind and it'll work those front tires a little more and it maybe overheat them running behind wick here's a look back though as well we saw them coming through that's changed up again talon yakel and ethan Boer have gone by kremers in fact so is his teammate hunter pickett he's back there jacob gulick got a terrible start probably his worst all day and he's back there trying to get around Kremers and make up for lost time. There, wheel to wheel coming out of the corner. Side by side, looking on there is Giorgio Carrara. So up in the front, they're battling, changing the lead almost, and then back further. Oh, man, Jacob Gulick just got completely used up from the back and the front there. Both sides, the car just got kind of piled into the air. So one GFC leading the way, the other one mired in traffic. One cart link separation between Kyle Wick and A.J. Myers. Myers sizing them up. Wick didn't really uh, didn't really show any sweat in the last race when Myers was running him down, and we'll see if he can hold on. He's got seven laps to go in order to hold that position and have that prime starting spot tomorrow for the main event. Myers closing in, and now Wick stretches it out a little bit. Wick was quick with a 102.859. So a tenth of a second faster than the purple lap that uh, Myers had the uh, lap before. These two both clicking off fast laps of the race, one after the other. And you got to believe they're at their best game. They both want to win this thing to have that prime spot for the main event tomorrow. Ethan Boer under fire. Hunter Pickett will go by. That'll be position number four. So good stuff for the 236. While Marion Kremers continues to slip backwards, his teammate Hunter Pickett is going forward. I don't know what's wrong with the number one plate, but he's going to lose even to spot now to Michael Riccio in the 219. He dive bombs him back, gets him back. Must be something of an engine issue, I think, for Maureen Kremers. You'd imagine the go-karts would be set up uh, the same between him and Hunter Pickett. So uh, Maureen Kremers, look at him all the way back there, still fighting with Riccio side by side to the bus stop through, or through the horseshoe, really. And you've got Jordan Musser there. Kremers now on the outside. He's got Musser looking to go through. 
Musser will go by his teammate. And then here comes Jake Donald on that Trinity Carding Group Card Republic. And there's Jacob Gulick. I thought he wrecked. Gulick is still on the racetrack and running just outside the top ten. And now changing the lead. Just missed it. We'll pick it up here. A.J. Myers has gone by Kyle Wick, and Wick wants it back, and he'll take it back in the I-70 corner. We got a race on our hands, Xander. This is awesome. Down the long pond straight now. Wick with Myers on the rear bumper, and Myers, will he peek to the inside? Yes, he does, and makes the pass in turn one. Crossover move by Wick. Can't quite do it. Now the big question is, can Myers gap him? Yeah, can A.J. get away from Kyle Wick here? He's already pulled a couple car lengths as he caught him off guard there, so... Good stuff for A.J. Myers. Four laps to go at the line. He's not got a ton of laps that he needs to uh, just, uh, you know, run the clock out, essentially, and just get a gap big enough that he can have Wick, you know, lose a bit this lap. This is the lap to take advantage, really, for A.J. Myers. The lap you make that pass, your tires are cleaner than the guy that you just passed, and this is where you need to get away, build the margin up, and hope that he can't get back up to you. And they're doing that. They've both been up on the wheel, lap after lap, turning is faster and faster laps but the last lap for A.J. Myers was certainly his best one as he made the move around Kyle Wick and right now enjoying a little bit of a gap on Kyle Wick Talon Yako with a really strong run solid in third position Hunter Pickett runs fourth and Ethan Boer with a solid run in fifth and look at Kyle Wick closing in back on A.J. Myers and you said it Xander it's that one lap that A.J. needed to gap him because once the uh, tires get a little dirtier He's not going to be as fast. And here comes Kyle Wick. Can he close in? Will he have a chance to get around A.J. Myers? It'll be three to go next time by. Is it going to be A.J. Myers to pull off the win in heat number three? Will Kyle Wick recover and pull off the victory over A.J. Myers? Xander, we're going to find out real soon. Again, Kyle Wick now finally having to clean the tires off for the second half of that last lap. Can go back to work, can put some good laps together. And more importantly, these two are really feeling each other out most in this session than any other one because this is uh, the, the longest they've run this close together. They're getting a really good glance at how the other one's driving, especially in this case, Kyle Wick getting a good look at A.J. Myers. Myers had a good look at him the first half of this heat race. Now Wick can learn maybe a couple things from A.J.'s line, from A.J.'s markers, what he's doing getting into the corner, and now he's got to run all the way to the bumper. He'll give him a little love tap down by turn number one to remind him he's right there and keep the pressure on with three laps to go. What a run by Kyle Wick to recover from that pass by A.J. Myers reeling back in, and we got a race on our hands. There'll be three to go next time by. A little bump in the road there by Kyle Wick as he gets uh, right front off track, kicks him up in the air, loses a little bit of time. Myers hits his marks, and now Myers with about a two-cart length advantage. Wick just went purple with a 102 261. A.J. Myers with about a two-cart length advantage now over Kyle Wick. Stretches it out a little bit more, but then Wick closes in as he gets to the tight part of the circuit. I got to give a lot of credit to Marin Kremers and to our viewers as well for hanging on. They picked it up before even I did that Marin Kremers' right rear bumper is rubbing against the tire. So the contact with Ethan Boer, I think, going by. Since then, he has just slipped backwards and uh, the, it is rubbing against the tire heavily. It's affecting the handling and the straight line speed. That's why you've seen the reigning series champ drop so far down the order. Look at the run for Kyle Wick. He won't be as close as he was last time. He might be uh, uh, regretting not pulling the trigger and instead pushing AJ at the end of the straightaway. He wants to get another run at it. He'll have to work a little harder because Myers was better than him last time by by about a tenth of a second. A lap and a half to go, and there is a good look at the bumper. It is tucked behind the right rear tire. Uh, after some contact. So that's what's hurting Mari and Kremers right now. Here's a look back up front. Myers, Wick, one car length apart. He needs a good exit here. AJ got a little bit of a better one. It's getting really close, and Kyle Wick is running out of time. AJ just running a perfect race out there. Once he got by Wick, he's hit his marks on every lap. Wick is right there, but is he close enough to make a move? It's going to be probably under braking in one of these tight corners, but uh, Wick coming by now. Looking to the inside as they head up to I-70. Not going to be able to do it there. Let's see the run he gets off of uh, I-70. Heading down the long straight for the white flag. Awfully close. Now Myers protects low. Wick to the outside. It'll be a crossover in turn one. Can he do it inside? No. Not enough in one. He won't be close enough in turn three either. Here they go. Single file. But Myers heard him. He knew he was closer. Kyle Wick. Force and AJ to get to the low side. This is a battle for the pole position in the main event tomorrow. AJ a little bit narrow there into turn number five. 
through the horseshoe for the final time today. Kyle Wick still close, still digging, trying to find a way around to get creative because he's going to have to. A.J. Myers knows this place very well. He's won an X30 championship back when it was on the Leopard Power Plants in 2015. And beyond that, he has won numerous titles in the shifter categories here at Newcastle. He knows how to defend around this place. He knows how to get the job done. And by a car length and a half, Kyle Wake is going to need to hope that he gets a slingshot engage Talladega Knights type moment to pull it off because out of I-70, he's still too far back. Here we go, the run to the line. A.J. Myers, the leader. Here comes Kyle Wick at the stripe. Give it to A.J. Myers by 19 thousandths of a second. Wick sends it in the grass, but he comes up shy once again. That was a close, close run to the stripe, but it wasn't enough. Talon Yakel ends up third. There's a look at Kremers with that heavily bent right rear bumper and uh, a great recovery and, and just hanging on for dear life. He gets all the way back up to eighth, gets back around Riccio, back around Jordan Musser, and there's a look at the results as they come across. A.J. Myers wins out over Kyle Wick in the duel for pole tomorrow. Talon Yako with his best run of the day in, in third. Hunter Pickett fourth. Carrara with a good drive forward of fifth. Ethan Boer sixth. Gulick recovers to seventh. Kremers eighth. Riccio ninth. Jordan Musser rounding your top ten. We've got post-race interviews to come here from Pro Shifter uh, after this uh, quick commercial break. But if you're just tuning in for the on-track action, tomorrow it's all exclusive to KC Premium members. If you're watching right now, make sure to go to youtube.com slash cartchaser slash join or hit that join button at the bottom for $9.99 a month to watch the main events and the KA Junior at last chance qualifier on Sunday. If you want to stay on for post-race interviews, they're coming your way next.
as post-race interviews are about to get underway. David Lands caught up with our Heat 3 winner, A.J. Myers, in another photo finish on the day. Dave? Well, A.J. Myers, you've been dueling and battling all day with Kyle out there. Um, you know, that was a close one. That was really, really close. How would you hold him off there in the end? I just got lucky he didn't pass me down the straightaway, honestly. But uh, it was a hard-fought battle. I was pushing really hard just to keep up with him and catch up where I was missing. But uh, it was, it was, I, was, I, was uh, I was driving all right, but um, tomorrow we need to find something, I think. But package has been good. We're there. That's a big talking point in, in the shifters has been the discrepancy in power between some of the entries. You know, how do you make that? Can you make that back in one day? I mean, what do you have to do to overcome a, a competitor having a power advantage over you? No, I mean, it's a new homologation this year. It seems like the newest IME has been just really strong, even in Europe. And, uh, I mean, we're not going to do anything magical. There's nothing you can really do. Just get the carburation as good as we can. The driver of the magic cart says that. But uh, the final thing, you know, again, we're about 50-50 on whether it's going to be a wet race tomorrow. Uh, that would certainly throw a monkey wrench into things. What's your confidence level in the wet if that does indeed take place? Oh, I got it in the wet. But the only problem is Marion over here is also really good. He's missing in the dry, but uh, in the wet. In the wet, you can make up time. But uh, I'm good in the rain. I look forward to it if it does. A.J. Myers looking forward to a good race tomorrow. Thanks, Dave. Again, a good day for A.J. Myers. You, you always hear from drivers when the racing is that close that they're like, yeah, we're good. We need to find a little bit more still. And that's, uh, again, the, the testament of a champion. He's not counting his chickens before they hatch. He knows the heat win was good. Maybe feels like he got away with one a little bit with the way it played out. But it was close. He wants to drive away. Marion Crummers did not have the most fun definitely in heat number three uh, and uh, had to salvage what he could by the end of it. Alex? Yeah, thanks, Xander Marion. I mean, the day just got progressively worse and worse for you, it seemed like, especially there in heat three. Uh, seems to me like your bumper got caught on your tire for most of that race. I mean, talk to me about that race and just the frustration right now for this day. Uh, yeah, I just tried to mix it up early on. I mean, once I lose the, the slipstream, it's, I don't see where those guys go. So, uh, yeah, early on when I'm still there, I just tried to make some moves and... Uh, mix it up with those guys and hopefully keep them behind like I did in the first heat, but uh, wasn't able to do that. A little bit of contact with, I don't know who, everybody basically out there and uh, got my rear bumper stuck behind my rear tire. So uh, yeah, after that, she's burning onto the tire. So it's driving on plastic to all the corners to the left. So that was a struggle. Once it burned down and um, the tire was free, the, the pace came back a little bit, but it's definitely not where it's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, you've been talking pretty much all year long about kind of the, the power disadvantage you've had. I mean. What can you do at all, you know, tonight? I mean, I'm sure you guys are going to be throwing the kitchen sink at it, and I'm sure you're doing your monkey, uh, not your monkey dance, sorry, your uh, rain dance. I mean, just talk to me about what you think you could do for tomorrow. Ah, uh, that's not much. I mean, um, we wanted to put a different engine on for this one, um, but we were told not, we we're not allowed to do it by tech. So, um, yeah, I've got what I've got, and, um, I mean, yeah, there's not much we can do. I mean, uh, we've been close on new tires. We've got good pace, it seems like, but, um, yeah, down the straight, they just walked me. So, um, yeah. Tried to get a good start. I think I'll be starting further back, though, so third row or fourth row maybe even. So uh, it's going to be a struggle from there. Um, yeah, like you said, rain dance tonight, and then uh, hopefully it's hopefully you Americans allow me to race in the rain for once. All right, good luck, Marin. All right, thank you. Still able to have a smile on his face at the end of it. Marin Kremers would love to have a wet day tomorrow. We've had uh, a lot of drivers kind of waiting on the unknown, and like he said, very rare that we have gotten to see anybody rain racing. One guy who probably looks forward to hopefully a dry Sunday is Kyle Wick. Granted, he didn't get the heat race win. He comes up a combined amount of less than four hundredths away from sweeping all three heats on the day between the photo finishes and his main event win or uh, heat two win. So let's send it down to him. It was a day of photo finishes for you today, Kyle. You came up short on a few of them, but certainly I'm sure you've got a bit of the, the idea of what you'd need to do to time the run tomorrow. Um, you know, what, what was kind of your evaluation of your day and particularly the last laps where you kind of came up short to AJ? I mean, I think it's important to just keep it up front. I made a couple of mistakes there and AJ got around me and then I had the pace to stay in the lead and those mistakes cost me that. So there's been so much talk about the horsepower your team may or may not have. I mean, what's, what's your comment on that? Because a lot of your competitors are talking about it. Uh, do you feel like you got a little bit more uh, under the seat right now? Yeah, the Sweet Tech IAM is really good, but also the GFC cart's working really well. So it, the combination works, and that's why it looks so good. 
It's a strong combination. Uh, I've been asking everybody this. Uh, looks like there's a 50-50 chance that you're going to be racing in the wet weather tomorrow. What kind of a difference could that make in the racing if it indeed rains? Uh, it'll be the same guys in the front, just like it always is. And just a few more mistakes are going to be made because we're pushing the limits even harder in the rain. So, Kyle, tomorrow, looking for the final, what, uh, what are your expectations? Is anything less than a win going to satisfy you? No. <laughs> there you have it. Nothing less than a win. All right, fair enough. Hey, nothing less than a win. He wanted one in Utah. He felt like he might have been able to get it had he managed his equipment just a little bit better. But his teammate, Jacob Gulick, was the star of Salt Lake City's stop on the uh, Supercarts USA Pro Tour. And both days, Kyle Wick was not the bride. He was the bridesmaid. He's still looking for that first win on the year. Tomorrow he's got a good shot. How about another guy who's been having to work his way up the order all day today? He ends up with a good final heat, and he's smiling. Let's send it down to Alexander Searle, who's got Giorgio Carrara. Alex? Yeah, thanks. And like you said, I mean, put together a good final heat there. I mean, progressively he's got better and better for you, right? Still searching for a bit of pace. Qualifying didn't really go your way. But, I mean, kind of talking about the progression of the team so far, and, I mean, how, how you feel for tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, yesterday was not the day we expected. So, yeah, I mean, today was, was a day that we were testing all day long. I mean, testing things in the chassis, testing also with the yeah, ratio engine. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I think in the last hit was uh, the best combination. I could, I could, I mean, pass people and then go to P5. So I think we found a little bit what uh, we need. So uh, anyways, yeah, as you say, I hope tomorrow rains and everything will be different, yeah? All right, thanks, Giorgio. Thank you. There you go from Giorgio Carrara, and that wraps up, I believe, all that we've got from today. So for uh, everyone at the U.S. Pro Kart Series, remember, if you want to watch the coverage, you got to make sure you're a KC Premium member. It kicks off uh, tomorrow morning with the KA100 Junior Last Chance Qualifier at 9.35 a.m. Eastern Time. If you're not able to watch it, the replays will be available early next week. And you'll also be able to listen to audio through ecartingnews.com radio coverage. But for everyone with the U.S. Pro Kart Series, with Newcastle Motorsports Park, for Randy Kugler and myself, Xander Clemens, and everyone at Kart Chaser, thanks for tuning in. See you tomorrow.